And a very warm welcome to all of you from the Triton Super High Roller Series here in beautiful Hoi An, Vietnam. We are here at the luxurious Hoi An uh, Hoiana Golf Resort. Ali Najad alongside Nano Noko himself, Randy Liu, bringing you the start of two weeks of high stakes action. Everyone is here from both hemispheres and truly a stunning backdrop. Uh, Randy, I know you got in yesterday. I got in a, a few days prior to you. First time in Vietnam? My first time in Vietnam. The resort is stunning. Mm -hmm. It was my first time in Cyprus last time. Loved it too. They just really only go to the best stops out there. Um, it's luxurious, you know, it's spacious. There's lots of good food and lots of big action. Yeah, no question about it. My first time as well. Stopped in Hanoi for a couple of days prior to making my way down here to Hoi An, a beachside resort. Weather hasn't been exactly what I was hoping, although it's starting to warm up, thankfully, mercifully, because Lord knows I didn't pack any cold weather clothes, <laughs> that's for <laughs> sure. I was expecting it to be broiling out here. But obviously, with the weather lacks in heat here inside of our tournament area, we more than make up for as the temperature cranks up, we are setting it to 25K in our very first event, number one here. It is uh, our first stop in, uh, in Vietnam, a very big turnout anticipated. Like I said, everybody is here walking around the resort. I bumped into just about anyone you could hope for in terms of the names that you expect to see at a Triton and even beyond that, some names that you don't necessarily expect to make their way out uh, to Triton events. This morning at breakfast, had a lovely conversation with Dan Smith. Uh, you know, it's not a short flight from the States to get out uh, here over 24 hours, but uh, well worth it, I would imagine, as we look at the slate of action that we have over the next couple of weeks. Randy, nine No Limit Hold'em events ranging from 15K to 100K. What else we got? And we got the short deck events, right? I believe there's four of them, um, 20K to 100K. And we're going to do all the No Limit events first, just as usual. Like some players specialize just in No Limit. Mm -hmm. Don't make them wait, wait around and play some other events. And then we're going to transition over to the short deck. Um, but there's definitely players who play No Limit Hold'em that will be playing those events as well. Right. And obviously for those players who have managed to uh, figure out how to play both sides of a Triton series, more points available to them in terms of the Player of the Year race. We do have an update regarding that a little bit later on in our pregame show here. Um, Obviously, what we're most excited to see, though, are the two 100K main events, one for No Limit Hold'em, one for the short deck. Uh, and while we don't expect to see the biggest fields in those particular events, these 15Ks that we have trickled in on this occasion, Randy, look to be attracting more than our usual turnout. In fact, alternate lists. I don't ever remember that. Yeah, um, definitely the turnout, like you said, it has gotten bigger. Um, I've seen it from Cyprus and to Madrid and all these other stops. And the 15K is it's going to be a big event, you know, like it's a uh, approachable buying for those guys who play high rollers, but not quite the super high. Right. Maybe get there and maybe they win the tournament, satellite their way and parlay their winnings into the 100K and things like that. Um, but it's nice to see that Triton is ranging their buy-ins, mm -hmm. catering to lots of people, but still maintaining that prestige and luxury that they're known for. Yeah, I mean, obviously it sounds like a staggering amount of money for people to be ponying in to buy in. But I think a lot of recreational players, a little bit more comfortable, especially given the way in which our fields tend to attract some of the best around in poker. Uh, if you're going to take a shot against that kind of competition, maybe get your feet wet on the shallow end of the pool first with something like a 15K. Obviously, Carl Chappé Gatien back in Cyprus made such a splash as a recreational player came out. Here he is in this event. We're going to see him potentially a little bit later on. Uh, just one feature table that we're going to have throughout the course of coverage uh, from here in Vietnam, um, having been on a break since uh, September. And of course, as I bring up what closed out last year, I think it is only fitting to uh, talk about the loss, uh, really the, the glaring absence of the energy of, uh, of Ivan Liao, our beloved founding member of the Triton Poker Series, uh, you know, just such a respected and admired member of the Triton family, clearly not going to be joining us uh, here, having passed away uh, late last year at, at that Cypress stop, which, which cut our, our stop short. But in honor of Ivan and Ivan's passing, we, we do have some announcements, Randy, in terms of uh, our Player of the Year. Yeah, and um, we have renamed it to the Ivan Lau Player of the Year Award, um, which is very understandable. He was a uh, he was friends with the founding, very close to them. Um, he put in his time. I heard that they whenever they want to discuss how can we improve Triton events, you know, Ivan was raising his hand like, mm -hmm. hey, listen, maybe we should do these things. He was playing the events. It was very lively. I was there when they streamed for the first time in Montenegro 
And I've never seen Ivan Lau play, but he made a mark. He won two titles over there uh, for six point six million in earnings. Mm -hmm. And but the thing is, he wasn't like knitting it up and getting lucky. He no. was just playing crazy. He was just relentless and. None of the pros knew how he played, mm -hmm. and he was taking advantage of it. And he was always a lively character. You hear it from a lot of people. Like, he was just always smiling, whether yeah. he was winning or losing. Yeah. Um, you know, I've spoken to him a few times, and um, he will be missed. And yeah. I think that, you know, it is respectable for us to honor him with this Player of the Year. No title. no question about it. And uh, obviously, I know I, for one, and everybody here uh, on the Triton team dearly misses Ivan's presence. I think he was a, a sterling example of what it means to be a part of this family. And truly, it is a family. Obviously, the spirit of competition is not light. They're out there battling high stakes. But uh, away from the felt, and even on the felt, there is just a different atmosphere and a different vibe when you're here at a Triton event in terms of supportiveness, in terms of people understanding that there's a an expectation of you to conduct and carry yourself with, with a measure of class and, and, and grace. And I think everybody kind of, uh, especially when they first come in, takes their cues from everybody out there. And obviously Ivan was a great person from whom to take those cues as he was smiling, win, lose, or draw, full of energy. And, and uh, I I know that uh, we're all very excited, obviously, to, to have the spirit of, uh, of Mr. Liao live on in terms of the uh, Player of the Year Award. Now, obviously that Player of the Year Award is uh, still very much hanging in the balance, but we do have a major front runner as we turn our attention to the Triton Poker Plus app. All of you can download that app, of course, for free and follow along during all of our broadcasts, looking at all of the same information that Randy and myself and Henry Kilbane, who is a third member of our broadcast team, will be looking upon. And that big front runner is, drum roll please, perhaps no surprise, Randy? Stevie Chidwick. Yeah, indeed. Number one, the Briton. 1,904 points for Stevie. And then uh, we have Sam Greenwood, a fairly distant second, over almost 400 points, I should say, the Canadian. And, of course, Jason Kuhn, one of two four-time Triton champions, currently in third place. I suspect, and I think you do as well, as you see Badzi Akuski there rounding it out in fourth, that we are going to see points accumulated by everybody in that top four strata over there. So maybe the gap is narrowed. Maybe the gap is broadened. But uh, looking for some breakouts, obviously, are those guys. Um, and, of course, there's, there's another player of the year uh, situation that has been developing a lot of a lot of time has been spent discussing Randy the idea that well if we measure player success just based on how much they've won total winnings mm -hmm. we are not taking into account their total buy-ins and so obviously our title sponsor here in Vietnam and you know the the folks behind this event number one at GG Poker have addressed this situation. You and I were chatting just moments ago with Bertrand Grospellier, better known as Elke, a, a major ambassador to GG Poker, and he advised that uh, it's time to update that, and they are going to do a super rankings, and that's basically going to take into account how much you have bought in as well as how much you have won. Really looking to focus and zero in on net profit as a determining element of who's going to be at the top of their leaderboards. I think you, as well as myself, both fans of this? I absolutely love mm -hmm. this, right? A lot of times we talk about, oh, who's the best players? We look at the Hendon mob and top five, but, you know, like it doesn't talk about the buy-ins that right. they lost. Right? Maybe they got lucky. On the Super Millions, right, it's known for guys who regularly play this, just like the Triton Series. We want to know who's net profiting the most money. It's a very uh, cool decision, especially for poker fans, too. Like, we want to know who's doing the best, and I think this is really going to show who is the best player of the year. Yeah, I think a lot of people have grown accustomed to the Super Millions brand as being really the preeminent Super High Roller Series in terms of online poker. Certainly, those of you who are joining us now know what to expect when it comes to Triton, the preeminent brand, in terms of live super high roller events. So the synergy was natural, and obviously we are very much looking forward to the continuation of that relationship. My understanding is we are going to have yet another already uh, committed to GG Super Millions live event to kick off as part of our prelim slate at our next Triton stop, which we haven't yet announced, but we will later on during this Vietnam stop. And as we turn our attention to this Super Millions live, let's get to exactly what we're playing for. <laughs> it's 40-minute uh, it's levels, 250,000 in chips, a 25K buy-in. Blinds will be 500 and 1,000 with a 1K ante. And we are going to play 15 levels today from the Hoyana Resort and golf here in Vietnam. There is a casino on property as well. It's uh, worthy of mention, and you're getting a look now as players 
just making their way into the room. It's a cozy atmosphere here, not unlike the one that we experienced in Madrid in Spain. And there you see our first featured table just working its way into the room thus far. It includes the likes of the Adominator, Michael Adamo, along with Sam Greenwood, one of those top four names on the Ivan Leal Player of the Year race. Then you have Smilkovic, the German, joining the party. And, of course, Daniel Dvoris, no stranger to Triton events either. Those chip counts brought to you by Poker Steak. And worthy of note that Smilkovic was one of our online qualifiers from GG Poker. No shortage of those out there in the field. A total of 10 of them have made their way here to Vietnam, having qualified through online play. And here we have Dvoris with King Queen offsuit, 67 registrants Mikey, thus far, raising and taking it. Lisa. Obviously. I had a vision. What? I said I had a vision. Good morning. Table will fill out Level as time two. goes on. Ace King suited. Ace five off. As I made my way from Melbourne over here, ran into Michael Odomo at Chit Chat, and you know, he tells me he doesn't play all of the high roller series out there, but he, you know, he, he likes to take some time off because it is uh, gruesome to play so many, and like, he's not going to miss a track today, you know what I mean? But he's like, this is the one I have to go to guarantee. There's no question. And I would say that that sentiment is one that is shared throughout the high roller community. Oh, uh, really, uh, obviously, everybody listening to us just assumes that we're playing for the home team and being biased, but uh, okay. having been around as long as we have, Randy, there is uh, some perspective that we bring to the opinion, and uh, it is objectively the gold standard in terms of live event execution as we see Smilkovic here. Raising it up to 3,500, out of the big blind with the two queens, Greenwood. Uh, um. Sought to take a flop. The, uh, now, I believe it is place. his first Triton event. Do you think that is correct, I Ali? I believe that is correct. The Triton Poker app can tell you if that's true. Indeed, it can always uh, inform us of all things Triton. Yeah, this is verifiably Smilkovich's first Triton event. Right, you always make me second guess myself in the <laughs> spots like I'm being tested. I like that, you know, we they introduced this qualifiers into some of these Triton events right through the GG set yeah. for him. And it's gotten some of these regs that no, normally they wouldn't come out for these events, you know, to mm -hmm. dabble in here, get their feet wet, and then they get a little taste of the luxury and the they high sure stakes, do. and like, all right, I'll see you at the next stop, and so on. Now, back in Cyprus, I seem to recall Yuri Zivilevsky and Artur Martirosian, both, despite being rolled players that could simply buy into these events if they liked, uh, having taken it upon themselves to qualify through GG, where they spend a lot of their time in between Triton stops, playing cash, playing tournaments. Uh, and on this occasion, believe it or not, Martirosian yet again qualified for this event via GG Poker, as we see Adamo raising and taking it with two black jacks as the players are still getting their feet wet here at our feature table, which is four-handed for the time being. Glancing about the remainder of the room. I know Patrick Antonius is out there. Chidwick is in action. David Peters. Laszlo Boitas, I believe. Isaac Haxton. Orpin Kisichikoglu. All within eye shot of our broadcast booth here. Talked about Carl Chape Gatien also out there as well. And I can tell you there is a lot of new names here at this stop. So you know, it's just it's just getting bigger and bigger. It's going to be the theme every time we go to a new stop. You know, like all the original players, and all the new players. Greenwood with ace seven, two and a half x. Adamo mulling it over with the queen eight. We'll defend. Might we have our first flop, Randy? I think you're right. There we go. And our first C-pet coming. Who knows? This is a pretty dry board. Two clubs, two kings, one check. Level one, usually the 
a phase of the tournament where you feel each other out a bit. Yeah. See, is someone going to decide to play a little bit more out of the line today? And, well, Adamo in the big blind. Already got some naughty thoughts. Just <laughs> queen eight high. He's like, hmm, queen of clubs. Paired board. I know you're going to see bet this with very high frequency. Maybe I'll do something. And he does. And it's a check raised. First hand, first flop. And Greenwood promptly puts the a7 into the muck. And Adamo certainly qualifies as a player we could say has a dirty mind in that kind of situation as those naughty thoughts tend to percolate Danny often in the robust guy. depth of knowledge that he mm -hmm. has. What? You got your, is that a new LTOX thing? Um, no, I've, I've had it for a while. I just think I haven't wore it, worn it on poker trips. Boris with king eight, attacking from the button, suited one gapper in the small. Small thing to note is he has open to three blinds instead of like a 2.5 and lower, probably due to the size of the stacks they're playing, given their 250 big blind effective. But will not deter Greenwood from continuing. Yeah, a6 obviously more than enough kit to come along with. And two queens and an eight is a lovely flop for Dvoris. Greenwood checks it over. He's got, got a good piece. Probably gonna start with a very small bet. See how things go. Greenwood with ace high should expect the dealer button to be continuation betting at a very high frequency on a paired board. I'd imagine you'd want to continue a base high. Indeed. Greenwood wants to peel. Now the deuce doesn't improve him, but it also doesn't spook the ace high either, as it's such a dry card. Granted, backdoor spades. I could see Devor is considering betting again and check backing the river. If he's checking the turn, it's a pot control and most certainly call river bets. He probably has a mixed strategy on the frequency of whether he bets mid pair or not on the turn. He's going to fire one more. Does know that the eight is a bit more vulnerable, so more incentive to bet than pot control. Second barrel, gets it done for Dvoris. Dvoris and Greenwood, two Canadians here at this particular table. I spy Mike Watson out in the field as well, Randy. As the so we're eye spying the Canadian Trident yeah. players. Yeah, there must be more out How there. Do these things work? Did oh. we get the spiel already? I guess what? Did we get the spiel on these? I've never. Uh, this, this is a 5x Yeah, time? I guess you can change it whenever, whenever you need. Ah, okay. And these are worth 30 seconds? Uh, yeah, 20, 20 seconds, 25 on the flop. Well, not 30. Canadian, but also uh, not uh, unfamiliar uh, to those who've been watching poker seconds. for any measure of time. Yeah. Sorel okay. Midzi Anything has good, made his way here to this feature yeah. table, getting the lay of the land. Wow, I did not know Sorel was here. I have not seen that name in a Nor while. Nor did I. Uh, he used to be my favorite player. I just love watching him. He was just crushing the online streets way back when. Mm -hmm. Also playing under the Canadian flag, so almost on cue. Yeah, Randy, you were foreshadowing. You don't have to do anything with the cards? It's just. Oh yeah, card just. To, uh, yeah, 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 your box over there. Obviously, the, 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 the most famous of Canadian poker players still 
hasn't made his way over. Daniel Negroni. Yeah, I've, I've, been I've talked for to him that. about it. You know, I know he tends to not want to take the big long trips. As we see one brewing here with Adamo getting after the blinds. His 9 6 suited third out of three players. Greenwood going to flat the small with the red threes. And now Smilkovic with the two queens. Well, he's definitely going to be bumping it up. Mm -hmm. 250 big blinds. Usually you'll bump it up even more than normal. So you get 18 big blinds. If we were playing more shallow stacks, you might make it like 13. Right. Uh, but with 250, and especially a player like Adamo who likes to call three bets more, you kind of want to give him a worse price to continue against you in mm -hmm. position. 6X, the figure. I think a lot of... You know, obviously these guys are all very experienced, but if they play mainly tournament poker, they're not going to be playing 200 big blinds often, too. So, you know, it helps to kind of cut down that stack to pot ratio to make things a little bit less tricky post flop. But let's see, Greenwood's going to be out of position. Like he'd be getting a good price, uh, but it's it's hard to get paid off big if he does try to hit something. He's going to try. How do you feel about the call here with the red threes for another? 15,000. I don't think it's ideal. Um, oh, oops, well, you not, were saying? Uh, sorry. <laughs> I misspoke. Middle it's ideal. <laughs> on the 4-3 deuce 2 diamond board here for Greenwood, who checks it over to Smilkovic. That board texture really doesn't rate to be of any concern to the German as we see him C betting. One-fifth pot. So because we're playing 200 big blinds, you... Could, I could very well see Greenwood check raise this set. If we were playing a much shallower, he probably would check call and you know expect to get all the money in by the river anyways. Uh, but if he doesn't check raise now, it's hard to get all 200 big blinds in remaining by the river card. Uh, but we'll see how he wants to approach. He is out of position. So say the guy's three bidding like ace king, he might just check the turn. Um, things you need to think about. He's also probably wondering, okay, I flat it from the small blind, I call to squeeze. What am I going to check call a three bet and then check raise all of a sudden? That that would be a question too. Like two diamonds? Yeah, and unblocking the diamonds, I would imagine that's exactly where Smilkovich's mind would go. As we see the raise come in, the texture is a little wet in terms of ASEX having the wheel draw. And there is some ASEX in both of these ranges, I would say. Yeah. You know, people love to play the ace five suited, so this, yeah. it crosses your yeah. mind now every time you see the two, three, four. Yeah, specifically, it's the ace deuce through ace five range that has really gained favor of late, courtesy of the solver streets. Now, so I do think this is the right play to continue with queens in position. See, you know, if a diamond drops off, um, maybe you can maneuver accordingly. Yeah, ace or a five would be a little complicated as well, but the jack of spades isn't the kind of card that's going to leave you concerned. Yeah, this is a pretty safe card for queens normally. He might not expect two jacks to check raise a flop two as well. So let's see how Greenwood approaches. And I for Greenwood, once his check raise gets called, Randy, where do you begin to range Smilkovich? To to the over pairs, more middling sized perhaps? Well, I, I, do th I do think um, queens, kings, and aces is a very high probability. You know, he could have ace, king as well. Um, he needs to think about, would my opponent call a 4x check raise on the flop with these ace-x? If not, then he would weight it more towards the big pairs. I do not believe he thinks Smirkovich has got a, a medium pair like 9s or 8s. He might think those hands would just call pre-flop. He also might think Smirkovich made a move pre-flop with two diamonds uh, that could call bet call or flop. 60,000. This is uncomfortable for two queens, right? You're playing for 250 big blind pot. Yeah. And that pot is laying Smilkovich three to one here. But of course, it's that big bomb that could come on the river that really is of further concern. Oh my God. A jam from Smilkovich and Greenwood snap calls with the set of threes. And so the German has just two outs once here in just the first couple of orbits at our featured table, still in level one. Yeah, um, just pretty much didn't think Greenwood could have a set too often given the pre-flop action, but just misread that, I believe. 
Nine of diamonds on the end does not improve Smilkovich, and he is going to be crippled down to just 13K. Yeah, what's important is you make assumptions about what the preflop sizing dictates, what ranges they have. And if Smirkovic didn't think that Green would flat the small line for a little pocket pair like that and call a squeeze of that size still, then him going with the Queens makes a lot of sense. But now that he's seen that he's got that little set there, he's going to have to, you know, in future hands, not make that assumption that, yeah. like, he, he, he has a flush draw or ace five. And that's the thing about these small field high stakes pokers, they play against each other a lot mm -hmm. and they need to really be at the top of their game is, you know, review their old hands and whether they won or lost them, mm -hmm. make notes whether they've got their own database that they do or, or memory. And this is how you're going to be able to push out the, the edges that you need in these very high stakes uh, level of play. Well, I'll tell you what, on more than one occasion, I can recall having a player look over at the winner in a pot like that just as to kind of keep an eye on them and be like, okay, so you like playing threes out of position for 6x in that spot. Mm -hmm. Noted. Dvoris now getting after Mizzy's big with pocket fives. And he flops a set on the King Jack 5 board. Of course, Mizzy with complete dust. I did not recognize Mizzy with those sunglasses on. I, I think like, I have those sunglasses. He, 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 he borrowed them from you. I'm, you know, I'm going to go check my safe and just make sure <laughs> that somehow Sorrell hasn't made his way into my sunglasses arsenal. Well, it looks good out there. If he gets a deep round, you can ask for payment. You know, it's a rental fee for good luck. I like where your head's at, Randy. You always And if he but if he, bu if he busts it, he should be allowed to smash them, though. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> okay. You couldn't just leave well enough alone, huh? You gotta smash my glasses now? I'll tell you what, our video wall is almost psychedelic. On this occasion, it reminds me of these art installations that you see when you're scrolling through Instagram profiles of people who've gone to, like, <laughs> Museum of Modern Art, you know what I mean? And they go to these, like, Illuminarium kind of places and take a picture where there's nothing but mirrors and lights. And Yeah, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna be in the MoMA in the future, our tri Triton poker table. I'm going to buy a lava lamp and put it here in the booth. <laughs> Sorry, how much do you have now? Smilkovich limping on the button. And he did not limp, okay. He, he oh, he raised, little, I'm got sorry. got a little mini raise. Mini raise, that reminds me of Aaron Zhang. That is what I got from. Yeah. Ace queen, of course, ready to ask for the remains. As Sorrell three bets to 11,000. And the king high goes into the muck. Sorrell's a very decorated player, Randy, not in terms of the Triton series, of course, as he is a newcomer to our festivities, but obviously in terms of poker in general, he has over $13.2 million in career tournament earnings, 69th on the all-time money list, his best live cash, just north of $2 million. He really is one of the original MTT, like, top-tier players, just from way back when. You remember his screen name? It was Zhang, Big Zhang, something like that? Yeah. Oh, it, but that's must have been a different side, because I know he was Zhang B whatever. In a oh, really? Part. Yeah. Imperium. I, I didn't know that one. Mob showing. Zhang, Zhang Bazan 24 yeah. is the one you're referring to, and actually, Zhang Bazan is Farsi. Oh. For call me, like 
Ah. So it took me that many years to yeah, figure it out. You just and needed me to translate for you. As you see the king queen suited. He was always bluffing back yeah. then, so call me is not really the ideal that, name to that, have. You're probably right about that. No, because they've 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 nine seats for seating purposes, and there's no. Yeah, but I'm seat eight, and there's no one between us. Yeah. Oh, you're holding the wrong seat. Then. Well, well I was told to sit here. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we just that makes sense. So do I need to move or? No, we you'll move if somebody draws. Yeah, if someone draws. Seat, if somebody seat draws into seat nine, we can. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. If someone draws yeah. nine, then they would be in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have. What numbers have you guys yeah. chosen? Like mm -hmm. you have ten. You have, I eight. have eight. Is there a nine also? Yeah, I think it's just the same. Yeah, wait, someone's not. Yeah, yeah whatever. whatever. It's fine. Okay. And then the next big blind up happening in three of the times. That would be me. The next big blind's gonna be him, right? Yeah, he just comes in, hits and runs. Uh, I think he's correct. They're just for the dealer. Yep, he's very much right. That's not mine, right? It's okay. It can be if you go all in. Oh, it it's just for the dealer to signify a stack solid, that's all. It's usually like the triangle. Okay, I thought it was my key. Uh, depends how spicy you want to get. <laughs> Welcome Qdom Kim to the party. More newcomers. Confirmed. You haven't played a trade team before, right? We'll see. What's your name? Andy. Andy? Dan. Nice. What are you? Dan. Dan? Nice to meet you. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. I'll, uh, Apparently I'll prefers to go by Andy from the sound of it. Easier for me. Actually took a trip to Seoul, South Korea with GG Poker to film the revamped Poker After Dark recently. Oh. And... Uh, Thoroughly enjoyed my time in that country. Just beautiful, safe, clean, and a fantastic food culture. Yeah, I Great love city. It. I think Elki calls Seoul home, if I'm not he mistaken. He does. I believe he told me, yeah, he's uh, officially there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know he spent a lot of time there before when in his StarCraft days. Yeah, that's right. But he's back. Esports. Uh, yeah, but the thing is, my box is here. Yeah. Let's double check with the. Okay. I mean, I. Oh. I don't mind either way. I can take this box. So basically, if you have another share here, you should go on the box there, right? So we'll make you just that share up at the moment, so you can still say it, and we'll bring the knight. We want to keep it eight, eight seats at the moment. Right. Right. Okay. Because also I have the number eight, Mike. So it's like so that mean, like, if somebody comes with a ninth, then they just like Okay, gotcha. Why are we, why do we have ten seats? No, we have nine seats. Why do we have nine seats? Uh, so that when someone late registers or re-enters, they can draw any table. Yes. So, just, and you gotcha. so we're, but we're not nine-handed, right? Yeah, yeah. No. Eight well, we never play so nine-handed, but eight there's eight always an empty seat so that no, no, no. it can be drawn. Yeah. Cards nice. in the box. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Devorah is shedding some light on the ninth so chair so phenomenon. Eight. This is an eight-max event. It's not. Sorry. Yeah. Nine, nine, nine. As we see Andy Kim cut off, ace nine. Going to work on Michael Adamo's Two button. That is a treacherous button to go after, let alone a blind. Well, when you're a newcomer, they've got no reads on you. So you got that bit of advantage there, whereas you probably know how all these big superstars play. Well, nevertheless, Adamo was <laughs> looking for some oh, intel uh, as he 3 bet it to 9,000 and promptly takes it. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, okay. Right. I've been Ace nine finding the muck. <laughs> I saw you and I yeah, asked. Yeah, yeah, okay. Always breaking the rules. Well, the r official rule is we have to stand up for text. Is that, is that how that works? Yeah. 
That's what he said. Okay. Ace eight here for Smilkovic on the button. And he's going to put the rest of his so when I chips ask much, out there. Really a devastating first level for him as his two queens ran into the pocket threes of Sam Greenwood, who got sticky out of the small blind. Flopped middle set against the over pair and got a full double with cheese. Meanwhile, the ace king suited three bets and gives Smilkovic some protection, but also gives him some bad news as this first ever Triton event is not going so swimmingly for the German, Randy. No, not a good start for him. Um, we'll see how this run out goes. If it isn't favorable, he does have the option to re-enter. Well, the 10 and the 9 working in conjunction with that 8 of clubs, but runner runner needed for the time being in terms of straight potential. Any 8 would do the trick as the turn's a blank, and there is the 8 of diamonds. And oh. Smokovich can hardly believe it. He's like, wait, me? Run good? What? He was about to take off that microphone. He can spin up 18 blinds. I'll tell you what, that expression on Daniel's face there is the exact same one I think he would have had had he busted in that spot, yeah. remarkably enough. No problem. Yeah. You asked at the beginning, so. Yeah. Gotcha. But yeah, yeah we, we, we just have to be visible, and then they take them after the hand. From Italy? It sounds good. Yeah. We're in Italy. Oh, no, I live in Barcelona. Ah, I live in Spain. But in Italy, I'm from San Remo. San, San Remo? Yeah. Ah. You see the Yeah. Very nice. Take one empty, right? Did you yeah. used to deal there in San Remo? Oh, uh, in the beginning, yeah. Yeah? In the beginning, yeah. For the yeah. Long time ago, yeah. Like, 15 years ago, maybe? 14 years ago? When Libore won, I remember. Oh, really? Yeah. That was 15 years ago? Uh, well, oh, maybe shit. 15, but long time ago. That was a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, uh, which one of these pros lives in San Remo? He was talking to the dealer. Yeah, yeah. Like, tell you what, the dealing dealers must be doing all right living out in San Remo. That's a beautiful and uh, not entirely inexpensive part of the world to call home out on the Italian Riviera. 2,500 to go from the offsuit 6-7 of Mizzy, which is dominated, going to a flop against Andy Kim's King-6. Two spades, two queens, and a four. Draws a check from King High. And Sorrell quickly sprinkles a seabed out there for 1500 You cannot shake the king six. No, not at that price. Andy tearing one off. Unimproved as Mizzy picks up the lone flush draw. King six still in front, though. Going to take a free one. Try to hit it. Sorrell doesn't barrel again. Now three queens on the board. Hang on. Massive. And Kim is able to get to showdown as Sorrell just gives up. So how about your first ever Triton pot, Mr. Kim? Yeah, just show everyone you What's the going down King High. Win in it. Seems comfortable. And every time bank is uh, 30 seconds. And this is... Yeah, this is gonna, you just need to change. Oh, okay. So, Kim getting the lay of the land a little bit in terms of our time clocks and time banks. I feel like these shot clocks are evolving every time I see them. Looks even more finesse to it. Looks even more difficult to get to the airport now than it was <laughs> before. Is that what you were going to say? <laughs> Two jacks. Maybe he will spin it up. Uh, it's going to take a lot of spins. Well, the 2K open, just a min raise. This ace nine suited for Mizzy. Might give some action. He yeah. did see Smirkovich, what, raise fold earlier with like 11, 12 blinds. That's right. Nope. Wow, just folds it. 
He saw he smelt that ace queen right behind him. Uh, I guess so, because Dvoris definitely isn't putting his hand into the muck from the button. Most definitely going to free raise this against such a shallow stack. Upstairs we go. 6K. Another all in for Smirkovich. They're racing. Advantage two jacks against two overs. It will be but a flesh wound to Dvoris if he is unable to dispense Smilkovic. And the 6-7-8 flop is in favor of the German, who is looking for his second double. Board pairs on the turn. Just need to fade an ace or a queen here on the river, which he has done. I'm calling now. He's getting back to starting stack. <laughs> Just give him another hour. 39,000. I feel like it's almost frustrating when you're down to as shallow a stack as he was to not just be able to sh polish it off and then go back and, <laughs> and rebuy. It's disappointing when, like, let's just say he runs up to 100k and loses it. He's like, why did I spend all this time wasting those levels yeah. to build it yeah. up? I could have just had a, a deeper stack <laughs> hours ago. Yeah, he, he just doubled up and left us. Oh. Yeah, quick double ski and then left us. Actually, there is one more person from Paul that I know of. You from Seoul? Nice. There was like a whole like group of Korean people that came here like together. Like Steve, do you know Steve Yao? Were you with those guys or separate? I mean, I know some of them, but I don't know everybody. Okay. Just shy of 40 bigs after that double. As you see Daniel doing a little, a little accounting there. Love Elfie. And yeah, he's short. He's got a, like a fifth of a stack compared to everyone else, but he needs to you know, keep his head straight and just play the stack size he's given, which is 40 blinds. And we know that 40 blinds normally in a tournament is a lot of blinds to play with. Lots of room to play. And keep his head straight and hopefully spin it back up. You know, it's still 25K to get into this tournament. What's your name? Sorrel. Jack 10 Sorrel. suited. Sorrel. Do I say right? Say it one more time. Sorrel. You're putting an H in there for no reason. Help me, help me out. Sorrel. Like sir, sir, and then L. L. So no. L. Very good. It, yeah. Really? Did yeah. I say that? One more, time. one more time. All together. Sir L. Very good. Sir L. What's your name? Andy, but um, Andy? my Korean name is Hugh Dong. Oh, the second one's tougher to pronounce. Hold on. <laughs> now, <laughs> now it's my turn. Hugh Dong. Couple of suited connectors yeah. squaring off here <laughs> as Devoris flops the diamond draw. Call me Andy, if that's easy. No, no, no. I want, I want the OG name. <laughs> All right. My OG is Hugh Dong. Hugh Dong. Twenty five hundred chip so, C bet. This chair still shouldn't be here if I'm taking this chair. There's only one seat in between us, so if I take this chair, this chair shouldn't be here. If this poker thing doesn't work out, we can make <laughs> Daniel a stage manager, apparently. <laughs> Wanted to point out by the There's way that uh us, so Smilkovich is a name that has been on the tips of some tongues just recently out in the Bahamas where he had an eighth place finish at the PCA in their 10K no limit event. Good for a little over $50,000. Far from his high water mark though. Yeah, definitely high stakes rag. I recall when I did some of the commentary for these super millions online, he was winning events there and I think the 5K 6 Max 2021 online WSOP. Yeah. Back in August of that year, 2021, 423,000. Pretty sweet. Where he made his mark. A big W on his resume. And he's I feel like there should be a chair Do you think that's the face Daniel had after he won that event? Or maybe there was something happier happening? <laughs> he's not going to be happy until he has a 250k stack, whether he's rebuying into it or doubling to it. You might be right about that.
I'm, I'm, I can lose this block now, right? Oh, we're figuring out that, that extra know? chair still. Like, Daniel, thank you. Nine? No, I'm seat eight. Oh, okay. Seat so nine, you, they got rid of it. Ten. Well, actually, I'm not sure. They only ever play eight-handed, but they do have nine chairs out there. Daniel right attempted to explain to us why that is. I confess that I tuned out. I can give you one. You were looking for the same? I All I know is we're never going to have nine players. But for some reason, we're going to have nine chairs. Just in case you want to put your bag there, Daniel. <laughs> Trying to give you extra service. It had something to do with any player being able to draw any seat. I want to say, or any table, rather. Not, okay. Not exactly positive. I guess it's a seat draw thing. I guess somebody would be relocated if someone drew that table and they became the ninth player there, then... They'd Not rebalance. the important part of the tournament, I suppose. No, Not no, our job. I don't think so. Seven five three, a couple of spades here is Button and Small Blind square off. It seems that Smirkovich is involved in every single pot lately, despite the stack. Is going to continuation bet. Sees that Sir all flatted from the small blind. And he continues a northbound trajectory here. Well, please. Please. Now you said that you ran into a Damo on your way here from Melbourne, Randy. Yeah. Were you on the same flight? We were. But he, I think he was probably in the first class or I, mean, I don't I can't verify that, but I was in the the luggage stow area. Stop. <laughs> but um no, yeah, I, I spoke Qantas, to him. Vietnam Airlines? Vietnam or Airlines. Or Vietnam? Okay. I, I spoke to him and you know, he's uh vegan for six years, he said. Wow. Yeah. Um and I was like, "What?" And it just, he's just a very friend. He's a very friendly yeah. guy. You know, his persona, because he plays so aggressive, is that maybe he's not so friendly. Is how I would assume. But uh, no, he's lovely. Uh, oh, I don't think so. I've never felt that about him. But, but I hear what you're saying. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. A, a player's I've style a can cause you to have some assumptions. Ooh, and I might have some speaking of style, welcome Eric Seidel, who's brought what looks to be a Pretty cool T-shirt to the party. Can't wait to get a look at it. Seidel is just a silent crush. It just shows up, yeah. wins some tournaments, leave. No one, you know what I mean, like just does his own thing and I just casually crushes that for that as many years as he does. I mean, he made his way out there. When is Daniel? Daniel's going to come. He's got to, right? Eventually. I, I would hope so. I mean, if Eric can make the trip, you know. Yeah. Eric's no spring chicken. Eric Daniel's made it out. younger than Eric. I, you know, Antonius made it out. Yeah. I made it. We're, we're missing, literally. Easy, Antonius Daniel isn't Grant. that old, Randy. Okay. I mean, I don't know. How I'm three years older than Antonius. Are you? So, wow. How old are you, then? Don, Jeez. I just turned 45, man. Can you believe that? Wait, sorry. I'm just an All overgrown right. child. <laughs> how did this happen? <laughs> yeah. You got held back a lot. <laughs> can't hold me back. You can only hope to contain me. <laughs> oh, we try. It's tough. Did, did Seidel just make a cameo? Did no, he just buzz the tower and disappear? He didn't <laughs> like that nine <laughs> seats at the table. He's like, I'm he out. He just left? No, nah, it looks like he's been dealt into this, okay. this hand. A6 suited here under the gun for Smilkovich. And there is Seidel just behind Mizzy, who in the hijack will flat. I like that he calls a king jack suit. It's got a lot of playability. If you tend to three bet, maybe it off suit hand a little bit more. Um, how much are you playing? I just tried to be in the maze last time. It was yeah. really good. Uh, in Vietnam, I think. Out yet. Andy Kim, king queen suited. Yeah, very briefly stopped by it for literally like five minutes. Gonna call as well. Ace, Jack, 10, the nuts for Andy here, and a heart redraw for dessert. Yeah, if you just 
You smashed it enough already and just pick up a flush draw with that. And both players with a piece, a reasonable piece. Usually just checks around when you get a hand like King Jack. But he's actually going to fire. Thinks his opponents are quite weak. There's like 20 different ones on like that street. Obviously being uh, in position so with that like redraw to Broadway rated. does kind of lend to Mizzy deciding to barrel here. And of course, Andy. I love this. I like this call because he still had Smirkovich, who didn't put money in, maybe give him a chance to put more chips in. When you check raise, you look like you got king queen most of the time, given 200 big blind deep. Some people get antsy and like, oh, I got to find a way to get more chips and got to go for a check raise. But I think this actually allows him a better chance to collect more chips on average. Well, Kim bottom. tried to get Mizzy to bite on the turn. Instead, it went check, check. Now the board pairs on the river, which is... Slightly uncomfortable, but I think we have to assume that Mizzy would have put chips into the pot with two pair on the turn. Absolutely. So not quite as uncomfortable as it might otherwise feel with three streets of action, maybe. As played, I believe Andy is going to hope to get value from Ace-X. He doesn't probably think Jack-X would pay off. Because um, there's no four seed. So he went for the sizing, hoping to get some calls, could not get the call. But I, you know, I don't know much about how Andy plays, but I do see just from the choices he made on the flop in river with the sizing dictates. He definitely is very well of ranges and and what's most likely his opponents have. Are you strong? Yeah. Okay. You come. Can we start with thirty? Oh, it's there's only an option for one hour minimum. Oh, you have me locked Lopez. in, huh? Lopez. Okay, I guess I'm going to have to do an hour then. Okay, I pay now. So well, exploring the massage streets here. One hour minimum. I'll tell you what, it doesn't matter because it's probably the least expensive country to get a massage in. I mean, I've been to Thailand. They're pretty... I almost want to say unreasonably priced because they're that <laughs> inexpensive. I was going to say reasonably and I realize that's not fair. But... Uh, you're not going to be putting a dent in your bankroll, yeah, I do, I do even well. if you have continuous massages from beginning to the end of this series, well, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Seidel now with a couple of fours. Don't want to sleep, by the way, Randy, on that well, fold with the oh. A6 oh, that was well, made by for now. the preflop yeah. razor. You, you, you could do ABA, yeah. 15, 30, 50. Last oh. pot. That's what I was saying like is that. just because you're a short so stack but if doesn't really mean, good, you know, you just try to splash the rest of those chips in. He was so very aware of what to do uh, with his stack sizes and, well, he wants you know, one. the action. Are you the only masseuse here? There's more than one, or are you the only one? Yeah. Oh. You're only, is there another masseuse, or are you? Adamo gonna set mine after yeah. Seidel opened. Thank Couple you. Of baby pairs squaring off. Do I, do you guys have like a different chair or this chair? Jack nine, seven rainbow. Oh yeah, correct. Not a fun board for these little pairs. Oftentimes, it's actually the guy who fires that will steal the spot. But then they kind of want to pot control. You know, I've got showdown against those ace highs. So it just depends on how they interpret the bets or checks. Thank you so much. Adamo did flat from the small blind. But given we're playing 250 big blinds, I think his range is not as defined as normal. A couple of checks as Seidel did not hesitate check back now king on the turn which one is, is strong shouldn't be a card which that Domo starts to make a move on the okay. king improves the guy who checks it. back with you know now, they rep the ace kings and mm -hmm. stuff uh, <coughs> so you just ask like one of the waitresses or you can ask Change? the floor to call you one no mag mag i was saying trick what yeah weird that it's not like maybe they'll just pop everything. again no betting. Now the ace. So An even more dissuasive development for Adamo. I'm wondering if Seidel considers betting the river. I know he's got the best hand, but he might yeah, be I thinking, do. I rep an ace so well. If you've got a little pocket pair like eights, tens, um, probably won't call me. Yeah, it's definitely something to consider, although the fours have a little bit of showdown value. 
does beat those twos and threes. But look at this. Adamo's the one reaching for chips. That's interesting because as played, I'm with you, Randy. It does feel like there's a lot of ace high in Seidel's range. But perhaps Adamo assumes that if, if it was a 7 9 jack or king, he would have heard from Seidel at some point already. And if it was ace-8 or ace-10, the power of the straight draw might have caused him to put some chips into the pot as well. And if it isn't one of those hands, then what on earth is it? Did he really open with ace-6 or worse? Nice. And if he didn't, then maybe this barrel comes through. I don't know. That was a nice play. So Adamo actually bet really small, and he basically targeted exactly uh, those pocket, all the pocket pairs that's like, Tens and lower, mm. thinking, you're not going to call me. He didn't bet bigger because he knows an ace would never fold anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, so he targeted those hands with the perfect size for that. And if you know, if he had an ace, he just lost 2.5 big blinds instead. And those blinds are going up. 1,500 with the 1,500 ante. Again, these are 40-minute levels. Here in this 25K, we'll play 15 levels today going by rather quickly. Breaks will come every three levels. Of course, those chip counts there brought to you by GG Poker, Smilkovich, the short stack courtesy of Sam Greenwood. Who hit and ran us. Yeah, exactly. Quietly left the party. Having flopped that set of threes against the over pair. Get a lovely shot of the room there. Victor Malinowski in the foreground to the left of Greenwood, who in turn is to the left of Seth Davies. Love me some Limitless. I love reading his, you ever look at his Instagram? He just posts like these uh, little essays and they're like. Really? Yeah, you should try it, check it out sometime. Should I? I mean, what I don't understand it. What are these essays about? I don't, I mean, they're like kind of like meaning of life kind of things. Um, okay. But it's. It doesn't, it's not like the most perfect English, so it's a little bit hard to maneuver, but I, it's a very thoughtful. I like it. I think it's like, man, I can't remember. His, I don't want to guess what his username is. All right, we got an masseuse down at this table. I'm thinking the whole table is going to have a masseuse by the end of this blind level. So spoiled in Vegas. I know. Just, I don't know if you feel the same way, but I think Kabuto's kind of gone a little bit downhill. I haven't been in a long time. I just had a, kind of a bad streak of trying to get in there. Was, oh, yeah. You know. It's impossible. Yeah. So the one that I'm about to tell you, like, at least when I was there six months ago, it was pretty easy to get a reservation. But I'm going to whisper it to you so that no one else knows. Like on the stream, right. because I, 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 I want to be we able to save it until later. Yeah, yeah, we'll save yeah. it later. But the I'm best super thing tilted by that development there. there. As you know, I'm a so massive I'm foodie. And apparently, Sorel has got a hot spot that he was going to share with Seidel and then thought better of it because he realized he's on the stream and he doesn't want other people to get wind. Steaming here. Do you in the booth. think you know the place? I mean, it's a big city. It's the McDonald's on Las Vegas Boulevard. Come on. He said <laughs> reservations here. As we see one brewing, Devoris, the opener under the gun to 3,500. Andy Kim, three bet with his ace six suited. And Smilkovich decides to jam with this ace king. And now for Devoris, who's sitting so deep, is there any world in which ace queen offsuit gets curious? There is a world. It's just awkward. Let's just say you put in 30K. Andy Kim actually has something, and you just waste 30, 36K. Right. Um, For him to cold 4-bet jam 36K does not necessarily, just because he is short doesn't necessarily mean it's a weaker hand. Mm -hmm. Like, Ace Jack might just still go into muck anyway, so those hands you're trying to dominate, not quite the same. It's different when it's 4-bet if it's just two players involved, whereas cold 4-bet was now there's a third player involved putting in chips originally. Wouldn't be getting the right price to continue here. And the A6 finds the muck as well. Yeah, 
you have one left, you can get a shot down, I'll say 10 seconds, so you can start from now, uh, 4-5, 4 5 4 one I spy a couple of members of the Thai contingent in the room. Kanapong Tanaratakul, better known as KT, not Punsri. I know Pachata Wangwichit also here. Dan Smith making his way into the room. Gang's all here, Randy. They're all here, and there's more. Yeah. More little clicks coming in, too. G gang got bigger. Yeah. Oh. I just like it when there's a series where all of the best players come. You know, a lot of times, and we're getting there. We're going to get everyone yeah. here eventually, I I'm sure. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, well, they're really good, but they'd only play in the World Series or something. And, and mm. we don't know how to compete fair with other players. Mm. So it's nice that you, we've built this big brand of high stakes, and mm -hmm. the best players want to come out and compete with these other players. Sure. Um, it's nice to see. You know, I think also, uh, you know, oftentimes I know you're based overseas, Randy, so perhaps less so than myself, but being based in the States and commentating mm -hmm. on a lot of events, you know, uh, in Vegas, the World Series, you can really develop a bit of a Western bias and you forget that there's a tremendous amount of talent that doesn't make its way over to the States to play, but absolutely can keep pace with many of the uh, Western players, and we see that fairly often here in Triton, where people will rise up and really yeah. have some spectacular performances and, and take note. At this stop, you know, I've seen a lot of um, Korean players that seem to have made it out Agreed. here that did not come to the other mm -hmm. stops. You know, it's closer for them. Um, like you said, the Taekwon Chin Chinjin's out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not just European players. It's all this, these other Asian countries with very strong players who don't want to make it all the way to America it's quite far and play these stops. So it's nice, you know, try and there, there's just nine chairs, but get in their way around. They go to, we go to do some European stops, yep. we do some Asian stops, and, you know, if you're a big fan, you'll go to both, or you maybe go to one that's closer uh, to you. Mm -hmm. And like turnout has been amazing well, over in Cyprus. Um, it like already like seems to be amazing here in Vietnam, so yeah, pretty excited. Yeah, like turnout obviously like continuing to so. get larger and larger on YouTube, well, which is ideal. just one of the platforms that you can <laughs> watch us on. If you are out there, obviously our thanks for joining us. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel as we continue to effort to provide you the best in streaming poker content and beyond. Also have some giveaways for those of you who are out there streaming us on YouTube and on Twitch. Of course, you can download the Triton Poker Plus app and join us there as well. Meanwhile, back at the table, King Queen and King Jack squaring off in a raised pot. Two fours and a six on the flop, not in either zip code. We are playing cutoff versus dealer button. Let's see how, if Seidel is a type to float with two over cards in position. It is the type of board you do expect the preflop raise at a continuation, but a high frequency. And you can see Seidel, it's, it's not giving up. Let's we'll start with a call, make a stance. If I'm Sorrel, I'd be, I'd actually usually think if someone calls me on the swap, I'm behind, but the ace, that changes things a little bit. Obviously, Seidel in position here, but Mizzy as the first to the pot. Could look to rep this card. Yeah, so, so I was thinking, okay, did you flat me up a pocket pair in position, and we'll just fold when the ace rolls off, or do you got these? How often are you flatting me in position of ace X? rather than three betting those hands. And he's just gonna go for a big bet. Monster play, love it. And that is the kind of play that perhaps lent to you making Sorel one of your favorite players once yeah. upon a time. He really did have a reputation for being tremendously aggressive. Memories are rolling back. Oh, you don't? All right. I mean, we're the same thing that you were eating. So okay. I'll figure it out. They have some like funky it? fruits here. You yeah. don't like it then? Uh, 
I mean, I, I just, it's, to me, it tastes like it's not ripe yet. Uh, but maybe I just don't know what it's supposed to taste like. Oh. <laughs> 35? Raise 3,500. Oh. What fruit are we talking about? I'm assuming it's dragon, dragon fruit. fruit. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's a fruit he doesn't know what it tastes like. It has to be. What else oh. could it be? Uh, yeah. Oh. As we see Mizzy with a couple of kings going to work once more. Adamo in the big with Jack Six suited. I thought it was going to be room Suited. Big blind. Yeah, That's sure. enough for Adamo so to, to continue. Confirmed as he defends. Two jacks Hello. and a seven. And Adamo's timing is impeccable here as he flops trips. Mizzy with the two kings. We'll see how he elects to proceed. It's going to be with a C bet. Tiny bet, as yeah. they do on these paired boards. And, you know, Adamo's the type of guy where he could check raise if he wants to when he hits these trip jacks because then they just won't give him credit they just know that he likes to make moves look if he check raised that queen eight earlier in the first hand on the king king board i'd be wouldn't be surprised he check raises jack six here mm -hmm. right i agree keep it balanced especially against a guy like Sorel, who you know leans toward the aggressive side of the spectrum and isn't afraid if he's got a read that maybe you're dancing and you're out of line here to come back at you, you open that door to him by check raising on the flop. Yeah, and Missy knows the reputation that Adamo has to make plays, make moves. He's going to peel the flop here. I imagine he's not folding to any turn bet on... You know, this shakes things up a bit. Jack, Jack, seven, seven. So if Sorrell had a hand like pocket sixes and lower and bet flop, you know, he'd be counterfeited. So it might cross Adamo's mind to consider checking to induce from those hands, but we'll see. Well, in terms of Mizzy's perspective, does the seven pairing right to be of any concern. It, there's not really a lot of worlds in which I would imagine Adama would check raise a seven mm -hmm. on that board, right? He shouldn't be check raising a seven. It's a jack or nothing. It's going to go for another bet. And Mizzy's, it's also crossing Sorrel Mizzy's mind that like, okay, if you had a jack and you check raise a flop, would you sometimes check when you hit the full house here, trying to trap me? So the fact that his opponent is still betting might make him lean toward calling a bit more than normal, uh, given that a jack will definitely have some frequency of checking when it's double paired like this. So he will call again. Safe. Yep. Boy, this is really a troublesome spot potentially for Mizzy, and we'll see whether or not Adamo comes with milky sizing or polarizing sizing. I can never predict which one he's going to opt for. He's got a uh, arsenal of moves to use. He is likely expecting if his opponent's calling him down is with a pocket pair. Um, you know, what sizing will he use? So generally speaking, be like, well, my opponent can't really call much. Uh, he knows his image, right? So he he might go for that big sizing. But it's easy for Sorrel to have a jack himself, so he might be like, "Would I, would I really bet like really big if there's a d if I'm bluffing? If there's a chance, good chance my opponent's a jack." So it's tricky on trying to de determine which bet sizing to use. Seventy. Uh, Seventy thousand. So it's the pot size. Yeah, bet. full pot. By the way, shout out to our massage therapist who's almost feline-like in the work she's putting in on the Adamo mm -hmm. trapezius. It's a uh, good lay down. She's got a healthy grip. Look at that intensity. As Mizzy avoids disaster, the two kings find the muck appropriately, but obviously those are the sorts of laydowns that keep us up at night from time to time, or at least until we get to that point when rewatching the stream. He seemed pretty confident in that fold. I don't think he used a time bank. Um, but I think no. his logic was, well, when I called a turn, 
I have a jack a lot, so are you really going to fire a pop size bet? One but more it time is to a domo. Me? I know Randy. it is a domo. It's it is the, the guy thing who's you think got about. three barrels in him. I know, and that's the thing. I I can't. We can never say a hundred percent certain he always got a jack or he doesn't have a jack. It's just because of that Adamo factor. Who, by the way, he uh, I, when I spoke to him, I, like I told you at the bar, he you know he says he spends a good amount of time studying, mm -hmm. um, as all these guys you expect, and you know he takes notes on people and you know study the solvers and mm -hmm. things like that. So mm -hmm. he's very well equipped on uh, being very well balanced mm -hmm. and things like this. I always forget just how young Michael Adamo is when I watch him play because the way that he conducts himself is with a kind of composure that is well beyond his years because he has such command of what he's doing out there in these you know, deep, no-limit events against the best in the world specifically, which I think is also a skill a lot of times as we see Smilkovic jamming from the big blind and pretty big jam taking 4K away from Andy Kim. With King Seven, obviously showing some aptitude there, but you know there are those who excel against recreational players. There are those who excel in in huge fields. There are those who excel six max or you know short fields. And uh, you know the name Phil Helmuth comes to mind as you know you talk about some of the best in the world, and oftentimes people give him no respect and no credit and say no, the way you play doesn't put you in that class. But when you look at his results in particular, which by the way aren't Re relegated to simply no limit hold'em events, the mm -hmm. man has bracelets outside of that discipline, but he does tend to fare very well, or better, I should say, when he is in fields that contain a lot more recreational players. 35. I look at a player like Adamo, and I think here is a guy who is at his best when everyone else that he is surrounded by at a given table or in a given event is also the best and that's really i mean a, a huge compliment in in my eyes um not to take anything away from those who excel against yeah. more recreational fields because that's a skill as well but, it, it's uh, a huge compliment for sure and um and i think the reason that's true is you know at the highest level we start to get in that mind game wars right like oh at what frequency you're doing this or can i put a little bit more pressure because i know you've been you're at the, you understand ICM and things like this, and he he can create a play that he thinks will work best, knowing that his opponents are thinking about all these little mm -hmm. things. Whereas if he's playing against like a a rag that doesn't play as high, but you know he might have to make different assumptions against him. He just seems to be honed in onto very thinking players. Mm -hmm. I always liken it to you know if you eloquently speak a certain language, but the person that you're speaking to doesn't speak that language, mm -hmm. then it's a lost, you know, art. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But for a guy like Adama, when he knows that he's surrounded by people who speak his language, at those top tiers and echelons of poker, he really, truly excels. A6 suited here for Mr. Kim. Makes it 8K to go, takes it down. It was funny in that pop between Mizzy and Adamo. Both of them had a massage therapist, yeah. and I was curious as to whether or not the massage therapists were going to square off and kind of get into it. <laughs> like a quick fist pump from the one that ends up winning the pot. <laughs> I mean, definitely the Adamo masseuse was more aggro at that moment. Yeah, no, she really was. Relentless, 7-3 suited on the button. Yeah. Tommy Kim joins our table.
We don't know who divorces other card, but it does not matter. Trip nine is always good. Yeah, no doubt about it. And obviously, he'll be pleased with his decision to defend. Discipline check back. I think that's important. I, I don't want to make too big a deal out of it, but if you're the kind of player who is willing to open a button with, you know, virtually all of your range, which seven three suited begins to begins to contain that, then you do have to have the brakes yes. in certain spots. If you are raising the button at a super high frequency and you continuation bet every time you miss, your frequency is going to be absurdly high and clearly we're not playing against we're playing against world class players and they're going to pick up on this and they're going to know to make plays at you as you know we saw earlier right Adamo check raising queen high on a double on a paired king board was thinking that his opponent was check raising too much so it is you, you got to go with your game plan and you know if you know you're opening such frequency on the button you can't just relentlessly barrel off on every flop you miss because your opponents are just going to be able to pounce on that a bit. Welcome Tommy Kim, by the way. Ran featured table earnings courtesy of a couple of caches. Most recently out in North Cyprus, he failed to cash in three attempts, but did pick up a cash. At his first event in April in our Cyprus Warm Third in a 50K 6 max for over half a million. And then third in a 20K 8 max for 220K in Madrid. We raised 11,000. And it looks like it's going to be round two potentially here between Adamo and Mizzy as Sorrel with the. I'll six, tell you, that queen six of diamonds under the gun open, definitely not the, the in the standard spectrum. And Mizzy, I'm telling you, he's, he's aggressive. I just love, I'm really happy to see him here at the Trident Series. Like, you know, I haven't seen him play in a long time, and he just doesn't seem to have slowed down, pick him, picking up where he left off. No question about it. Masseuse versus Masseuse again. <laughs> that was Masseuse not going to be able to win this one. You know, it's funny, I, I, with a lot of other players, I would not even bother to say we could see round two, but with Mizzy in particular and Adamo, and I think Adamo knows Sorrel's reputation. He should. I think these guys are going to be like, okay, you want to dance? Let's go. Yeah. I can get to a flop light, and I can be savage. And a lot of meta. Just on event two. number one, yeah, we've got a lot of events and more history building up, so I like the start this one's going. Agreed. Of course, a reminder that you can follow along with not just this event, but all of our events across these two weeks from here in Hoi An, Vietnam, at the Hoi An Resort and Golf on the Triton Poker Plus app, which is exactly where I am looking at present to advise that we have a stack of over half a million out there in the field. One of our Brazilian competitors, Pedro Garagnani. And second behind him, Sam Greenwood, of course, who got a big jump start after taking most of Smilkovich's stack, who has raised it to 8-9 suited. Tommy Kim, flats queen jack, and now Adamo out of the big with ace king. Well, you play aggressive, so you get these opportunities to pick up these hands and get paid off more than usual. The thing is, Smilkovich is open is with a sh more shallow stack, so it's hard for him to continue. Tommy off suit Broadway is not ideal to call in the middle. Oh. Done. Yeah, the three bet. Too much for either player to. Sometimes you flat call those hands and then you're like a Domus queen. You're like, God, why did I flat this? I should have known this was coming. But, you know, you got to play your game plan. Don't like. Is that a first Sometimes or? things happen uh, just due to. Three levels. Random frequency. Haven't you seen, though, those situations where somebody goes down with the ship in terms of, I've got a game plan, I'm going to stick with it, and a guy just bludgeons and bludgeons and bludgeons them because they realize that they're not going to come off that game plan? Most definitely. <coughs> K 
King 10 suited now as Mizzy's V-Pip continues to go northbound. Ace Jack, you definitely see a mixed strategy between flat calling and three betting. I think you see a three bet a little bit more with the offsuit in this, but we are playing relatively deep stacks. He is going to three bet. Yeah, 13,500 says Devoris with the ace jack. One of those hands you don't mind just taking it down pre flop. If you do get called, plays decent. And Sorrell's got a not a bad hand to continue. We are playing from pretty strong positions, undergun versus hijack, so it's definitely going to cross Sorrell's mind on whether he wants to continue with King-10 at clubs here. King-10 is dominated against ace-kings, king-queens, but he can't shake him. Suited broadways. Yeah, he's going to be sticky as we play a 31,000 chip pot here. Cutter and second pair up against an open ender. Tricky spot. is the type of board that does hit the undergun open and call three bet range. Yeah, I would agree. But you do got a lot of stack to play for, and let's just say you bet and king drops off, your opponent's holding jack 10, you know, they just lose a ton of chips. Check. Gonna check, figures it hit smashes them too much. And that check back brings an eight for Devoris, who makes the queen high straight. Mizzy now drawing to a jack. <coughs> Question is, do we bet? Check. Protect or, no, he's gonna play cautious. Hmm. It was last night you played live, Mike. Yeah, what? That was last time you played live, what we say? January. Betty here. Oh, good I'll talk to you uh, Looks like you got a jack. <laughs> because, I don't know, I'm trying to think of how many jacks the hijack has in this range to three bet against undergun. Two jacks, jack 10. I mean, you just don't really want to give a free card off, especially when a flush draw rolls off. I wonder if Sorrel will continue with just king 10. Half pot. Yeah, he's being laid just about three to one. I haven't seen. I don't know. I don't know the Winning snap profit. Did you know? And then what do you get if you win it? Something, you get something. Good. I can't remember if you checked. Some of the leaderboards back in the day, this to be like, really good. Apologies for that audio hit there. Relatively unpleasant. Which is not how we describe Michael Soiza, who joins the party. Perhaps one of the most pleasant presences on the Triton Tour. One of the co-owners of the APT now. Mm. Along with his partner, Victor, as we pick this pot up, backdoor spades do show up after Mizzy called the 16K on the turn. 63,000 out there, spadeless, Mizzy does check. I think Mizzy was thinking, well, if I called his turn bet, it's very unlikely Divorce would fire again as a bluff. So he probably figures that 16K was all he would have to pay off on a bluff catch, which would make sense on a four straight in a three bet pot. People don't tend to put multiple barrels in there. Jack of Spades does help divorce in case he was up against some kind of... Oh, but he decides to check back. I think the logic is you don't think, like I said, you know, you don't think I'm going to put multiple barrels in the bluff. So just in case you've got like a king, queen of spades, you're not going to pay off of worse twice, but you definitely pay off worse once is probably what he was thinking. Right. And that's kind of more like... Like bottom end of the calling range is going to be another jack yeah. on the river there is perhaps what Daniel was thinking as he did check back there. And ends up collecting a healthy pot from Sorrell, who's off of his 250k stack and... We take a moment to remind you that our official Triton chairs come from Secret Lab, our official chair partner. Over two million users have a Secret Lab chair in their own homes, but our latest 
Titan Evo 2022 is the preferred chair of choice for many leading brands around the world. And we're also going to be giving one away. Stay tuned for more going? details on that. So you can be a part of that. From now until March 10th, simply type exclamation point giveaway in the chat. Meanwhile, back over at the feature table now. Okay. Yeah, about 50, yeah. yeah. 5,000. 10-3 suited, mm -hmm. Smirkovic. Oh. Not to be overlooked, by the way, the arrival of Justin Saliba as well to the left of your screen in C2 to the left of Michael Adamo. I'm calling that a newcomer. Am I right, Ollie? First time Triton participant, yeah. And uh, just a lovely young man. Had a chance to play uh, some mixed games with him in Las Vegas cash games. Not exactly his forte, I would say, but I appreciated <laughs> that he was out there splashing about with us. Just a humble, positive presence. I mean, you never know if it's your forte unless you try. Yeah, I suppose that's fair. Jack-10 suited, more than enough for Adamo to open. And he makes it 3,500 to go. Ten nine suited for Soiza playing under the Malaysian flag. Oh. Oh. This man Soiza, he he's just a crusher. I don't really know how to explain how he plays either. It's just, just wins. Not just that, but just really thoughtful about the game. Mm -hmm. Loves to talk about it and loves to constantly be studying, figuring out ways in which he can improve, really observing also how a lot of the established pros and he has navigate. Like no ego. Um, yeah. and I believe I read somewhere or watched some little interview somewhere he like recommended a book, you know, something about ego. Mm. It was like how it's you know a villain for you, basically, Can right? Can be, yeah. In order to perform at the best on bias. Adamo checking back, by the way. The Broadway gut shot on the Ace-Ace King board here. Yep. Uh, I believe that doesn't necessarily mean he won't be firing at some point. Check. You have to step away to use funds. By checking back two, you yeah, actually represent yeah, yeah, yeah. a king pretty credibly yeah. as well. And maybe you can do a delayed bet in case your opponent's holding those middle pocket pairs. Now he's going to come out firing. And that turn bet puts the 10 high into the muck. An infinite time. I mean, I can sell my time. Let's talk about Soiza, Randy. Almost four and a half million dollars in career Triton earnings. Ten caches, one title. You want to hazard a guess at when he picked up his first title? You've been around I, since the I've beginning. I was there. He, I know he beat Sam Greenwood, I'm pretty sure. Six max event. I want to say Jeju. How accurate am I? You were very accurate. Thank it you. was his very first Triton that event. That is right. It's almost like a curse. You <laughs> you win a title in your very first Triton event, and then you spend the rest of the time trying to get back to the <laughs> summit. We know it's obviously a little more difficult than... There have been a lot of players, their first time coming out, first event, they just win it. I, I remember Nick Shulman, I think he won his first event. It was a short deck event, I believe, too. Right, That was also in Jeju, was it not? I believe so. And there's definitely some others. Maybe carry cats, I'm not quite sure. I know he performed very well in a short deck as one of his first events. Carry can do it, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. cool. Devoris with the ace 10. Little limpsy. 
Mini call? The mini call. <laughs> well, you know, technically this blind structure on this level 1,500 would incentivize you to call the small blind even more. So he's like, well, my range is very wide. I might as well protect it a bit more of these ace axes. Which turn into aces on the ace king jack board. Tommy Kim with dust. I think he's going to start firing. Reason is. If Tommy had an ace in his hand, he'd raise it a decent frequency preflop after the preflop limp. So he figures his opponent's not going to bet the flop. No dice. Small pickup there for Dvoris. Dvoris, by the way, also a guy who's got some results on the Triton Tour to the tune of 6.35 million plus. You said Yet some. That was a lot of results. Yeah, that is a lot of results. You're right. 14 caches, but yet to pick up a title. Is that right? I know he's got a lot of second places, I feel. I'm counting them down now. He did have one second place recently in Madrid. That was in a short deck event. The one bullet for 150K. The buy-in, rather. Mm -hmm. And he had a, another short deck second place back in Montenegro in 2019, as well as a 500K Hong Kong dollar six max event. So that is three second places in total for Dvoris. Yeah. They, I really respect these no-limit players that come out that jump straight into the, the short deck. They, yeah. they know like to get the maximum experience and value out of these events is to play both the no limit and, and the short deck. And, you know, Devoris, Isaac Haxton, Jason Kuhn, these guys come to mind um, that are able to play both games and get the full experience. Devoris gonna pump up Queen 10 suited in position. Andy Kim, two nines. Awkward spot. Blinds are up, 120 big blinds. Yeah, playing 1,000, 2,000 now. It's tricky in the sense that, okay, if I call, my hand becomes face up. If I four bet and they call, now I've got this bloated pot with two nines. If I fold, it seems too weak. Really, just awkward. I think he's got this hunch that these pros are just so aggressive in general preflop that I can make a play here and take it down a lot. You think the four bets inbound? Yeah. 44,000 declared. Soyuz's King Jack shrivels right on up, and this Queen 10 suited on the button now gets to decide whether or not it wants to play for a bigger pot. Obviously, Dvoris doesn't really have any intel whatsoever on Andy Kim. We'll have the benefit of position. This is where Soyuz's ego book might come in handy as you begin to think, well, I'm the known pro. You're the unknown guy. Maybe I can bully you off of a hand or something to that effect. But well, Devor is not one that's guilty of letting ego get in the way, in my experience. He's got position of Queen 10 suited. He's also thinking of Queen 10 suited. If you've got Ace King, I've got two live cards. Um, one of which it. has hit this 10 <laughs> high board as he pips the nines now. Yeah, and for Andy Kim, this is a pretty good flop with two nines. <laughs> He's going to continuation bet 25K. And you know this small bet size on the flop doesn't necessarily define where your opponent's at. Uh, whereas if you use a larger sizing, you might put your opponent on, you know, ten uh, like jacks or something. But with a smaller bet, it probably does invite some floats, some floats of suited broadways, so like say like a queen jack suited occasionally, things like this. So maneuvering on the turn. It's going to be very tricky, especially on a four. Yeah, that's a very dry card. No flush draws are in there. And I think Andy Kim's got two options. He fires a small bet one more time, 
trying to kick out those floats. Or he checks to play pot control, which is also very tricky, too. Um, no ideal way to play this hand. Like I said, that small bet on a flop really does not define your opponent's range too well, especially if this is your first Triton series. It, no one's got history of each other, I assume. He decides to pump the brakes now, Randy. And now that he's done that, how comfortable is Dvoris that Queen-10 is the best hand? Pretty dang comfortable, right? He should be comfortable. He is thinking about, well, if I bet the turn to get jammed on by, say, an overpair, then I waste that free chance to clip that hand. Um, they definitely don't have much history, I'm pretty sure. And he doesn't know exactly where his opponent at. That's why he's checking. Mm -hmm. And that king is like, that's when Divorce is thinking, why didn't I just bet that turn? What do I do when a king rolls off? Yeah, because it does have a lot of ace kinginess to it, doesn't it? It does, yeah, uh, completely. Now, two nines does have a lot of, lot of showdown value. I'm trying to think. He does beat like ace queen. Eight seven suited if he wanted to play this way. I mean, as a play, I can't imagine Divorce doing anything but check. 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 Yeah, you could tell that he, he really wanted to value bet his hand, but just, I think. There's almost some value in checking back and knowing that he's going to get a look at Andy Kim's holding yeah. in that spot. And, of course, Kim will be disappointed to be shown a 10. You feel disrespected when you put a 4-bet in and then that queen-10 suited I, sticks in there? I feel a little disrespected. Yeah. Because it's a cold 4-bet, too. Yeah. But so I think divorce. it might have been because he opted for, like, a smaller 4-bet size yeah. that got... Dvoris to continue. Right, more more a function of the price being right than anything else as Dvoris takes down a healthy pot. Now sits atop the chip counts here at our feature table, 346,000. Distant behind the biggest stacks in the room. That 346 is currently good for somewhere in the top 15, but the biggest stack belongs to Viktor Kudinov at present. 563,000. I love me some Viktor Kudinov. Yeah, the fun Russian. to watch him play. Remember that he was on fire that last stop. He was calling against Fedor King High. Oh, 10 High, was it? Yeah, I can't remember. That was just a ridiculous hand. That does ring a bell. Yeah, it's like multiple barrels calling down 10 High on an overcarded board. Good. Yeah, only at Triton Series. Okay. Now we've got circles. Like show. You know, this, the nice thing about these, I've noticed that these Triton stops too, is these online players, you see them play on GG and all these big sites, you, we don't really know who they are. And, you know, now we see them come out to these stops, make a name for themselves, and get to clash with the, the names that we usually love to see. World class play all around. And on to the hand, though. Yeah, yeah Divorce putting some of the new biscuits to work. 6 4 suited. Connected. Suited. Tommy Kim says no. 15,000. Wagging his finger. Ace 10 suited. You know, Q down, he just, he just cold 4 bet those two nines early. He's like, am I really going to go for another cold 4 bet with these medium, reasonable hands? He's like, nah. I learned my lesson last time. I'm out. See how sticky Dvoris feels when he's sitting with six four of spades as opposed to queen ten of spades and out of position. It's going to continue here, and it's not not the best hand, but we, we've been playing deep stack so far. Thinks he can outmaneuver his opponent even out of position. Nothing. Nine eight deuce. Swing and a miss in both seats, to be fair. Two overs, backdoor diamond. It's a bit uncomfortable, board texture. Of course, pocket pairs would call pre-flop, probably check call here. But you know, if they're calling 6-4 suited, they're missing that flop. Still quite a reasonable frequency.
Is he thinking of something? No. I don't think it's the kind of board that rates to have connected with Tommy's range here as a three better pre. But nevertheless, Devoris with 6-4 of spades, just connecting with that deuce of spades and not much else. Yeah, you don't want to be connecting so with the wheel cards, you know? <laughs> wonder if that's Tommy's lucky Las Vegas hat, by the way. I think he brought it out is last time. Oh, is that right? As well. I'm not too experienced with this story. Is he's got a lucky hat. I mean, he claims. I'm just noticing it's the same hat that he had last time around. I would imagine he owns more than one. No, he's got one. But he's here at the Triton, and he's wearing the same Las Vegas hat he had on before. So. Okay. You know, I just tracked So the you're patterns. calling it a lucky hat. I, I thought he self-proclaimed that it was lucky. Never mind. Well, the opposite of lucky is everybody who's just drawn fade or holes at their table as I'm looking out in the field. Yeah, I guess this is uh, oh, sure, sure. seated with... I think KT, Mike Watson, uh, Alex Panacos, Bernard Punsri, and company. Yeah, he had a nice Cypress minutes. series, some deep runs. So he's back for more. Fedor, actually one of those Triton champions before we started to do the stream. Uh, one of those original events, I believe. I forget which one it was. 4,500 chip open from Soyuz's Queen Jack is flatted by Devoris's pocket threes. <coughs> Andy Kim knows the button is a good place from which to make money. And he's going to three bet it to 18.5. Now, the only other time that we saw him re raise pre flop at Showdown, he produced a pair of nines. And without question, that data point has been logged by the field. Well, Tavoris called out a position of 6-4 suited. Pocket threes might be enough for him to continue. It so is you made it tough, though, because yeah. Andy's got he has no oh, okay. a smaller stack than starting. So he wouldn't be getting as good of a price as normal. But let's go. Pocket yeah. threes was good earlier, wasn't it? Devoris wants to gamble. He's got the chips with which to do it. It is tricky to play this out of position. And especially when you're staring at three over cards. None of them have connected with Andy Kim's holding, however, as the threes are still in front, checking over to the South Korean. We've got some... Backdoor stuff going on. King egg suited. Sizable bet. 22K. And the threes nowhere to go. And some redemption, perhaps, for Andy Kim as he reclaims some of the chips lost to Devorah's earlier. By no stretch, all of them. But Yeah, I can tell Andy's definitely got some game with those kind of plays, King 8 suited. Yeah, uh, you know, it's... Yeah, cold 4 paying two nines. Just uh, probably some pro we just don't know about. Well, you know, Google is our friend. <laughs> Randy. Yeah, but if he's a cash game crusher, you'll have no idea. That's fair. If he's a mixed game crusher, you wouldn't know. I don't think it's a mixed game crusher, though, if I had to guess. You think you can just Google every answer, eh, Ollie? Please. Please. I sure hope so. I'm too lazy to have to actually research. <laughs> you can try ChatGPT. Maybe that'll... Oh, God, that's <laughs> the end of days. Don't get me on that. Suited and connected is Devoris here. I don't think he needed ChatGPT to tell him a 5K open is reasonable in this spot. Markovic, Queen Deuce suited. Has not been increasing his stack ever since his earlier run ups. Missed everywhere. Yeah, he's Jack 5. Doesn't hit either of these guys. Advantage Devoris in terms of range on this board. Usually, the smaller stack 
your opponent's playing the smaller bet size you continuation mm -hmm. bet. And DeForest sprinkles 4K out there and takes it down. Now, I have located a Hendon mob result for one Qdom Kim. Must be him. I will say that Kim is a very popular last name for those of Korean descent. I don't know how many Qdom Kims in particular who play poker we're dealing with. However, the results are modest at best, Randy. Take a look. Four digits. $4,680. But which event in was it? tournament earnings. Which event? What do you mean? You think he won it all in one event? <laughs> Man's been cobbling. A lot of online results. Uh, online results, okay. Yeah. On Hendon, Bob. Yeah. Live results are from 2019 prior to. So you're going to go up pandemic. to Andy later and, like, is this your Hendon Mob 4,680? Yeah. How are you in this event? No, I'm <laughs> well, if I did do the first part, I definitely wouldn't follow it up with the second one, Randy. How are you in this event? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm the commentator. I'm just here to investigate, you know, what bank did you rob? <laughs> Detective Ali. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the case. Adamo Ace 4. Picks up Soiza for the ride. Ooh. Oh, and what a lovely flop this is for Michael, Randy. A lot of connection. And Big Blind is perceived to hit this board more than the pre-flop Razor. That but said, Adamo does have middle pair. Does got middle pair. Soiza thinking about leading. And, so after this and it's mainly because he thinks that he's got a range advantage here. But Adamo, that, that fact is not lost on him, so this ace four could still very well feel like the best hand. Oh, he most definitely thinks he's got the best hand a lot. Doesn't have a blind double, but just has like zero, zero, zero. The lead is not a common play, so definitely Adamo is trying to see if call is the best play or potentially raise. He will call, try to move maneuver to turn. Yeah, it's a tricky one. That's does add an eight to Soiza's outs as the straight draw improves to two-way. With his lead on the flop, he probably expects Adamo to call the flop a lot with even ace high, ace king high, ace queen high. So I think Soiza will probably continue betting again, expecting a lot of fold equity. Yeah, there it is, 18k now. And this is... Not a good card for Adamo in the sense that, let's just say my opponent was leading the flop with some straight draw. Yeah. Well, seven, eight, five, now. seven. Yeah. And if his opponent's got a, a straight draw or flush draw, lots of equity against an ace four. Mm -hmm. You can see it there, 48%. The shy side of a coin flip. Pretty sick call. Wow. He's, he's tough to play against. You can't shake him on the flop and turn. You're not wrong. I'd be worried if I was Soiza right now, even though he's got, his opponent's got just a pair of fours, but it does seem like Adamo. He's got some pocket pair that's just not really l letting let it go. Yeah, from Soiza's seat, I could completely understand him perceiving this to be like a middling pocket pair. Plus, when you hold queen five spades, so you're, you're trying to bluff off some spades, while well, you're holding two spades, you're blocking those hands, so it's yeah. more likely your opponent's holding showdown. Yeah. And then you got a player like Adamo who, you know, doesn't like to get bluff off of hands here and there. It's it's tough to sell this story. He's going to... You know what? I, okay, well, hang on. We're going okay. to the time bank first and foremost. As Soiza mulls over his action here on the river with 60000 in the middle. Soiza's also self-aware. And I don't know about you, Randy, but I get the sense that most players think Soiza's pretty snug. That he's not out there three-barreling light. And leveraging that... He goes full pot here on the river. And this, to me, starts to look very credible if I'm sitting on the ace four. It is very credible. Um, now, OK, so what's important in his hand for Adamo is that flop lead. That changes ranges a lot. Uh, so he's going to be like, OK, if you had a flush draw, would you lead the flop? Would you maybe go for check call or check raise? Um, 5x. Oh, would you Oh, time bank chimps coming in. 
This is a polarizing bet when you see the pot size bet. So Adamo might be thinking, if you had a 7x, a 9x, would you really full pot size bet? No, you probably would bet less. So that makes the ace four want to call a bit more. Don't block those flush draws. Right? Yeah, the That's lack important. of a spade in Adamo's hand, I think, is really to, to Soyuz's detriment here. Yeah, but it, it's tough. Mm, you got a four, so you block a little bit of sets. It's important a little bit. One more time bank being used here, and boy, Soyuz is in the blender a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just queen high. He knows it's no good. So Adamo might be thinking, okay, if I had a pair, would you really try to bluff me off of it? Do you think I would fold, like, 8-7 or, like, A-6? Do you think I'll fold, like, pocket 8s for this sizing? These are things that will cross your mind. Man, if he can make this call, it'd be so sick. Oh, so wait. he burned three time banks. It's 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 not a standard play where you see someone lead the flop, lead the turn, and pot size the river on this board texture. I wouldn't mind to look at Soiza right now just to see the view from Adamo's seat. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Yeah. There you go, boys. Thanks for that. Oh, he's not shaking. He's composed. You win. You oh win. my gosh, he found the call. What a play and that is a move. statement call. Nice Don't call. bluff me. Mighty. Nice call, nice call. What, what was the action? Lead, lead, lead. You, you dunk? Yeah. Bet, bet, bet. Bet, bet, bet. Wow. Bet, bet, bet. That's world class. Pot. Sorry? It was three bet pot? No. Yeah, yeah. Ace call. My turn. You grew no good. By the way, note, note the class on Soiza, That's by the, the way. Obviously, the wound is fresh. Send it for him, you know, it's too Nevertheless, easy. <laughs> willing to engage Andy okay, Kim. Maybe look bad, snap well. That's In conversation, yeah. you know, a lot of people will be like, really, bro? Can you maybe leave me close, alone? Close, I just close, got, close, you know, I I owned. <laughs> would be <laughs> understandable. <laughs> yeah. So you weren't paying attention. You want me to retell the story right. how I lost 90,000 right. chips? You know, did you not have a, a good enough seat to the show? <laughs> You're right there. But uh, I think that really is just consistent with the character that we've come to to see from Michael Soiza there, really trying to be an ambassador to the game at all times. and Win some, lose some. Always a positive attitude, always a warm smile. Wow, I can't Wait. believe you called that one. I can. I mean, I, I know I it's can. possible, it's, but... Dude, it's Come on, how many times have we seen Adamo do it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just impressive reads. like 200. And that's the thing. You, you come to these tournaments with your game plan. is like, I'm not going to let the big sizes scare me away. It's If I think my opponent's bluffing, based on the actions I've seen, I'm going to make that call. And he did it. It's not personal. It's just business. Yeah. <laughs> Andy came with pocket threes. Now Adamo mulling over the 8-9 suit. It puts it into the muck. Mm. I'm, you know, I'm surprised. surprised by that. Yeah. Especially table image boost coming from that big call he just made. You know, you can kind of flex a little bit. A lot of guys do, too. They're like, all right. Yeah, feeling swaggy. Mm -hmm. I was a bit surprised. guess he didn't like the position he was sitting in and his opponent raising. Maybe he just didn't finish collecting his chips. It's like, all right, I'll be back. Stacking them. No takers. Nope. Round and round we go here in event number one of the Triton Super High Roller Series here in Hoi An, Vietnam. It is the GG Super Millions Live event. 25K buy-in. Doesn't want to call the 8-9 of hearts, but is willing to open the 6-4 of clubs, Randy, and I think that I think a lot of times as um, people, generally people like to be the aggressor rather than yeah. the defender because you can kind of control and dictate the action mm -hmm. better. Whereas 
as a defender, it's kind of more guessing what your opponent's frequencies are and how to proceed. It's it's definitely more uncomfortable. No question. You pick and choose your fights. This is how you maneuver throughout these well, high no, stakes tournaments. It's also certain mm -hmm. hands that look great in terms of being an opener mm -hmm. aren't as great when you're calling. You know what I mean? But granted, when you're calling, oftentimes you're in position, so you have that benefit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess, uh, you know, another thing is when you're calling, your range is perceived to be capped, so you don't have those big pocket pairs, those big broadways. Your hand is more defined, whereas if you're raising, well, your, your range can now include these big premium hands, so that, that changes how flops and turns are played. And, you know, we're going to be seeing these kind of if you're new to the game, I'd be like, that's odd. Why would he opt to put in chips with the weaker hand? Um, but it's very important to look at these positions and whether who's the aggressor or not to determine what you think is the best action. Ace 10 off suit, getting all the way around to Andy Kim's big, and the 7-4 goes into the muck, so raise and take it for the German, who was down to, I think it was 11,000 at one point. 11,000, and he lost 2,000 raise folding off of that <laughs> yeah, stack, I so he was down to 9. No way, I thought he had 13 when he raise folded, <laughs> and <laughs> then went down to 11. Did he really go down to 9? He was down to 8, I believe. Oh, he was man. definitely in single, well, yeah, in, in thousand four digits. digits. No, four no, digits, yeah. whatever you call it, because I remember Sorrell popping up to five digits. Did you come from Australia? Um... Like, it's not that far. Yeah. Where'd you come from? Uh, Paris. Oh, uh, you already did the whole thing? Yeah, yeah. Better than Vegas, though, so. It was nice to at least come, like, yeah, halfway yeah. and then. Saliba having an exchange there with Adamo. Yeah, Apparently, he, along with many of the players who joined us here, had pit stopped at the EPT in Paris prior to coming out for the Triton Poker Series. They're just a non-stop grind. I believe I talked to Adamo. He said he skipped that stop. Yeah, he did. He came yeah. straight from Australia, right? Yeah, just says it's... He, he actually said, I don't know how some of these guys do it, where they play literally every single stop. They play online all the time, like all the time. So, you know, he needs his cool-down moments to kind of have that personal life to kind of you know hang out with friends, he was saying. You know, didn't like being away from them all the time. Again, one of the other elements as we see Soiza opening to 4,000, running into these two jacks in the small blind for Andy Kim, who will three bet it to 18,000. One of the other things that kind of causes you to look at Adamo and think, why is beyond his ears? More of like a, a veteran mindset. Uh, He's more wise than you. Oh, the yeah, no, I'm, you know? <laughs> a, I'm a complete degenerate, uh, Randy. You know this. I, I had a lot of respect for you. But then as we hung out more, just start to dwindle and diminish. Why did you have a lot of respect for me to start with is the weird question. Now that is odd. Yeah, people, you spoke just highly, people spoke highly of your commentary, and I was like, oh, this guy must be full world class. No, I just realized it's not true. It's all bluff. It's just a decent out. bluff, though. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm sure Adama would call, but, you know. Adama <laughs> would call. Right. Oh, I just need high yeah. card. <laughs> high card jack. Their PT, our very own Henry Kilbane, the third member of our broadcast booth, by the way, I understand, was out hmm. at the most recent APT stop doing some commentary and helping the team out there. Yeah, this guy loves poker. What do we got here? Mark card or? Not certain. Oh, you gave him the same card? I think card? I give you back the card that I... Please? I expose a card when you give it. Yeah, and then I should have given another card. But I think I give back the card that I put on the deck, so it should be a use of points. So say that one more time. You tell the card. Yeah, I, I expose a card when you give it. Yeah, and then I should have given back one card more. Okay, yeah. but I think as a mistake, I give back the use of card that I expose. Just to be sure that this is the use of card. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a very secure way of checking it. <laughs> 
Yeah, you Sorry, guys. Yeah, it's fine. And he's gonna be the first. So what's the well, card can, that's sorry. So can you flip it again? Can you, yeah, can you flip it again? You wanna? Yeah. This? Yeah. Yeah. Got it. No worries. So this is like magic trick? Magic <laughs> trick. <laughs> 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 Now make it disappear. Change it. Ace tray in the cutoff for Tommy. That, that, that guy, the way he peeled. Yeah, exactly. He's on the most cards. special way. Yeah. 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 It was like JNT cool. looks like yeah. at his cards. He's just like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, not the most secure way of cooking, I guess. Just making sure it wasn't hard deuce, right? These are hearts, ah, here. We don't want to give Michael a deuce. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, he didn't see, I'm sorry, I think looking at it very seriously, so it could have just been like a three of clubs or something. Salido on the button here. I started learning how to play tennis. With a big blind. Nice. Was. A big blind, I'm sorry. Forgive me, it was nine six. Hasn't played a hand yet. Yeah, th there's a place not too far away from here. That's no gear with me at all. Y you can rent it. Oh, yeah? It, it only costs a few hundred thousand. You gonna play? I don't know. I'm not I'll, that good. I'll, I'll I'm just like I'll, I'll see. Yeah, I'll see see what the schedule here is like. Sure. I mean, but I know I'm really what the schedule is like. It's like. like yes, I do. How much you I think. So he's looking for a tennis date potentially with divorce. <laughs> I'm not sure how much it is. Likes like to play. Yeah. Well, hundred k is forty bucks. Hundred k is forty bucks. Okay, gotcha. No, I think it's four dollars. Four dollars. Four. Twenty-three thousand to one. You yeah, so, yeah. sorry, a million is uh, forty dollars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So sounds like a lot of money. <laughs> Give me a million. <laughs> Try to scare me. Nice, yeah. Okay, thank you. Mikey, was she strong? Four. Yeah, forty-five. Wait, four thousand five hundred. Okay, you know, we got like oh, several okay. Korean players at this. Feature table and just all of a sudden a lot of Excuse Korean me. chat just popping up. Okay. Are you their guys on? Uh, can I, get I like that. After a break? Uh, just it is an international affair, no question about that. Yeah. Poker is very popular in Korea. Obviously, we touched on Bertrand Grosfellier, Elki, calling Seoul home right now. GG Poker with a big footprint there as well. As we see Adamo picking on this Andy Kim open with 8 6 suited. Yeah. Larger clubs go into the muck. Yeah, come back. No, 56. Like, um, we touched up about being aggressor or defender. As you can see, I, I'm assuming they're gonna oh, switch the TV if he opted right. to play so. in position, 40. he kind of like taking an aggressive <laughs> approach with a hand like this, which isn't uh, that great of a hand. Um, whereas he hold a 9-8 suited. So I imagine if he was gonna play a 9-8 suited, he probably was gonna 3-bet in that spot. So the thing is, you can order drinks and food at the table. Yeah. For a guy like Adamo, yeah, they bring the table here. when you show up at oh, Showdown yeah. you know in 3-bet pots with those kinds of holdings, you become so much more me. difficult kind of to play against. Because it, players like can't simply assign the rich you know, part of the to on, all of your 3-bets. It's not papaya. And they have to some respect kind of looks like a variation of guava, yeah. I guess. boards like that, that would otherwise hard. look like can be pretty hard, you could though. be targeted but by like, other players what about because they know right. you haven't connected. Yeah. Whereas a hand like, you know, that 4-5-7 comes off and you just got to wonder, does he have the 8-6 this time? Because I remember seeing him show that hand down in a 3-bet spot. It's definitely, when people play these wider ranges, it's trickier to put them on the hand. Yeah, and the seeds are so exactly what you can see on the flip the side is yeah, that the they do have a little like weaker range. Mm -hmm. okay, okay. Uh, but you know, there's pros and cons of this game. It's about the timing on when but to, is, is to like, execute these yeah. three bets, okay. light Sometimes or not. Sometimes it has no taste. Like, it's not a sweet oh, one. Because okay. yeah. like this one's just like hard and a little sour. I don't know yeah. if it's like... It could be guava. Yeah. Some, some guava is like that. Oh, it's not fruit. It's not dragon fruit. On the fruit conversation from earlier, Dvoris, who was open uh, with ace-10 to 4,500 oh. earlier. So what do we think the fruit is? It's guava, I think. It was guava? I well, I, that's what he, he thinks it is. He didn't confirm it, though. The guava's usually sweet, as we see. He's Smokovic. Passion fruit, I think. Passion fruit's sweet. It's tart, I guess. Yeah, it's tart. Oh, it's good. Can't be bad. Passion fruit's far from flavorless. Yeah, sure. We see the German. <laughs> it's dragon fruit for sure. Jam and take dragon fruit, really. The way I described it earlier... I mean, the fruit spreads at breakfast here are beautiful. But I've had dragon fruit, also known as patea, 
on many occasions, it is so pretty on the shelf. It's even pretty when you cut into it. Where it fails <laughs> is <laughs> fails. on the taste department. I described it as, you know, black is the absence of color. Dragon fruit is the absence of flavor. It is just woefully unsweet. It looks like something that should just blast your tongue right. with flavor, sugar, something. And it tastes like... And the name is just so legendary, right? Like a Dragon microfiber fruit. cloth. It's like... Microfiber it just cloth. <laughs> it's, it's got poppy seed look, too. You think maybe... It just... Anyway. I digress. Plenty of flavor on this ace queen of spades for Andy Kim, who proceeds undeterred, despite really not being shown a lot of respect by any of the table. As of right now, it does seem that no one is respect has been respecting him as much. Maybe the new guy, people like to maybe three bend a little bit more. Uh, we'll see if he makes some adjustments to it. Yeah. Kind of testing your man out a little bit, see what he's made of. I mean, I've seen them call three bets against him. And like weaker holdings than expected. Mm -hmm. Devoris defended, but Jack Deuce suited. Not flush draw. Yeah, and the two overs for Kim, who checks back. Interesting. And I wonder whether or not this is a bit of an adjustment that Kim is making to the fact that he feels as though players have been floating and doing things, you know, kind of yeah. out of the ordinary against him, and here he can play pot control and at bare minimum call the turn and then maybe show up with a lot more hand than he's supposed to on the river. Definitely comes to his mind. You know, it is that board that's supposed to smash that big blind. And, you know, Divorce actually kind of did a little tank check on the flop. Maybe that kind of made him think, am I getting check raised here? I don't want to play a bloated pot again. So went delayed. Worked out. Here's a preview of our next featured table, which contains Thomas Mulocker, one of the GG Poker online qualifiers, as well as Tim Adams, another member of the Canadian contingent. Looks like Ibinger there on his feet, and Badziakuski as well. So that'll be a, a nice treat on the back end of the break, which is not long from now. Some new faces. Is. Yeah, we'll keep the deck shuffled as we work our way through the early stages of day one. Meanwhile, back over at the current feature table. Smilkovich with 10-9, min raise open. Boris with the Queen Jack mulling it over, and he will make the call. Dusty Queen Trey for Tommy. Six to one, not enough. To the flop we go, heads up. And Devoris binks a queen high spade draw along with top pair, just a gutty for Smilkovich. He needs to try to deduce what kind of range flats a small blind. Figures it's enough that would continue to ace, though. Shakes things up a bit. It wouldn't surprise me if Smilkovich stabs the ace, because for divorce to flat the small blind against a 25 big blind stack, Probably means he'd be three betting ace, good aces a lot. We'll check through. Hits the straight. Oh my goodness, the eight of hearts from outer space just giving Smilkovich the jack high straight. And now, given that action on the turn, do you think Dvoris goes for value? He might go for a little blocker value. Wouldn't be betting too big. Well, there's 12K in there. Three well, K. Yeah. Oh no. 8K. More eight K. Sorry. Two thirds pot. And look at Smilkovich is just going to double check and make sure that he 
indeed added some gin to the tonic. It is going to be kind of odd when he raises. It's like Dwarves is like, well, you check the flop, you check the turn of this stack size, and all of a sudden you're just going to raise? Not too many people kind of take this line as a bluff. You think set of eights, maybe? It would make the most sense. Yeah. 10-9 um, fires a flop at decent frequency, too, right? And Dvoris is going to just be confused. Sure is. But he also might be thinking, who takes this line as a bluff with this stack size? Probably not too many people. I know everyone's capable, but... Just not something you see too often. Yeah, he's just like, I guess you got it. Yeah, take it, buddy. So do we move the well, chips or do no. we just leave it here? They do that. Smilkovich definitely on the uptick as he is working his way Take back bag, towards though. starting stack after being down to sub 10K in the very early going. A look at the chip counts here at this feature table, which will be replaced as the players head to a break. Up in over 400,000 is the Aussie, Michael Adamo, followed by Devoris and Tommy Kim. Three levels in the books, Randy, as we welcome you to our broadcast booth here in Hoi An, Ali Najad, alongside Nano Noko, Randy Liu. And for me, Randy, the story in that first frame of play that we bore witness to was really the treatment that we might come to expect the veteran Triton participants issuing toward the newcomers is there was no shortage of disrespect, let's call it, to Andy Kim in terms of uh, on the felt. Yeah, and, you know, we saw multiple different players just kind of three-betting him, uh, taking four bet pots of queen 10 suited, right. uh, taking a stab at him, and you know, kind of see if he's able to respond appropriately so that they can't make these kind of plays back at him. And you know, it, it is, some people do like to try to test the waters with the new players, and sometimes it, it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but seeing how Andy Kim's been playing, uh, I think he plays just fine. You know, he seems like a pro that we just, don't know too yeah. much about, and I think he's. If they underestimate him, they're going to get punished eventually. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't think that the, it really was deserved. It wasn't the product of anything that he had done in terms of showdown. Uh, but curious as to how things are shaping up for the other newcomers here in this GG Super Millions event number one as we kick things off from here in Hoi An, Vietnam. Randy and I will step aside along with the players. Roughly 15 minutes. We'll take you to some highlights and then we'll be right back. Keep it close here as the Triton Super High Roller Series in Hoi An continues. GG Poker, the biggest poker site. Best poker GG site. Poker. Why? The most Someone ambitious. This is a crazy. Poker. It's a doom.
Start your journey towards becoming a winning poker player today with the Tournament Masterclass. I designed a blueprint that has helped me and countless students to become consistent winning players in poker. We simplify and teach concepts that work. Preflop, postflop, ICM preflop and postflop, final tables, multi-way, a whole population analysis, a GTO bible and many play and explain live footage showcasing all the concepts and exploits taught in the term masterclass. Don't waste any more time on complex strategies that simply don't work and join the term masterclass and start winning in poker whether it's online or live poker. GG Poker, the biggest poker site. Best poker GG site. Poker. Why? The most Someone ambitious. Is this is a crazy. It's a doom. Oh, baby!
Start your journey towards becoming a winning poker player today with the Tournament Masterclass. I designed a blueprint that has helped me and countless students to become consistent winning players in poker. We simplify and teach concepts that work. Preflop, postflop, ICM preflop and postflop, final tables, multi-way, a whole population analysis, a GTO bible and many play and explain live footage showcasing all the concepts and exploits taught in the term masterclass. Don't waste any more time on complex strategies that simply don't work and join the term masterclass and start winning in poker whether it's online or live poker. And welcome back inside the broadcast booth from the beautiful Hoi An Resort and Golf here in Hoi An, Vietnam. I'll lean a shot alongside Randy Liu with continuing coverage of event number one of this Triton Super High Roller Series. It is the 25K GG Super Millions Live event. And uh, we do have a new feature table on our hands. Let's dive right into it as we take the Triton Poker Plus app. We do find the likes of four-time Triton champion Makita Badziakuski, who will bring 288000 to the party. Uh, bear with us on the uh, the Triton Poker Plus app. Also here, by the way, Randy, and we touched on this earlier, online qualifier from Austria, Thomas Mulocker. A lot of people qualifying from GG10 in total. He is going to have 288,000 himself. And then familiar faces to the Triton streets in Tim Adams and Steve O'Dwyer. And then, of course, we have the likes of Andy Kim, who was at the feature table earlier. And then the guy who I am very eager to watch right now as someone I don't know anything about, Michael Rocco, the American. He is going to take his seat with 396,000 in chips. Six players, a uh, relatively interesting collection, I would say. And perhaps that theme that we touched on earlier of disrespect toward the newcomers is something we'll bear witness to. What's your guess? 
I definitely think that's uh, reasonable. I think a lot of guys won't know um, who the Korean player is and maybe try to take a stab at him, and he'll probably make a stance and take some chips from him. But, you know, Michael Rocco is someone I've never seen play poker, mm -hmm. but I've read hand mm -hmm. histories of him, and he seems to always get really far into tournament, make some crazy plays, got a very unique style. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a treat to watch. No question about it. As we zoom out toward the rest of the field, currently 78 of 83 entries remaining. Blinds at 1,000, 2,500 with a 2,500 ante. Victor Kudinov, the Russian, 680,000 in front of him, good for the overall chip lead. Monika Zukowicz playing under what I believe is the Polish flag, 540,000 in front of her. Sam Greenwood, who obviously all but showered uh, Smilkovich at our, our first featured table, sitting in third with 472,500. Fourth place, Pedro Garignani, 435,000. He was the chip leader once upon a time. And we will get you right back out to the action now at our brand new feature table in just moments. Obviously, our thanks to all of you who are joining us, whether it's on YouTube, on Twitch, or on the Triton Poker Plus app. Definitely be sure, if it's on YouTube, to like and subscribe as we continue to effort to bring you the best in poker content. So let's get right back out there. Here we are. Our first glimpse now at the players making their way over there. It looks like uh, Tim Adams loading up on some potassium. Going to the banana streets. <laughs> Got to keep that energy level up. There's O'Dwyer, consummate professional. Bads as well. As you see the way their chip counts stack up. Now, I was under the impression it was Andy Kim, Q Dom Kim. In fact, it is Ten Kim who is our sixth player over here. So my apologies, a bit of presumption. On my part, 213,500, good for 85 bigs at present. And those chip counts are brought to you by Poker Stake. The official staking partner of Triton, the ultimate platform for staking and professional poker players around the globe. No fees on purchases, by the way. Check it out at <laughs> pokerstake.com. Meanwhile, O'Dwyer with pocket eights. Starts the party, Rocco flats with the two fives. Back around to the big of Tim Adams. Not the most beautiful hand in the big line, three ways. It's what's on the inside that counts, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> that one's not even pretty on the inside, jack seven no. offsuit. You go play your jack seven, yeah. Dolly. Let's we'll see how you fare. No, thank you. Ace, seven, deuce. As the Call. two pocket pairs <laughs> collide. So it is cutoff versus dealer button. Going to play cautious with two eights. Kind of makes you want to take a free card of two fives. Action goes check, check. Yet another over card rolls off for both players. Usually when you take the passive line of eights on this flop, you're probably going to continue to take that passive line, hoping to get the showdown. Two fives got a little bit of showdown still, but not much. The thing is, can he get a better hand to fold? Probably not, so let's just keep checking. Three overs. Odwar probably going to comfortably check this. Be happy to shut on two eights. I wonder if Rocco considers turning his two fives into a bluff. Nope. It shuts it all the way down. Keep it simple, straightforward. Yeah, maybe if it wasn't a queen and a king. I don't know, but perhaps Odwar pursues value. Nevertheless, Rocco does check back and send the first pot of this new feature table over to Steve O'Dwyer, who plays under the Irish flag. O'Dwyer. Oh, I think he's got a Triton title. Tell me. 3.2 million in career tournament earnings in Triton, and indeed, seven caches and one title. You want to guess when that title took place? Oh, man. That was in Montenegro. It was. 2019 in a turbo no limit hold'em event at 250K where he picked up three and a half million Hong Kong dollars. 
And Michael Rocco, by the way, in turning to the Hendon mob for some intel, has almost 3.6 million in career earnings. His best live cash, 540,000 plus. And was over in Paris, apparently, as Had well as at the PCA. Had a deep run in something, right? In, in prior Paris. to this. Some final tables. 84th and 103rd are the two <laughs> results I'm seeing. So I don't know what your definition of deep is. It was a 100,000-man tournament, you know? I'll tell you what. You may be thinking of the WPT World Championship at the win in December yes. where he finished ninth. Yeah. And that was good for 429K. So obviously the 540K figure was not his high water mark as we see Greenwood opening. Pocket threes is how he ended up with most of his chips. Randy and I have just received our first delivery of Vietnamese iced coffee. We're going to be having a lot of these this trip in pho. I'll tell you, yeah, pho and iced coffee are definitely going to be the overdoses of choice. I do want to go on record as saying while the environmentalism associated with the paper straw movement in the U.S., Vegas in particular, of late, is to be smiled upon, here in Vietnam they have doubled down as the gauge of plastic <laughs> being used for these straws. You can't bend these things. I mean, this this is, you could use this as rebar. <laughs> this is like a, a glass boba straw. Delicious. Wow, you're right, I can't bend it. I hurt myself, let's not do that. Mm. You'll know how much coffee we've had based on how fast we're talking from this point forward as we see Greenwood doing a little speeding of his own. 10-8 suited, opens to 5,500, got through with the threes, but now Bads plays back, understandably, with the ace king of clubs to 19,000. There is your first look at 10 Kim. Boy, his sponsors made sure to take advantage <laughs> of his presence in this event, didn't they? Yeah. Not a lot of real estate left. Oh. And Greenwood showing respect to the highly decorated Nikita Badziakuski. Uh, the button is now. Oh. That man is uh, one of the original high stake, no limit cash game players. Mm -hmm. Transitioned early into those tournaments like most of them does and absolutely crushed. And mm -hmm. he was at the very first uh, Triton it? stop in uh, in Montenegro and just started crushing. Oh, he had back-to-back -back wins in No Limit Main Event Triton, I'm pretty sure. So that's where he got all those winnings from. He's just tough. He's so solid, and he knows when to make his well-timed moves. He's not afraid of big plays. It's just good. I'm just going to use one word, good. Yeah, I mean, he's even better when you deal him stuff like ace-king and ace-queen suited as he opens to 5,500 here. Yeah, just sound, solid fundamentally, really unflappable. I don't think I can recall too many occasions, maybe one or two, where he's felt flustered. And when I say flustered, it's just been a real cuspy kind of situation where he could literally reach into his pocket and flip a coin to make a decision on the mm -hmm. river. Yeah. Uh, he's definitely got conviction in his plays. Mm -hmm. And he is not afraid to rebuy pretty much maximum yeah. in any, both short deck and no limit hold'em. Takes this one down again. And that conviction that you speak of, Randy, it really, it isn't the product just of like personality. It's the product of a tremendous number of hours being spent out there honing your game, putting situations. Table, huh? It is long. He has a uh, long reach. Into the solvers. Mm -hmm. and committing he's, yourself to. He's a he's one of those guys where like you know most players are like okay I've got a pretty good understanding how to play this spot let's just say to a ninety five percent accuracy. He's the type of guys like no I want that ninety six that ninety seven yeah, yeah. I want to be perfect. Yeah. So like don't give me a, a rough range. Give me the exact range I should be maneuvering at at what frequency. And I, I remember he would 
really use randomizer even in live play. So he might like look at the tournament clock mm -hmm. or his watch, yep. and you know, obviously he's got his way of adjusting right. how to do so. So it's like you're playing a live solver. It's tough. Yeah, that's a fair way to describe him. Here he is in his third straight pot with at least the ten of diamonds. Tim Adams with a pretty one. Yeah, Adams, another cash game player, and I remember, like when I, during my time when I played a lot of volume, he was playing a lot of volume over on full tilt. Was the biggest winner over there with the high volume and you know transition to high stakes cash games. Just like Makita, started playing the tournaments around the same time, and same style, just like super solid, super consistent. Um, Super conviction in trouble to play. here. Uh, <laughs> two, has, <laughs> I'm all hyping him up. This yeah. guy's sitting with two aces behind him, Thomas Mulocker. Interesting because, <clears throat> pardon me, he shares a 10 with Bad Ziakuski here. 50, but of course, has run into Mulocker's aces, oh. which four bet to 50,000. Yeah, he's. Oh. You can see the kind of a, <coughs> bit of a sizing difference. Right? Earlier, when someone four bet the. Two nines, he made like 44k, but this is like 50k for Mule Locker. A difference in sizing from season veteran. A 10 I suited, decent hand to take a 4 bet with, but you will be playing out of position. Stacks are a little bit more shallow. Yeah, if this had come from the small blind of Mule Locker, obviously there'd be some more comfort. You want to call the 4 bets more against the guy who you were three bet against because usually they're the one when it's a cold four yeah, bet yeah. that guy put in zero chips to begin with so his four bet range is tighter mm. than say you know cut off open i three bet in the button back to cut off that guy makes a play a bit more in four bets so that's a very good fold there with 10 see. well a reminder that gg poker and club gg are title sponsor here at the triton Super High Roller Series are running their own qualifiers and daily free rolls. Keep watching for more details, and you know where to go. GG Poker Online. You're right about this backdrop. It's just mesmerizing. You just can't stop Isn't looking it? at it. Yeah. Use the code Triton2023, by the way, at gg.gl slash Triton for our new player's sign-up bonus offer. Okay, let me know what you... Uh, Kings. Deck runs rich. One hand removed from the aces. Two red cowboys popping up for 10 Kim. It makes it 6,000 to go. Yeah, I think we are just going to try to do like... New blood on new blood action coming. Jack 10. Both Triton newcomers and fluff nothing for Jack 10. Fortunately for Rocco. Rocco, what are you thinking? It's like he wants to make a play at the newcomer. We were talking <laughs> right. about this, weren't we? Well, look, he's obviously a newcomer to Triton himself, but he's not a newcomer to these sorts of situations. He's got over three and a half million in earn, but he's looking at a player like Ten Kim and regarding him as the unknown commodity. Yeah, most definitely. Keep it controlled, call. Yeah. And do some bets, pot control bit. I, I like this decision, by the way, from you Ten know, Kim. Yeah. I feel like now the queen pairs on the turn. This strikes me as the kind of card that very much could allow Rocco to continue. Check raise on the flop oftentimes could be the product of holding top pair. The tricky part, though, is for your opponent to bet call the flop, they have a queen a lot, so. If you fire a turn, a lot of times you're just kind of burning chips because you 
you might be like, well, maybe I can make like eights, nines, and tens fold. But a lot of times, those hands just check back to flop. So you need to think about what the hands you might be trying to move off of or get value from, and what they would do to kind of make the optimal decision. Does check through on the turn rather quickly. So the quick check back from Ten Kim might make think Rocco I make a play. Maybe he's thinking, what if you had a queen? Would you check back so quickly on the turn? It's crossing his mind. Oh, done. Took his one shot at him. And once Ten Kim decided to hang in there, Rocco determined that that hand was one that was real. As Kim goes for value on the river there with the two kings, understandably. Does not get paid off. I love to see that kind of aggression, by the way, Randy. Sometimes there's like this unbridled, reckless aggression where you check raise and then you just barrel, barrel, barrel. Doesn't matter what the run out is, how it changes the board, doesn't matter. You know, you're not updating things as you yep. go on. But once he got called after he check raised that particular board texture, he just made the decision that, barring busted clubs, mm -hmm. there's just not a lot that I'm going to be able to get through this guy, with this guy. You know, I, I wanted to win it on the flop. It didn't work. Okay, I'm done. I've got jack high. I've got no added equity on the turn. Yeah, and controlled aggression is what is was amazing and uncomfortable to play against. I, I never yeah. it's like, is he slowing down this time? Is, yeah. he, is he keeping it up? And that's when the mind games come in. And, you know, that, that's the beauty of poker. And what's fun is trying to guessing what your opponent's doing at what frequency, how to counter. Are they opening Jack Do suited on the button today? Yes, they are. <laughs> Not a standard open, I would say. And a warm welcome to Triton first-timer Mike Takayama playing under the Philippine flag. In the big blind there, concedes to Greenwood. I feel that is our first Philippine player at a Triton stop. You think so? I think so. Who's officially playing under the Philippine flag? Yeah. You might be right. Usually, right? I know that this particular stop, we certainly have broadened our horizons. Yes. You know, with each successive stop, I think players go back to their host nations, they go back to their local card rooms. You know, obviously, as you can tell in the chat, for those that are streaming us on Twitch or on YouTube, a lot of the local, you know, like fan favorites are like being observed. Mm -hmm. And it kind of creates yeah, an aspirational vibe. Should and a lot of players <laughs> are like, okay, I've yeah. sold a package. Let me go out here yeah. and let me try my for luck, sure, try my hand, especially as we've got these more approachable buy-in levels. Most definitely. And we love to see it. And we've seen so many different Korean players already, and there's mm -hmm. more new players that we haven't seen. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's really nice to see. Lockdowns were pretty dramatic in, in certain parts of the world, mm. uh, you know, here in Asia in particular. And I think uh, there was a lot of kind of pent-up demand. You know, once, once these lockdowns and these travel restrictions came down, you're starting to see a lot of players. Yeah. Looking to make up for lost time. They're probably like, this. you're bringing a Triton stop here? Yeah, sign us up. We yeah. already booked our tickets. They're like, well, if you're not going to come to Jeju, <laughs> we'll come to you. <coughs> King Jack suited the party starter, picked up both Greenwood and Badsy Akuski, who have little suited connectors, and there is some texture for you. A gut shot Broadway draw for the preflop Razor 10 Kim, but it is aces up and the club draw, the real story on this ace 10 deuce board. So the preflop raises it up to check. Greenwood of two clubs. Does he want to stab? He might be thinking 10 Kim's check doesn't look like an ace. Maybe I can just steal it. The big blind calls very wide anyways. Small bet. You know, the small bet kind of lets you, if you get check raised, still continue if you're flush draw. Top and bottom. It's just a modest interested parties mm -hmm. that are along for the ride. Not allowing anything silly to roll off on the turn. The call here allows 
a pre-flop raise would have put in some more chips with cool. some weaker holdings, like this King Jack. Had he check raised, those hands be out. Now it's a pair of jacks for Ten Kim, as he is the most improved on the turn. Greenwood also does pick up a gut shot to go with the flush draw. Yeah, disguise nine. Obviously, this texture is deteriorating for Batsyakuski. Double flush draw, Broadway possible. It's hard to fire again for Greenwood because he has to fire into two opponents. He can definitely see someone check calling like a jack-10, a king-queen for this size. He bet on the flop, ace-jack. Do you ever make a, a, a weird block bet on the turn if you're bads in this spot, or it's just too vulnerable as we see a blank yeah, hit the river? It's an interesting spot. Um, I think most players have not actually studied the situation to lead the turn into two opponents. Maybe into one, they may have solved that a bit more. Mm -hmm. Even someone like Bads who spends lots of time studying probably doesn't really know what his turn leading range into two people after mm -hmm. check calling the flop. And I most certainly am not sure either. I mean, I, I think the king queens of the world are credible as they're looking to charge any of the flush draws that are out there if yeah. they want to take a peek at the river. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's a very interesting play. Uh, we'll have to explore it sometime. Um, yeah, because you can kind of expect a lot of check throughs too, and then you don't want that with a vulnerable hand. So yeah. I, I see where you're coming from. I just think that most people haven't solved it or, or stud I want to say studied it, mm. uh, even at this high level. Because it's just a spot that doesn't come up too often, so you, maybe you want to spend your resources, your time on other spots that oh. are more frequent and see bet. Did he, what do you do? 26 into 38 is the number that Badziakuski came with as Ten Kim molded over, but in the end folded along with Greenwood, who was unimproved. And Bats. Maybe earning a little bit less than he felt like he would have liked to with the aces up there. Yeah, but you know, if you get in a ton of chips of ace two on that run out, you probably lost the hand. Like if someone's if you're somehow putting in like a hundred blinds in by the river. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. So it's not like he's like, Oh man, I wish I wish this pot was much, much bigger. It's the turn spot that's just interesting for me. I just wonder whether or not a case can be made when you're out of position against two opponents I for think making sure some chips get into that oh. pot. Yeah. Um, also because of the vul how vulnerable your hand is, right? Because uh, if a 10 or jack rolls off, you've been oh, counterfeited. Right? Um, any queen, any king, where maybe you can dispense those hands with a bet. You know, we, we, we live in a day and age of poker where... In the be like we said, asked me this question years ago. I'm like, you want to lead the turn, Ali? Like, come on, what of a what a joke play is that? Right. But right. now, you know, like Solvers have shown us new information, uh, new strategies that can, lines to be used. Uh, where, you know, I entertain uh, your suggestion of leading the turn, and I definitely think there is merit to it. I just think it hasn't been explored. The fact that it's in a three-way spot, I think, is obviously what. Yeah, kind of. I think if it was a heads-up spot, I think it's definitely something that has been looked at a lot uh, more likely. Mm -hmm. Well, back to this hand, Rocco. Yeah, his sevens have picked up Takayama's button. Queen Jack suited turns into a gutty and backdoor diamonds on the ace-high board. A couple of overs for Rocco. Checks it. Quick check back from Takayama. It's a fairly welcome side as you see Rocco keeping an eye on his opponent there. Fire now. I think about it. I'd be targeting these like mid pocket pairs, sevens, eights, nines. We'll just check. And as played, I I don't think. Any bets are coming from either player? No. No. You would think that. Oh, it's a little block bet coming. Is it? Well, what's the sizing here? What are those? The minimum. 2,500, yeah. Very, very modest into 19. I think this is one of those. Is it modest enough to get a call <laughs> at a queen high? 
Uh, he, I don't think he'll get a call. He might think Takoyama is, doesn't got the, the bluff raise in him, so I can go get away with this tiny min bet, mini bet. Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've been very interested to watch Michael Rocco play. I know he's got his own unique style, so I think that's we're starting to see that slowly. Currently second in chips here at our featured table. Greenwood up at the top of the chip counts. Tim Adams, dare I call it the short stack with <laughs> sub 200, but 80 bigs is far from short. As we're just getting our feet wet here. Triton Super High Roller Series Vietnam. Our first stop on the calendar here in 2023 which I think is going to be a big year for the tour, Randy. If this stop here is any indication, the number of unique players that we had registering for the event. Yeah, it's it's big. It really is. And it's like, it's not the same uniques that were new from, from Cyprus. Right. These are like, new uniques. And now and just imagine we, we combine all these players, you know, but it's just, it's going to be huge. Tim, you, you <laughs> also seem like somebody. You know you what's funny? It reminds me this week more than a I little do. bit. <laughs> oh, yeah, I definitely do. Oh. Extremely good. Two kings. Just listening in here on the table talk. As you see, Mulocker's open under the gun with the A7 suited, going to run into Greenwood. 22. Have you ever had like a, a band that you really like listening to that very few people knew about? And you turn them on to them, and they don't have, you know, a big following. They don't have a record deal. Oh. And then fast forward a little bit, and all of a sudden, they're mainstream. They've got music videos. They're touring, and everybody knows about them. There's kind of a bittersweetness oh. to that to that ascent. Obviously, we want Triton to succeed. We want them to be as big and, and as amazing as possible. But there is an intimacy to, to a Triton event that, you know, there's kind of a tipping point there. Yeah. That... Uh, that happens, but obviously these are the sorts of buy-in levels that I don't think will ever. We don't have to worry about eight thousand, you know, <laughs> deep fields. I don't think not unless Bitcoin goes to ten million or something like that. Greenwood's three bet gets through. But you're right. I think that was a big selling point, like this intimacy, this like you know familiar faces you play with. The personal attention level yeah. that you, know? you get when you're at a Triton event. I mean, the staff to player ratio is. Far and away, you know, the, the highest Ooh. out there. Oh, uh, yes, by far. What do you mean you got, like, a guy counting chips on every single table yeah. be, you know, f to make this app so much better yeah. for us and for the users yeah. to use? It's uh, unheard of, really. It truly does take an army to put one of these events on a village, if you will. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's just passion, a love for poker. It was really small fields in the beginning. And you know they're they're very happy of how it's developing and growing. I'm happy. Yeah, we in yeah. turn certainly the prosperity of the tour by extension is good for all involved here. And obviously those of you out there at home, we certainly hope that at some point in time we can welcome you to one of these Triton events if you're so inclined. Takayama, meanwhile, King Nine, open to 6500. Adams on the button, Queen Jack off suit. Will flat. So many people of Queen Jack offsuit today. Ace Two suited found the muck promptly, by the way. Yeah, that was quick. Definitely a hand you could consider playing multi away. Um, they play just fine, but some people don't like to play passively. Okay, understood. Jack, Jack, Deuce, Adams flopping trips on the driest of boards. Takayama does not follow through with the king high. He probably didn't expect a button position to fall to a C bet a lot, since those hands tend to have ace, ace highs and king queens and pocket pairs. So technically, this board is a kind of a board where one and done doesn't work too often. I like that Adams going for this small bet. He's thinking. I got a bet small enough where I'll get floated by high card type hands that might check fold. 5,500, the bet from Adams. The trouble with not putting a little something out there on the flop, obviously, is that we welcome 
our opponent to just take the pot away from us on the flop. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with being balanced and finding spots where you do just check fold, yeah. as Takayama does here. Whatever you do, don't do it 100% of the time is probably the, the best advice you can give any of the players out here. Pattern recognition is not going to be lost on any of these top shelf players. I mean, really, that's kind of what solvers show you is that you shouldn't be doing things 100% mm -hmm. of the time. There's always mm -hmm. that little randomness of checks and, and bets. Um, yeah. And then, but executing at live play, that's the tricky part. Yeah. And look, 100% of the time, Adams is not going to bet in position there with the trips. A lot of times he'll check back and then allow his opponent to maybe improve mm -hmm. or take a shot at the pot on the turn. Yeah, and you don't, because when you can just narrow down to, oh, since he didn't bet this flop, he must not have a jack or, or have a jack, et cetera, that, that's when you become more easy to play against, and that's where you start giving up some, uh, some value. So trickiness definitely helps. Team? Just imagine you're going to A bunch of clubs five. in his hands. Two clubs just got folded. And only one club on the flop. King high with a couple of diamonds. A lot of guys like to consider firing from their gun on this king high board, not Greenwood. Takayama 5, taking a stab here, 5,000. Well, just a moment ago, it was Takayama who conceded to a queen jack on the flop after being the pre-flop aggressor. Here he is taking on the role of position better with queen high, interacting nicely with the king of clubs. Doesn't shake Greenwood. Yeah. I think the bet was so small, he's like, all right, I'll just see what happens. Oh, and what happens is second pair top kicker for Greenwood on the turn, but Takayama does pick up some equity in the form of a gutter. I actually wouldn't mind if Takayama fired again, picking up that gutter. Um, for his opponent to check call a flop, it's not very king heavy. You also block the king queens and king jacks that may play passively occasionally on the flop. So it seems likely that Greenwood's holding like he's queen high, ace jack high, or like pocket eights, something that just can't handle multiple barrels. He's going to call one more time with that pair. 11k a man, adding another 22,000 to the middle. And now a pair of jacks on the river for Takayama as the diamond draw does come in. Two quick checks and Greenwood gets the bad news. He's like, oh. Yeah. The only street on which he wasn't ahead is the only street that counts, the river. And that is the first showdown, by the way, that Takayama has had here at this feature table, is a lot of these players who are unfamiliar with the newcomers will be looking for data points, looking for what sort of ranges are being played and in what manner. suited now for Rocco. Opens to 6,500. Greenwood mulling over the 9-3 suited out of the big. Both players sharing the 9-6-4 deuce flop. Advantage Rocco with the diamond draw here.
We did see Soiza right. lead on this kind of boar texture with a little gutty, but... Unsuccessfully, <laughs> of course, as he went three barrels against Adamo. I think it was exactly six four deuce as well. Yeah, and it was queen five of spades on a two spade flop. Greenwood with the gutter. Has checked it. Rocco taking his time before reaching out. And delivering a 5,500 chip follow through. Lack of a heart on this board is obviously a disappointment to Greenwood as it removes the backdoor prospects. It's not the nicest piece, but you know what? It's a piece for 9-3 suited. I feel like against this small sizing, you've got to kind of make a stand somewhere, whether it's a check raise or check call. I think Greenwood knows this. Does make the call. Fishing for a 3-5 or a 9. He comes up with a 5, but it's in the form of a diamond, Randy. Six high straight against queen high diamonds now. The dream. Or no. the nightmare, depending <laughs> on whose perspective you take. Greenwood checking over to Rocco. The 5 of diamonds is nice uh, flush to hit because it's the type of card that improves the big blind check calling range, whether it's like 8-7 or 6-5 or, or the 3x. Like, wow, he checks it back. Oh, and this could be trouble for Greenwood. The king of clubs does not rate to impact anything. I think Rocco checked back the turn believe, because that card he's supposed to be scared of normally, so he's protecting the other parts of his range that should be weak on this poor texture right now. In tournament, this one. I don't know what is the record, maybe like 130. Mm -hmm. well, Greenwood's going to dial up yeah. what he thinks is a value yeah. bet, but 24,000, which is roughly full pot, is going to get raised. How much? When you see a full pot size bet, roughly, think you're thinking the guy's got at least a straight. The thing is, even kings up, which would be such a weird holding for Rocco to show up with in this particular spot, a set of kings, I think, would maybe be the more likely sort of hand, specifically king of hearts, <coughs> king of spades, because any pocket kings with the diamond would likely continue to barrel mm -hmm. on the turn. Wouldn't look to raise in this spot. Definitely would not be raising. Um, it's going to cause some confusion for Greenwood why his opponent is raising. 92. Oh, man. He's, he's like, really? Yeah, he really did not expect this at all. I mean, as you reconstruct the hand, we have an upfront raise from Rocco, a follow through on the flop. It was normally sized. Then the check back on the arrival of the five of diamonds, followed by a raise when the king of clubs rolls off. Yeah, this is this is odd for Greenwood. Yeah, <laughs> confused. So he's also thinking, well, I put a big bet in there, and you're still raising me. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like you know I've got at least a straight, which is a strong holding. Still want to raise. So what do you have? Are you really making a, a big move on me, knowing my my hand should be pretty strong? If Rocco is bluffing, he's going to be putting him on some kind of I don't know, ace x, or like ace king with uh, ace queen, ace of diamonds, something like this with a flush blocker type card. Two time banks. Deployed so far. I guess Green was thinking how often would Rocco take this kind of line as a bluff. I don't know how much history they have with each other. So it's kind of tough to figure out. Well, Randy, you mentioned that you <coughs> didn't know a lot about Rocco, but what you did know was that he takes very creative lines mm -hmm. and that he is perceived to be aggro. Now, you wonder how much of that is on Greenwood's mind right now. 
Yeah. Um, I, I mean, like I've read live updates and Nirako plays some some pretty crazy hands, so it is reasonable <coughs> he's got bluffs here. Oh, looks like he, he wants to pitch him in. Nope. Yeah. And that's just such a demoralizing feeling for Greenwood, who you can absolutely understand and relate to in that spot. It's almost like just, I got to know what you have here. You know, I've, I, I have what I'm supposed to have. What do you have? Mm -hmm. And Rocco with quite a bit more hand than I think Greenwood would have expected. Yeah, I, I think he thought that Rocco should be betting a large part of his flushes on the turn. So he just thought the line was just too odd, and he was just too curious to know what his opponent might have. And Now that he's seen that, he's definitely going to have to adjust uh, his assumptions about his opponent's ranges when he checked back the turn on cards really that yeah. seem to be should be bet on with the flush. Mm -hmm. So Greenwood getting a hit to his stack, sizable in nature, as Rocco begins to ascend here at our featured table. And strikes me as the kind of customer, Randy, that you don't want to give a lot of chips to. He is now the chip leader at the featured table. Yeah, he's he's a scary... When, against tricky players, when they have a lot of chips, they're like really creative and very tricky and tough to play against. Six K oh. open from O'Dwyer's Ace Deuce and Greenwood still a touch shell shocked with the king force suited. Both players just completely with this board. Hard to continuation bet. Checking over to O'Dwyer. It is the kind of board texture, Randy, that does rate to kind of smash that flatting range of yes. Greenwood. Now the seven on the turn. Yeah, that, that's why O'Dwyer is not sea betting. I know Greenwood doesn't have any piece of this, but it's still reasonable for him to just throw a bet out there, repping that four straight. Check. Against like ace high type hands, little pocket pairs, but he's gonna keep checking. <coughs> All right, so <coughs> drop a six. Five would make a straight as well on a dummy in. Greenwood gonna try for this pot. Five. Seventeen. Bet. Seventeen thousand. Pot size oh. bet. Nice little steal. Really the kind of bet that makes it tough for anything other than a straight, which didn't rate to be in O'Dwyer's range <coughs> at that point as played. Continue and tell you what, Sam picks up that pot, but the look on his face. Tells me his mind is anywhere but that hand. It's more so on the big L that was hung on him in that pot against Michael Rocco, who at almost 450,000 sits with 150 big blinds roughly. And the chip lead here at our featured table where Tim Adams is the proverbial short stack. Blinds moving to 1,500 and 3,000 with a 3K ante. So those chip counts are brought to you by GG Poker, who was sent 
No less than 10 qualifiers to this GG Super Millions event number one. Takayama, by the way, not pictured in that chip count. Has 259,000 in front of him. Just north of the starting stack. Greenwood with a couple of jacks. Opens to 7,000. No takers. I'm not looking at their cards. I'll tell you what, if you blurred out Rocco's face and you asked me to name that pro, I would just snap say Alex Foxen. <laughs> right? I mean, they're cut from the same mold, aren't they? Yeah, they got that composure. I feel like if you're looking for Rocco, you're like, hey, have you seen him? I would just be like, check the gym. <laughs> Maybe he's there. So sugar in it. It does no have sugar. this kind of intimidating presence. No sugar. This has sugar in it. Look, it, we've touched on this before, but a lot of these pros have really subscribed to the idea that physical fitness mm -hmm. translates into performance on the felt. Now, I don't need to tell you, Randy, that I don't share this philosophy. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a commentator. <laughs> it's not what you it need to commentate. No. Look, you know, I just, maybe for players it works. I feel like for commentators. Vietnamese iced coffees. Multiple. Dragon fruits. <laughs> right. <laughs> Waffles. These sorts of things cool. are what lead to success. As we see O'Dwyer's open to 7,000. Getting flatted by Rocco's King Queen on the button. And now... So how much do you have in big chips? I cannot see. Sorry, with like 460. That's the Akuski in the big. Bads came along for the ride. Flop bottom pair to be out in the lead on this board. Thank you. Asking a question. Eight yeah. K. I would not want to play against Rocco. He is not a straightforward player. Hmm. So you got bottom pair here. It's usually got a enough value to continue since the price is good. And also, you just recognized it. The opportunity before Rocco in position on the button here as he picks up tremendous equity on the turn courtesy of the Jack of Diamonds is such that he'll be betting a wide variety of holdings that are unpaired, just looking to pick up what feels like a, a dead pot. Open Not a great ended. card, by the way, for bads to well, be looking at on I'll this I'll tell turn. you, if Rocco can fire one more, that 3-4 suited going into the muck so fast. King-Queen is... Um, the jack, well, I mean, gives them more equity, of course. The jack is the type of card, let's see. If jack 10, obviously, they would improve, but it puts pressure on hands, say, like ace 10, king 10, that check all the flop. They wouldn't handle much heat on this turn card. But if he's up against, like, 
10-9 suited, Jack-9. It's tricky when you bet the turn and your opponent calls. You're not sure if he's got that middling strength hand or maybe he improved. Becomes a bit of a guessing game. Take the free one. Oh, and improve. Four-liner on the board now. Queens for Rocco. You know, I think that Makita might actually bet this card. He can rep the nine pretty well from the big blind. Check call to flop 10, 9, 8, 9. Some 9x clubs. I feel like you're right. I feel like he might turn this hand into a bluff, but how big would he have to bet to get Rocco off of top pair king kicker? He probably would have to bet like 30k upwards. Did he come with 30 exactly? 30, sure looks that way. My man. And consider how awkward this is now for Mike Rocco, who is purely bluff catching with the king queen. Yeah, and holding king of clubs doesn't help because he'd want to pick off club draws. What's important is the four liner out there. So he's going to be asking, okay, let's just say Makita had two pair, queen jack, queen 10, whatever. Would he bet this big, s wow, nice call. He's good. I'll tell you what. In it some ways, despite the feeling of disrespect that you get if you're in bad Ziyakuski seat, mm -hmm. that call is a function of respect because you're telling your opponent, I know you're capable enough to come with that sizing without having king queen beat on this particular board. So while it feels a little gross, it it's sort of a professional respect that's being shown when I make this call, you know? Yeah. It, it, I know what you're capable of. It's a strange of. take, right? But yeah, it's very much a, I know you're not so straightforward that you don't have the kind of hand that you showed up with just now. So statement call there for Mike Rocco. The rest of the table certainly paying attention to that spot. He caught so he caught <laughs> pretty quick. No time banks sure used. Sure did. That sure is did. conviction. You know, yeah. Makita's used to being on the other end of those transactions yeah. usually as the guy who makes the big call. As we see Ten Kim with Ace Queen opening. Want to take a moment, by the way, to apologize as apparently we have been referring to seat five here at our featured table as Mike Takayama playing under the Philippine flag. At last check, you may have noticed that he is now showing up in the stream under the Chinese flag and the name Liu Yang. And we are being told that that is correct. Also, a thanks to Daniel Abriz in the chat on YouTube, who was also directing us in that manner. Of course, for Randy and I and the rest of the staff, we are getting familiarized with some of the newer participants here. So these sorts of mistakes may happen from time to time. Obviously, we'll endeavor to do a little bit better, but glad we've made the correction as O'Dwyer issuing some corrective action to 10 Kim's open with two red kings. As E3 bets to 22,000, Kim will call the extra 15 as we play heads up for 51-5. Now these are... Oh, oh my. Danger. Top pair against middle set here. If you're 10 Kim right now, you called the three bet. This is the top of your range. He's queen, top pair, top kicker. It's going to be very hard for him to lay this down by the river. Clubs would be a real assist in terms of sh being shown the exit with this ace-queen. But for the time being, Kim checking and most certainly calling. And how big does O'Dwyer go? 13,000. This is milky. Yeah, he, he's hoping like some weaker holdings will still continue, you know, like gut shots. I think he's going to start sizing up on the turn, thinking that, well, he's going to be up against Asex a lot, especially holding two kings. He's locking those king, queen, king, jacks. He's going to want to try to get all the chips in by the river. Jack. Now, all of a sudden, a Broadway draw, giving Ten Kim some potential wins. Gives Ten Kim a little bit of worry, because, you know, he could have been up against Ace Jack, that now... Um, took the lead against them. Just need to find the perfect sizing to get those ace queens, ace tens to call. Yeah, we rule the ace kings out at this point given we hold two red kings. So we know yep. in all likelihood that Ten Kim has that ace X. 
Probably a Broadway dangler. Maybe even a little bit of Ace Jack. And now the much more significant sizing of 52,000. And you see physical adjustments there in Ten Kim. It was like, man, what's happening? Yeah, it's uncomfortable because you know you've got one of the strongest hands you can have uh, given the action so far. You improved in terms of more outs, but then you just feel like you're behind yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So your gut's telling you I'm behind, but then your cards are kind of telling you to continue. By the way, note Steve O'Dwyer just fixed on 10 Kim there, had the same view we did moments ago. And I don't know about you, Randy, but when I'm looking at an opponent that has that reaction to my bet on the turn, I really begin to narrow it down to Ace-X with the Broadway dangler. He's all in. Oh, and he jams a snap call from O'Dwyer. I don't think that was anticipated at all, but of course Steve thrilled to see this development. And the stacks were roughly level there as the jam came in. Four outs once for the South Korean who really stepped in it here, took a shot at what he thought might have been a hand that was no good. The three of clubs on the river of no help and Ten Kim is polished off here by O'Dwyer's set of kings. They're going to count it down just to be sure, but... I think Ten Kim might have thought, like, some of these pros out here just trying to pick on the newcomer, maybe, like, to make a play at me, wanted to make a stance, make a statement now, just, just the bad timing. Yeah. I think you and I might have suspected that a lot of Ten Kim's chips were going to head O'Dwyer's way, depending on what the river was, but I don't think either of us expected all of them to be delivered on the turn. Yeah, I think he wanted to put more chips in. He just wasn't sure, like, maybe he didn't want to play a confusing river on what to do. He was just like, I'm going to shut up my opponent now in case he's on a flush draw. Um, not exactly sure what he was thinking, but oh, it looks like he's got a little bit of chips remaining. Definitely something he's reviewing over in his head right now. It's like, should I have made that jam? Should I maybe just called? Well, looks like our accounting was obviously a little bit off, but unless Ten Kim can pull a Smilkovich, the bell does seem to toll at present for his first buy in here. And I think for those that are watching the stream, maybe, who are a little bit newer to poker, you kind of can observe a situation like that where Ten Kim check jams and just really is never getting called by a worse hand. And how many hands that are better than ace-queen are going to find the muck on that turn? And, and if you can't answer those sorts of questions to your favor, then you really are dissuaded from making that sort of decision at any given moment in a pot. Exactly, yeah. And um, definitely, you know, if you're newer to the game, watching these kind of streams helps you um, fine-tune, you know, some of the plays that you might be confused with. But how do some of these other players uh, react to it? And, you know, of course, some of these players make mistakes here and there, too, even at the world-class play. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is important. If you spend the time and resources to try and develop and learn by watching your peers play, it really can pay off for you. So Kim does begin the process of working his way back to a playable depth, uh, but that little pot there, blind versus blind, is a small step in a long journey. Now for the artist formerly known as Mike Takayama, Liu Yang, playing under the Chinese flag with pocket deuces. First opportunity, by the way, we've had to reference the Chinese flag. And originally, 
there was some sense that we weren't going to get the sorts of turnouts here in Hoi An that we were expecting mm -hmm. due to restrictions on travel in China. Those restrictions were lifted, and we saw a massive influx of interest coming from China, where there is no shortage of passion for poker. Obviously, a warm welcome to our, our Chinese participants. 10 9 4 with a couple of spades in a three way affair. Yang failing to flop the set. Closing the action with a check back. Nobody has either an ace or a flush draw on the turn here. Believe it or not, Jack 4 for 10 Kim is the best hand, the short stack. Looking to hang on as the action is checked through one more time, but the six on the river will give the check mark to Mulocker. There is Thomas. No post-flop betting. On their backs they go. There are sixes. We'll take it down. Haven't really seen much from Mulocker here at this feature table. Been really quiet, Randy, but obviously Sometimes. a competent pro. You don't bink those GG qualifiers <laughs> by accident. Nah, but Mulocker <laughs> is a seasoned, high-stakes, online pro. Just yeah. Is he the lucky ones? I've seen him at lots of final tables. Mm -hmm. He loves the Super Millions, so it makes sense that he came out for the live Super Millions. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I want to keep them... Uh, with just with this hand. Wouldn't it be surprised if he's uh, battling the top of that Super Millions leaderboard you spoke of earlier? Yeah. Yeah, let's see if you can and you're folding, so you can get it in the box. Seven K, the open from Greenwood. Under the gun with this King Seven suited, Randy. Well, Ace Ten's out from your locker, playing discipline. Well, troublingly though, the King Jack is right in there for Lu Yang, and now Dwyer out of the big blind has some options. No, I was, I was just thinking about. Uh, Take a flop. Two nines gonna stay best. Queen tray deuce, two spades. Pretty dry texture. Do that backdoor clubs. Raise from under the gun. But I noticed that Greenwood's not really the type of guy who just fires at any flop when he misses. Checked around, and Greenwood binks the king, but that's a problem for him as Lu Yang has him outkicked here in this 25k pot. Yeah, what seems like a perfect card for you is actually what's going to cost you more chips. Going to keep checking. I love to see Lu Yang here starting to fire. Checks around you twice. You hit top pair of a good kicker. <laughs> Don't let him get off cheap. You surprised Greenwood didn't decide to bet this yeah. turn? I'm, I am a little bit surprised. But you know, Greenwood's kind of got this really balanced style, mm. I've noticed. So he, like, he doesn't fire every flop when he misses. He doesn't fire every time he hits top pair. So it actually makes him pretty tricky to play against, too, as you're not able to figure out where he's at very easily. Does induce Liu Yang. To bet 11,000, but of course it's with the best hand that he's done so. Now the board pairs and rescues Greenwood, whose kicker no longer plays. Same story for Yang. This will be a disappointment at showdown. As Santosh Suvarna joins the party here at the feature table. Warm welcome to him. Playing under the Indian flag there to the left of Liu Yang. Love me some Santosh. Yeah. 
He loves to play big. Let's see. Here's the value bet. What sizing did we come with? 25,000. This is going to be an easy flick in for Greenwood. Yeah. This is one of those. If you got it, you got it. Yeah. Referring to the spades, of course. I mean, he has to call. Chops with King Jack, King 10, beat some random bluffs. Yeah. Carve it up, boys. I always get a lump in my throat when my opponent's hand doesn't snap hit the muck after I value bet the king there. I'm always like, wait a minute, am I somehow beat? Well, it looks like Greenwood has been handed an empty rack, which means that he will be removed from the feature table. And that gives us an opportunity to remind you that there are so many ways to interact with us here at Triton Poker, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, you name it, we are out there and we are eager to have you join the ranks of our followers and our fans. Be sure to download that Triton Poker Plus app as you can get the most in-depth coverage of tournament poker anywhere on earth. Player bios, results, historical analysis, hand-by-hand -hand tracking, all in real time with the stream. Truly one of the most robust and the most robust. Yeah, and it's it not is close. Literally the most. It's really <clears throat> just a treat. And you know, maybe your favorite player isn't on the feature table. We can still check up on them yeah. using the app. Every okay. single table is available <laughs> to track. <laughs> they all have Of course they should go short because it's a designated a, monitor yeah, yeah. standing no, yeah. right behind the dealer. It's a quick, it's a quick and as each like action it. takes place, they are inputting that action yeah. in real time, and that action is subsequently being recorded in the it's app. So it's really nice because you look at the other players not at the table, and you're They're like, it's not just, oh, is he in second place, is <laughs> in first. It's, it's, oh, you can see what hands he played that were huge, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you just see... Like, oh, that one's got a lot of chips moving along. Let's see yeah. what happened. Like, oh, he just bluffed it off, or he got a cooler. And then you actually can scroll back to every single hand that's taken place at that table, and you can see a bar graph that represents the size of the pot. Click that particular bar, and then look back at how that pot played out action by action. So, yeah, unheard of. Really cool stuff. Had a chance to chat a little bit with Tim Adams. What did you learn? This morning during breakfast, and I learned that in transit in Hong Kong, he had a delayed inbound flight from Paris and missed his connection oh. to Da Nang and had to come up with his own solution. As he then transited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. The SS Tim Adams was commissioned. No, he then transited via Hanoi, managed to make his way here, arrived a little bit later than he anticipated. But uh, no worse for the wear as he hops into the saddle, unfortunately with hearts, opening to 6,500 and facing the three bet from O'Dwyer, predictably, up to 26,000. Sizable three bet in position. Makes you not want to call as much out of position of Jack Nine suited. And I don't think O'Dwyer's got a reputation for, for putting these three bets in there all too creatively. Obviously, he's not a one trick yeah. pony by any stretch, but maybe not on the Odamo side of the spectrum. Did he give him a free Let's look see. at the Ace King there? With that look on his like face, we yeah. did it. I feel yeah. like he did, but I could like see. Want to fold more now. I always no? like buying a little bit of credibility, you know, flip up the ace king the next time around, you're in there with the eight nine or something. That doesn't work anymore. New player. Well, Santosh, it's been real. <laughs> his time here at the feature was short lived.
What was that, a two-hand cameo? <laughs> do we, how do we know what he got dealt? He got plucked in the big blind, though, so that's always nice. Uh, Probably yeah. straight into a big blind. Yeah. I wanted to throw them so badly. I what kind of pessimism is that, Randy? <laughs> it's just Maybe he just falls right behind the button at his new table. Do you remember what happened to Santosh in Cyprus? I believe it was that invitational tournament. The coin rivet. Yep. Yeah, I was there. And then uh, Leon Sukranik just was open jamming. That was... And he just caught off like 100 That's blinds of ace queen that into 10-9 suited. Just on the line? Just on the line? Yeah. And was just out. He was just Brutal. Santos was just grinding, and then all of a sudden then Leon's count. like all in pre flop. It was so it heartbreaking for him. And he dealt with it really well, by mm -hmm. the way, and he was a pleasure to to cover down there in in the Coin Rivet and all the other events that he was a part of as well. But I think it's something he can be proud of his performance in that particular event. You just there's nothing you can do. Leon decides that he just wants to to rip a hundred bigs in there and, and send you to the locker room early. I nothing fall. you can do. Run that ace queen against 10 9 <laughs> no, 100 times, see how 10 9 does. I'm losing ED every single shot so badly. <laughs> Look at O'Dwyer, by the way. Showed the ace king of hearts and then gets in there with the king deuce of hearts as the follow up act as he raises and takes it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, he's. Hooks <laughs> <laughs> on those cool tricks. Yeah. Right. I told the line. I said he's not frisky, he's not so creative, and right on cue he leverages that mm -hmm. to his advantage. He heard you. Mm -hmm. I was playing in a cash game recently, by the way, and a good buddy of mine. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm friends with most of my regulars in, in the mm -hmm. in the mixed game that I host, and there was a particular line that got taken in a hand, and a, a really poor position bet on the turn was made in, the, in a limit game, and promptly got check raised. <laughs> in in uh, it wasn't it was a, the only pot limit game we play in the mix, and we all kind of laughed and we mocked my friend for having placed the bet on the turn and having been check raised predictably given the run out and whatnot, and <laughs> and then he just finds the muck with it and he gets shown the bluff and it was as though my commentary <laughs> in that spot, which felt like it was so straightforward and credible, allowed this player to leverage the check raise. <laughs> It was just, and I felt so guilty because my buddy looks up and he's like, thanks, thanks, great, thanks, appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> As we see deuces and fours in the mix here. And now Batsy Akuski mulling it over what with the think? king queen. And sounds like a three bet has been declared to 42,000, Randy. That's meaty. Yeah. Um, you tend to see squeezes sizing up. Deeper stacks also sizes up more. And... See these middle, these little pocket pairs. They want to set mine against you, right? But when you make it 42k, they can't set mine against you profitably anymore. So by sizing up while you are risking more, you're narrowing down your opponent's continuing range. Although Dwyer hasn't given up yet, but he's kind of the guy trapped in the middle. So his hand, well, he's going to continue. His hand looks like a pocket pair. It is a pocket pair. So let's see how he <coughs> maneuvers here. You surprised to see O'Dwyer make that big an investment? I am. I think it's a large investment. Um, it's the type of board where you're going to continue for a bet. Yeah, he's got the dummy end of an op of a gut shot, rather, forgive me, on the eight high two spade board. Matsy Akuski in no man's land, out of position, having inflated this one to almost 100K. Where does he go from here, spadeless? with two overs. This is the board texture you probably are supposed to check fold a lot. If you're gonna bet, you're gonna bet really small. The thing is, when a guy calls in the, in the middle and still calls a squeeze, he's holding like pocket nines, pocket eights, pocket tens, or he's holding like broad some broadways. The thing is, you're holding two broadways yourself. So you're blocking. So you're blocking those hands that would fold to a C bet. Uh, so that's why Makita has decided to check. And I like O'Dwyer's decision here to barrel. It's just 25k, but it is a bet, more importantly, mm -hmm. as opposed to the check back. Fours is very vulnerable. And he knows that his opponent often has these ace-king, ace-queen type hands. So why give him a free shot to take you out if you Ooh. could just bet a quarter pot and take it down? Was it catching? Yeah. You're good, yeah. We're tied. I got mine in, too. Nicely done. Got mine yeah. In too. Oh, yeah. So, he, so O'Dwyer was able to... Yeah. 
yeah, play his hand, just, not just from pure set mind, mind, right? Like, so this is, just you need to be able to make these kind of plays <laughs> post-flop <laughs> in a maneuver if not you want to call squeezes. I'm playing three back pot. If that was in your mind, <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, I'm going to fold, but I really need to nail this. <laughs> okay, we can cancel it. Yeah. We both got one in, that was enough. And look at that shot there. I like it. Of the corridors on either side of our featured table, where once we reach our final tables, players will be introduced and make their way <laughs> to this stunning set that we have put up here in the intimate ballroom it is. at the Hoyana Resort. King seven suited for Liu Yang. I need to gamble. Taking a page out of Greenwood's book. In. Raise and take it. Mm. Bit of relief there. international affair in the chat, by the way, on YouTube. I've seen Korean, Hola. I've seen Vietnamese, I'm seeing English. Mm -hmm. Need to have some sort of translator in here. Obviously, if you are streaming us on YouTube, a warm welcome to you. Do us a favor and hit the like button and subscribe. Would love to make sure that you're always kept abreast of all that we have to offer on our Triton Poker YouTube app, which extends well beyond the borders of our festivals in between stops. We're looking to we can deliver content to you so all year long. Yeah. King X for O'Dwyer. And that second card, drum roll please. Ah, we'll never yeah, know. I gotta start trying a different technique. It's not working. I mean, he was always I mean, trying I'm to pitch I'm cards low. I'm not so. like calling the floor over to yell at you guys. <laughs> this, this is inappropriate. Is it? <laughs> Shout out to <laughs> Simu Pili, who says hello from yeah. Estonia. <laughs> das to 83 from Germany. Did you Craig <laughs> Peterson from New Zealand. <laughs> dealers of the next generation. Lu Dong from right here in Vietnam. Six, six. And welcome Mr. Silva, Pablo Silva, to be exact, A7 suited and announcing his arrival, a first timer to Triton. Also a name I recognize from those Online, so everyone from Brazil always scares me. They always got these aggressive moves that just really punishes their opponents. Tremendous market for poker mm -hmm. out in Brazil. I understand Felipe Ramos made this trip. Is that right? Haven't seen him yet, but obviously it'd be great to see him out there at some point. As Silva picks up two customers, a jack-10 off and the pocket eights of Mulocker, which will act first on the jack-high board where Silva has flopped himself the nut flush draw, but is currently in third place behind top pair and the eights. Action check to him, and he decides to check Randy. Playing tricky. Going to be very under-repped in the event the diamond does roll off, and one's not going blame Lu Yang for putting something out there into this 24k. Yeah, Jack 10's also a bit vulnerable. Drop off. You don't want to see that for a free card. Get some value. Maybe play some pot control if you get called on the flop. And actually 2-8's looking pretty solid here from the small blind given that the original Razor has looked weak. 
So it does not surprise Met Two Eights is calling here. And I think Silva, when he sees his bet and call, thinks that someone's got at least a jack. So he's probably going to play cautious and just call rather than check raise. If he was to check raise, it would look tremendously strong. Uh, but, but wouldn't it be kind of a suspect line to be taking? Yeah. They're creative, man. Let's see. Brazil. Raise to 36,000, 3x. And you're right, this is such an un unexpected line for the preflop raiser under the gun to be taking. Mm -hmm. It puts a lot of pressure on a Jack X. Especially Liu Yang here. It's got top pair, but he's got Mulocker and a small blind to worry about. How worried is he, though, about Mulocker having Jack 10 beat? Uh, you know, it is reasonable. Small blind flat. Yeah, he could have, like, Queen Jack, King Jack, Ace Jack. It's possible. Uh, he does not believe this check raise, though. He's like, who check raises other pre flop raiser on this board texture? Yeah, the eight's really shriveling now. So Mulock are out of the way, which is good news for Liu Yang, as he will have position heads up against Silva. Will Pablo improve on the turn? The answer is no, as Jack-10 continues to be in the lead with 108,000 in the middle. And when you take this line, if you're Pablo Silva, it really does beg for a follow-through on the turn, regardless of what rolls off. Yeah, if he checks now, his hand looks like a flush draw or like an air ball. If he wants to continue the story of a strong hand, he needs to keep firing. Now, the 9 is not... It's not a scary it's card at all. It's not a scary card. No. He's, he's, he's checking. I think he thinks that Liu Yang has a jack and will not fold to further bets, so he's just hoping for a free card in. I'm very surprised by Liu Yang's decision to barrel at this turn, though, Randy, and he's delivering 55000 out there, which is in the neighborhood of half pot. I, I like it because I think if I was beat with jack-10, my opponent would just keep firing if he's going to check-raise the flop. He's just protecting his hand. I mean, how often do you see a guy double check raise you? It's not, that doesn't happen to often. Oh my goodness. Just and Silva bewildered by that particular choice of line from guess to get away from a hand that really wants to see the river. You have the best hand occasionally. You can say the King, Queen of Diamonds. Uh, it's, it's a hand that... Lu Yang could have. Um, it's getting a good price. Whoa. Yeah, it's a bit surprising. Hmm. Uh, he folded pretty quick. He sure did. And so Pablo Silva now down to 208,000 as you get a look at the chip counts en route to the next blind level, two and 4,000 with a 4K ante. Those chip counts as always brought to you by our title sponsor, GG Poker. Here in the GG Super Millions event number one here at this Vietnam festival, the first of the year on the Triton series. Shout out by the way to Kake Randolin from Finland in the chat. We had some nice things to say, Randy, about our coverage here. Nice. Hello. I'm still trying to get my head around Pablo Silva's choice of line in that pot. That really was... Yeah, it kind of seems like if you are intending to fold that turn, maybe you play a different line on the flop, I suppose. Right? Like, because you put in 36, like, maybe you check call, you check call turn. Uh, yeah, it is quite interesting with, yeah. with a hand of such high equity and, you know, potential. You know, like, say he bet the turn. I think he could have got Jack 10 to fold as well. Maybe, depending on the sizing, right? Yeah. I mean, and he, and he set himself up for a three-barrel, you know, spot. It just with, with high equity. Well, here he is facing off against Liu Yang once more, defending the big blind against Yang's open.
open. He's got at least the gut shot straight draw, possibly go with it, or maybe even better. And Silva flop facing an 8K follow through into 22,000. North of third pot, he makes the call. Another 16,000 into the middle, and the turn is an ace. Yang with the range advantage. Well, give me quickly check back this ace. I feel like he doesn't have that card. Hmm. Quick check back. Six pairs on the turn. You know your king high usually isn't good. But you can also see someone checking the ace for pot control too if they hit it. So it's like, mm, what do I bet? Do you think Lu Yang's paired? Or just a uh, uh, jack high, queen high, king high kind of affair? <laughs> you know what? It really is a guessing game. I can't tell you. Um, two tens, uh, with jack ten, yeah. Well, Silva's going to turn king high into a bluff here. and Huge huge bet, actually, over bet. Yeah. Yang snap folding. I think that's king ten maybe at best. Mm -hmm. They definitely didn't have ace ten. No. They would have ten, thought ten. about it. Yeah. And another updated peak there at the chip counts. By the way, 10 Kim down to 17 bigs. We know that he, he was all but eliminated by our count, had a little bit left in front of him. So he's actually spun it up. Chip counts brought to you by Poker Stake, the go-to platform for anybody looking to support their favorite player's journey. Check them out at PokerStake.com. You ever do any staking, Randy? No, Never? No, it's not my thing, but I know a lot of people do, and obviously this would be a nice way to kind of get get a little sweat in there, a little action, yeah. buying your favorite players or who you perceive might be extra value uh, with the odds out there. But no, it's not my thing. I'd buy – no, I wouldn't stake you. I thought about it. Nah, no, idea. that's that's a bad idea. <laughs> that's Randy. a burning <laughs> many like good odds. You were going to want to keep your finances completely uninvolved with what I do. <laughs> I mean, the amount of stock trading I do from the booth is really hazardous to one's health. Definitely not staking in that. <laughs> Shut up, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> what are you on the other side of my trades? You want to? Book my trades, yeah. Randy. Is that what you want to do? <laughs> Pocket six is now for the Brazilian. Down go the shades, as we've grown accustomed to from the Belarusian. Does not improve on a paired board. Not a bad one for Silva. Yeah, not too bad. Does have that counterfeit potential, but, you know, maybe some straight draw, depending on what drops down. Um, Bads is probably thinking, what would I be up against? I'm going to start by betting. Sees has got the backdoor hearts to help. Tiny bet. 1.5 blinds. Probably this kind of bet probably doesn't define your small blinds calling range too much. I'd imagine a lot of high cards will still continue. Of course, pocket pairs. The turns probably where it gets interesting. Well, that's not the most interesting of turn cards. The Deuce of Diamonds is arid. Silva checking once more with the flow of play after calling the C-bet. If Bads is betting again, he's trying to get those ace-10, ace-jacks to fold. Something that would flat the small blind. Check back on the turn here does feel like give up unimproved on the river. Yeah, it, it looks very ace-high type hand. 
And he's firing again. Yeah, no shortage of fight in the four-time Triton champion. What's important is that Bad's open from under gun plus one. So that should narrow the small blind flatting range a bit more. He's probably thinking that Silva wouldn't flat the small blind. I don't know if those middling type hands as much. So he thinks it's a little bit more heavily weighted to those ace jack, ace tens. That can't really check hold twice here. But this is a really nice call here of two yeah. sixes. I'm glad to see it from Silva. Now, Bads is pretty worried that he might be up against like nines right now. Or like sure. Tens. Oh, and this is a great card for two sixes on the river. But let's see how Bads Yakuski responds. He knows this texture is super dry. Is he going to continue to tell the tale with 88,000 in the middle? Because he can put tremendous pressure on Silva's range with a big bet. Yeah, and given there's no f obvious flush draws out there, it would look very, like, it's like hard to put him on a pinpoint on a bluff, so it might look very credible if he bets again. The position is pretty important here. So if him betting again looks like it would have to be like a big pocket pair, he's just going to give up. Nicely done. Selfishly, I really wanted to see something in that two-thirds, three-quarters plus range. <laughs> I know you did. Just to see Silva's reaction, you know what I mean? Uh, that would be kind of a, uh, a leveling kind of war right there mm. if, if he had fired that third barrel. It's tough because I think Bads' main plan was fire twice, get those ace highs to fold. If I get called twice, it means I'm up against like nines and tens a lot. <coughs> um, I think he thinks he would have been able to move two sixes off of the river if he bets again. But... Now you got to think about the hands your opponent could have. Nice is that there was an opportunity perhaps before him Nine. to pick that pot up. Finds two fives behind him in the small blind for Michael Rocco. Rocco strikes me as a post flop player, so he's going <coughs> to continue. Here is Liu Yang with the opportunity to close the action from the big blind with an ace jack. Oh, he's going to apply a little pressure to this one, Randy. Upstairs we go, three bets to 22,000. I like the play. I think his sizing is a little small. Would have loved to see him put a little bit more in there, given the blind, big blind's 4,000. Because this sizing is inviting hands like six five suit to maybe put a little bit more chips in there. Adams makes the call, given the modesty of the additional investment required, just 13,000. And now you see Rocco furrowed brow. Call. Price is right. Ten, eight, four. So it's going to be a gut shot straight draw and backdoor spades for Tim Adams. Rocco's fives still in the lead. Lu Yang with control and the action check to him. Unimproved, 70K in the middle. Relatively quick check back. Yeah, yeah three ways. It's pretty hard to continue with Christian Bad Face Jack here. Not much of a connection. Adams is thinking, can he throw us? Just going to check hold the flop, is what he's thinking. Does Liu Yang ever have an overpair that's going for a check raise? He's thinking about the timing of how fast he checked the flop, gives it up. 
Nobody with a heart in their hand as the round of checks produces a king of hearts on the turn. Liu Yang does pick up a Broadway gut shot. Yeah, no heart in his hand. It is tempting to try to represent the ace king. It'd be very credible. I like that he's going to go for it. Because if, say, someone had a showdown type hand like Jack-10 and things like that, they probably would just fold now, thinking it's very likely you've got ace king. I kind of like the choice of sizing here, too, into 70,000. Sub half pot feels like the kind of hand that doesn't mind a call. Yeah. And without a heart in one's hand, if you're Adams or Rocco, it really does strike me as tough to proceed. More difficult for Adams, obviously, with Rocco behind him. As six high finds the muck, as do the pocket five. So Nicely done. tip of the hat to Liu Yang there. Those sorts of pots, by the way, Randy, those sorts of decisions there that begin to formulate a sense that we're dealing with somebody who has some real awareness. I think that's a drone cam. We just have like an <laughs> RC drone just going down the hallway there. It feels it feels droneish in in the way it you know what I mean. That doesn't feel like a human hand. Yeah, it was uh, very sharp turns. Maybe we have like an R two D two situation. It was just like a a helmet cam on R two, and he's just scooting around back there. He's only got one path back and forth. I think he's resetting his position now. <laughs> he's getting ready for. It. He's on an infinite loop. <laughs> Versus blind. Ten. Double gutter for better. Maybe worth putting some pressure on. In case your opponent calls. You got a lot of equity. Five high. Quickly finds the muck. That Dukuski takes it down. Are those buttons along yeah, his sleeves, by are. the way? It's pretty, pretty cool. A little hoodie. Or he's got a little. There's no hood. Yeah, no, Brandy. no hood. Sorry, but those are buttons. Confirmed. But I don't see a seam whereby one would presume the buttons to be functional. Yeah. This is buttons for the sake of buttons? Decorative buttons? Decorative buttons, for sure. It looks good. I'll allow it. So Not that I'm in a position to allow or disallow <laughs> anything <laughs> from the booth, but... <coughs> oh, you think R2 likes the dealer? Mm. <laughs> He's malfunctioning. Go back to your <laughs> little corridor. <laughs> Two jacks now for 10 Kim. You'll often see the players glance upward there. We've got real-time tournament information on a monitor available to them. That helps inform decisions from time to time. Also, they just look up at the clock sometimes and randomize. I don't think that's what's happening here, but nevertheless, 9K to go from up front. Suited and connected. I think that's the kind of kid that Adams likes to fight with, but limited upside given that Ten Kim has only 61,000 back. Nevertheless, the call from Adams. Tough customer. And he's got himself a flush draw here against the over pair. Checks it over to Kim. Given how shallow Ten Kim's stack is playing, there's a chance that Adams sometimes just 
puts the rest of the chips in there, hoping for fold equity. Normally you'll see a 7 high flush draw check call with deeper stacks, but it wouldn't surprise me he, he makes a play here. You know, because what if Tenkim's holding like King Queen? He's probably not going to call a jam, but he would definitely bet the flop. I mean, calling, of course, is fine as well, but you know, I think either play is reasonable. We'll call. <coughs> Extra 20 into the pot now. Big turn coming, and it pairs Adams. So he certainly rates to continue from this point forward. I think Tim, Ten Kim's got the stack where he could just put the rest of the chips in rather than bet. Yeah, a little north point. of one SPR. Stack to pot ratio. 10x probably wouldn't fold to you anyways. Yeah. Pretty foot. 22,000. 22, That's half the pot. I guess as played, you just call here of seven five of clubs. Hmm. Exactly half pot sizing, and I mean we can't expect that ten Kim is going to bet twenty two thousand and fold to a jam. Yeah, and if that's the case, we have to presume that the fives are no good, don't we? No need to to get it in here on the turn and and charge what we think is a hand that. Isn't beat? He probably thinks Tank Kim, if he had like a straw, would just jam it like Queen Jack, you know? So, yeah, I think you're right. I think he thinks that the fives yeah. usually isn't good right now. I meant to say a hand that is beat, obviously. I doubt that that would be the case as played. As we see Kim with his last 29K going to stick it in there. And mm -hmm. boy, <laughs> the value proposition is interesting here for Adams. But it's also just such an effortless jam here. He kind of set himself up for three barrels. The fives feel no good to me. They, they feel no good. But then again, he did see him play ace-queen, maybe how he didn't expect earlier against O'Dwyer, where maybe there is some bluffs that he could find that his opponent might have. Odds are good. The hand you're holding, not so good. Uh, let's see. So he's... Not blocking those straight draws if you are trying to pick off a bluff, so that'd be to your advantage if you're trying to hero call. It does have some clubs, but they're kind of like baby clubs. So while he is blocking some flush draws, they tend to not be holding those seven of clubs, or those little clubs, so... Hmm. I don't know. I'm not really sure what the Siji is going to act on. I just don't think that Ten Kim risks this buy-in with worse than fives, right? You just kind of wave the white flag maybe in that spot because the, the sizing is such that you're just not going to get rid of many hands. Mm -hmm. Right, like why, if you're setting up a bluff, are you really going to go yeah. like small and yeah. almost the same size on the turn? It, it just wasn't that kind of line. And you mentioned that like he felt like his turn, so that's why he just called it there. And yeah. you know what? He saved himself a twenty eight, twenty nine thousand chips You're right. there. You're right. I'm pretty sure Adams would have called a jam on the turn. So because you know the sizing your opponent chooses on the turn kinda changes the range that you, you might be up against, whether it's an all-in or, or that half pot size bet. He felt the half pot was a made hand, and he was right. So nice execution there by Ten Kim as he continues his ascent towards starting stack. <clears throat> now Mike Rocco, min raise open off of King Queen. And baby suited connector for Ten Kim. Defense is big. Ten nine three, not his board as Rocco's got two overs in the gutty.
Take a free one. No improvement for either player. Board pairing. Kim checks again. I think Rocco, I'm trying to think, should he bet this turn or check? I can really see both ways. Betting doesn't really get a better hand to fold too often. But then you also protect the equity against random cards like 5-4 now. Yeah, he bets small. Like yeah, nifty little 6k. Mm -hmm. Just show your man the exit. Yeah, Don't let him think fold. anything. And if he happens to call base high, good on him, but I still got decent equity. Yeah. King, queen, jack. Those uh, Vietnamese iced coffees hitting you yet, they, Randy? They, they're hitting me all right. <laughs> <laughs> they're not light on caffeine, are they? Spinning. Oh. Baby suited ace up front for O'Dwyer. Takes it upstairs. Six blinds and a small blind. Ace queen. These are big pickups if you can make them, but against an upfront open. I probably would push this all in. Um, that looks like is he going for like a smaller three bet? Yeah. I can't see any of your chips again. How uh -oh. much do you have now? New Locker's already folded that 10-5. O'Dwyer asking for a count now. Yeah, he wants to know how much stack he's up against and whether he can continue with ace-4 of diamonds. O'Dwyer's probably thinking, wow, you're 3-betting me to 27k off of this stack from the small against my undergun. What does it mean? It's invited his opponent to take a flop. Now, In bad right? shape, by the way. Yeah. Paired board. One diamond out there for O'Dwyer. Does have the benefit of position. And hmm. Let's see if 10 Kim is willing to follow through off of 78K into 62. I feel like on a king high board, you three bet. You got to follow through here. You represent the ace kings. Your opponent can't call too much. He's going to check. But I think O'Dwyer should still be pr pretty scared. It, it seems kind of like suspicious that my opponent is checking on a king nine nine. Oh man, look at this! The ace rolls off on the turn, and it's actually a bad card for Ten Kim, as he and O'Dwyer are chopping, as it stands now. Yeah, O'Dwyer got bailed out. Sure did. A pot he should be losing most of the time. Twenty-five K now on the turn. Well, Dwyer's never folding. Um, there's no obvious flush draws out there. I think he's best just to call and maybe hope Ten Kim occasionally, who's bluffing, will just fire away and you know call it off. There's no well disguised flush draws out there yeah. either, Randy. If we're being fair. <laughs> yeah. So in comes the call from O'Dwyer. Here comes the river, and it's the case ace. And a foregone conclusion here is I would expect the rest of Ten Kim's chips to be beaten into the pot by O'Dwyer on the river. If you've got Ace King or two nines, take it, buddy. Yep. And you see O'Dwyer, it's kind of the look on his face was very much like, well, if it's quads or the Ace King. Ace okay, King? good. Let's carve it up. Yeah.
pretty disappointing there for Ten Kim. He was in such good shape against O'Dwyer, and those chips far more precious to his stack. As O'Dwyer's number is called, he will be departing the feature table here as we perpetually rebalance our tables to ensure fair play. Not a unique feature to our tournament, of course. Mm -hmm. But perhaps the first opportunity for us to shout out our crack staff, Triton, Luca Vivaldi, and his entire team. Really running a top-notch program at all times. Luca, by the way, sustained the rare tournament director injury going, not a physical role, generally speaking, but yesterday oh, did he? as he was uh, helping out with setup, actually triggered his sciatic nerve, had to go to the ER wow. here in Vietnam and uh, got himself a, a little shot from the medics. I was, I was lobbying for a rascal scooter personally. I would have loved to see Luca dressed impeccably, but in a wheelchair, scooting around or in some sort of personal mobility scooter. Because <laughs> it's just not the sort of dress one expects from people <laughs> in that situation. I'm going to stop now, Randy. Yeah, um, we might not see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not condoning this behavior. <laughs> I'm not either, as I engage in it, by the way. Two eights against King Jack. A seven four rainbow. Five K barrel. Now, a lot of times you don't want to be check calling with these pairs on ace high boards against an early position raise, but it's just so it's kind of one of those I call, hope you check down with me. me yeah. The river. Cool. Nice turn from you, Locker. It's a good turn in the sense that usually people don't multi barrel here as a bluff. But Liu Yang, he's got a plan. He bet Tyne on the flop to just fire once more. I don't really see how two eights can really continue. It's just the guy raised an early position. He's bet two times on ace high board. It's pretty credible. And again, I don't think we've seen Liu Yang show up light at showdown. Wow. But look at this. Locker. What a call. You know, okay. You can call two barrels, let's say. But if the third one comes in, and by the way, this is a river where the two eights, if they were good before, they're probably good now, should feel like the bluff catch is on. But what is Liu Yang going to do? It's hard to yeah. bet three times. You see your opponent call twice. You're going to think he's got ace-x a lot. Yeah. I mean, now that he's two eights, it's going to be like, man, why didn't I just put one more in there? Well, yeah, in hindsight, obviously. But nice it's not always ace-x. There is some of them, but... <laughs> nice maneuver with the two eights. Oh, or where are we going now? Nope. Might this be our next feature table? Yes, Ooh. indeed. It looks like it'll be our first opportunity to take in the Thai contingent. Punat Punsri and KT, along with Mike Watson and Michael Soiza. Back now for the final few hands of our current featured table. New locker attacking from the button. Deuce three off suit for Rocco, not tickling his fancy. Back to back pots there for the GG online qualifier.
I've got it. For a long time, I've been looking at Thomas Mulacher and trying to figure out who does he remind me of. He reminds me of a Thomas young Mulacher. Who does he remind you of? Russell Wong. Very famous Chinese actor. Think back to Joy Luck Club. If you ever saw that movie. I mean, I was little. Not as old as you. I know. I got a, little, a few years on you. Do I need to Google it? Oh, Somebody out there back me up. Russell Wong was a superstar, buddy. Russell Wong? Who's Russell Wong? I know my Asian actors, but... Huh? Oh, huh? that's a good photo. <laughs> I mean, okay. one look at the Google streets and you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah. I might I might request a 23andMe, some sort of uh, DNA testing. There, there may be a... Maybe Thomas's parents aren't who he thinks they are. I'm just putting that out there. Could be Russell and someone. Just... <laughs> Silva now with the King Jack. I got to stop. <laughs> get, get me out of here. <laughs> you know? You're dragging me down, Ollie. I'm lifting you up. <laughs> <laughs> you probably could lift me up very easily. Not as easily as you think. <laughs> <laughs> I think Rocco could do it then, right? Yeah, Rocco could freaking curl each of us. <laughs> I think Tim Adams is texting. Russell Wong. Is that yeah. you? He's like, hey, Russell, man, I don't know where you were about 20-some-odd years ago, but uh, just take a look at this kid here. His name's Thomas. Does he look familiar <laughs> at all? Silva back at it with Queen-10 offsuit in the cutoff. Now Bads with Jack-10. Certainly not going anywhere. A little mini raise. Odds are amazing. Let's see what we can flop, if anything. Shades on. Nine eight five. Two overs and the open ender up against two overs and a gut shot. Bads checks it. A solid piece from the big blind. Now two overs and a gut shot. It's definitely worthy of a bet unless you feel that the big blind improves on this board a bit too much. You may play cautious. Let's we'll start with a fire. Bet six thousand. A little tiny bet. Yep. Mini bet. Not quite mini, but you know, upwards a little bit. Sure, but still. The mini bet, the mini word is. Has to be a min has bet? Has to literally be the minimum. Okay. Not right. 4,500, not 4,800. Okay. But 4,000. Fair. Aaron Zhang will not be happy with your comment. We, there. we, we do need to honor Aaron. Oh, a check raise from Badziakuski here is. He seeks to bring this pot into focus. Well, when you see the small continuation bets and you see a board that's supposed to hit your range more, you tend to check raise a bit more often than not. But with queen 10, you bet small. You do invite these check raises, but you got enough equity. You got to draw to the nuts. You're going to continue. Now the 10 on the turn hits both players for top pair. Advantage Silva with that queen kicker, though.
Into 82 comes 20K. Yeah, I think Bads was thinking, I don't really want to get all the chips in there, but I don't want this to check through as well. As played, Silva probably will be calling here. You know, it's, it's a good hand, but it's not optimal to get a lot of chips in. Going to a time bank, Randy, I think this is a little bit surprising. Yeah, most certainly, because if he was to make a play at this pot, it feels like you're only getting called by better. And that's the type of board texture that you get check raise on, and they bet again. They could have a pretty big hand here with two pair plus very easily. So I'm kind of curious as to why he, what he's thinking, I suppose. It does feel like a a fairly speedy call would have been the natural line to take. Yeah. And now a second time bank is being used. Maybe Silva's thinking about how he's going to approach the river unimproved here on the turn. Well, I feel like you could call and decide, use those time banks on that street instead. So, Oh, my God, he jams, yeah. Randy. Wow. Wow. Now, mind you, Bads blocks the queen jack, but so does Silva. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think Bads thinks that Silva would make, like, a pair straight draw play like this. I, I think he thinks if Silva had queen 10, he would just call the bet. It's kind of, it's hard to create some bluffs that Silva, I mean, Silva's, I think Silva thinks he can get, like, I feel that he thinks he can get like a weak two pair to fold is the logic. You think there's a little bit of six seven maybe in Silva's range or no, this is just too big a raise to put in there. This doesn't feel nutted. It, it doesn't feel like a straight to me. Ever. It, doesn't, it, it doesn't feel like a straight, but it could feel like a two pair. That's like, you know what? This board's getting a little bit too connected. Okay. I don't want to see a jack queen or so. I know I've got the best hand. You can see that. And then let's just say Bazikowski has like eight five. No, uh, eight nine. But like, wouldn't would eight nine though? If you're Silva, ever take this line? Look, I, I don't. I wouldn't think so. But because you're just never getting called by worse with eight nine, are you? You shouldn't be. Hmm. This is actually a very interesting play. I mean, Silva's taking some different lines that we we've seen. I think McKee is just... I'll tell you the hand this is never supposed to be is exactly what Silva has, which is Queen-10. Yeah. And that's worrisome because as Badziakuski plays back this pot in his mind, which was an open from Silva, a defend from Bads, a check raise on the 985 rainbow board, then a 20K barrel into 80, just quarter pot and a pile from Silva. What makes sense? Not much makes sense. Um, I'm guessing that Bads is, has a idea of what he thinks certain how silver plays certain hands, and I think those assumptions might be a little bit wrong. Good, good lay down of Jack Ten, but wow, what a play from Silva! Just uh, it's kind of like a mergey kind of shove, right? It's kind of like I'm charging those Jack Tens. I'm kind of semi bluffing against some other hands. Not too sure, but uh, that's quite an interesting one. And it's not the first unconventional line that we've seen the Brazilian take here as he and his cohorts will make their way elsewhere in the room to give way to a new feature table as the players will be going to a break and return to blinds of 2,500 and 5,000 with the 5K ante, Mike Rocco, the chip leader at that table on his way elsewhere in the room along with Ten Kim who is looking to claw his way back as we welcome you back to our broadcast booth here in Hoi An, Vietnam for the continuation of event number one, the GG Super Millions. And Randy, after our second frame here, what was the takeaway for you? I suspect it's going to be the Pablo Silva story. Yeah, I mean, Pablo Silva, like, he's just kind of been doing some unconventional plays that we're not used to. And that's what I like to see. I like to see, like, these guys that come out to these high-stakes events and taking their game and testing it against the opponents. And... You know, that Queen-10 was very unconventional, but um, I definitely want to kind of think about this on my time off. Like, yeah. hmm, you know, what what is the merit to the play? Uh, it was definitely very interesting, and I'm not too sure what to make of it yet. 
but we can see that he did get Makita to fold a hand that had a decent amount of equity. Sure, and I wonder what Makita's going to make of things after he catches up on the delay on the stream, because he's certainly curious about what Silva had in that particular spot, and in about an hour's time, he's going to find out. In the meantime, Randy will step out of the booth. I will step away for a break. Henry Kilbane will be replacing Randy, and we will be back in about 10 minutes' time with continuing coverage of event number one here from the Triton Super High Roller Series in Vietnam. Keep it close. Start your journey towards becoming a winning poker player today with the Tournament Masterclass. I designed a blueprint that has helped me and countless students to become consistent winning players in poker. We simplify and teach concepts that work. Preflop, postflop, ICM preflop and postflop, final tables, multi-way, a whole population analysis, a GTO bible and many play and explain live footage showcasing all the concepts and exploits taught in the term masterclass. Don't waste any more time on complex strategies that simply don't work and join the term masterclass and start winning in poker whether it's online or live poker. Oh my God, a jam from Smilkovic out of threes. And so the German has just two outs once here in just the first couple of orbits at our featured table, still in level one. Yeah, 
Um, just pretty much didn't think Greenwood could have a set too often given the preflop action, but just misread that, I believe. Nine of diamonds on the end does not improve Smilkovich, and he is going to be crippled down to just 13K. Yeah, what's important is you make assumptions about what the preflop sizing dictates, what ranges they have. And if Smirkovic didn't think that Green would fly. Well, the official rule is we have to stand up for text. Is that, is that how that works? Yeah. That's what he said. Okay. Ace eight here for Smirkovic on the button. And he's going to put the rest of his so when I chips how much, so out there. Really a devastating first level for him as his two queens ran into the pocket threes of Sam Greenwood, who got sticky out of the small blind. Flopped middle set against the over pair and got a full double with cheese. Meanwhile, the ace king suited three bets and gives Smilkovic some protection, but also gives him some bad news as this first ever Triton event is not going so swimmingly for the German, Randy. No, not a good start for him. Um, we'll see how this run out goes. If it isn't favorable, he does have the option to re-enter. Well, the 10 and the 9 working in conjunction with that 8 of clubs, but runner runner needed for the time being in terms of straight potential. Any 8 would do the trick as the turn's a blank, and there is the 8 of diamonds. And oh. Smokovich can hardly believe it. He's like, wait, me? Run good? What? I was about to take off that microphone. Okay. So as long as I have them. Two jacks. Maybe he will spin it up. Uh, it's going to take a lot of spins. The 2K open, just a min-raise. This ace-nine suited for Mizzy. Might give some action. He yeah. did see Smirkovich, what, raise fold earlier with like 11, 12 blinds. That's right. Nope. Wow, just folds it. He saw, he smelt that ace-queen right behind him. Uh, I guess so, because Dvoris definitely isn't putting his hand into the muck from the button. Most definitely going to re-raise this against such a shallow stack. Upstairs we go. 6K. Another all in for Smirkovich. They're racing. Advantage two jacks against two overs. It will be but a flesh wound to Dvoris if he is unable to dispense Smirkovich. And the 6 7 8 flop is in favor of the German, who is looking for his second double. Board pairs on the turn, just need to fade an ace or a queen here on the river, which he has done. I'm calling now, he's getting back to starting stack. <laughs> Give him another hour. 39,000. I feel like it's almost frustrating there, sharing the nine, six, four, deuce flop. Advantage. Rocco with the diamond draw here. We did see Soiza lead on this kind of board texture with a little gutty, but... Unsuccessful, of course, <laughs> as he went three barrels against Adamo. I think it was exactly 6-4 deuce as well. Yeah, it was queen five of spades on a two-spade flop. Greenwood with the gutter. Has checked it. Rocco taking his time before reaching out. And delivering a 5,500 chip follow through. Lack of a heart on this board is obviously a disappointment to Greenwood as it removes the backdoor prospects. It's not the nicest piece, but you know what?
And welcome back inside our broadcast booth here at the Hoi An Resort and Golf and Casino. Let us not forget here in Hoi An, Vietnam, Ali Najad, alongside Henry Kilbane for our first stint together, Henry. And I understand during the better part of the day, you two were soaking up the stream. So obviously you bore witness to some of the fireworks that we saw, not the least of which was the Brazilian Pablo Silva squaring off against Makita Badziakuski just before the break. What a pot that was. Yeah, I just managed to catch the back end of that and not surprised to see those two titans locking at mm -hmm. our feature table in this 25k. We've got some big names out there, Ali. We definitely do. And we've got some new names out there as sure. well. As we turn our attention to our brand new feature table, we teased it just before the break, and it includes some first timers as we get a look now there. And I'm going to let you take this one, Henry. You obviously are familiar with the poker landscape at large. Who do you want to focus on here? Uh, Jonathan Jaffe stands out straight away from, from the US. I think he's just been on an absolute tear recently over the last 18 to 24 months. Seems to just run deep in everything he touches. Obviously, Puntsri, let's not forget, our main event champion from back in Cyprus at Merit. Uh, Soiza, Tent Watson, I mean, all of these names, big names, Vieira and Ponikovs, as well as our new Latvian brother, I believe. Uh, I Latvian believe it's a Lithuanian, Lithuanian brother. Go ahead. Are you going to pronounce it? <laughs> uh, do it. We're going to go with uh, Lazar Ninkas. Gitis Lazar Ninkas. Crusher, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. He's, well, he's a newcomer to Triton, obviously, but not a newcomer to poker by any stretch of the imagination. As we are just about ready to send you back down to this new feature table, where we'll have new table dynamics and a new opportunity to feast our eyes on some of the interactions that are to come here. It has been wildly entertaining thus far. Pleased to have you with us, regardless of where you're soaking up our coverage, be it on Twitch, be it on YouTube, be it on the Triton Poker Plus app. Always a pleasure, a truly international affair, not just in terms of players, but in terms of fans as well. And there they are with Jonathan Jaffe leading the pack. 123 blinds deep, 600K plus, and a massive drop-off, Henry, to KT, one of two Thai players here at this table, Punat Punsri, the other who has a Triton title, we have the likes of Watson and Soiza, both veterans of the Triton Tour. And then you have Joao Vieira, the Portuguese player, 240,000 in front of him. Alex Ponikovs, by the way, didn't mention his name, but here's a guy who obviously tremendously experienced in Triton. And then the newcomer, Lazao Ninkas, with just 78,000, 16 bigs, blinds at 2,500 and 5,000. Those chip counts brought to you by Poker Stake. Yeah, I believe Ponikov's first Triton came back in Madrid last year and is widely regarded as one of the toughest players out there at the moment, especially over the last year or so. But just looking at this feature table, I mean, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this has got to be one of the toughest lineups I've seen in recent memory. Just Stone Cold Killer sat next to Stone Cold Killer. Good luck finding the spot at this table. Yeah, and, and it's just so demoralizing when you draw your table and then you show up and you look around you and you see this host Smallest of talent I've ever seen for a, yeah. Yeah. that you're surrounded yeah. by. Table, stream table. It's yep. nice. they don't have like In particular, by the way, Henry, when you, you know that at the this price point, point, especially with like the, uh, yeah, the, the 10 GG online really qualifiers that fuel yeah. the, uh, no, the field as well, you expect that maybe yeah, there's going to be somebody yeah, more yeah, on the amateur yeah, side of the spectrum. Not <laughs> here. Feel like normal no, cards, though, not right at all. Yeah, and it's funny because I had the feeling that we were going to be getting a fair few amateurs in the mix. Who you prefer to see on your Here is Professor or... Michael okay. Soiza under the Malaysian flag. Thank you. One of the co-owners of the Asian um, Poker Tour, where I understand, Henry, you spent some time in the like booth the uh, prior to this particular yeah. event. I, I did, oh yeah. I had the pleasure God. of joining them out cool in uh, Hanoi <laughs> <laughs> about a month Even ago. Your <coughs> really a trying to bluff. grow the game in Asia. <laughs> yep. Fun spot show the bat for Punsri. Yeah. All options available on the table here. Yeah, don't waste them when we're not even in a Small hand. Small blind against the button open. <laughs> Bad business. And he's going to push back on the yep. open one, from uh, Soiza. Uh, Dominated. Play one poker round. in America. Oh. As you're able that. to find us. That. <laughs> they really will be like, all right, this guy's Fold capable of bluffing. <laughs> if I want to yeah, nice hand to do it with. <laughs> yes. King Jacko. <laughs> don't want to invite the big blind in by just flatting. 
can also just take down the pot pre. And you know the nice thing about small blind v big uh, v button is we're actually going to have Michael dominated in, in a few spots as well. Two clubs, two sevens, and an eight roll off. Not in the vicinity of either one of these holdings. As Punat has control of the betting in this inflated 80k pot. King Jack, no club. 80k in the middle. Florida. I see proposition straight off the bat, given the shallow SPR. Soiza has Punat covered. In Florida? And Punsri yeah. likes to check. Feelings on that decision? Yeah, I was just I was just mulling it over as the action on Punsri's check. I feel like not having a club in hand, not even backdoor diamonds. Just going to wave the flag on this one. Note Soiza in position, content to check back as well. Now the texture continues to evolve in an unfavorable direction for like, both holdings. Uh, remember like Ed Hardy and Affliction? Yeah, Jack, obviously. Brands. Plenty of showdown. Uh, like, <coughs> Lots of these small. Like, um, kind of a, a muscle See, Punsri would wear it, like, tries to fold out ago, some ace hides here with the delayed C, but it doesn't. I'm going to knuckle it over to Soiza like, for a second maybe, time. Like, um, like that brand would sell like a, a lip balm at Walmart or something, and like all the assholes who were like spending 100 bucks on a t-shirt they... <laughs> back when 100 bucks was a lot. <laughs> I would expect to see... Oh, Soiza. I always get very excited when a designer brand gets very mainstream. 25% and stab on this six of hearts turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Just aware that he has the best hand, try and fold out some of those king queens, king jacks like of the, the world, peak, and a snap like fold from like our reigning main Hardy event champion. Ed Hardy and Affliction, yeah. Yeah. Affliction was like the big, like, a lot of like the UFC fighters were wearing it at the time or something, so you got all these, like, muscly guys in, like, their 40s who go to the gym a lot, like, always wearing it. Well, from fashion to timekeeping, we bring you a peek at just some of what's on offer from Jacob and Company, one of our marquee spar and gambling themed gear. The perfect watch brand for you. Their astronomy super, super a casino piece has that functioning yeah. roulette wheel. I remember like when it first started with so them. I'm like, Wait, these guys are, going to be are wearing awarding a special balls with snakes going through it and like vampires and shit. Like and time piece. And bejeweled as well, right? Bejeweled. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, it was like a practical joke. So it was just like minutes. opposite day. Yeah. <laughs> like if the Dungeons and Dragons crowd got into it, I would understand it. But like, it was just the opposite. <laughs> Jonathan Jaffe, by the way, offering up some hot takes on fashion labels. Gone awry, I believe like Ed Hardy and Affliction were the topics of year, discussion. Ed Hardy and Affliction's your whole wardrobe, and you can't tell anybody it's a joke. <laughs> oh. I mean, if you start wearing it, it's obviously a joke. I mean, forget about it. But he, he can't, he, even if he doesn't say shit, it's obviously a joke. I mean, look at him. Anybody who knows him will be like, what the fuck's going on with you, man? What's he doing with six months <laughs> in? Like, <laughs> be for real. Yeah, yeah. Blind be blind inner, here. Ed Hardy. Yes. Both I want to see either you or Adamo. I wore an Ed Hardy <laughs> t-shirt for Golden Halloween Hardy. one year, like ironically, in costume. <laughs> and uh, that was fun going into like the, the store and being like, I need like your most like terrible, like over the top, <laughs> ostentatious, just like ridiculous Ed Hardy shirt. And they're just like, okay. <laughs> Joao what with the mean? eights. Yeah. Ed ostentatious are uh, best, best looking one. Yeah, yeah best looking, yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit out of the loop, Harley. Ed Hardy. <laughs> You're missing nothing at all. Okay. It was uh, cool. noted. Yeah. It was a, a fashion label that was espoused by the muscly MMA fan kind of set. It's like uh, oh, okay. tattoo. Oh, okay. I, I don't know yeah, how yeah. better to describe it. I'm just happy like it's gone. Meanwhile, Lazaninkas checks back the. Seven high remains unimproved on the turn here. No, no, no. Money went in on the flop. Oh, did it? It was 5k, 5k. I was so focused on explaining Ed Hardy. Forgive me. <laughs> so he's just floating. He's he's out there taking it to the streets with the seven of clubs. Some, you know, connectivity around that five as well with the seven six. Perhaps also looking for this opportunity, which appears to have been 
bestowed upon him by Joao, courtesy of the check to Repa King. Five k in the middle, sixty three k behind. Having a club feels kind of bad here. You want to fold out some of the one club floats of Vieira. Look at the Inquisition there of optical variety. Joao peering in to Lazaminkas' soul, asking himself. Whether or not a king is contained in this 16k position bet on the turn. Perhaps, but nevertheless, we fight on, it would appear. Call was made. Yeah, not too often you get to see these 0% equity barrels. And... Shit's Creek without a paddle. Just seven high. 57k out there. Clubs do brick. Unblocking some of the ace highs as well. Will the L train continue to barrel? I think the only sizing would be all in, Ali. Yeah, just 47k behind. Uses a time bank. Table has gone silent in this blind v blind confrontation as well. Oh my word. Not quite all of it though. Left Leaves himself. himself 5k back. How about the spice straight off the bat? From the L train. It's a king or nothing at all, right? I mean, it, there's really no other explanation for this line, right? In terms of how Joao is perceiving. Yeah. L train has definitely polarized himself here. Bricked clubs or a king. Which, I th you know, blind v blind, I think. Can comfortably jam himself 5k back. Call represents about 20% of the area stack. Vieira, another world-class player going to think this one through. Throws out the time bank plaques. He mulls over this decision here, and he flicks in the old one-chip call. Gets shown the seven high and tables the pocket eights, and the L train down to just one big. Yeah. Valiant effort. Hey, listen, man, if you're going to come to a, a try and stop, sometimes you got to empty the clip with just seven high and tip my hat to the L train. Both first timers to Triton, Diera and Lazaninkas. You went for it. I did. You I like L train, but, you know, let's La do him a little bit of justice. Lazaninkas. Uh, Jao Vieira, by the way, I mean, you think of OG online grinders and live grinders. I mean, he's been, he's been out there. Not short in the tooth, is he? Six point five million in total live earnings. Also known as NASA. I wanna say number one on Portugal's all time money list if I'm not mistaken. KT bumping things up from plus one. Second in chips. Chip leader covering in the big. As a Ninkus. We get his final 5k in the middle with the 10-6. Two live cards. 
got himself no improvements on the 985 board. Can't say the same for KT, though. He's got himself top pair and backdoor nut spades. Two overs in the gut shot checking over to him for the side. I don't think the dealer could have pinged off a more exciting flop had they tried. As an Incas. Does have that gutter, right? Yeah, it's so. got the gutter. 10 no good. 25,000. Would give Jaffe the nut straight. Jonathan just going to get out of there with yeah. the two overs. What's a pot size bet or thereabouts? Perhaps a little surprised to see it, but Jaffe going to leave KT to do battle with Lazao Ninkas. Who is unimproved on the turn and now down to a 10 or a 7. And instead, the river pairs his six. GL announced to the rest of the table. I'm sure we'll be seeing more of Lazaninkas. Maybe even a re-entry, Ali, in this 25K. Yep. Re-entry period is still open. KT. Climbing up the ranks here in this 25k GG Super Millions. Live Super Millions. It's one of the highlight tournaments of the week online. It's really become the tournament to win. Mm -hmm. And to see it live for the first time, some of these guys who have, you know, won it several times over, KT. Came second, if I'm not mistaken, in the uh, GG main for like 1.5 million. Oh, baby. Back end of last year. He's normally in the mix. Tremendous amount of support in the high roller community for these Super Millions events. And that has translated to participation here in the first of what looked to be several. Super Millions live events. We have already committed here at the Triton Series to hosting yet another one of these at our next stop, which is yet to be announced. There we go. How, you just have all what the insider have info, Ali, uh, don't three, you? I have very little of it, but when I get some... You love dangling the camera. I do milk. You do. <laughs> so is it with Ace Four suited. 10K to go. Min raise open. Suited and connected is Vieira. Up over 300K on the button. Bit of a dress down before choosing to flat. Jaffe with the easy fold, and now Ponikovs. Uh, Ponikovs with a potential three bet jam spot. I think he has all the options available. Calling seems fine. Something in the realm of eight big blinds also seems fine, but jamming the option that he's going to take here. Yeah. And why did you have to? <laughs> <laughs> Dispenses the opposition. Vieira wanted to see a flop with a very pretty looking 9 8 of spades with no dice. Make a bad big bad three Speaking of pretty looking. Credibility on here. Yep, yep. It's like some Daft Punk styled hoodie oh, going on. I was going to go with like a mid 80s Miami nightclub Glasses. owner. Found the way say it though. <laughs> With a dash of like, it's like John Travolta, old, uh, you know, Tron wardrobe department. <laughs> These trying events do bring out some flavor. I tell you that much. Uh, our... Listen, it has become clear that between timepieces, yes, and like name brand tracksuits and and like really like high-end fashion labels, the boys do level one another beyond simply on the felt. The, the wardrobe, the fashion, the, a little bit small. the watches, it's all out there. I feel like there's no middle ground as well. You're either yeah. no, 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 bougie, no. Yeah. Yeah. you know? You, you just go out hard there, you go or hard, not at all. Or you're just out here with the shorts and t-shirt yeah. on kind of thing. Right. 
It's like Apple Watch shorts and T-shirt or <laughs> half a million dollar RM and nine thousand dollar one-off sweatsuit. Like that's that's kind of the range. As two pocket pairs square off and look up at two over cards here in a raised pot pre Soiza. The antagonist, action on him. Queen Jack three, no heart in hand for Michael. Oh, a beautiful turn card for Ponikovs after the check check as he makes a set of nines. Now I can't get that image out of my head, Ali. Thank you for that one. Looks like a man that owns a speedboat that has a port of call somewhere off the Colombian coast, if I'm being honest. Really, just in the cargo business, if you will. Has a submarine laying around. <laughs> <somewhere>. <laughs> Couldn't get Soyza to bite on the turn, and now it's nines full for Alex. He's going to ship him the rope for a third time, and he's going to get to the table. Yeah. The full hand, uh, the full hand, full house, rather. You do got it. <laughs> He has got it indeed. You know how when you put a pair of red socks on accident into the whites load in the laundry? <laughs> Imagine if you threw what was an otherwise unblemished tracksuit into that same wash, but with like a neon sign. That's what comes out 30 minutes later. It's dead sexy, if I do say so myself. It is Kill sexy. Me. I don't know if I could get away with it. I, honestly, I would pay, pay good money to, to see. And pull it off <laughs> unsuccessfully. I, I think you could pull it off. I think this is exactly what you need. <laughs> to complete, like, the, the scumbag effect? No, just the full circle. You know, yeah. just the full 180. Yeah. Arlene Najjar. My metamorphosis from... just. Slightly respectable human to completely deplorable one would be complete. Uh, Alex looks great out there. <laughs> I'm just going to officially yeah. Yeah. make that statement. He I'm was tired of letting Badzi Akuski have all the tracksuit fame here at Triton. Sorry, was it Bads? Bad? I feel like Bads, Bads really is, is up the tracksuit legend. Good, sure. I should just check the app, right? Like, what, what am I calling for? I don't know. I've played some Grand Theft Auto. I'm not too shy to tell you. And I, I, I know these characters. <laughs> Jack 8-4, all diamonds, as KT's got the lone flush draw here, blind v. blind. Sir Watts with the action check to him. Yeah, I, too, used to enjoy snapping glow sticks as a child and mm, yes. pouring the liquid out into, like, white T-shirts and whatnot. Well, now, snapping them, in my experience, was simply to activate. You were actually hull breaching. Exactly. And oh, So you're like one of those kids that microwaved them? <laughs> you were. That explains a lot, by the way. <laughs> I feel like, you know, had I known where fashion would have gone to 20 years later, I yeah. could have you chosen a different path. Yeah, no doubt. Maybe I was onto something. KT's path involved a check call and then making... The 10 high flush on the turn as Watson took a modest stab in position and is now adrift with total air. Yeah, Watson just going to give up here the old one and done. Rivers some, some showdown, although. Oh, stop it. I mean, this ship is scuttled. 25k out there, KT. With the third knots. Feels like a big bet size. But could also go milky. It's gone small. Assume this a byproduct of after the turn going check check. It's not giving Watson many flushes and trying to get a crying call from some Jack X, some Atex of the world. Vacation, just four days. Yeah. Hold it over, deuce in the muck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice hand, KT. Note the numbers on the bottom 
of your screen, Ali. Creeping up, 112 players now in this 25k. Yeah. Currently looking at the app as well, the Triton Poker Plus app, Calvin Lee out in front. But a newcomer, Alex Kulev, second in chips. Alex Kulev, widely regarded, another one of those kind of young, up and coming online guys that has quite the resume. Calvin Lee, by the way, at the top of that leaderboard with a good bit of distance between himself and Kulev, also a first timer to Triton. So, yeah. love to see. Roland Rakita, third. McBoyfin for the online OG fans out there, Marcus Lakonin, it sat in four. So, I don't know, man. These Triton stops. They're getting more and more interesting. They really are. Some of, the, some of the guys that said they would never leave the comforts of their own homes have now ventured out to Vietnam for this series, and you'd love to see it. Suited and connected. Ponikovs shoots it up. Watson a customer out of the small, and now a beautiful ace-queen suited awaiting Soiza in the big. Oh, you were saying American Airlines in general. I thought you meant American Really interesting Airlines. spot like, for Michael yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. in terms of how he wants to proceed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Many of them also are very short. It's squeezing uh, mandatory. Be a cut-off yeah. open. The, yeah. So, like, there's all these regions. It's the old five and a half X. Those, yeah. Oh, they're, they're really bad. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it makes sense, and they're they're good businesses that should exist, but you don't want to get caught on it. I took a thirty dollar flight once from Vegas to Austin, Texas, and I was like, should not have done this. You paid thirty dollars, didn't you? Yeah. So. And I didn't you think got, I got what you paid for. I did. Yeah. <laughs> it was definitely not cheated, but uh, it was a bad choice. But it's so appealing. You see, <laughs> like I'm fucking teleporting at that price. Konikov's using a time bank here as he decides how to proceed with this suited connector. Jonathan Jaffe admitting to having the unfortunate line item on his travel resume of a $30 domestic flight in the States. It's just different. Yes. We're all guilty of that. Fix it up. No, we're not all guilty. Not of you, sorry. Any. Sorry to put you in the not same. I, I Same bracket as us mere mortals. No, it's, so the, it's just, the time you, you just got to know what you're dealing with. with. If you're going to have oh, roosters and sheep in your row, you already know you've know underspent on, yeah. on that flight. <laughs> it's livestock air, I believe, is <laughs> why you get $30 from Vegas to Austin. From Vegas to Austin. It's not a short flight. What is that, like a four hour? Four hour? Uh, no, it's under three, I think. But no, it's it right around <laughs> doesn't stick. That's like flying London to Madrid. It does not stick. Wow. I always forget just how big. US is big. Yeah, the massive. audience you yeah. gotta reach, come on. So Texas is big. I mean, hold it It'll take you a full day to drive across Texas. <laughs> Get some double sided tape on these guys. And here is Jaffe. Ace eight, good for an open. Off of roughly 600,000. Yet another first-timer to Triton. Three of them in total scattered about the field here at the feature. Snowmen for Ponikovs. Wants to play for more. And Jaffe promptly letting go of that ace eight. Henry promptly going to the hand and mob streets is I was expecting cool perhaps it was just my presumption that if Jaffe had participated in oh the yeah, Triton before, he certainly would have cashed based on one. his talents. So. But indeed, he did he join us in North Cyprus in last year. Not so did not cash. Still a relative thing. newcomer. Did he cash? He did, yeah. Oh, forgive me. 75K, oh, came ninth and came second in the 50K. Okay. I've had a complete aneurysm. It's that coffee, you know. 
It's the lack of coffee. No, no. Service. Bring bring me another. Service Apologies to painful. Jonathan Jaffe. 560,000 in career earnings. Two caches at his last try. Second place finish as well. Yeah, what am I thinking? Three alter regals. Smack me up when you see me, Jonathan. Three alter egos. Yeah. So what is uh, no glasses Ponikov? What's he like? Ace queen for KT. Makes it 11 to go. Nope. Ace six finds them up promptly. But ace, seven, ace seven suited in the small. Might be a slightly more challenging proposition. Seven for pun three, 34 bigs. It's going to pill. Play the rest of this hand out of position against his fellow countrymen. Two guys really making a name for talent coming out of Thailand in a recent memory of the last 12 months or so. Game definitely growing in that country which is where you've been calling home of late. It is indeed. I was actually sat next to Punsri on the flight over from Bangkok Bye to yeah. Da Nang. He had his whole hey. entourage with him. I want to say team of 10, 12 yeah. buddies. You know, they, they all come and uh, they were mocking him as we landed, saying, hey, Punsri, this time if you win a tournament, don't worry. It won't just be you in the winner's pick. Uh, at least you have friends with you this That's time. That's right, so, yeah. yeah. I, I do remember in North Cyprus when he did pick up his title, it was uh, a little quiet on set, but he'll be sure to fix that. By the way, there's seems to be a production team also that's following around like our Thai participants here. I know that there's a lot of content creation yep. that those guys are responsible for that's helping to grow the game domestically in Thailand and obviously responsible for added interest in our Triton festivals out of that part of the world, as we see KT going to work once more on the heels of having followed through on the monotone board with the Queen Eye flush draw, an easy escape for the A7 suited. So what's gonna peel one off? Yeah, understandable. Fives for Soiza now. Gonna accept accept the invitation to go set mining. Jaffe not interested in defending the 10-4. We have ourselves a little multi-way affair here. 45k out there. Ace nine deuce. Lovely development there for KT. Top pair in the Jack High flush draw, choosing to check out of position. Bit of pot control being employed. Around to Soiza. A little temptation taking root here. Able to potentially represent the ace. Barrels 12,000, does have the five of hearts working, granted unsuccessfully. Yeah, a little stab on this mono board. Fold out some some broadways that have two overs to our pocket fives. Have equity against ace X without a heart, obviously. You can see in pretty rough shape here. 69k out there. Looking for a five. Oh well. my god. The five of clubs from outer space being delivered to the turn. What a disastrous development as KT checks again. Byproduct of stabbing with the fives is you can always turn a set, Arley. Not easily. Not at all. My goodness, where did that card come from? Really interesting spot for KT, especially given that he's holding 
Very key card, the Jack of Hearts, blocking hands like Jack-10 suited, Queen-Jack, King-Jack suited. Expect to have heard from Ace-King pre, maybe some Ace-Queen-O's, Ace-Queen with the Queen of Hearts. And as we kind of begin to remove those hands from the equation, we begin to question what exactly it is we need to be afraid of. Pocket nines, certainly a hand that Michael would flat against the early position mm. open. Now a black king on the river as KT has taken this passive line. And I suspect we'll see a third and final check out of KT on the river and we'll see just how much value Soiza pursues. As prophesized, there is the check. In Soyuz's seat, what do you come with here, Henry? Pocket fives, five of heart. I'm gonna try and size up. Somewhere in the realm of two thirds. Try and get crying calls from the ace X with a heart. Ace kings. There are going to be some, you know, ace king no heart in hand that KT is going to approach this monotone board in a passive way with. One four nine out there. Two eight four behind. One hundred and fifteen thousand, and boy, that's not a comfortable amount to be facing with this ace jack as KT surveys the balance of his tokens, 346,000. Good chunk on request here from Soiza. And note, by the way, in relation to Soiza's remaining stack also, this 115 represents a, an even bigger chunk. What a grim spot for Tent. Very easy to level yourself in this situation as well. And, you know, when you reverse engineer how the flop played out. Hey, I opened from plus one, but then I checked over to Michael, who's very of barreling river. I mean, the fact that Michael's barreling fives with a heart, is he going to barrel sixes, sevens, eights with a heart? I think it's safe to assume that if he's betting fives, he's also going to bet those. Maybe not eights, but five, sixes, sevens. Would he then continue with those hands on the turn and then continue firing? Do we rule the naked spacer? king of hearts out? I think I do. Because of the showdown one. value there? No, just because of the positions. I don't think Michael's going to be flatting any King Queen O's, King Jack O's, and he mm. does get paid off. Set announced, and Michael Soiser is taking down a 379,000 chip pot, Ali. Tilt of the head there on the river, and sympathy for KT. Soiza well aware of just how fortunate he was to bink that turn and then get two additional streets of value beyond the stab on the flop. Yes, KT will be left to nurse the remains of his stack. Still playable in depth. Top pair, jack of hearts. Couldn't find the mark. Would you buy a used car from Alex Ponikovs dressed like that? Just with no Carfax report, you know, no sort of <laughs> provenance at all. I don't think that's the question, Ali. I I, I, it doesn't strike me as a, a used car salesman. Maybe. Well, he might own the like used a, car like lot. He could be the sales manager. Could be. You know. Maybe a catamaran. <laughs> like, would, I, would I buy a 2017 catamaran named. Um, <laughs> you know Snowfall? <laughs> And the, the answer is no. I didn't know I was capable of that. Yeah. The answer is to be I don't think I really buy anything other than contraband from him. And even then. <laughs> Buntry here with red needles. Makes it tend to go. Wow. 
<laughs> Maybe a spare ticket to Burning Man. Yeah, it just approaches you randomly in a nightclub. No. Yeah, no? Be. Is that not <laughs> the look? Maybe the best thing with the eyebrows. Like, yeah. <laughs> Soviet-era warheads. Decommissioned. Just for collective purposes, not actual utilization. <laughs> I, have, I really do have an inappropriate imagination. Oh my oh, word. And, and very little self restraint, which is a, a lethal combination. It's interesting because when I was tuning in, listening to you and, to and Randy, <laughs> it seemed, you know, very, very tame, very PG. You guys were just dialed in, calling the action. And as soon as I show up. The showman is like, no, it's not you. TV is going to see me call with the worst hand. Get it out of here. It's <laughs> Ponikovs that showed up. Right? He's, he just triggered. All of my imagination. It's, oh, you know, I'm, I'm inspired. Five to give. Swords. Ace queen for Punsri. 113 runners. That number creeping up. Event number one of the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series here in Vietnam. It's the 25k GG Super Millions Live Edition. An event that many of us have watched online over the years. An event I believe you've even commentated on with the likes of Jeff Gross, Nanonoko, Kevin Martin, if I'm not mistaken, some of the GG team that have called the action on yep. that online edition. No online screen names here, Ali. The real deal. As that's Ryan Soyza square off in this three bet pot. Yep. O for one is Punsri in these spots, and he is behind here with the benefit of position and control of the action. 72 5 in the middle. A hijack V plus one Punsri. Be somewhat concerned of what the condensed range of Soyz is going to look like. Uh, the plus one open, then continuing against the three bet. It's just obsession of like shopping, you know. This deep as well. Twenty-four <laughs> k <laughs> on request from Punsri. Of course, the two fives not going anywhere. Yeah, so is it keeping him honest? Put out with a nice hand to bet flop with two overs, queen of spades in hand as well. Third spade finds its way to the turn and now Ali pots heist bet behind for Punat. Almost exactly one SPR. Queen of spades in hand, blocking hands like queen 10, king, queen of spades. It would seem like an unnecessary caliber barrel to fire at this turn to accomplish the feat 42. of trying to take this pot down. And certainly, he dials it back to 42,000. Yeah, this turn barrel put out. Kind of saying that, hey, listen, pal, I, I've got an overpair with a spade in hand. That third spade. It also kind of says the rest me. is the rest is headed your way on the end, doesn't it? For sure, yeah. I mean, the SPR going to the river would be around 0.4. Should Soyza call. And how about it? Oh my, Soyza is staying sticky, calls the 42,000, and this is unsettling for Punat, unimproved on the river. Let's see, nine of diamonds. Not the greatest card for two fives, by the way, in case Puntry was pressing any sort of draw, but we maybe remove any of that stuff out of his range given the preflop three bet. Yeah, I have to have to agree with you on that one. I think yeah, the Queen Tens, Ten Nine suiteds of the world, likely going to just flat. 
the disaster to three bet and then fold, not get to see a flop. Especially with four players behind as well, and he's going to wave the white flag and get shown the pocket pair. I wonder if maybe Punsri had set himself up for a bit larger <laughs> bet on the river in relation to the pot. He might have felt more comfortable taking the three barrels, but as played, staring at 78 with 200 out there, he decides to knuckle back, sensing it doesn't have enough weight behind it. Like those table sages, they were so like, low. Yeah, it gets to river with 0. 0.4 SPR and just feels like yeah. it's never getting Michael to fold. Hands that continue on the turn. Argument in favor, by the way, of maybe just pressing on the turn instead of of looking to deploy it in two stages. Just jamming turn. Yeah. yeah. I don't hate it. 2020 hindsight, of course, as Soiza is surging up to the top of the leaderboard as we get a look at the chip counts brought to you by Poker Stake Blinds. We'll go to three and 6,000 with a 6K ante. We're not Punsu, sliding down to just 13 bigs now. Shout out Poker Stake. Saw some of the players, by the way, selling action mm -hmm. over on Poker Stake into this event. Really does create an added dynamic for the viewing public to be able to make an investment, have a rooting interest financially. Yeah, get to buy action from some of your favorite players. Makes the experience of watching a live stream all the more painful, right? See, I think I hedge and buy action from some of my least favorite players. That way, <laughs> if they do well, at least I make money. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's the sickness that I'm infected with. I mean, spoken like a true day trader. <laughs> Longing and shorting. Yeah. Aggressive buying and hedging, I mean. Not enough hedging, if we're honest. As Watson defends his big with the 10-7, promptly flops top pair up against Jaffe's open. Jonathan checking back the king high. Asa Hartz rolls off on the turn. You see how Jaffe reacts. A little delayed C bet here. No dice. Gonna try and get his king high to showdown and well, see if Watson can squeeze out some value on this river or if he opts to just slide it on over to Jonathan for a third time. It does feel like those Broadway cards are out there and maybe looking to get to showdown for free fives through nines although you could argue likely to stab on the flop agreed yeah 9k milking here from watson as jaffe keeps him honest with the king high understandable as played i love it so what's a little 25 percent probe on the river gets paid off Exactly where he was at, Ali. One of the best to have ever played the game. And also recognizing that Jaffe's the kind of player who's competent enough to pay off in that spot. It's weird because, <laughs> you know, you don't feel respected when you get milked on the river like that. But, again, oftentimes it is a function of recognizing that this is a player of the caliber who can make the call with King High there as played. Yeah, talent, recognizing talent. Yeah. See the mutual respect between a lot of these players. Hold on. Punsri. Going to shove here under the gun with the King-9 suited. The remains of his tokens. As 
Soy's a, not going to be a customer. An orbit's worth of relief hauled in there. Punsri, by the way, just such a pleasant person to be around. Did the winner's interview with him in North Cyprus after he took down the 100K main event. 2.6 million dollar victory there. Two caches, one title in his very first ever Triton stop. Yeah, residing Awful in man. Bangkok with his family. Been on the road quite a lot the last year or so. This one obviously a lot closer to home. Now, where exactly were you taking up residence in Thailand? It wasn't Bangkok. It was in the beaches, was it not? At Phuket. Okay. Yeah. Home to the moonlight parties. Is that uh, right? No, that no? would be Koh Phangan, but okay. certainly plenty of parties in Phuket if you're looking for them. Are you on the guest list? I'm not. I am not. Not at the moment. One day. One day. Oh, I know what you're doing. <laughs> what was that? You're out there getting your Muay Thai. Huh? We're trying. We're trying. I paid for this much. <laughs> oh. are, you, are you going to compete? No. No. Come on, do it. All right, sure. Seeing that you are so kindly. I just... I just want to watch you. Get my head kicked in. Thanks, Harley. <laughs> Appreciate it. I knew where it was coming from. No, man. Worry. I don't want to see that happen to you. In any way that would cause permanent medical harm. <laughs> but just temporary hubris. <laughs> sort of see me lying in the, the back of an ambulance. I get it. I could I, see that I being... I just a, want to use smelling salts on someone. I've never, I've only seen it in the cartoons. So as you lay unconscious on the mat in a makeshift ring somewhere on a beach. You just bring out a pair of your socks. My socks are clean. Give you a pair of something else though. That <laughs> Raised to 12,000 here from Ponikov's. Pocket sixes have flatted for KT. One six busy in Vieira's hand. Much prefer an ace five, obviously, or any wheel connector to the ace six. And that would explain the fold in part. Wonderful flop for KT. Can't say the same for. Ponikovs. Yeah, see how Ponikovs wants to proceed here. Two overs, backdoor diamonds. 32 effective going to this flop. Significant over pair range advantage. Let's check it on over to KT. KT just north of 200,000. Thirteen K sprinkle. Doesn't strike me as the type of guy to fold two overs backdoor diamonds. Question is Does he just come with check call? Or does he really want to lean into this plus one open? Send the message right here to KT and check crazy does Ali. Makes him so tough to play against. Obviously, the check raise is not going to have anything to do more often than not with this specific board and more so representing strength preflop. 100%. In hand. Yeah, opening off of sub 35 from plus one into this lineup as well, Ali. I mean, this isn't just any 25K lineup. You know, we've got some of the best players in the world behind you. Oh, and now the ace on the turn. 
strikes me as an opportunity for Ponikovs to rep, but the problem is if you're repping an overpair, it would have to be aces full on the turn here. And even then, if you turned aces full, how often would you seek to continue to bet with a nutted hand like that? And wouldn't the kings, queens, jacks of the world maybe slow down on arrival of the ace? Because certainly in KT's range would be some follow through with some ace highs. 100%. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think KT is going to have some ace deuces, ace five, some ace jack, ace ten. Although the ace of clubs rolling off does block the ace x of club floats on the four, four three. So I, I just don't think Ponikovs takes this line with an ace x of his own, which is why this looks suspect, and perhaps why KT chooses to, in short order, call the thirty seven k on the turn and now backdoor clubs and the wheel option both on the table kt almost beating him to the pot right on the turn, Ali. disconcerting and is ponikov's going to be done with it 177 out there i don't want to be too quick to jump into timing tells on the turn, not really sure what snap call means, but Ponikov's sensing weakness. 38K though, is it enough? Look at the price being laid, over five to one. Targeting exactly these types of holdings, sixes through nines, sixes through tens. Can we remove pocket threes and four X from Ponikov's range with great frequency in this spot? Uh, pocket fours, maybe not. I believe we are six-handed, seven-handed at the start of the hand. So opening from plus one, opening from the low jack, I think it's going to be opening fours. But would he bother to check raise the flop with a hand that nutted instead of maybe look to extend rope to KT, who looks really frustrated by this spot that he's in, but call. chips being compiled in his hand, and he finds the call. King high. And that is going to be a little bit of a gut punch to Alex Ponikovs. That one feels good, Ali, I tell you that much. It sure does. Almost Especially on the back end of that pot against Michael Soizer. The ace jack against the pocket fives. Upwards trajectory once again for KT. Ponikovs really went for it there, Henry, but I think the arrival of that ace on the turn after the check raise on the flop and he continued to bet began to maybe, strangely enough, make his hand look more suspect. Agreed or did, or? Uh, honestly, it, the line that Ponikovs took just smelt like value to me, but. Did it really? Yeah, but KT just maybe reading into that river sizing of like, hey, you know, if you're ace, ace X's of the world, would you not go for more value? Would you do this with a hand like tens through kings, as you mentioned? Yeah. I don't know. Well played by both. Trouble on the horizon here for Mike Watson, who opens to 12,000 and gets 3 x by the ace-queen suited of Soiza. See that little poker state graphic pop up just a few moments ago? I didn't. It's like an animation like a champion holding up a trophy saying stake your champion get involved ladies and gentlemen plenty of value to be had watson gonna peel in rough shape here cut off the hijack queen high flop could spell disaster pokerstake.com by the way the website to head to to get yourself involved grab a taste of some of the fan favorites out here on this triton poker series and for Watson, a very fortunate king high flop as queen high would not have been a pleasant development. Instead, here he is with top pair. 
Able to slip it over to Soiza, who's just got nut no pair, but control of the betting with 87K out there. No club on board, and he's going to take a stab. How modest. Three bet part, going to continue small and wide. Six thousand. Queen of Diamonds also a pleasant side card. Seventy thousand. These boys out here battling. So what's the snap check raised to seventy k? which she's not going to pull off with 100% frequency, but on this occasion, dials it up. Yeah, certainly competent enough to mix some some flush draws of the world. Want to have some top pairs in there as well. King, queen, queen of diamonds, one of our strongest. Now, well, well, well. Alex Kulov, first ever Triton tournament. Finds himself chip leading. Those of you that haven't already downloaded the Triton Poker Plus app. A lot of newcomers here in, in Vietnam. He's one of them. Another one of those young guns. Widely regarded as the best online players in the world. He's one of Alex Kulev. Talking the best online players in the world. McBoyfin, Marcus Lakelin still sat in fourth. Roland Rakita currently in fifth. Let's see Wushu, Thomas Mulocker in ninth. And we see two kings for Alex Ponikovs. And he is going to jam. 76,500, so he's a quickly asking for a count here. Don't think that he's going to get curious with the ace nine. 73,000. 73. 13? It's close, yeah, it does make the call. Ooh. Polakov's gonna have suited broadways and weak ace X's yeah. that are just gonna right. jam. I have an ace. Hi, G. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to take a spin. Unhappy to see that an ace is one of the two cards contained in Soiza's hand. As the flop is aceless, but there's a nine out there, which does. Because you hide your tears. Nine's a distraction. What are you doing? Adds outs to Soiza, and no longer does Soiza have outs, courtesy of the King of Diamonds on the turn. Big smile on the Latvian's face. from the deck. 17, three, right? Flirting with every card in the deck. Alex actually looks like a man who directs adult films. Well, like that, that, that's the look, isn't it? Is that the look? I don't know. Chat? I've never been on a set. Is that the look, chat? Unless you count directing one's own films. In which case I have been on a set, Henry. How do you continue to, to get invited into the booth time and time again? You just, you know where the line is somehow, and you dip your toe into the other side, but never, you never jump in, you know? It's always just a little dip. I, I disagree. I would say I cannonball <laughs> into that end of the pool with alarming frequency. But somehow, somehow, immunized by the spirit of humor, the perpetual pursuit of a laugh. I think, I think that's it. You know? I think that's what it boils down to. You just know how to make people laugh and they forget. I mean, come on. That tracksuit, it just... <laughs> you think I'm going to sit in here and gloss over? Kidding me? 
good when Alex knew what he was doing when he reached into his closet. He's like, oh, Ali's in the booth today? Actually, he thought about me not at all. In fact, I would venture to guess he doesn't even know who I am. I was about to say, <laughs> you're stretching a little bit as we jump into yeah. this Ty v. Ty all-in confrontation. Our reigning main event champion looking for an ace, 10, or a 5. KT. Stretching against the deuces. There is the five on the turn. And now it is KT who is in need of assistance. Looking for what would be a very ugly duckling on the river. <laughs> if you're Punsri, as Punat, able to cannibalize his countrymen there. And it has been a choppy affair for KT. Home is when you really need it. You can at least be optimistic on the way there. You need, you need to be yeah. asleep on the way home. I mean, it was full of poker players, uh, yeah. so bad chances. I see someone in the chat over on the Triton Poker YouTube channel saying, get I am Luckbox on the table. Michael Damo. Two-time champion. I believe winning both of those titles in Madrid last year. Thirteen five. Those of you currently watching over on YouTube, by the way, do be sure to Show some support in the form of a quick like. Takes a couple of seconds. Help us reach a wider audience, obviously, and push this free poker content out into the world. Click subscribe as well while you're at it. Do it. Four, five, and ten, seven. Small collision here. Watson. Jaffe. Action check to him. Chose not to stab at the ace king board there, Henry. You would all surprised to see it? Yeah, cut off the big blind ace king, deuce, rainbow. Expect to see him continue with close range, but I'm not going to question that man, I tell you that much. You know something I don't. Ops to check back on the nine of hearts turn. And how about the nuts for Sir Watts on the three of diamonds river? Pretty beautiful development there. Jaffe with just 10 high. So what's going to probe? It's a pot size probe at that. Ten high quickly hitting the mark. So what's up to over 400k now? It was indeed Daniel. Ananoko was in the booth earlier on alongside Ali Nishad. Are they begging Opening. for him back? They're questioning uh, the B team at the moment. And well, I take full responsibility for this chatter, if I'm honest. You can place all blame for any discomfort you're currently experiencing. Are you talking to me, me or the chat? Everyone. Everyone, okay. <laughs> but what about producer James? Looks pretty comfortable right now. Producer James hasn't been paying attention to us for the better part of the I agree. The day. He just he understands that he can't can't stop me. He can only hope to contain me. 
Ace five suited here for Jao Vieira. Makes it 15,000 to go. Sir Watts with dominated hearts. Does flat Soiza with a nice bit of kit to close the action with out of the big queen jack. Multi-way affair. 51K in the middle. Ace, king, and seven. Watson with second pair. Broadway gutty for Soiza. Both checking over to Joao. He's got... That plus one open from Vieira. Interesting spot. Ace five. A few options on the table. He is going to continue into the field. Try and fold out some of those gut shots of the world, get a bit of protection, as well as value from his top pair. Comes with third pot. Seventeen thousand. Soizen out. Getting the right price on a call. I'm not going to go gut shot hunting this time round. Unimproved on the turn is Watson, the lone customer of that C bet. Checking once more. Wouldn't blame Vieira for checking back here, just playing some pot control with the ace five. I agree. Yeah, I think uh, so. What's certainly going to have hands that have us crushed from the small blinds. Vieira with a bit of pot control, nine of hearts changes nothing. Ace five still good for Naza. So what's now after turn goes check, check? Do we want to check the side against the bet from Vieira? The ops to do. What would Joao be targeting if he did seek value in this specific spot? Exactly the King X's of the world? King X's of the world, for sure. Does decide to check back. Pocket eights, pocket tens, but we're, we're stretching a little bit there. I think if we do decide to check back in that spot as Vieira, we do not table our hand <laughs> and seek to compel Watson to turn his hand face up. So at least we get the value of information knowing what it was that, that Watson was check peeling with on the flop. I, I'm not sure what the, the ruling, the rules are here. Is it last? Last aggressor that has to shoot here. No, 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 no. You are calling in effect though on the river. I know that the rules could be different, but in position, player checks, you check back. In my experience, player first to act on the end there, not necessarily the last aggressor, mm -hmm. is first to show down. Let's see what producer James. So? I think you won the last one. I mean, I take a look at producer James, though, so right now. Henry, does that look table? like a man that is ready with responses to these sorts of inquiries? Just like crucial information like needed here in the booth. And yeah, but I'm not sure. Is that Instagram open on his phone I don't over know. there, Arlie? No. Yeah. <laughs> Can't What's be anything that right mainstream. <laughs> Sorry, Bebo. It's like William it's Hill. Cool. <laughs> I mean, <in> <laughs> 15, My, MySpace. The, oh, yeah, exact. Friendster. 15k the open from Vieira here. Punsri wanted to take a peek uh, yeah, we were together at the flop with four or five off suit, and mm -hmm. it is not his Valentine's flop day? at all. Okay. It's my son's birthday, so Checks I'm out it out of the <laughs> Obviously has a range advantage here, but isn't necessarily in love the party. with the board. Amazing gift for a couple.
was it they say, chat? Always an ace? Yeah, the kings are ace magnets. The check back from Vieira brings the nut flush draw his way on the turn. Does pair Punsri. A lot of Thai fans in the chat. Yeah, yeah. So what do you grab? Where are yeah. the NASA fans at? Always gets over. I mean, we have See a party, rivers a full house. Good. Yeah, what a beautiful card that oh, is. Yes, we can do first January. No. <laughs> Punsri should be very content to just knuckle and hope to get the show down here with the 4 or 5. Looks like producer James has actually Some earned his day rate with a response <laughs> to your inquiry, Henry, I understand. I don't do anything, I By the way, last aggressor is Not the first to show down, do which would mean that Vera in that previous base, pot would not have had the opportunity to yeah, yeah, yeah. As a be shown yeah, Watson's hand after checking base, so back. Like, you know, always have a party and all that. But things yeah. like... 18 years old, 16, 21. 39k out there. I don't know. Yeah, what do you do? Condition. I know in my 20s where I would just go off on my check own. Flop, check, check, turn. On my own, but, um, Feels like. I don't know the last birthday party. I'm guessing like maybe around 15 or 16. Tough to squeeze value out of Punch like 3, but. Oh, one big blind. Oh, yeah. What about party time? Extending that invitation party over. Party time, you know. Oh, Our reigning champ. 16 to 21. Not for me. I really didn't. Yeah. I have been doing something. Never got drunk till I was 21. I didn't. No, I just didn't have any interest. I just, I, I looked around and I was like. Really not beating much. I. 10 9 I suited. Like, strange things. Yeah, yeah, 5 4 going, going into the mark. Vieira like, unable to squeeze like out an additional 6k of value on the river. Okay, in the chat saying, oh hell yeah, Triton does it again. I'm indeed. Quick look at the next. Young going to be a part of that affair, as is the likes of Ike Haxton and Eric Seidel. Uh, what do you think? I'm wondering what I what I did at my thirties. Hmm. What about as a kid? Is there any kind of like traditional like Latvian, right? Yeah. Like anything like? Not really. What do you guys do? I mean, when I become like more adult age, like let's say starting from fourteen. There was some parties, but nothing crazy for me, I would say. Mm -hmm. Maybe like 18 years old or 21. You know, we just go out from house sure. and do crazy stuff there. What's the clock? Yeah. So it's a ace five on the button. So we just one birthday. Uh, picks up Joao with queen eight. Montreal with friends and um, I don't know how old I was, maybe 23, 24, maybe a little older. Uh, Two clubs. Two kings and a nine. Ace of clubs working hard here. We made brownies. We are checking with the flow of play. Obviously, you know, like the cliche, just way too strong or whatnot. All that, but like the whole night that was planned, like we couldn't fucking make it to dinner. Yeah. Well, be big blind ace high going to be the best hand a lot of the time. Exactly. Ace of clubs <laughs> in hand for Soiza. Six K and Bob into the mark. Just like memory, just what the living room looked like when I was much better for him. It's so cool. Like I, I get excited by it. And so that was the first time that happened. He has dropped out of the top ten chip counts. Oh, yeah, I know exactly. It wasn't not due to a lack of surging, but more no. so developments yeah, yeah, elsewhere. Yeah, Which, by the way, in the know, Triton like, Poker Plus app can be wonder. tracked as you can access every single like, table in the field. Says, like, and happened, like, furthermore, to do, but I don't know if I'm just remembering look you at specific hands, in. even How much is that, John? see that, the biggest pots graphically represented, oh, yeah, which you can it. then access. Oh, how did he get there? 
What's going on at this feature yeah, table? It's understood. Pocket Kings. Uh, yeah, the deck yeah. runs rich for the time being. Hand it out to everyone. Ponikov's turn. Soiser. Yeah, it's Jack. It's 12, yeah? yeah. Doubled up Ponikov's just an orbit, also a go. Ace nine against Pocket Kings. This time, Ponikov's opening off of 25 Ace from six. under the gun. And I believe he did announce raise 36k to go. And might this be the hiccup in that northbound surge that Soyuz has been enjoying? 36k. Hazardously deployed here. We'll see how Ponikov's elects to react. Jamming. He said 36, yeah. Hey, I think sorry. if yeah. poker doesn't work out for Ponikovs. Go on. Maybe an extra in like cool. rap yeah, music videos. Yes. Kind of just in the background, chilling out. What a work. Love it. <laughs> yeah. I could I'm see it. Sure. <laughs> I, could, I could see a real future in. Maybe he European becomes hip hop. Yeah, maybe he becomes the rapper. Eurovision? Strong. YouTube. TikTok seems to be the approach nowadays, but Eurovision. You're going to three bet fold to a guy's 20 big blinds. Akin to that age 45 to 70 demographic. Some of us might be 45, Henry. Hey, listen. There's no uh, age shaming here. I've never watched an episode of Eurovision. I don't even know what Eurovision is. That's how young I am. Uh, Producer James, would you mind warming Henry's bottle? I think uh, <laughs> I think it's time for a feeding. <laughs> so you see KT with five six suited here, under the gun, showing his creative side. Little left brain going to work on Ponikovs, who. Unfortunately, he does have a five of his own working. Dynamite board here. Double gutty and a flush draw for KT. Unlikely to get any added investments out of Alex. Alex and in comes the check fold. Seven. Very predictably. 5 k revenge. 336 already, you know. And the uh, Kings. You tried well. fairly. And on that note, the players will be headed for a break as we get one last look at the soon to be departed feature table. Jonathan Jaffe holding court up over half a million. Chip leader there, Soiza, not far behind him. As the field shakes all the way out to Punat Puntsri, who had a tough go of it. With 140,000 the short stack, welcome back inside our broadcast booth here at the Hoyana Resort Golf and Casino. Ali Najad alongside Henry Kilbane. And uh, Henry, I think the story, fair to say, twofold perhaps. One, Michael Soiza really surging during that frame, and yeah. also the performance of our first timers. First timers. Kind of undeterred by the, the big stage, if you will. I think mm. it's very easy to fall into the trap of you know, one of the biggest stages in the poker world. Um, but yeah, these guys really holding their own. And I, I think looking at this list of players, the leaders, uh, Alex Kulev, first up there currently in second, I believe you mentioned. So, mm -hmm. some new names already popping up on our radar, and we'll be keeping an eye on them. But note the field size, field size rather, which continues by the way. to grow. 122 entries deep, 84 players currently in registration still open, and we will step aside for a break. But we will come 
I'm back with continuing coverage of the GG Super Millions Live event number one from here in Hoi An, Vietnam. Keep it close. Start your journey towards becoming a winning poker player today with the Tournament Masterclass. I designed a blueprint that has helped me and countless students to become consistent winning players in poker. We simplify and teach concepts that work. Preflop, postflop, ICM preflop and postflop, final tables, multi-way, a whole population analysis, a GTO bible and many play and explain live footage showcasing all the concepts and exploits taught in the term masterclass. Don't waste any more time on complex strategies that simply don't work and join the term masterclass and start winning in poker whether it's online or live poker. of your range. He's queen top pair, top kicker. It's going to be very hard for him to lay this down by the river. Clubs would be a real assist in mm -hmm. terms of sh being shown the exit with this ace queen. But for the time being, Kim checking and most certainly calling. And how big does O'Dwyer go? 13,000. This is Milky. Yeah, he, he's hoping like some weaker holdings will still continue, you know, like gut shots. I think he's going to start sizing up on the turn, thinking that, well, he's going to be up against ace a lot, especially holding two kings. He's locking those king-queens, king-jacks. 
He's going to want to try to get all the chips in by the river. Jack. Now, all of a sudden, a Broadway draw giving Ten Kim some potential wins. Gives Ten Kim a little bit of worry because, you know, he could be up against Ace Jack that now um, took the lead against him. Just need to find the perfect sizing to get those Ace Queens, Ace Tens to call. Yeah, we rule the Ace Kings out at this point given we hold two Red Kings. So we know yep. in all likelihood that Ten Kim has that Ace X. Probably a Broadway dangler. Maybe even a little bit of Ace Jack. And now the much more significant sizing of 52,000. And you see physical adjustments there in Ten Kim. <laughs> it's like, man, what's happening? Yeah, it's uncomfortable because you know you've got one of the strongest hands you can have uh, given the action so far. You improved in terms of more outs, but then you just feel like you're behind yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So your gut's telling you I'm behind, but then your cards are kind of telling you to continue. By the way, note Steve O'Dwyer just fixed on 10 Kim there, had the same view we did moments ago. And I don't know about you, Randy, but when I'm looking at an opponent that has that reaction to my bet on the turn, I really begin to narrow it down to Ace X with the Broadway dangler. He's all in. Oh, and he jams a snap call from O'Dwyer. I don't think that was anticipated at all. But of course, Steve thrilled to see this development. And the stacks were roughly level there as the jam came in. Four outs once for the South Korean who really stepped in it here, took a shot at what he thought might have been a hand that was no good. The three of clubs on the river of no help and Ten Kim is polished off here by O'Dwyer's set of kings. They're going to count it down just to be coffees hitting you yet, they, Randy? They, they're hitting me, all right. <laughs> <laughs> they're not light on caffeine, are they? Spinning. Baby suited ace up front for O'Dwyer. Takes it upstairs. Twenty six blinds and a small blind, ace queen. These are big pickups if you can make them, but against an upfront open. I probably would push this all in. Um it looks like, is he going for like a smaller three bet? Yeah. I can't see any of your chips again. How uh -oh. much do you have now? New locker's already folded that 10-5. O'Dwyer asking for a count now. Yeah, he wants to know how much stack he's up against and whether he can continue with ace four of diamonds. O'Dwyer's well, probably thinking, wow, you're three betting me the 27K off of this stack from a small against my undergun. What does it mean? It's invited his opponent to take a flop. Now, In bad right. shape, by the way. Yeah. Paired board. One diamond out there for O'Dwyer. Does have the benefit of position. And hmm. Let's see if 10 Kim is willing to follow through off of 78k into 62. I feel like on a king high board, you three bet, you gotta follow through here. You represent the ace kings. Your opponent can't call too much. He's gonna check. But I think O'Dwyer should still be pr pretty scared. It, it seems kind of like suspicious that my opponent is checking on a king nine nine. Oh man, look at this. The ace rolls off on the turn and it's actually a bad card for Ten Kim as he and O'Dwyer are chopping as it stands now. Yeah, O'Dwyer got bailed out. Sure did. A pot he should be losing most of the time. Twenty five K now on the turn. Well, Dwyer's never folding. 
Um, there's no obvious flush draws out there. I think he's best just to call and maybe hope Ten Kim, you know, call it off. There's no well disguised flush draws out there yeah. either, Randy. If we're being fair. <laughs> yeah. So in comes the call from O'Dwyer. Here comes the river, and it's the case ace. And a foregone conclusion here is. I would expect the rest of Ten Kim's chips to be beaten into the pot by O'Dwyer on the river. If you've got Ace King or two nines, take it, buddy. Yep. Play Ace okay, King. good. Let's carve it up. Yeah. Is that yeah. you? Is that Kate Russell, man? I don't know where you were about 20 some odd years ago. A very warm welcome back to the Hoyana Golf Resort and Casino here. Broadcast booth, Randy Lou alongside myself, Henry Kilbane. And Randy, day one, 25K GG Super Millions. The first thing I want to dive into is the 124 entries so far. We are inching our way towards a record-breaking field here. And not to be overly presumptuous, but we're just seven away. Record about to be broken, event number one here. Very, very likely. Um, you know, we had a strong showing over in Cyprus and now here in Vietnam is... It's just phenomenal, right? And lots of new uniques. It's not the same players. So just a lot of people are interested in playing these super high stakes at a luxurious resort and, mm -hmm. um, you know, great production crew. Yeah, I think it's definitely going to break. These guys, they always got <laughs> unlimited rebuys pretty much too. Yeah, I don't, I don't think anyone's going to be bowing out early. I mean, it's like, what, 10, 10 p.m. local time? Uh, <laughs> that's like a half day in the office, right, if you, if you bust out now. Uh, but talking of the newcomers, a uh, couple of newcomers at the top of the pack. We were just talking off of, uh, off air. Alex Kulev, the Bulgarian, uh, widely regarded as one of the toughest online No Limit Hold'em MTT players in the world at present. First ever Triton event. He's currently out in front with 154 big blinds, followed by another new face, Calvin Lee, sat on 133 big blinds. So a lot of these new names... Old school meets new school. I mean, look at our table. Eric Seidel coming up against the young gun. That is Alex Kulev. Two completely different styles, two completely different generations coming together here to compete in this 25K. Yeah, it's going to be nice to kind of see the clash of styles, see who's going to come out on top. Um, you know, it's a lot of mental abilities you got to use, but it should be a lot of fun. Well, I think it is going to be a lot of fun with this lineup as we throw it back down to the main feature table. Randy and I are going to be strapped in for the next few hours with you all at home. Do let us know, obviously, in the chat who you guys are rooting for. Let us know if you have any action. If you've managed to buy a piece of action over on Poker Stake. I know a lot of these guys were selling small pieces for the fans over there. Alex Kulev, way out in front here, 154 big blinds. Big drop off to David Peters, second with 84 bigs. Eric Seidel, you talk of longevity in this game. You talk of this class over the decades. That man's name always coming up in that conversation. 63 bigs. Tong Xiao, who you were mentioning. Randy, 61 bigs, healthy stack here. Not his first rodeo, loves competing in these super high roller series. Anything you could tell us about him a little bit? Um, you know, there's a lot of guys who come to play from Malaysia and, you know, they're just having a good time. They want to play against the best. Um, he's not a professional player, but he can hold his own. He's got some final tables in the past. So let's see how he does here in Vietnam. Let's see, indeed. Let's not forget boss man. Young currently sat on 23 bigs. Ike Haxton sat on 19, and Ben Heath sat on 20, 20 ish or so big blind stacks. That kind of rejam or fold range, if you will. Stacks like Peters, like Kulev, proceed. Come back. Number one of the Triton Super High Rollers. Straight 
straight off the bat, your man, Tong Xiao. Suited king from the hijack. Gonna pop things up to 16k. Seidel. Couple of nines in the big, Randy. Solid hill holding, you know, with this stack size, you don't want to be bloating the pot. So call is just fine. And they both got a reasonable holding here. Yeah, One over card. Modern day cooler, if you will. Hijack v big blind. Middle pair for Xiao. Backdoor clubs. King seven clubs is quite vulnerable, so I think a C bet is quite fine here. You know, maybe you take it down, maybe you're called and you can maneuver accordingly. You do have backdoor clubs to give you that extra equity. Feels like there's value to be had as well from this strong middle pair, right? Against the big blind range. Yeah, I mean, you're not looking to put multiple barrels in. For sure. But, right. You know, you also don't want to give off free cards given you've just got a pair of sevens. As Seidel does come with a check call, Queen of Hearts over card to the flop. Rolling but off on the turn. Type of card that where both players are hoping to just get the showdown. I mean, it's a bit scary. The seven can still be good, no reason to bet. Flush does get there, but given what they're holding, I think they're going to want to check this one down. 80k out there. Let's see how agrees with you on that one, Randy. Seidel tables the nines. 541,000. Eric Seidel, true legend of the game. Looking at his profile over on the Triton Poker Plus app, one point, oh, just shy of 1.6 million in six caches. Largest cache. <laughs> Cash coming back second in the 30k for 514,000. It's been with us since the start, way back in the Philippines, 2016. He showed up he for the original the ones. Yeah. yeah, he was there. He's just, he just shows up, just to collect some money, oh, leaves. I just, yeah. Silent killer. Like you said, it's been playing for decades, right? Oh, dude. I mean. Even featured in a movie responsible for a lot of players' poker careers. True. Flashback to rounders. I one of the cards. I could, I could you have, you have seen card, it? I I've see seen it. I'm glad. Okay, I'm you. glad I'm sharing oh, the booth yeah. with someone that's seen rounders. I'm not sure how I'd feel about you saying that you've never seen it before. But. No. Is than oh, blind v blind. Hang on a minute. Ben Heath, 20 bigs, just gets the click call and wants to see if he's big favorite here to double back up to over starting 304, uh, 354,000 in the middle. Yeah, that's a cooler for blind versus blind. 9-3, no help for Seidel. For running chop outs, not going to happen. He's an 8 and an 8 only. No dice. As Ben Heath scores a double. I do apologize. Uh, a 3 or a 9 would have... Would have chopped it right. between on the table. It's a bit rusty, Randy. It's been what five can months. You put the chip that aggressively, or cannot. Easy do? now. That was, that was the plan. Yeah. Sure. As cold as it comes. In 2023, blind v blind.
this table, Randy, not as chatty as the last one. This guy's all business. 126 players now, just five away from a new Triton record being set here. Event number one this series in Vietnam. Well, as long as they're showing me world-class poker, they don't need to talk too much. Sure. Queen seven. Not the best hand, but when you're giving a good price and you got the chips to play for, no reason not to see a flop. El Matador, Major Mateos. Just when you thought this table was tough, being brought over to the feature table. Going to knuckle back with his gut shot okay. wheel draw backdoor clubs over to the 10 5 3 flop. That's a nut flush draw. Yeah, he picks up a lot of equity. He might be tempted to bet it now. He's betting, I guess, it's to deny equity from those random hands like Queen Seven. Sizable bet. No nonsense from D Pete's. Queen high straight into the mark, Mateus. First blood. He's joining this feature. Just leave the couple. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. You should make them more visible. Yeah, you should move it to the second tournament. New place, yeah? New place. Second tournament. Second tournament ever live? Is that what he's claiming? Exactly. Because this is the Not first tournament the in the series. I don't know if I, uh, is he bluffing the dealer in this conversation? Well, I can't, no one says that. No. How many tournaments have I played of time banks? You think he's also counting the number of tournaments he's played without time banks? 1.3 million. And live earnings. So he played one other tournament and won 1.3 million is what he you're telling not. me. No, he's bluffing as this bluff. conversation. You got me. Bluff the commentators. Bluff the chat. Bluff the table. No wonder you say he's world class. <clears throat> Back to the action. We got blind versus blind action. Limps. Offsuit three. King is best. He's gonna just fire away. Let's have a new quick look now. Kulev actually came fifth. The Super Millions on GG just a few weeks ago. 103k saying to Ali earlier on Randy that that GG Super Millions is kind of quickly become the the bragging rights tournament if you will of online poker you know over the years it's changed mm -hmm. from platform to platform you know but that that GG Millions that's the proving ground if you will yeah you really want to sit down with the best you know, it's the same guy showing up every week to 100%. play that, and uh, I've done a lot of commentary on that series, so a lot of these guys are actually showing up to the Triton series. You know, there were new faces from Cyprus, now there's more faces like Kulev here um, showing up to Vietnam for the first time, and really, it's a, it's a series of, of tough competition, but these guys, they don't want to play the weakest players. They want, they want to play against the best and prove themselves and show you they got what it takes to win it all. Different motives for different players, right? Of course. The fame of coming to a Triton event. 
and taking down a big main, if you will, or even just winning uh, any Triton event. I mean, this is not a main, but it's gonna—it's a huge tur turnout. It's gonna be a huge prize up top. Well, we're one off, one one more entry away from tying the record from Cyprus as Richard Young outflops Haxton, and well, given the SPR and given the shallowness of these two stacks on this two-tone texture, could be trouble for the Prince of Darkness, Mike Haxton. 44k out there. And given how shallow they are, Richard Jong might just raise this flop. And Haxton might feel a bit committed given how short they are. And this is going to be tough. Check raise. Yeah, I like this from Richard. It's nice to have some, some top pairs in our check raising range from the big. We, you know, we're going to have some some gut shots, some flush draws as well that want to check raise, so just really balancing his check raising range out of the big here. King Jack, King of Clubs in hand. Yeah, I'm not surprised that Haxton calls a check raise here. Trying to see how it goes on the turn, as played. Richard Young with about a pot size bet. I think he's just gonna rip it in. You know, with the another wheel card coming out, you don't wanna let a free card off. It does exactly that. You can see the eye roll from Ike Haxton on this five of diamonds turn. Some of those straight draws Randy getting there. The six sevens, ace deuces of the world. Yeah, if he's behind, he's so far behind. <laughs> he's just wondering how often he's up against two clubs. Maybe like a 5-6 that check raised the flop, just jams the turn. Might be wondering if his opponent had a flush draw or a straight pair straight draw, would they just check raise all in on the flop? Would they raise to 35k like it happened? Need to think about the sizing, if that might come into play on how that defines your opponent's range. Insights from the broadcast booth directly from Randy Lou. Doesn't help that you don't have a club in your hand because sure. now you can pick off the nice lay down. Show me a bluff for sure. I feel mark. really bad. <laughs> <laughs> no bluff. <laughs> <laughs> Ike asking boss man to show a bluff and honestly responding with hey, no bluff, pal. Top pair, taking it down. No bluff for the boss. And, well, I'll tell you who is likely to be bluffing at some point. If you get your hands on a Shambhala Jewels bracelet, you have to bluff your way to victory, you would assume, unless you just sunrun. Maybe you just sunrun a tournament, but the special shout-out going to Shambhala Jewels, obviously the official partner of the Triton Poker Series, where... We are going to be crowning our poker champions with the exquisite men's jewelry, Shambhala Jewels, creating high-end designs with diamonds, precious stones, and 18 karat gold. Have you seen any of them on the wrists of some of our champions? Have any of them shown you, shown you one up close? I haven't been looking, but now that you mention it, I'm going to keep an eye out for it. I wouldn't mind getting my hands on one dude. Share it amongst us three. Yeah. Take turns. We've got 10 out of hearts from David Peters. Squaring off against Kulev. Not too bad of a flop or the pre-flop raiser. Yeah, nothing to write home about 
for Kulev, as one would assume this hand's going to be over and done with. Note the field size, Randy. We have tied the record. 89 players remain in this field size of 131 runners so far. And this 25k GG Super Millions live edition looking very likely to set a new high school. High Extremely school. likely. Just what would it what it record here? <laughs> a tsunami? It's, it's, yeah, it's pretty much as impossible. From the ocean, so it's possible. Unlikely, but no, it's impossible. Well, now you're just tempting fate. <laughs> Shout out to all the viewers at home. Do let us know whereabouts in the world you are tuning in from. Seeing a lot of local support in the chat. Have the two Thai players on our feature table earlier on. A lot of Thai players, or Thai viewers rather, supporting KT and Punat. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Let us know who you're rooting for. Again, you can head on over. Whoa, look oh at boy. this. Mistake. Bad timing. This for 30. Effective. Richard Young just ill-timed jam out of the big with the ace 4-0. Going to need some help from the deck. You can see boss man Richard <laughs> yeah. Young. 72% favorite. Be up to 488,000. Queen 5 4 rolls off, giving Mateus bottom pair. Jumps into the lead. A three would chop it. Richard Young looking for a king and a king only to win this pot. No dice, Randy. Not fair. Well timed. <laughs> Run good for Mateos. Bowing out early in this 20. Getting it in good, that's all you can do. It's king into ace four. Drew Mateos just seems to find a way. I mean, yeah, so he jammed, what, 30 something bigs? <laughs> that is very effective, yeah. Yeah, with, with the larger jam, the calling range shrinks a bit too, right? So. <laughs> You, you might, it may <laughs> seem reckless, um, but he's playing the math and he's thinking that, well, Richard Young's probably not calling off even like <laughs> nice, nice suited and things like this for this many blinds. So the calling range, you risk more, but the calling range shrinks. And I'm sure Mateos has studied these spots. I'm trying to calculate. Also probably has a good understanding of what opening range yeah. Richard Young would open and deem that ace four offsuit was enough to just try and take it down pre-flop. Adrian Mateos, number one, Spain's all-time money list. One of the people had a 3-6 hand. 16 on the all-time live earnings in the world. 31.3 million in total live earnings. Not too Any shabby. guesses as to... How many earnings he's made at a Triton series, Andy? Do you have any black chips? I want to oh, yeah. say 800,000. I, I don't really remember. One million. I did. I was Two caches. Rough series back in Cyprus. Went 0 for 6. In Madrid, came 10th, only cashed in one event in Madrid out of the two that he played. His first ever entry and his largest cash at the Triton series came fourth in the main event back in Macau 2017 for 890,000. Looking to add some scores to his Triton resume here in Vietnam. 
Yeah, I recall him having, like, seemed like he was on pace to get a really deep run and he was just coolered really hard or something. Oh, really? Uh, I've been the last stop that just happened, but, you know, new new place. And we got a three bet pot. Chip leader, Alex Kula, has three bet Jack 10 offsuit against Chong Tong Xiao. Mid pair. With aggression. And you say this is one of the top guns. He's going to take some pot control. A button V cut off. Does check through as scare card for both players. Rolls off on the turn. Had the fives been ahead of the ace kings of the world on the queen ten deuce flop. Got a check through on the turn. As wow. the <laughs> five of clubs somehow finds its way to the river. I think Chong Tong Xiao. Set of fives and the check mark. See what he comes with. Flop and turn when check, check. Yeah, he can actually go for a sizable bet here. 75k. Easily that um, Alex Kulov can still have like a top pair that can pay off this sizing. Like a king jack. Ace king occasionally. I, I like the size of the two fives. With Jack ten now as played, it's pretty. No, well, is is it ambitious to call here? Yeah, I'd say it feels pretty ambitious, right? Continuing range of Seal. That calls the three bet pre. Gonna have a lot of suited broadways in hand. Some ace jacks. As, and of course the, the pocket fives. The, the pocket well, fives. Andy. No one saw that. Yeah, and you know most of the guys, I imagine Alex would have a uh, history with, but this might be the first time he's ever played with Chong Tun. See so, yeah, how really doesn't have much of a read. Oh, small blow for our tournament chip leader, but still out in front. Looking over on the Triton Poker Plus app, Pablo Silva. Brazilian has moved up to second in chips. Only two players with more than a million at the moment. Axton, I think he's in trouble here. Hijack open, ace nine suited. Kind of seems like a mandatory jam to me. Incredibly small sample for us here in the booth, but has been involved and it's going to oh, snap oh. call. Yeah. Table the ace, king of spades, and Ike going to need to pull a Mateos. In the form of diamonds or a three outer. Queen six, one diamond. Now drawing two backdoor diamonds or a nine. Now a nine only, Randy. Stay alive. Close. Right. Mm -hmm. GG. Was indeed. GG is announced. So we lose Ike Haxton, and with that, Chong Xiao up to over 600,000 <laughs> in chips and 133. Yes. Runners, I believe. Ike, yes. For you, okay. he can push it up. Yeah. Going to be number 134, and with that, a new record being set here. Event number one of the Triton Super High Roller Series here in Vietnam. Massive congratulations to the team. Yeah, it's really impressive to see it just grow from much smaller numbers every series. It just gets bigger. It really has, and it's it's really amazing. Cause I thought Cyprus was already really huge. Mm -hmm. Same, yeah. And you're uh, like, no, let's go higher. Let's go up, years. raise. Yeah, and, and there was there was a bit of you know, I don't want to say it, uncertainty, being that Vietnam, Southeast Asia is a long way away from you know mm -hmm. the United States, for example. Are 
are the US team that come and support us in places like Madrid, London and Cyprus, are they going to be willing to do the 30 hour journeys, if you will? But here they are. They're yeah. here. And uh, we're seeing a lot of the Asian crew as well, some new faces, some new European faces as well. And I think we're going to just continue to be surprised over and over yes. from event to event because more and more of these online enigmas, if you will, that don't typically venture out from the comforts of, of their grind houses or their, their offices are typically watching the streams on the side whilst playing online. And I'm like, hang on a minute. I want that to be me. I yeah. want to be on the main feature table. And there's definitely, like, sure, it's comfortable to play at home on, like, a Sunday or whatnot, but, like, these stakes, you know, you just can't get those kind of field sizes online, so, you know what I mean? And, like, regularly, like, there's going to be 100K coming up, like, 50K, um, other 9 no limit events here, right? Like, you can just play this back-to-back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back -to -back. Online, it's usually, like, if they happen to have one of these big events, you know, once a week mm. at max. I couldn't agree more. You obviously talking from experience. You you used to enjoy the comforts of the online grind and would venture out every now and then I assume to some of the live events. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I never got too into the, the tournament scene uh, live. I just, you know, it's a lot of variance in it, of course, and high buy-ins. Uh, you also very kindly donated to some <laughs> of the try and fields early, early doors. I learned the hard way, you know what I mean? Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, these, these guys, are, they're very driven. They study a lot. They want to prove themselves, and a lot of them have. So uh, it's it's no surprise to see all these new faces um, come. And you know, when I, we say new faces, we don't mean like oh they they play a little bit of poker. No, mm. they they've studied a lot. They they crush those high stakes fields and uh, like in those GG poker super millions. For sure, right? Uh, so you see someone like Alex Kulu here may seem new, but really he's he's played with like guys like Mateos all the time. 27 years old from Bulgaria. Calls Dublin Island home. Has done for a few years. Spent some time down in South Africa, would you believe? Better part of a decade living and studying down there before discovering poker. Going pro as Mateos. Yeah, very quick three bet from the first two positions. So it's perceived to be a bit stronger. Let's see to 10 X's of the world. El Matador against Kulev. One, two, four in the middle. Comes King, 10, Trey, Kulev. Middle pair and a flush draw. Mateos. Middle pair of his own in trouble. You can see just 6% equity, although he did. Three bet pre. Should he continue here? Yeah, but... When he get when he bets this flop and he gets called, he's gonna be trying to show this down now, not really turning it into a bluff. Okay. Now I think ten nine suited usually will check call here. Check raising really doesn't do too much. You know, you're just gonna get it in with top pair, so you might as well just play it slower. Yeah, sixty bigs deep going to the flop. Say, brick rolls off on the turn. I mean, a brick for their hands, but it really, this card is uh, not ideal for either player. You know, say someone had ace queen, for sure, or queen jack. You got to be worried about these things. But Mateos, it, it's. I don't think he can bet again. And try to represent a big hand. It's just too often this jack improves um, Alex Kulov's range. To call through Ben, check call here. Well, it's bricked out for the Bulgarian. They are going to chop this one at showdown, courtesy of the King of Clubs. Rolling off on the river. Yeah, they both got enough showdown value where they 
shouldn't want to put in more chips into the pot. But he's actually thinking about it. So... I'm trying to think what he's thinking. Think of turning his hand into a bluff. Try and get some ace jacks of the world to fold maybe a hand like pocket queens. Yeah. Ace uh, ten. Then like ace ten and queens, they don't always see but the flop. I guess he was just trying to pretend like I've got something, don't bluff me off my hand. Chop it up boys. A little smirk from Kulev. <laughs> That's not what I feel. So I mean, that's a win for 10 8 suited. Yeah. Somehow. <laughs> yeah. Well, They're the best. A little. Our generation. Close a little bit. Sharing a little laugh in this Triton Super High Roller Series event number one. 25k GG Super Millions Live Edition. When you think of the newer generation, that tells maybe not one of the names that you even think of because it feels like he's been around, you know, yeah. for so long now. Middle? First, is there a middle generation we can it, go yeah, with? Yeah, I mean, wh where do we draw the line? Burst onto the scene as an 18 year old. See, won the WSOP Europe main when he was 18, 19, if I'm not mistaken. Nah, he's not the new generation anymore. We gotta, we gotta call it something else. I'm waiting. I'm I'm not, I, don't, I don't got a term for it. Just let me know. Oh, we got a player from Japan. This is nice. Kashi Ogura. It's funny because, um,. I used to venture to Macau to play some tournaments there and, you know, do like 5Ks, 10Ks. And I would see these guys. And, you know, it's been it's been a long time since I've seen them around. And all of a sudden, they're all, all playing the Triton events, 25K minimum. Oh, so you saw Takashi uh, I, yeah. back in Macau, yeah? I, I used to play with him in like in 10Ks and stuff because they didn't really run 25Ks right. and stuff back then. So 10K was kind of like the top. And yeah, all these guys play. There's a lot of handful of them that, you know, like Soiza, also one of those guys who used to play, I used to play yeah. with in those events. And they're like, yeah, several years later, we're playing 25K minimum. That's it. 50Ks, 100Ks. Hanging out with the boys in Vietnam, Takashi, number four on Japan's all time money list, 1.7 million in total live earnings. And I assume, Randy, given your background as a cash game pro, wouldn't surprise me if you tangled with him in Macau in some of the cash games as well. <laughs> I didn't play much cash games when I was in Macau. Just uh, wasn't how I wanted to spend my time there. But uh, look, if you're in Macau, most certainly you played some cash games and, and tournaments there. Cashy's first ever recorded cash coming back in November of 2008. Almost 15 years ago, so... Though we're seeing some newer faces. It yeah, doesn't mean they're new to poker. For sure. Sure. He Pete's against Kulev. Both players with the straight draw on the King Jack 4 mono. By the player with a club in hand. 48,000 in the middle. See how D Pete's proceeds. Seems like he wants to throw a little bet out there. And is gonna take a free one. Hmm, the jack. Wonder if he decides to try to represent the jack here. A few options for Kulev, right? 10 high, unlikely to have much showdown value. Defending out the big, one would argue that he's going to have more flushes than Peters. And has equity against hands that continue. Some of the ace highs that keep him honest. It's a really small bet, almost a min bet. I'm trying to think. So he's trying to fold out like 
Ace-9 of hearts, these types of hands that wouldn't feel comfortable betting on this flop. It's going to be tricky now on how to maneuver the river card. Blank. It does break out for both players. Kulev with just 10 height. You can see a bet here would work. Question is, can he pull the trigger? So the turn, very, very tiny bet, is going to increase the number of hands that Peters would call the turn bet with. So like something like pocket fives, even red, would probably call, given it was just a min bet. So he can kind of actually fire again like he's about to do, given he's got more hands he can fold out. Had he chosen a bigger size on the turn and got called, he probably would just give up, given that these weaker holdings wouldn't be there that he's trying to fold out right now. Kulev firing two-thirds on the river, 42,000 into 66, and the Pete's going to let go of the winner, the Bulgarian. Back up to over 1.2 million, and... Yeah. Seems like the boys are getting a bit frosty out there. A little frosty. I don't know if you noticed in that hand, by the way, when we got to the river, just how laser focused Mateus was on Kulev, just really kind of strong side eye observing the Triton newcomer. I think it's something that a lot of us can kind of go into autopilot and overlook. Not these guys, best players in the world even when they're not necessarily involved in the hand. They're paying attention. Yeah, trying to pick up on some things. Um, you know, whatever you can you to yeah. try to get an extra edge. It's on you. Given the stakes, Randy, uh, feels like a... Good investment of time. For sure. Is there a time to pay attention and take things seriously. It's going to be a Triton super high roller series as Seidel. Let's go the ace nine, round two. Maybe Peters. Suits connectors in the hijack. May have ourselves a three-way affair here, Kulev. Well, I'm curious to see if Kula is the type to flat these hands or three bet out of the small blind. They are playing pretty deep stacks. <coughs> With the deeper stacks, you're going to spec. Let's see, what do you make it? That's 60,000, I believe. It's a little bit smaller than I expected, given how deep they are. So it actually might invite Peters to take a flop here, 5-4 suited. Roughly 600k remaining. Yeah. Well, these are the two big stacks at our table. Obviously, Kulev, the tournament chip leader. Peters also up there with a very healthy 627k to start the hand as both players flop a piece on the Queen Jack 5. Middle pair for Kulev, bottom pair for Peters, both with backdoor spades. Yeah, they see that backdoor spades. It's like, all right, extra ammo to continue. Jack-10 probably doesn't want to bloat the pot too much. Um, it looks like he will continue because he wants to kind of... If he had a big hand, I guess he would continue here, so he's just being a bit balanced. Yeah, I think three-bet pot, small blind V hijack on... To Broadway, like he's not Rainbow, looking to put in lots of chips into his pot of Jack Ten right now. But so, with this medium strength hand, he's decided to go three big blinds. But I think his range wants to put in chips on this board, right? Yeah. <laughs> now he's picked up <laughs> the spade draw that we spoke of. Likely, he will want to control the pot with this hand. Uh, He's not going to get 
top pair to fold. So I don't really see why he would want to bet. Yeah, I like to check. Interesting for D. Peters with the backdoor spades. Is it a showdown value type situation, or is this a maybe I can get uh, some equity to fold? Well, should a third spade roll off on the river? Disaster. Like the biggest disaster you can think of. Does fortunately brick out for Peters as. Over card to the board rolls off on the river. Hmm. With Jack 10, you should be trying to show down on this board texture. I think the question is whether David Peters will turn his fives into a bluff. I, I can see it happening. Like, what if he's up against like a Queen X, a Jack X? When the king rolls off, it's really hard to represent a bluff, so those hands might just lay it down if you put a sizable bet in. Then again, you might be uh, wondering, well, what if I'm up against, like, ace-king? Then, you know, I'm just putting in more chips when I don't need to. Some ace-tens in there going to check as well, giving Peter Maybe. some rope. Yeah, he's going to check behind, and Kulev, the surge continues. 1.3 million, the young Bulgarian. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. There we go. Look at our chip counts here. As the blinds go up to 5k, 10k. 10k big blind ante. Similar story, the main stage, Alex Kulev, overwhelming chip leader at our feature, Liu Yang. Second chip, 16 bigs. Gura. Someone that Randy Liu recognizes from the Macau streets from way back when. I was still in high school when you guys were, were battling out there, mate. In high school, oh yeah. man. You're a youngin. See Mark in the chat saying, where in Vietnam is this Triton Super High Roller Series being held? Great question. Mark, appreciate you guys getting involved. If you do have any questions, feel free to fire them over to us. We are in the Hoi Anna Resort. About 45 minutes drive from Da Nang International <coughs> Airport. 41 runners. Not only did we beat the record, I mean. Sorry. We're still counting. It's ticking up. Trying to set the bar high so it can't be broken again. <laughs> Got your Dan Dichev asking, where can we see the current standings? Another great question in the chat. My advice would be to download the Triton Poker Plus app, Randy. I'm using it. Not only can you see the entire standings, but you can actually sweat the action from the outer tables if there's anyone not at a feature table that you're interested in observing. And you can click around and see some of the hands they played. I mean, from a studying perspective, you know, you're actually getting insight to hand histories from some of the best players in the world. I mean, yeah, if there's ever a time to just download an app take a couple of weeks off, get the notepad out, and watch the streams. Now's the time to do it. You might be on the move, Eric. Are you moving now? Those of you only just joining us for on YouTube and Twitch, Eric Kilbane down. alongside so Randy Lu in the commentator's oh, booth. Back, 
788 likes over on YouTube, Randy. I feel like for a record-breaking event. Record-breaking likes coming up? I would hope. Yeah, let's get them up. 780, I feel like we need to get at least 1,000 this record-breaking field. For those of you keeping us company, do take a couple of seconds out of your days. Drop us a quick like, really helps us grow the channel. Push this free poker content to a wider audience. Of course, I don't see why not. Also subscribe, so we do. I know you are very guilty of putting out content when we're not at these live series in the form of some of these cash games that you're yeah. recording both at the venue and if I'm not mistaken, you're doing some post-production work as well outside of the series, oh, yeah. entertaining stuff. Yeah, and you know, by subscribing, it's going to give you a <laughs> notification when those videos are released. And right. you recently re released the Cypress cash game with Jungle Man and, and some other great players where he's wearing a costume and, you know, playing huge pots, 501k, 100k buying. Min I think it was, maybe he bought him for 200k a piece. I can't remember, but... Yeah, no, I don't know if you watched that one, but that was just, that was a great show. Oh, I, I saw some of the insane hands that came from those sessions. There was a Jungle Man v. Punat Punsri hand. Yep. Quads v. Top Boat. Um, there, there was all sorts going on. But not just the hands. It was just, Jungle Man was such a character. Like, he would just be waving his little trident around and just making these absurd comments that were just so fun. It was, it was a great show. Jungle being quite the character... So you mean Jungle Man being Jungle Man? He was wearing a trident outfit. Trident is what he called himself. So he had like a conch with him too and a trident spear. <laughs> sounds like another day in the office for, for Jungle Man Dan. <laughs> he was waving it around. It was Yeah, it was great. You really should watch it. And, you know, you can find that free content over on the Triton Poker YouTube channel. Yeah. You know, every time we do one of these stops, we're recording more cash games. And what do we got here? All in from wow. Seidel. Seidel. 36 big blind rib from the small. Solid. Says run it. Picking up 64,000 uncontested. <laughs> yeah, you want to look for spots to just scoop it in pre flop. You know, if you take a different stance and maybe try to take a multi-way, three-way, oftentimes you're just going to have to check fold. You dwindle down to like 20 blinds. It's nice to be able to maintain this more 35, 40 big blind stack, which gives you more room to maneuver. I see someone in the chat saying, seriously, Eric Seidel is going to make it into the Poker Hall of Fame. Well, have you know? He's been in the Poker Hall of Fame for 13 years now. Back in 2010. Well, hello, Danny Tang. Hi. Crazy how this big blind ante has affected the small blind strategy in recent years. And Xiang just going to complete from the small. Get the eight deuce off. Yeah, with that big blind ante, you can call pretty wide. I mean, eight deuce is a little bit loose, but you can see that, you know, the strategies have shifted. Like, remember way back when, like, People weren't limping the small blind ever. They're like, no, you either raise or you fold. Now, if you raise from the small blind, you're like, what are you doing? You gotta protect that limping range. And it's just gonna keep evolving, I believe, over the years. And you need to make sure you're on top of the meta. Otherwise, you could be making some poor assumptions. Only, only Spaniel. Left. That's why I'm in here and they're <laughs> out there, Randy. Mm -hmm. Same. And only ball game. The other guys didn't travel them.
Ludovic Tran over on YouTube saying hi from France. Have fun, good luck, GG's. Three-way affair coming up. Well, how about that for a flop? Open ender, Siao and Kulev. A couple of overcards to Mateus's pocket sevens. Does not want to turn a set, I tell you that much. Now we have three. Oh, diamonds changes nothing. Now still with the best of it. Once it checks around to him again. You might be thinking if someone had a 10 day, would have bet by now. So let's put the pressure on it. It's a big bet 55,000. Two quick folds. One direction for this young man so far. Yeah, he's active. So you're not coming? Mm. A bit frosty so out there, but... No. No, 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 a bit of a heater. You're the only one? I think so. What about why Faro not coming? He doesn't like to travel that much. Oh, okay. He play APTs, not much, but... Do you believe players will be going on a dinner break of sorts at the end of this level? We'll be playing 15 levels if I'm not mistaken, Randy. Be wrapping up around about 1.30 a.m. local time. Way past my bedtime. It's okay, as long as they give us some good action, some good table banter. Vietnam coffee. Yeah, I've had a lot of those earlier with Ali and got me a little jittery. Good luck, mate. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Boys just warming up. Event number one. Live edition of the GG Super Millions. No screen names here, Randy. Can't hide behind your computer. Not in this one. Nope. I was just trying to picture Eric Seidel on a computer playing poker and just like, <laughs> didn't work. What are you saying there, Randy? <laughs> too old to use a computer. Can you imagine? Just try to picture Seidel maybe like on his phone trying to play. Or like GG. It doesn't really, doesn't really work, does it? Wow, the, the hole that's being dug gets deeper. Why can't he use his phone, Randy? He could. No, I'm not saying he's, I'm just saying it's probably not his preference. You saying that he's too old to no, use a no. phone? <laughs> he can use okay, a right. Phone. Here's a question: What size text do you think? <laughs> the he has? Okay, the smallest possible. Okay. The smallest possible. Yeah. Yeah, the smallest possible. What has he got? Twenty twenty <laughs> laser vision? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> let's let's not dig any more holes. All right, okay, let's I'll stop. Let you off. All right, certainly. Back to the hand. <laughs> Back to the hand, indeed. And Siang has flopped it. Yeah, I mean, whatever it may be, top pair, top kicker against a big blind defending range. Continues for one big and a swift fold from Kulev. James Clark coming in saying, Seidel, 16 tables across two sides. There we go. <laughs> that, I can picture that. Can you? I'm, I'm going with the 
32 inch curve monitor. I'm pretty sure. Standing desk. I commentated on a super million side outreached. And he was like timing out. And that's like one table. I don't think he's playing 16 tables. No, I think he was side. timing out because he was playing oh, 16 tables. He was at the final table with super million <laughs> <laughs> playing like the, the, the $22 on the side. You're saying. Got it. Okay. Possible. Hundred and forty four <laughs> entries. I remember I was debating playing like I was at the World Series. It was a ten K pot limit hold'em tournament. It's not really a normal format. And I was like Wait. debating whether to play <laughs> I'm gonna play it. Played one hand against Seidel. Busting my kings, flop trips. Talking of Seidel. Yeah, no. Right in front of us. Doesn't remember. Yep. Right. All right. He has no idea. He just, just crushed my soul in that tournament. Casualty, yeah. So, interesting spot for Mateus to be dived back into the action. 21, big blind, open jam on the button from Takashi. Yeah, this actually changes things when he open jams. He's going to lay down A7 suited. I think had he open, like just min raise. Mateos might even re-jam to a7 hearts and then threes fold. The fact that he open jammed himself made it so that he wins the pot. Looks like Danny Tang short stint at this feature. Gonna get picked up out of the big blind. Move to an alpha table. Seen a few Hello. people asking Hello. about Adamo. Use the app, right? That's it. Do you want to sweat along the outer tables? Download the Triton Poker Plus app. Rail your favorite players, obviously. Have the one feature table here. Going to be switching it up after the break. For now, giving these. He players their TV time. Well, that mini raise is not going to shake Eric Saito to defend Jack 5 offsuit. Hits it. Not the type of board you want to see, but ace high too often. Quick check. Like, I got nothing. Might induce alley from random hands like queen highs, king highs. That's exactly that, Randy. One big blind delayed stab. Does the one big blind make you want... He probably had intentions to check call, Jack 5, but when he sees one big blind bet, he might just raise it up. Because the jack is a little vulnerable. That's precisely that. Seidel with the check raised on the turn. Taking it down. Back up to 45 bigs. A few people asking about the price pool as well. When we're going to announce what the top prize will be. Well, late reg is still open, ladies and gentlemen. So until late reg ends... Price pool is going to continue to grow. Once it closes, I promise you, you guys will be the first to know. That's not true, but we, we will be the first. We will to be know. the first. You'll be but the once second we to know. know, Randy will let you guys know ASAP. Twenty-four blinds, king, queen. Definitely a hand he could just jam on a dealer button open. Wrists. I like the raise. Makes it sixty k. Well, is the plan here to like three bet call off? I suppose. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but 
I'm happy that he's putting in more chips, just because I feel that Mateos is going to open a really wide button into his big blind. What do we do if Mateos comes over the top? Hmm. A7 finds the mark. No way Insiang taking it down pre. It feels like a... I get this feeling that he's going to... I, I think he's going to fold. I think he would. Um, that's kind of three bet. He just felt like he was just going to take it down. I don't know. He, he didn't think about that part yet. Just knows that Mateos is playing a little bit too many pots. Yeah, it's interesting. I'll tell you what, Randy, I just glanced over at the Triton Poker Plus app to look at the leaders. Obviously, Alex Kulev, tournament chip leader at this feature table. But it's actually one of our online qualifiers who, if I'm not mistaken, was eliminated within one of the first orbits of today when you and Arlena Jada were in the booth. Daniel Smilkovich has re-entered and now finds himself sat in second with 1.2 million. Another Triton first timer, if I'm Please. not mistaken. Yeah, so Smirkovich was down to 8,000 chips. And he actually hung around. He didn't get eliminated in our time in the booth. And I don't know if it's the same stack he ran up to 1.2 million or wait, if he wait, he didn't get eliminated. He did not get eliminated. He was down to 8,000 chips. No. He kind of just hung around for like... We got to 40,000 chips. We changed the break, changed the new feature table. So I actually do not know what the end of that bullet's journey was or if it's the same journey still. Oh, now you've got me curious. Let me let me take a quick look. So he doubled ace-8 against ace-king. Don't tell me it's the same bullet. Dude, I, I'm having a look, mate. I I think. <laughs> well. I think it's the same bullet, you know. As you figured this out, we've got top pair on top pair action. We'll find out. I, I'm, I'm scanning through a lot of hands here. Give me, give me a couple of seconds. He lost all this chip, Dude, but 8,000 it, in the, the first, like, 10 minutes. It's the same bullet. No way. It's the same bullet. No. It's, you know it's impossible, right? It's it's too much of a upswing. Wow. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Dude, it's the, I'm not even joking. He's gone from being down to 8K after the first orbit, threes against queens. You and Ali were in the booth for that one. To spinning it up to 1.2 million GG qualifier Daniel Smilkovich's first ever Triton event. What a storyline that would be. I mean, that's a story in itself as we dive back into this. I do apologize. Getting sidetracked. Enxiang taking down a big one. That's definitely one of the first stories for us to keep an eye on. I, I'm, I'm in shock. I don't think Ollie's going to believe you either if you told him that Smirkovich did not rebuy to get wow. a top two stack. <laughs> I, I just assumed I saw, you know, I saw the 1.2 million. I, I remember watching you guys at the start and, and Daniel against Greenwood, Queens against pocket threes, if I'm not mistaken, Correct. on like a, a jack. A 4-3-2 four, three, four, three. jack. Right. Crippled, left with dust. Yeah. Well, well, well. We'll keep an eye on that one, chat. We'll keep you updated. Could be one of the stories of the series should Daniel go on to run deep here. Imagine what the group chat looks like. <laughs> the, just got cooler. Yeah, the Smilkovich group chat. It's like, hey guys, just landed in Vietnam. Uh, for those of you that bought a little piece, not going great. Yeah. Less than an orbit in, down to 8K. Fast forward a few hours and love to see it. <laughs> I 
So this blind versus blind, and Peters has limp called King Nine offsuit for big blinds, and he's got that little double gutter. It's a fun flop, Brandy. Ninety thousand out there. See how Chong Xiao ops proceed. Gonna knuckle this one back as turns top pair. Does that now count as a triple gut shot? <laughs> triple gut shot for Peters. Uh, no. I mean, on the on the flop, he could have made a, a jack high straight on the turn or a king high straight. Now an ace high straight. I yeah, see what you're saying. You see what I'm saying? Okay. All right. Not a thing. Cool. 135k in the middle, courtesy of the delayed C bet from Xiao. Form of half pot Peters with the decision. Yeah, it's a bit annoying because you you know you got clean outs, but then you don't have the initiative. You're out of position. The ace is Hello. gonna hit Hello. that pre flop raising range more. He's still gonna call here. Yeah, King High maybe gonna be good, you know, <laughs> some of the time. Definitely a consideration, flanks. Blank expression on D Pete's face as he tables the King Nine gets shown the winner by Xiao and uh, <laughs> Yes chat, we have been live for seven hours. We're gonna be live for the next two weeks and for those of you that are interested in not only watching this live feature table but sweating some of the outer tables, some of your favorite players. Better way to watch poker, the Triton Poker Plus app. Follow along, actually click into player profiles and hand histories as we just discovered, Daniel Smilkovich, we were discussing earlier on, can actually sweat that journey from where he lost the hand against Greenwood, was down to 8K, and you can just see it's very steady graph of just 8K, 16K, 20K for a couple of orbits. Now up to second in chips. Shout out to Rob Young as well, who we saw over on Twitter showing some love to the Triton Poker Plus app. Yeah, we will be announcing the prize pools, obviously, the payouts, rather, if you will. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Once late reg is closed. For now. Poker being played on the main stage here at the Hoiana Golf Resort and Casino here in Vietnam. Event number one of the Triton Poker Super High Roller Series. Top two for El Matador, swing and a miss for Kulev. Usually you'll be missing with that suited three. That incoming. <coughs> Just saw that Bonomo has joined Correct. the feature table. Yeah, he showed up to some earlier Triton events yes. and then kind of took a break from it. Looks like he's back at it. You know, saw some streams. Was like, man, I'm missing out. Definitely not skipping Vietnam. Justin Bonomo, number one, the all-time money list. How about that, Randy? Sixty million <coughs> in total live earnings, best live cash. Just casual ten mil. Yeah. It's hard to do. Crossed that 60 million line earlier on this year, back in January. Couple of caches, the PSPC. Let's see how Alex maneuvers queens in a small blind. Is he going to raise or is he going to limp as he would do with a lot of his hands?
40,000 4x. These two seem to be battling quite a bit. Chaos has flopped the piece on the ace 8 5 mono in the form of middle pair Kulev. Way out in front, however, yeah, with the queens, the queen of diamonds in hand. Mm. Although the ace is a scare card. Yeah, it's a bit worrisome. Looks like he's going to keep betting, though. He wants to keep the initiative. Just a small bet. Might feel that checking makes it a little bit trickier on future streets. Against the 18k bet, well, or 10-8, it's enough to see a turn card. Chaos going nowhere. 126,000 in the middle, and as Randy Scary. alluded to, these two have been not shy to go after each other. Yeah, he doesn't like to see this king of two queens. I, can Im I don't really see why he'd want to bet anymore. Seems like a good spot to pot control a bit. Oh, he's looking down at chips. Okay. 25k. So, trying to keep control. I guess he's trying to value bet against an 8x. Maybe he doesn't want to check and be faced against a large sizing. Knows he's got equity with that queen of diamonds. Hmm. It's kind of like a, a mergy kind of bet to me. Yeah, to be honest with you, Randy, I feel like we're in a very intricate part of the game tree here, these two legends, and I'm about as baffled as you are. Well, small, small from Kulev, Rivers, a set of queens, 176,000 in the middle. See what sizing he comes with now. He probably feels that his most likely chance to get a good amount of chips is against an ace. Wow, he checks. Okay. I'll slide it on over to El Matador with the check behind from Mateos. Bit of a smack from Kulev, had That's the best hand the entire way. <laughs> hmm. That is going to be our next feature table, and I spy Linus Love. Lie. Some Linus Love action. And then for me personally, other than JK, a couple of unfamiliar faces. I don't know if you... Look, you don't get record-breaking fields without new faces. And there's a lot of them here. Refreshing to see. That's going to be a good feature table. I always love watching some Linus. It's obviously coming second in that 200k coin river invitational for his career best cash. Second, Sam Grafton. Took it down for 5.5 million. When you think of final tables in, in recent years, that was... Uh, that was a good one. That, that was a... That one delivered. That one definitely delivered. Yeah, KCG was just putting some pressure on them. That was a fun one. KCG. I saw KCG earlier. Yeah. Gonna be a good series. Yeah, he was he's around. Concerned. Now, if he doesn't 
doesn't show up, the series is canceled. It's not, you know, we, we need him. Not only did he obviously win a title back in Cyprus, but just steamrolled some of the cash game tables as well. Mm -hmm. I was speaking with uh, young Michael Zhang a couple of weeks ago. He's just like KCG, he was just playing short deck cash for the first time. And, you know, he's just doing what KCG does. I'm sure we'll be seeing plenty of him over the next couple of weeks. He's here. Trouble for Seidel after defending the big blind with the queen eight off. It's flopped top pair on the queen jack six. Mateos flopping top two. Seidel drawing to running eights. At this stack depth as well against Adrian. Could be in trouble. Definitely gonna be in trouble, just to what extent. Diamond clubs rolling off on the turn, King Ten. ten does complete a gut shot. Yeah, it's not the one you're in love with. You don't hitting, want to, yeah. But yeah. you'll take it. Definitely not thrilled about drawing to four hours. It's the one you hit where you're thinking, please check. Steins will turn a barrel from a tail, setting up a very natural SPR of. Just sell one should Seidel continue. Hmm. Especially you are coming up against El Matador. Yeah, you just can't. Not yet. 2 6 1 in the middle, 2 4 2 the effective stack, and ahead to the Queen of Clubs, River, Case Queen, rolling off, giving Mateos the nut full house and And giving Seidel trips as well, a hand that is going to have to pay off a bet on the river, I one think, would assume. I think all the chips are going in for Mateos. What's that bet? Pauline. They're all in announced. <coughs> Can Seidel get away from this is the question. Is Feels it? like you improved. Wow, the old one chip flick in. It's going to get shown the bad news. And Adrian Mateos <coughs> up to 745,000 chips. Seidel down to just 11 bigs. Couldn't get away from it, Randy. And I can't say I blame him against the very competent Mateos. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a tough river card. Great night. Great night. Oh. Max Team Pro. Hi, bro. One on Spain's all time money list. Rough series last time round, Randy. For Adrian Mateus in Cyprus. 0 for 6, if I'm not mistaken. But looking to change things here in Vietnam. Big double. For Mateo's final hand of this feature table, now nursing a very healthy 62 bigs. Line's going to be going up to 6,000, 12,000 when we do return from dinner break. But it's Bulgaria's Alex Kulev came into this feature table as the chip leader, still holds that title here and still holds the overall tournament chip leaders. We welcome you back into the broadcast booth, Henry Kilbane, alongside my co commentator, Randy Lou. Randy, couple of key talking points here uh, obviously firstly the record breaking field mm -hmm. 154 runners coming into this dinner break smashing that previous record by 23 but let's talk about some of these new faces Alex Kulev kind of just steamrolling if you will this feature table first ever Triton series finds himself chip leader going into dinner break 
do you think some of these new players are, you know, they're comfortable. We've already spoken about how they're battling in some of the higher stakes tournaments in the world. But do the bright lights and the poker world watching from, you know, all over the world have some form of an impact on the nerves, maybe? You would think they would, um, especially these super high stakes. But from what I've seen on the live stream so far, these guys are playing just as they normally would online. They're playing very well. They're making their plays. They're not playing scared. And you know, like Alex Kula, he's I've never heard of him before. You told me he's regarded as one of the best online players out there, and he's showing it, and I'm very impressed. Well, talking of online players, Pablo Silva, who I believe qualified over on GG, he's currently second in chips with 116 bigs. But maybe the biggest story coming out of this <laughs> 25K is Daniel Smilkovic, currently nursing a healthy 1.2 million. Third in chips overall, was down to just 8K after an orbit of play. Can you just quickly rerun yeah. us through that hand what happened against greenwood well it was within like the first five to ten minutes of the whole tournament and he got in pocket queens against the set of threes in a squeezed pot and he was down to eight big blinds didn't look too happy about <laughs> it was ready to rebuy but you know he got a double here and there but he maintained a short stack very small stack until we moved him from the table with right. the break and i assumed when his name popped up as a top two top three stack that he re-entered, but mm. you're telling me through the Triton Poker app, he did not rebuy. I, I scanned through all the hand histories, as you can, over on the tr Triton Poker Plus app. And yeah, looking at the app, and it hasn't betrayed me up until now. I've got a funny feeling that the app is correct. And Daniel has come back from that 8K stack as we head into dinner break. When we come back, a new feature table will be with the likes of Jason Kuhn, Arnis Lodiger, just to name a few of the stars that are going to be on the main stage as Randy and I are going to head for some Vietnamese coffee and salad, maybe? Who knows? But we return more live coverage from event number one of the GG 25K Millions Live Edition. We'll see you guys very shortly. Start your journey towards becoming a winning poker player today with the Tournament Masterclass. I designed a blueprint that has helped me and countless students to become consistent winning players in poker. We simplify and teach concepts that work. Preflop, postflop, ICM preflop and postflop, final tables, multi way, a whole population analysis, a GTO Bible, and many play and explain live footage showcasing all the concepts and exploits taught in the term masterclass. Don't waste any more time on complex strategies that simply don't work and join the term masterclass and start winning in poker, whether it's online or live poker.
so let's see how Greenwood approaches. And I for Greenwood, once his check raise gets called, Randy, where do you begin to range Smilkovich to to the over pairs, more middling sized perhaps? Well, I, I, do th I do think um, Queens, Kings, and Ace is a very high probability. You know, he could have Ace, King as well. Um, he needs to think about would my opponent call a 4x check raise on the flop with these Ace, X? If not, then he would weight it more towards the big pairs. I do not believe he thinks Smirkovic has got a, a medium pair like nines or eights. He might think those hands would just call pre flop. He also might think Smirkovic made a move pre-flop with two diamonds uh, that could call that call it a flop. 60,000. This is uncomfortable for two queens, right? You're playing for 250 big blind pot. Yeah. And that pot is laying Smirkovic 3-1 to one here. But, of course, it's that big bomb that could come on the river that really is of further concern oh my god a jam from Smilkovich and Greenwood snap calls with the set of threes and so the German has just two outs once here in just the first couple of orbits at our featured table still in level one yeah um just pretty much didn't think Greenwood could have a set too often given the preflop action but just misread that I believe nine of diamonds on the end does not improve Smilkovich and he is going to be crippled down to just 13K. Yeah, what's important is you make assumptions about what the preflop sizing dictates, what ranges they have. And if Smirkovich didn't... So the r official rule is we have to stand up for text? Is that, is that how that works? Yeah. That's what he said. Okay. Ace eight here for Smilkovich on the button. And he's going to put the rest of his so when I chips ask how much, so out there. The really a devastating first okay. level for him as his two queens ran into the pocket. Line. Flopped middle set against the over pair and with cheese. Meanwhile, the Sorry. ace king suited. Three bets and gives Smilkovich yeah, some protection, but also gives him some bad news. Is this not going so swimmingly for the German, Randy? No, not a good start for him. Um, we'll see how this run out goes. If it isn't favorable, he does have the option to re-enter. Well, the 10 and the 9 working in conjunction with that 8 of clubs, but runner-runner needed for the time being in terms of straight potential any eight would do the, the trick as the turns a blank and there is the eight of diamonds and oh. it's like wait me running good what I was about to take off that microphone Max, maybe he will spin it up uh, it's gonna take a lot of spins The 2K open, just a min raise. This ace nine suited for Mizzy. Might give some action. He yeah. did see Smirkovich, what, raise fold earlier with like 11, 12 blinds. That's right. But nope. Wow, just folds it. He, saw, he smelt that ace queen right behind him. Uh, I guess so, because Dvoris definitely isn't putting his hand into the muck from the button. Most definitely going to re-raise this. Against such a shallow stack. Upstairs we go. 6K. Another all in for Smirkovich. They're racing. Advantage two jacks against two overs. It will be but a flesh wound to Dvoris if he is unable to dispense. Smilkovich and the six seven eight flop is in favor of the German who is looking for his second double. Board pairs on the turn just need to fade an ace or a queen here on the river, which he has done. I'm calling now. He's getting back to starting stack. <laughs> Give him another hour. Thirty nine thousand. I feel like it's almost frustrating. Canada. 
Queen nine suited now for Rocco. Opens to 6,500. Greenwood mulling over the 9-3 suited out of the big. Both players sharing the 9. 6-4 deuce flop. Advantage Rocco with the diamond draw here. We did see Soiza lead on this kind of board texture with a little gutty, but... Unsuccessfully, <laughs> of course, as he went three barrels against Adamo. I think it was exactly 6-4 deuce as well. Yeah, it was queen five of spades on a two spade flop. Greenwood with the gutter. Has checked it. Rocco taking his time before reaching out. And delivering a 5,500 chip follow through. Lack of a heart on this board is obviously a disappointment to Greenwood as it removes the backdoor prospects. It's not the nicest piece, but you know what? It's a piece for 9 3 suited. I feel like against this small sizing, you've got to kind of make a stand somewhere, whether it's a check raise or check call. I think Greenwood knows this. Does make the call. Fishing for a 3, 5, or a 9. He comes up with a 5, but it's in the form of a diamond, Randy. Six high straight against queen high diamonds now. The dream. Or no. the nightmare, depending <laughs> on whose perspective you take. Greenwood checking over to Rocco. The five of diamonds, nice uh, flush to hit because it's the type of card that improves the big blind check calling range, whether it's like eight seven or six five or or the three x. Like, wow, he checks it back. Oh, and this could be trouble for Greenwood. The king of clubs does not rate to impact anything. I think Rock will check back the turn, believe, because that card he's supposed to be scared of normally, so he's protecting the other parts of his range that should be weak on this board texture right now. That's probably going to be the biggest fight in the tournament, this one. I don't know what is the record, maybe like 130. Mm -hmm. well, Greenwood's going to dial up yeah, what he 24, thinks is a value 24, bet, but 24,000, which is roughly full pot, is going to get raised. How much? When you see a full pot size bet, roughly, good, you're thinking the guy's got at least a straight. The thing is, even kings up, which would be such a weird holding for Rocco to show up with in this particular spot, a set of kings, I think, would maybe be the more likely sort of hand, specifically king of hearts, <coughs> king of spades, because any pocket kings with the diamond would likely continue to barrel mm -hmm. on the turn wouldn't look to raise in this spot. Definitely would not be raising. Um, it's going to cause some confusion for Greenwood why his opponent is raising. 92. Oh, man. He's, he's like, really? Yeah, he really did not expect this at all. I mean, as you reconstruct the hand, we have an upfront raise from Rocco. A follow through on the flop that was normally sized. Then the check back on the arrival of the five of diamonds, followed by a raise when the king of clubs rolls off. Yeah, this is, this is odd for Greenwood. And yeah. <laughs> confused. So he's also thinking, well, I put a big bet in there, and you're still raising me. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like you know I've got at least a straight. 
which is a strong holding. And you still want to raise. So what do you have? Are you really making a, a big move on me knowing my, my hand should be pretty strong? If Rocco is bluffing, he's going to be putting him on some kind of, I don't know, ace-x. Or like ace-king with uh, ace-queen, ace-of-diamond, something like this with a flush blocker type card. Two time banks deployed so far. I guess Green was thinking how often would Rocco take this kind of line as a bluff. I don't know how much history they have with each other. So it's kind of tough to figure out. Well, Randy, you mentioned that you <coughs> didn't know a lot about Rocco, but what you did know was that he takes very creative lines mm -hmm. and that he is perceived to be aggro. Now, you wonder how much of that is on Greenwood's mind right now. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, like I've read live updates, and Rocco plays some, some pretty crazy hands, so it is reasonable <coughs> he's got bluffs here. Like he, he wants to pitch him in. Nope. Uh, and that's just such a demoralizing feeling for Greenwood, who you can absolutely understand and relate to in that spot. It's almost like just I gotta know what you have here. You know, I've I, Mike Rocco, the rest of the table certainly paying attention to that spot. He caught so he <laughs> caught pretty quick. No time banks. Sure used. did. That sure is did. conviction. You know, Mikita's used to being on the other end of those transactions, yeah. usually as the guy who makes the big call. As we see Ten Kim with an ace-queen opening. Want to take a moment, by the way, to apologize at our featured table as Mike Takayama playing under the Philippine flag. At last check, you may have noticed that he is now showing up in the stream under the Chinese flag and the name Liu Yang. And we are being told that that is correct. Also... Uh, thanks to Daniel Abriz in the chat on YouTube, who was also directing us in that manner. Of course, for Randy and I and the rest of the staff, we are getting familiarized with some of the newer participants here. So these sorts of mistakes may happen from time to time. Obviously, we'll endeavor to do a little bit better, but glad we've made the correction as O'Dwyer issuing some corrective action to 10 Kim's open with two red kings. As E3 bets to 22,000, Kim will call the extra 15 as we play heads up for 51-5. Now these are... Oh, oh my. Danger. Top pair against middle set here. If you're 10 Kim right now, you called the three bet. This is the top of your range. He's queen, top pair, top kicker. It's going to be very hard for him to lay this down by the river. Clubs would be a real assist in terms of sh being shown the exit with this ace queen, but for the time being, Kim checking and most certainly calling. And how big does O'Dwyer go? 13,000. This is Milky. Yeah, he, he's hoping like some weaker holdings will still continue, you know, like gut shots. I think he's going to start sizing up on the turn thinking that, well, he's going to be up against ace a lot, especially holding two kings. He's locking those king-queens, king-jacks. He's going to want to try to get all the chips in by the river. Jack. Now, all of a sudden, a Broadway draw, giving Ten Kim some potential wins. Gives Ten Kim a little bit of worry, because, you know, he could have been up against ace-jack that now um, took the lead against him. need to find the perfect sizing to get those ace-queens, ace-tens to call. Yeah, we rule the ace-kings out at this point, given we hold two red kings. So we know yep. in all likelihood that Ten Kim has that ace-x, probably a Broadway dangler, maybe even a little bit of ace-jack. And now a much more significant sizing of 52,000. And you see physical adjustments there in 10 Kim. <laughs> it was like, man, what's happening? 
Yeah, it's uncomfortable because you know you've got one of the strongest hands you can have uh, given the action so far. You improved in terms of more outs, but then you just feel like you're behind yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So your gut's telling you I'm behind, but then your cards are kind of telling you to continue. By the way, note Steve O'Dwyer just fixed on 10 Kim there, had the same view we did moments ago. And I don't know about you, Randy, but when I'm looking at an opponent that has that reaction to my bet on the turn, I really begin to narrow it down to Ace-X with the Broadway dangler. He's all in. Oh, and he jams a snap call from O'Dwyer. I don't think that was anticipated at all, but of course Steve thrilled to see this development. And the stacks were roughly level there as the jam came in. Four outs once for the South Korean who really stepped in it here, took a shot at what he thought might have been a hand that was no good. The three of clubs on the river of no help and Ten Kim is polished off here by O'Dwyer's set of kings. They're going to count it down just to be coffees hitting you yet, they, Randy? They, they're hitting me, all right. <laughs> <laughs> they're not light on caffeine, are they? Spinning. Baby suited ace up front for O'Dwyer. Takes it upstairs. Twenty six blinds in the small blind. Ace clean. These are big pickups if you can make them, but against an upfront open. I probably would push this all in. Um, that looks like is he going for like a smaller three bet? Yeah. I can't see any of your chips again. How much uh -oh. do you have now? New Locker's already folded that 10-5. O'Dwyer asking for a count now. Yeah, he wants to know how much stack he's up against, or whether he can continue with ace-4 of diamonds. O'Dwyer's well, probably thinking, wow, you're 3-betting me the 27k off of this stack from the small leg against my undergun. What does it mean? It's invited his opponent to take a flop. Now, In bad right. shape, by the way. Yeah. Paired board. One diamond out there for O'Dwyer. Does have the benefit of position. And hmm. Let's see if 10 Kim is willing to follow through off of 78K into 62. I feel like on a king high board, you three bet. You got to follow through here. You represent the ace kings. Your opponent can't call too much. He's going to check. But I think O'Dwyer should still be pr pretty scared. It, it seems kind of like suspicious that my opponent is checking on a king nine nine. Oh man, look at this. The ace rolls off on the turn, and it's actually a bad card for Ten Kim, as he and O'Dwyer are chopping as it stands now. Yeah, O'Dwyer got bailed out. Sure did. A pot he should be losing most of the time. Twenty-five K now on the turn. Well, Dwyer's never folding. Um, there's no obvious flush draws out there. I think he's best just to call and maybe hope Ten Kim occasionally, who's bluffing, will just fire away and you know call it off. There's no well disguised flush draws out there yeah. either, Randy. If we're being fair. <laughs> yeah. So in comes the call from O'Dwyer. Here comes the river, and it's the case ace. And a foregone conclusion here is I would expect the rest of Ten Kim's chips to be beaten into the pot by O'Dwyer on the river. If you've got Ace King or two nines, take it, buddy. Yep. And you see O'Dwyer, it's kind of the look on his face was very much like, well, if it's quads or the Ace King. Ace okay, King? good. Let's carve it up. Yeah. Is that yeah. you? He's like, hey, Russell, man, I don't know. 
where you were about 20 some odd years ago. But uh, just take a look at this kid here. His name's Thomas. Does he look familiar <laughs> at all? Silva back at it with Queen 10 offsuit in the cutoff. Now Bads with Jack 10. Certainly not going anywhere. A little mini raise. Odds are amazing. Let's see what we can flop, if anything. Shades on. Nine eight five. Two overs and the open ender up against two overs and a gut shot. Bads checks it. Solid piece from the big blind. Now two overs and a gut shot. It's definitely worthy of a bet unless you feel that the big blind. Let's start with a fire. A little tiny bet. Yep. Mini bet. Not quite mini, but you know, upwards a little bit. Sure, but still. The mini bet, the mini word is has to be a min has bet. Has to literally be the minimum. Okay, not right. forty five hundred, not forty eight hundred. Okay, but four thousand. Fair. Aaron Zhang will not be happy with your comment. We there. We, we do need to honor Aaron. Oh, a check raise from Badziakuski here is. He seeks to bring this pot into focus. Well, when you see the small continuation bets and you see a board that's supposed to hit your range more, you tend to check raise a bit more often than not. But with queen 10, you bet small. You do invite these check raises, but you got enough equity. You got to draw to the nuts. You're going to continue. Now the 10 on the turn hits both players for top pair. Advantage Silva with that queen kicker, though. Into 82 comes 20K. Yeah, I think Bads was thinking, I don't really want to get all the chips in there, but I don't want this to check through as well. As played, Silva probably will be calling here. You know, it's, it's a good hand, but it's not optimal to get a lot of chips in. Going to a time bank, Randy, I think this is a little bit surprising. Yeah, most certainly, because if he was to make a play at this pot, it feels like you're only getting called by better. And that's the type of board texture that you get check raise on, and they bet again. They could have a pretty big hand here with two pair plus very easily. So I'm kind of curious as to why he, what he's thinking, I suppose. It does feel like a a fairly speedy call would have been the natural line to take. Yeah. And now a second time bank is being used. Maybe Silva's thinking about how he's going to approach the river unimproved here on the turn. Well, I feel like you could call and decide, use those time banks on that street instead. So, Oh, my God, he jams, yeah. Randy. Wow. Wow. Now, mind you, Bads blocks the queen jack, but so does Silva. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think Bads thinks that Silva would...
and welcome back into the broadcast booth here at the Hoyana Golf Resort and Casino. Henry Kilmain alongside Randy Lou. Randy, record-breaking field has been set and on break. If you look up to our right in a 25K. That is a record-breaking field deserves a big prize like that, and best players competing for it. Lots of new faces, lots of familiar faces, and we're just in event number one only. We, we have more indeed. to come. And talking of new faces and familiar faces, how about our new feature table? Three new players in the form of Kim, Ye, and Chiu, uh, Chiu and some recognizable faces in the form of Jason Kuhn, Dan Smith, Orpen and Linus Love. So a mixture here of newcomers and Triton regulars. Dan Smith, obviously one of those guys that has just been around the high roller scene for many years. Don't believe he was with us in Cyprus, but he's here at the start of this series here playing 14 bigs. Jason Kuhn, four-time champion, nursing a very healthy 69 big blind stack. And some of the new players, you know, uh, Kim playing 54 bigs. So someone to keep an eye on, newcomer to a Triton series with a healthy stack. Just kind of going back to what we were discussing earlier on, the bright lights, the big stage, maybe mm -hmm. see some nerves from these new players. Um, so far, they haven't been showing any nerves, but, you know, we've got some even more new faces. Uh, I'm curious to see how they're going to act. Um yeah, I don't know. I think they're just going to play their best, right? Like, there's so much up top. It's, now it's not the time to be kind of playing nervously and making mistakes. Well, let's throw it back down. 90 players remain. Late Reg is closed. 23 players going to make it into the money with 965,000 for first. And it is none other than our four-time champion and Triton ambassador, Jason Kuhn, out in front at this feature table. Yang Liu out in front of the overall field, playing 1.5 million. Our attention brought to these seven players as we throw it down to the main stage. Blind 6,000, 12,000 with a 12,000 big blind anti. A couple of open jamming and re-jamming stacks there in the form of Steve Yeh, Dan Smith and Orpin nursing the shortest stack with just 12 big blinds, Randy. So, got a funny feeling, maybe not going to see as many flops as we would like, but just more hand v hand all in we situations. We will definitely be seeing these reshoves and all in situations, but you know, the big blind will still be defending quite wide, even sure. with shallow stacks. They will have a smaller stack to pot ratio. Uh, they'll be able to oh, realize like, their equity a lot easier. It's like it's dong, uh, you know, so, I mean, Vietnamese. You know, it's, it's not all pre-flop. $25,000 sweat here, baby. Let's and see, and, and that's a it's a nice space. hand I get to play, too. I get to play it if sometimes. Maybe I'll make money on it. Yeah. 24. 24. Right? This guy might be the sickest card mechanic in the world. What? Okay, let's find out. Absolutely no idea what JK is on about. $25,000 hand. Open with the min from under the gun. You were talking about the short stacks. Intel. In the big blind. Twenty dollars a down for a tip. Able to realize Steve. You can in rough shape though. Yeah. You know these hands. Yeah. Like but I might make a parts. lot of those bets this trip. You get twenty eight down. Draw a pair, go yeah. Pit. Yeah, but like I say, well, I do well, it like forty well. times. King it Queen pretty, eight top pair for generous. Orpen. Sixty six thousand in the middle. SPR less than Shit. two. Is that all it is? Yeah. Oh, I was thinking it was like a little over a hundred a time. 75 bucks, I think. Okay. That ain't bad. Yeah. So Dan Smith and JK talking about prop betting, I believe, during this series. Or betting on themselves, maybe, in, in events and whatnot. This is the so biggest train event ever. This is actually a continuation bet. Sizable uh, bet. No, Jack. not yet. 
There was a 100K short deck that, yeah. 100K USD, 130K USD that got this many runners. picked up a little straight draw. Dang. That's yes, indeed what one that? shares with all of them. Bananas. That's actually a small bet. Might not have quite been this many. It was it was over 100. Is it? This is? Yeah, I, there were a couple right at 100, I think, in Spain, like 101 or something, so yeah. I think they broke the record in Madrid, right? Yeah, exactly. There's like a 50K that had a ton. You mean biggest in terms of cash or? No, just in runners, like, entries. Oh. Um, Second barrel coming in from Orpin. We do apologize for the brief graphical error. Let's see how it's fired out a bet of 59,000 on this nine of diamonds turn. It's awkward given the stack sizes they're playing with. Just a bit of a math problem. Hoping to hit. Hits the flush. Now do you just jam in the last 50k? Oh. I let's move all, all in and <laughs> Wow. You can see Orpin's li eyes light up. Ace of Hearts. Quarter pot jam. Means it needs to be good, like fifteen percent of the time with this king jack. Would have to hope that Steve is. So I guess what hands can you make this play as a bluff? Have to be like queen jack, queen ten with the heart, which just doesn't feel I just feel that likely. Although maybe I mean. Cool Last flop minute. with middle Yolo. pair. Pick up a gut shot on the turn, stick around, and then just YOLO it in on the uh, flush completing river. They were 12 big blind effective to start the hand. Under the gun versus big blind. That under the gun range should be pretty strong. That is a discipline lay down. It is a discipline lay down indeed from Orpen. Did they get even close? No? Ace. Number one they on ace. Turkey's all time money Won list. Win the spade. Win the spade. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you, you did it again? Yeah. yeah. What if you just mock when you were. I put on RFID. Yeah. So you can't lie. Yeah. <laughs> That's true, because the other table, it wasn't. You RFID. get one more crack, buddy. One more crack. Pick it to the suit. Just don't even think about it. Just okay, say it. 7-6 of diamonds. 7-6 yeah. of diamonds. 25,000 to you if I get 7-6 of diamonds this hand. Let me afford the ace juggle board. Uh, sure. Anybody can break this, please? I can break it. Actually, Let's I can't. Okay. Jason. 7-6 of diamonds. 25. What are you going to spend your 25,000 on when you deal me the 7-6 of diamonds? With my colleagues, of course. Okay, you're going to share with the colleagues. With all the stuff. Not just all the stuff. How okay. much did your bet? He gets 25,000. This is the second crack in a row at 25,000. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I've never heard anyone do this. Come on now. Seven, so six we'll of diamonds. This. Pay, these, pay this man his money. This is going to play 25k, Vin. Hi. <laughs> I have cards. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I haven't looked yet. Oh, sorry. Uh, Jason offering the Everybody's dealer in a, hurry a to 25k find out seven, free roll. Of diamonds or not. Just give oh. me one in the door, at least. Give me one to sweat. Well, that's wow, so hard. Yeah. yeah. Oh, come on. Is it I'm going to put it in the reader first so they yeah. know on the TV oh, okay. before okay. I know okay. if I have it. Seven, six, both nine, cards alive. 25,000. Here we go. Come on. Yeah. I, uh, one time dealer. 25k free down, roll. No. <laughs> Must be nice. So you got. Yeah, yeah, sorry. sorry. <laughs> okay. 
Have you ever seen that on a live stream before? Someone <laughs> offer the, the dealer a 25k <laughs> free roll, uh, or a free roll of any kind? There was a ten of diamonds. There was a ten of diamonds, but... And all in and a cool You're blindly willing blind. All pinned down to just three bigs. Two life cards. No dice on the ace ten mm. eight. Chop it up. Or <laughs> Jason saying, chop it up. Prematurely. Not possible to chop this one. Jack or open early at this feature table. Barrel twice with the best hand under the last gun. Last one. V 50, <laughs> Pick your hand. Last one. Here you go. Fifty thousand no no dollars is coming to you. Four or five of diamonds. Four or five of diamonds. You heard it. If I get four or five of diamonds, like diamonds. this hand, I like diamonds. he gets fifty thousand uh, dollars. Probably Come on, baby. Diamonds. Five, four diamonds, fifty grand. For a twelve. Fifty thousand dollar free roll. So no money worth coming after. You're saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Five, four diamonds. Less money. Fifty thousand is the last crack at it. I think it's gonna happen. Five, four diamonds. Here we go, baby. Fifty grand. So Come both on. cards are Five, alive again. Let's do it. Fifty thousand. I want to see it. I it would be great content. Give him any money out there. What are you doing? At least give him one. Ah yeah. Diamond in hand again. Never lucky. The dealer run bad. Fifty <laughs> k free roll. Those of you who what on earth is go are wondering what on earth is going on, Jason, just giving the dealer. A free roll, three hands in a row. To guess the cards. To guess the cards. Oh, it's a 50-50 chance, right? You either guess them or you don't. Yeah. He's lost three in a row. Martin Gale. Try it. Looking out. Let's see a few of you in the chat asking whether Late Reg has closed. It has indeed. Can confirm 166 entries in total. Price pool of 4.1 million, 4.15 million rather. 23 places paid with 965,000 going to the eventual champion, Randy. Impressive. So just a casual 38 and a half buy-ins for a 25K, you know? Yeah, I know, right? Because like when 25Ks are gone in the beginning, you get like 10 buy-ins. Yeah, I'm just multiplying that. I was browsing through some Hendon mobs earlier on and saw people winning 25Ks where the first prize was four buy-ins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this hand went under going to open. We got those shallow stacks we spoke of at the start of this level, and they're, they're battling a bit. Check call from Smith. Was correct on the flop. Outdrawn. And Smith rocking the double up drive patch, true legend of the game. Done a lot for charity through poker. Gonna knuckle it over again with the ace high, try to get this one to showdown. Seems pretty safe to value bet this king. I know you're probably wondering what hands I can get called by, but you would imagine if Dan Smith had a jack, he would be betting now, 18? given the action. 18, 000, I like the small bet, just hoping. Maybe Dan Smith's got a little pair, like ace three. Well, even... It looks milky, though. Yeah, even, you know, asking ace highs of the world to call, try and get a cheap bluff through with like a 10-9 suited, a queen-9, queen-10 suited. You open from under the gun. Action on Smith, let's go at the ace high and it wasn't fill. There, buddy. Oh, we tried so though, close. we tried, man. It's a good a crucial swat, right? one. 
Get the heart rate up a little bit. Get the heart rate up a little bit. We were all rooting for you. Well, surprise, surprise, Randy. See a name over on the Triton Poker Plus app among the top three chip leaders. Currently second in chips, none other than Fedor Holtz. Now seeing a very healthy 1.5 million. Second only to Pablo Silva. Yeah, Fedor. Uh. Was he very fun to watch? Had a nice Cypress. I think he seemed like he was going to make an even deeper run. Had some trouble in one hand at the final table, but going to redeem himself here. Nope. Nope. For those of you just joining us, from Europe, maybe yeah, someone just rolling out of bed late in the afternoon. In the hole, I mean, welcome. I, now you're talking a really event number one sweat. coverage. Does it have to be spread out? I believe so. Okay, but I'm not sure. It's a record-breaking 25k here. The Triton Super High Roller Series. GG Super Millions Live Edition. See Ace Queen for Phil Chu. He's playing about 24 big blinds. Question is do you just jam? Do you three bet try to induce some action? Kind of depends on what you, <coughs> how you think the dealer button will respond to Dolan or a smaller re race. Also kind of depends on how you play other parts of your ranges. Yeah, it's nice to have some three bet bluffs off of twenty five. Just gonna move all in though. Yeah, I was gonna say if you have three bet folds in your range uh, with these stack depth. I look like the face of a man with ace eight off. This is better, smaller. But you know, by jamming, <laughs> you do kind of force some hands to fold that might give you action. You know. Like say his opponent's Where's got like the card box? five, so ah, kind of fall jam, okay. it might reshove yeah, back into know. you. <coughs> Kim. Trick. Did you see it? A classic ball come up to me. All over. Especially when I'm like stateside, you're know, grinding in like Florida or Vegas or wherever. Henry, can you get me a try on hoodie? Can you do deliver? They yeah. do deliver worldwide. They do indeed. And I can tell you now, they are incredibly comfy to rock up to a poker table with. High quality. Dan Smith, high quality. Hoodie, high X. Is he going to run it? He is indeed. All in announced. Oh, well, wow. Jason Kuhn. It would have worked on Steve, yeah, but not against this hand. Big slick in the big. Gonna ISO jam over the top and Steve <laughs> in the calf gonna get out of the way with the jack ace. So Smith in trouble. Tens alive. Hearts also working for Dan. Finds himself all in at risk. 280,000 in the middle for him to win. Should he spike a 10 or some hearts and well? Spike. One one nine. Mm -hmm. I already got it out there. I had confidence in you. The old pre count. The confidence, Randy. Say it to Jason. One one nine, pal. He wants that ace or jack to roll off. Let's go. Miss. Yeah, three outer for Dan Smith to double up and survive. The 280,000, I tell you what, Randy, that man with a healthy chip stack is one of the toughest players to compete against. 
record breaking 25k. Almost seems fitting to have a Dan Smith deep run. There's a lot of players fitting of having a deep run in this event. For sure. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if he can spin it up. It's a tough field. Oh, dude, I mean, just just scroll through the top ten names, you know. it's. Uh... <laughs> KB over on YouTube saying, I've always like Smith's demeanor. Same with Linus. Yeah, there are a few players that come to mind when it comes to their table presence and the way they just they carry themselves, whether they're on you know the winning side of a hand or, or losing a big pot, they just stay composed. Stephen Chidwick comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Play the game. However the cards fall. Can't be mad at it. Fedor. Yeah. I mean, Danny, how many push To be honest, it's kind of like everyone in this field. I, I disagree. I don't, I don't think it's like everyone. Uh, hey, there, there we're are, doing it. We're going there are to people 12. that are dialed in and you know paying attention even when they're not in the hand, and you can feel their eyes piercing into you. Oh come on, you can do. You can do. You can do eight push-ups. I. <laughs> I think you could. Eight? You do eight push ups. Um, it's a push up problem. Wherever we were. What? I can do 100 push ups when I was eight. <laughs> eight. I was doing 20 pull ups when I was eight. <laughs> Whatever tournament we were at, I bet him 300 euro that he couldn't do eight push ups. But, like, he, he did one. I thought he wasn't doing two. No shit. He did it. He did it? I don't think he can do 12. Who are they talking about, do you know? I do not know. Yay, Triton. Yeah. We're breaking Shout records. Triton, the biggest turnout ever. You guys were right. How many pops do you think you can do right now? Well, I did upper body yesterday, so I'm a little... Say, say you're rested. Rested? Like great form, wide grip, or like chin-ups? Like a neutral grip? Like a neutral grip? Oof. 15? 22 or something, I'd say. 23? 15. I don't think any more than that. 15 is pretty uh, I haven't been training them. They're hard if you're like, if you don't... They're not easy, the man. I, I did 17, but I was swinging a little bit. Yeah, know? like the good form really will That's really true. get you. Yeah. Uh, for those of you watching over on YouTube, check out the pinned message for the field of players, chip stacks, table seatings, payouts. You ever climb those? Do head on over to the Triumph Poker Plus. You know I'm talking like those. I did do that in like. Elementary school, I was really good at that, but I haven't done it. Like, I'm kind of freaked out by that shit now. Just don't want to fall. <laughs> I don't like, even know how you'd go about okay, doing so it. If you're all upper body, it's like impossible. It's so hard, but if you use your legs, oh, you can gone. fly up them. Will this come? Nope. <laughs> Korean special? Nope. Korean special. Is that what we call the big blind these days? Kudan Kim. It goes by Andy, I heard him say earlier today. With the Korean special in the big blind. <laughs> Popping middle pair, backdoor clubs. Steve, after opening from plus one, popping top pair on the jack nine six rainbow. Kuhn, got to continue with the eights. Actually makes it trickier for us. Andy Kim. Seeing a bet and a call makes you second guess whether <laughs> you want to continue with that pair of nines. Do kind of got that backdoor stuff going on. But you f might feel that you need to improve to win this hand with a bet and a call. Price is good. Let's just see what develops, what falls. Korean big blind special. You think it's coming on this turn card? In the form of a straight draw, a flush draw, a deuce? How about complete rainbow 
Does the Korean special include the nine dudes? There are a lot of straight draws out there. Don't fault him for sticking around and seeing a turn. With two calls and two spots <coughs> on this board texture, King Jack is definitely pretty vulnerable, so I like that he's continuing to fire. Jason not interested in keeping Steve honest on the turn. Some believe a power eights into the muck. Action back on Kim. Who is going to keep Steve honest? 2 6 2 in the middle. Sizable pot brewing here. Steve with less than pot behind. Believe. Don't want to be overly, overly presumptuous. Queen of Hearts. Now pairing the King Queens, Queen Tens of the world. Expecting a check from Steve. Yeah, the Queen is not ideal. Hard to get called by worse. Uh, he's going to knuckle it back, yeah. and Steve got to pick up a crucial pot. Back up to 40 big blinds. Nice hand. Thank you. Nice hand indeed. Yeah, I do apologize, Randy. We were talking about the announcement made by our tournament director there just a few moments ago, Luca Vivaldi. It was a round of applause at our feature table due to the fact that this GG Super Millions Live Edition event number one at this Triton Series is a record breaking event here in Vietnam. And talking of GG, and the obviously passwords are announced in the chat for those of you watching over on Twitch and YouTube. You can sign up today and get a hundred dollar in rewards as well as a sign up bonus and well maybe a way into a future Triton series as well in the form of the satellites into this First event typically seems to be the one that players are qualifying into, if I'm not mistaken, 10, 10 qualifiers? Um, yeah, roughly. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm just thinking of Smirkovich when you're talking about qualifiers. Smirkovich, <laughs> I mean... 8K to 1.2 million. He's still out there, currently in sixth. Playing 1.3 million. Another qualified Pablo Silva. Mm. Chip leader with 81 left. 1.7 million. Nice, it wouldn't go very nice. But compared to the shit you play. No, <laughs> <laughs> you remember which one is yours? I'm pretty sure these two are mine. Oh, okay. I'll just try to put it here. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so then we no, get I'll, the, I'll rip the package off. Yeah. And make it. Easy. This is even new, so. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. wholesome moment there. Just I'll rip the package off, mm. packaging off, so you don't don't mistake our water bottle strategies. Okay, that's nice GTA. Right, Kalev got a monster stack as well. Yeah, Adrian Mateos, Fado Holtz, Yang Liu, all up there. Bill Chu is going to open up Ace 10 offsuit. And we're going to get over to Steve. Yeah, Queen 6 of Hearts. Remember, this guy was down to <sighs> 10 blinds earlier against Orpin. He spun it up. About 40 big blinds. Both players are going to whiff completely. Pre flop razor is Bill Chu. Dry texture. That's pretty smart. This type of board Never that favors confused. the big blind a bit more. Phil gonna see that here, trying to deny his opponent some equity. Dan Smith Holler in the big blind. 
taken out the 12k ante into the middle. Challenger. <clears throat> Just shy of 40 million in total live earnings for Dan Smith. Looking to cross that very exclusive club here in Vietnam. Just $330,000 short of 40 million in total live earnings. Best live cash, $8.7 million, Randy. Hard to do. Can you get a waitress, please? Yeah. That best live cash, obviously, coming back 2019. Triton Super High Roller Series in London. Million dollar buy-in. Came third for 7.2 million pounds. All right, so blind versus blind limps. Both players with an inside straight draw. Stevia yeah, going to fire away. Yeah. Hoping to represent some big cards since it did go limp check. Now King 10 could be the best hand. Got equity in case you are behind. Doing anything but calling would seem odd. Cool, he does, Randy. And well, 10 of clubs rolling off on the turn, giving Steve second nuts as we welcome Renato yeah. Martirosian to the feature table. Smith turning third pair. Go along with his flopped gut shot. Facing a double barrel from Steve. Yeah, this is a limp pot, so Dan Smith might feel that his range looks pretty weak. Pair. Yeah, Steve's certainly going to have a range advantage on the ace queen nine, right? Going to have more traps from the small. Mm -hmm. So Steve might be trying to leverage that thought. It was a flat white. And multi barrel. So you can see he's calling here with yeah. third pair. Blank. Deuce. Deuce. <laughs> Actually, um, um, excuse me. Steve's probably thinking, okay, well, you did check when I limped from the big blind. So all those big hands, the ace queens, the king jacks, these types of cards, not really in Dan Smith's range. Uh, king, king, uh, king jack is. I mean, Possible, if yeah, yeah, yeah. If he's checking king 10, he's going to have king jack. But it's uh, some, like, weak ace x. But I, I know exactly where you're coming from. Like, the story that's being told here. You know, blind v blind would not fault Dan Smith for calling off. Yeah, he might feel that this is, you know, getting upwards and towards a higher part of his range, feeling that he might be trying to get bullied off his hand. Um, I think he can. Trying to think of some natural bluffs as well. He knows that Stevie has got a range advantage here. Just wondering if he would try and pounce on that. I think hands with an eight makes sense. Hand like king eight, eight seven. I mean, it could be random two clubs. Jack X, possible. Stack into time bank being thrown now. By Smith. Thinking about it, would be half of his remaining stack. Taps the table. It's blind v blind spots. He's thinking it through. Correct decision. 
nursing a healthy 23-ish big blind stack. Alex Kulev just eliminated Adrian Mateos and is now nursing a 2.7 million chip stack. Just to fill you in, the average stack is 5.4, uh, sorry, 549,000. He's currently playing 5x tournament average. Not on poker, you see one of the Titan things. Congrats. Kings against Ace King. For 1.2 million <laughs> chips? Yeah, That's I do apologize. Uh, uh, Mateus has not been eliminated, yeah. as Mateus had him covered. And he's down to 174,000. I mean, I think it was like Lost over 100 big blinds in that hand. Tournament. Brutal. Wow. How about it? You don't know? First ever Triton tournament for the Bulgarian overwhelming chip leader. 76 left, 23 remain. As Linus, three bet jams over the top of the Jason Kuhn hey, open. Jason, going to just click call yet again. The Getting it in in great shape. See Linus, thirty-three percent equity, Randy. The degree, Not the best, all but it's something. <laughs> Four hundred and sixty-eight thousand out there. Uh -oh. Well, oh, a club <laughs> and a will draw. Well, it's going to be like the six of clubs. Nah, yeah, two of clubs. Two of clubs. Two of clubs. Oh. Oh. Seven of clubs. Never easy. Double gut shot oh, now for Linus. Let him squeeze it. Too many outs. <laughs> yeah, let him squeeze it. Let me squeeze it. Clean heart. Let him squeeze it. One time dealer. Eight of hearts on the river. GG's. Yeah, I thought that was a straight for about a half a second. <laughs> yeah, I did as well. I think everyone did. It's like, did it hit? A little hanger. But no dice this time round for Linus Love. Someone who we'll be seeing plenty more of across the next two weeks here. The Jack Links all in it. moment. This time he didn't pull jacks. This time I didn't pull jacks, nope. Knew I was gonna win this one. That's why he's on he's on there with the banner. Gotta know when to hold him, when to hold him, baby. You know what I mean? That banner? That was that was him? Oh, I didn't know that. My brother. What's your name? My name? Mason. Mason June. Mason June? Mason June. <laughs> Mason June. <laughs> Mason June. Actually, Mason June. Actually, Of course yeah, I know him. Obviously. <laughs> Who's that? Makita Bajiakuski. Makita. Fish. Fish. Big fish? Fish, fish. From 2013. <laughs> Maybe not so four time champ. Believe Randy. They're looking at those banners. Right? They are indeed. Oh, is there like a, a look alike around? No. <laughs> that one right there. That banner. So, what's your name? Mason June. He wants to try and fly under the radar, even though there's a massive banner with his name on it. Four time champ Jason Kuhn. Only joined by none other than the Bads Attack, Makita Badziakowski. I think, you know, that's one of the other things that brings players to these Triton series is the way that the champions are celebrated here as well. You know, that they, they don't there aren't many other festivals outside of winning the main event of the World Series that I can think of where you walk into a room and you know multiple time winners are celebrated in the way that they are here at Triton events. Yeah. Yeah, and it makes people fight even harder. Of course, for man. Side events. They yeah, said Linus with the drip, though. Always. Linus always with the drip. I'm an artist? The silk shirts. Mm -hmm. The feature table, but not going to be the case I'm for him in this one. I don't think I'm that famous. We'll see him tomorrow in the 15K as we dive back into this. Smith with the uh, open ender. Swing and a miss for everyone else. Mm, not on our side. Equity four ways. What is he say? Open in the straight draw. I thought he was a rapper. Check. It's Vapor. He said I was an artist. He Googled it. Uh, Fred Googled it, actually. Oh, really? 
My sister's an artist. Uh, is she a rapper? No. She's a designer. Wouldn't be. <laughs> is your sister a rapper, Randy? <laughs> no, just a <laughs> what do you do? odd statement to make. I'll give you three guesses, actually. All no, right, I'm let's make it straight a, for Dan Smith. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, my, my job is for Dan. Your job is what? Pretty easy to, to guess. guess. Everyone else sharing oh. cards. Like, there are millions of jobs. It's like, it's like pretty mainstream here. Mainstream? YouTuber? No, no, no. More old school. Way more old school than being a YouTuber. Way more what? Old school. Old school. Businessman? Are you a hitman? Doctor? Yeah, doctor. Oh. What kind of doctor are you? I'm a, I'm a trainee, like, so I'm trying to specialize in uh, ear, nose, throat. Oh, so you're still in school? Yeah, no, I'm, 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 I've graduated, but yeah. then in, uh, in Hong Kong, how the medical system works is that you have to be a resident, you have to be a resident doctor, and then train to be a specialist. Oh. So you work while you train. Got it. Awesome. So you're going to work in Hong Kong after you finish uh, your training? I think so. Yeah. How long so is the training? A qualified so doctor, as, as high well high as a yeah. can casual high 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 25k. Yeah, high stakes poker yeah. player. <laughs> Training to be a doctor in Hong Kong, I believe. Where you work in a public hospital and you like sort of train or like do stuff to become a specialist. Mm. By the end of the seven year, the seven year program, you take an exam. Not what you want when you turn the nuts is three quick folds, but Dan Smith will. Or a king queen, huh? Yeah, king queen. King queen. No one had a single piece. He put a small bit. Felt like a king queen situation. Nine hundred and sixty-five thousand up top in this one. Down to. I want to say the final so 75 yeah. is typically the amount of runners that you'd get in a 25k yeah, to start a tournament with. <laughs> this one, not only did we break the Triton record, we absolutely obliterated the previous record of 131 runners. 166 in this one. 965 for first, 23 players. Players going to be paid out. It's like very common. Twenty-four. Uh, cool. Any new ideas? Leading the pack. Storage. I don't want to do a third. No, the current technological advancements, not yet. I guess we're the only non-professional poker players in this table. Yeah, I think so. We are. Found <laughs> <laughs> a common ground. Kim and so just uh, another wholesome moment between those two. If you're that busy, like, oh, you're in the hand. <coughs> Yeah, so when did he learn how to play poker? Just in between appointments. <laughs> <laughs> Just has GG open whilst he's doing operations, yeah? Yeah, all right. One hand, mobile app. Other hand's got a surgical knife. No, I just won 500k uh, playing someone, Super Millions. Someone, All right, let uh, me operate now. <laughs> uh, hold on, let me play this hand. I've got aces. Hold up, Lem Cook, Lem Cook. About to run a massive bluff. Anyone knows what practice he practices at? Let me know. Curious to see if he's multi-tabling the operation table as well as uh, the Super Millions. If we're on GG as we dive back into this. King, Queen, 5. Steve. With the best of it after opening the nines pre. See the numbers gradually creeping up across the board on Twitch and YouTube. Welcome to all the newcomers. Jason Kuhn. Thinking about making a play here with pocket threes? Pocket threes? He doesn't have, have a set, right? No. Just three parts. He's used a time chip. Wow, oh, this is this is a big gangster. Check raises. He's reading, I suppose, the bet sizes as not that strong of a hand. So Dan, after the surgery, given the stack do you stop using and like the, the steroids, or do you stop doing anything with your nose, or do you still like? I keep up the routine. You keep up the routine. It shouldn't recur that quick. Maybe you just have like a pretty like high grading. Nice, um, 
Yeah. <clears throat> wow. JK. Oh, kind of important to like keep up. JK. To what? To keep up like uh, the Dao Ching and the uh, Nisal sprays. Yep. I do Check Craze out the small with the pocket threes. Thank you. Look at that set. Thank you. And then again, everything is fine. And then one last. That's how things stand here at this feature table. Jason Kuhn coming in as the chip leader. Lost a small one to Dan Smith. Got it in with the Ace King against the King 10. Then managed to hold with the pocket jacks against Linus Love's Ace 4 suited. Finds himself out in front. Overwhelming chip lead at this feature table. Closing in on the million chip mark. Looking to add a fifth title to his already impressive Triton resume. Couple of newcomers, Kim, Ye. Wait, Kim and Ye. Ye and Kim. Cool. So. Oh, sorry, I forgot you're 50 years old. Getting close to that age, right? <laughs> don't don't mention it. Don't mention age around Ali. All right, so Mark Tirosian's going to open Ace 8 off suit. Snoop's got 20 blinds. I think I should call one time. And Ace Jack? No. Uh, uh, pocket pair. Pocket pair. Yeah. Yeah, Aces? <laughs> Jack's back. Uh, yeah. I should pull one time. Cock pair. Dirty. Could have been the best hand. I think so. <laughs> Might not have been. Could have became the best hand, maybe. See some people in the chat talking Four about lines. the comeback of Daniel Smilkovic over on the Triton Poker Plus app. Came back from 8,000 chips. Now playing 1.35 million, currently sixth overall. What a spin. Some of them good, some of them not so good. For the GG Poker qualifier. Especially, it seems like I raise every hand. So. so. Andy Kim has decided to lead from the big blind with a little piece. Out just after the a little flush draw. A little like we decided draw. he was bluffing for sure. Taking a stab at Marty but Rosen. Marty Rosen's picked up. Not flush draw. Didn't care. <laughs> On on board. Yeah. I can went for it. For the cameras. Yeah. I'm sure Bianca woke up at 4 in the morning to watch this right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to replay it 10 times. That's Not why. Genius play. Watch me in at 25k on the 30 minutes on a stream. <clears throat> One seven seven defense. And Mark, Mark Thrashen just taking it upstairs and saying, "Let's play for it all, pal. If you really want to." It's Dan and Jason joking about Jason's wife waking up at 4 a.m. to watch him play this 25k. You know. Unlikely. Not, not this level. Shout out to Maybe tomorrow. Bianca, Kuhn, and Mill Chunkster. Shout out to all of our viewers across the board over on Twitch and YouTube. For those of you watching over on the Triton Poker YouTube channel, please do drop us a quick oh like, no. trying to get to 1,000 likes Number on our YouTube one. channel to celebrate this record breaking. Danny. Triton event, 25k oh, GG Super Millions Live yes. Edition. That was like a magic trick. It's like, there it is. You are like looking card. to be notified about all of the content that we release. Later, so boys, I'm done for the night. <laughs> subscribe to our channel, Randy Liu, responsible for some of the cash game coverage that gets released outside of the festivals. And what was it? Asking if he had a black I can tease there, that he does. Ali and I were also oh, you're, you're doing some work it. back in oh, January just, for, yeah, yeah, I, for some reason I thought the one some content that's going to be released later oh, on yeah, this I year. I had a black. Oh, yeah. Some exciting <laughs> stuff <laughs> coming <blacks>. out <laughs> in the future. Well, Andy Kim's got pocket nines. Brace. 
30 blinds effective. Put some more chips in there. Knows that Jason <coughs> Coon's going to open a pretty wide range from this cutoff. I usually call. I usually call the three <coughs> with this one, but I'm probably not going to make top pair. I should have an ace of clubs. Club. Oh, he just went all in. Before the aces? Is yeah. 30 bags not gonna make small. Yeah. Um, Nothing wrong with that. Good lay down. Yeah. Kind of one of those King Jack off suit? Nah. You seven. I'm 15 15, right? Yeah. Unfortunate. Sometimes you three bet that hand they call. Comes like King Queen. You're like, what do I do now with two nines? Keep it simple. I really jam. Called. Who days? <laughs> But someone in the oh, chat saying, always wondered why the British say sixth instead of sixth. Yeah, you do say it differently then. What, what do you say? Six? No, six. 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 Sixth. I think so. Am, am I saying it the same as you? or Go, go for it. Sixth? No, it sounds different. Does it really? It does. It's called an accent, two? though. <laughs> it's like it really bothers, really bothers him for some reason. I, I mean, I'm trying. I'm out here. What, six. No? That sounds all right. Yeah? Yeah, but that's not what you say normally. I didn't want to say anything because it didn't bother me, but I heard it. You guys can rock, okay? You guys take a day off. <laughs> did you ban that guy from chat yet? I didn't, no, but I do appreciate this guy living rent free in my head for the next two weeks of commentary every time I say sixth. But I can hear it now as well, and I'm going to try and correct it because it does sound a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always going to notice that now. Jesus. Love it. As we dive back into this button v big blind, Kim getting a bit spicy with the check back top pair and a gut shot allowing Artur to get there on the turn in the form of trip deuces. And I tell you what, Randy, opportunity for Artur to get the full double here, although the SPR quite deep on this turn. But if there's ever someone to station against, that is a sizable bet. It's the pot size bet from Artur. Yeah, he's also going to feel like he's underrupt his ace going to feel Maybe obligated not. to call, especially with a little straight draw. To go along with his ace. No obvious flush draws out there. Yeah, one black, right? Yeah. Going to get tricky on the river. Yeah. Hmm. Well, with this turn <laughs> bet, Artur has found a way to set up a natural river SPR of round one, should Kim call. He's thinking about it. Maybe he's he's wondering why Archer is opting for such a big bet on this board texture, right? There's there's no flush draw. Jeez, if he can get away from it's this, yeah, it's yeah. a huge bet. It's a huge bet. Let's flick in the one chip call. Wow, oh, two, three, nine in the middle. Artur, the effective stack. Two, four, eight behind. The brick rolls off on the river. Let's see if Artur just goes for the jugular here. Or maybe, does that given that Kim has kind of said, hey, that's a huge mm. bet, does he now go for it like a milky bet? Thinking maybe his opponent is thinking about getting away. It, usually you don't hear someone say it's a huge bet and call. No, I mean, Kim's been very open about being a recreational. Mm -hmm. I might fall asleep. I, might I know Archer's asleep. intention Jet was lag. definitely to jam this river. You have enough chips to go day two. So. I don't know if I got sleeping chips yet. <laughs> I see. This Hard maybe is still a bit jet lagged. But yeah, Artur. <coughs> if your opponent was potentially thinking of folding turn to the big bet, you have a hand that you want to get value from. Looks like he's still going to... Make the big bet. All in on the river. From Marta Roshan. An action back on Kim. Sniffed it out correctly on the turn. 
but had to keep him honest him for at least one. It's going to ask for a count. Like 245. How do you do that? I think he had the right instinct on the turn. I'm not saying I'm right. I just, Counts so fast. Seems suspicious. Right. Look at that side in. Because there's no flush draw. No. If there was a flush draw, I don't think he would have made that kind of comment. Just would call and see what happens. But You'd have to... Hope that Artur's ta taking a hand like Queen Four, Queen Three, just like you know, Four X or Three X of the world, bombing turn and following through on the river. Nice fold by like Kim. I tell you what, not easy to let go of top pair against that man, who is more than capable of That's finding cool. bluffs in the most yeah. unique spots. That's some good discipline. It would have been even Hands more up. impressive. He wanted to lay down a turn, you saw that. With such a good hand. Wow. It's too hard. I don't know how to... 34? <clears throat> yeah, the deuce was a tricky card, too, because it's like... What, how, many, how often do you have a deuce in your hand? <laughs> so he probably was thinking more along the lines of 3-4, as you heard him say just now. Good news is he can check out the live stream later on delay. Ease his concerns. What did I say? Pass. Plus? Pass. Pass. Oh. Closing in on a thousand likes over That's on YouTube. Do you appreciate. <laughs> The support from all of you. Appreciate the support from the players mm -hmm. showing up here in Vietnam. Record breaking field event number one. GG Super Millions Live Edition. Nineteen blinds for Dan Smith, ace three offsuit. I think he's thinking All about in. jam or check. Gonna jam. This is the type of hand where you just take the raw equity of the hand, just jam it. Whereas he doesn't want to make it like three big blinds and get jammed on or called. And then because ace three offsuit actually doesn't play that well post flop. You're just like, yeah, hope you fold. Block the hands you can call with, limp call with. Seems pretty good to me. Nice little pick up there for Dan Smith. He can cash for over 320,000 during this series. He will cross the 40 million in live earnings mark. Very exclusive club in the poker world. Not too far off myself, Randy. Two queens. Oh. The bubble's tense with Did I miss a hand? Huh? Did I miss a hand? Um, I don't no. think so. That's too, oh. You said you live in Jack Hong Kong? Jack 10, not I love too much of a hand. I used to go there all the time. I haven't been in forever, though. Yeah, it's like... It's a pretty good place, considering... Like, for poker players, considering it's, like, really close to Macau. Yeah, that's why I used to go. Yeah, and it's, like, multicultural as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Great food. Safe. Um, no language barrier. No. <sighs> so modern and pretty. John, so pocket fives under the gun. Awkward stack size. Just gonna lay it down. Kind of one of stacks where you either jam or fold. Don't want to min raise. 
think I'm in this? Yeah, yeah maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Look at that, like King oh. 8 offsuit. King. Jason, do we get a break after this level? No, no right? One more, one more uh, level? Another hour. Two sixes. Jason Coombe sitting there, vase king. Let's see what Phil does here. 21 bigs. Against the undergun plus one open. Kind of flat, it looks like. I feel like JK comes with. Against these stacks he's up against in the raise and a call, probably just going to jam. <laughs> 4,000 out there. 95. Okay, actually going to make it 95k. Quick glance up at the clock. 95. Three bet squeeze from the big. But Kim comes with maybe feels like he's being pushed around a little bit after that button v big blind hand against Artur Martyrosian just a few moments ago. That Queen Jack suited actually fares all right against Ace King. Their stacks aren't too deep. It's not the biggest three bet from Kuhn either. Yeah, so he's actually kind of wondering why did Jason squeeze kind of like to 95k with these stack sizes rather than doing jam? Does it mean he's got a really big hand? Has he got some squeeze folds for his sizing? That's the message he's kind of sending, right? So, hey, still got enough room behind to fold. Oh, Kim. I flick in the call and now Phil. Two sixes. Closing the action. I know you're closing the action, but okay, you call and take this to the flop three ways. You're not really getting the right price to hit a set. Yeah, you got to lay this down. Even closing the action. Wrong guy, but yeah. I'll take it. Sorry? Oh, sorry. I mean, I was, uh, like, just saying. Oh, king, queen, queen, Randy. And sometimes when you make it smaller to try to get action, you get the action that's going to defeat you. How about that for a flop, ladies and gentlemen? 237,000 in the middle. Kim open from plus one with the queen jack. It's a flat on the button. Kuhn squeezed from the big with the ace king. Relatively small three bet. Kim made the call and has now flopped trips against Jason's top pair, top kicker. Just smashed it. Trying to put 10. He's got a weak holding. 337,000 in the middle as the Ace of Diamonds rolls off on the turn, giving Jason Kuhn an additional two outs. 337,000 in the middle. <coughs> because a straight draw rolls off, I think Jason Kuhn might strongly consider firing away. It's gone small, small. Yeah, it's, um, hmm. trying to think. I, is he, like, setting up a situation where maybe he can find a fold by the river? Potentially, how it rolls off. It, it's hard for Andy to wake up with a bluff at some point, given the action so far. You'd need Kim to... Sticking around with a hand like Ace Jack, Ace Ten on the flop, which you know you can have. Yeah. Ace Jack of Hearts, Ace Ten of Hearts. I like to see Andy's just call here. With trip queens. And you got a Jack, so you don't got to worry about vulnerability against. Makes the call. Sip on some orange juice first. Blank on the river. 
So is Jason Kuhn go for value against Ace Jack Ace Ten, or is he going to maybe play cautious and find a way to potentially get away from this hand? Well, he certainly could have gone for a block bet, maybe. Left himself some room. Cause he did go small flop, small turn, another like sixty k. Definitely a possibility. Oh, look at this, Kim. Turn around, taking a sip of the juice. Oh wow, okay. Kim's just put them all in. <laughs> now, is there a world where Kim folds Queen Jack? Says sick and stands up out of his chair. Lose I mean, to kings and aces, ace queen. Any value. That's right. Well, you can. You can beat ace king, and that's pretty much it. Two combos of ace king suited. Obviously. But it seems like he didn't think he, well, pop, his opponent would bet ace king. Says he can't beat any value. Do I owe you more? So I have two, right? This is my last oh. hand. <coughs> Kim pained by this decision. Three bet squeeze out the big. Small out of respect, I call. Out of respect, he says he calls. Gets shown the ace king and Kim. Right. Try, didn't try to slow roll. No, I didn't. No, it didn't, didn't feel like a slow roll from Kim, you know. Yeah. He, he, he's he's, he's very openly talked about the fact that, you know. I'll tell you why he felt like he's not beating values. One of the things is that small squeeze pre-flop made him think he's getting milked by aces and kings as the hand developed post-flop. Yeah. So, it, you know, I think aces and kings is a big part of Jason Kuhn's range. 100%. Uh, with that sizing. You know, small bet on flop, small bet on the turn. He, he loses to everything bar ace-king. Yeah. Aces, kings, ace-queen, king-queen suited. All of these hands, although you could argue maybe king queen suited, not not a part of that range. Ace queen off, maybe not a part of that yeah, range. Yeah, those hands probably more likely to just ship it for in sure. pre flop. For sure. So I no, understand the concern. Could definitely forgive Kim in that spot for. A, well, we can call it a bit of a knit roll. A knit roll, I think, is fair. I think he's probably going to agree with that too. No jab at all. And set out of respect. And he's been saying he's not a professional player, right? So, cut on some slack, you know? He's not <laughs> like he's, like, gone to the solvers to decide, is this an automated call or not? 23 places going to be paid here in event number down. one. 25K GG Super Millions, 165,000 for first. 61 players remain. John, so it's got ace eight offsuit. Gonna rip it in. Look at this. I like this. He's like, well, ace eight's kind of hard to play post flop. I've got fold equity. Ace X. Archer seems like a guy who's gonna raise pretty loose. Get the king queen to lay down 42% equity. These guys came to play. You definitely have a bluff, the bluff there, right? He's You're not saying I was bluffing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? You're saying I was bluffing? No, 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 no I'm he's saying asking like, if you have a bluffing range there. Oh. And I'm like, he's gonna say yes, but then he's not gonna tell you anyways. Why? You have to figure you, it out. We've been talking. We've been talking about hands the whole day. Right. He's been honest. Sure. He showed me jacks, yeah. folding jacks, like jamming twelve big, right? Yeah, that's fine. Did you actually have? I didn't. I had pocket fours that hand. I was trying to back you up. Cut <laughs> <laughs> nah, the crap, guys. <laughs> There's a server. Yeah, yeah you killed me fours. Can I just have a, a large avion? Large water avion. Yeah, avion. Yeah, yeah. Can I get a hot lemon water? Hot lemon water. Hot lemon water. I will also do a hot lemon water. Me too. Yeah. Me three. Just like his, but a little better. Yeah. Is that some pressure thing? I'm, I'm getting one as well. Make sure I have the best one. <laughs> I already asked. The one <laughs> Just draw for it. This king uh, I'm not treating for best Jason water. too kindly so far tonight at this feature table. See if King nine. 
can turn things back around for our full-time champion. Does have Artor in rough shape. Artor has outflopped Jason on the Jack 7 4 top pair. Yeah. But Paul Martiroshi and Kuhn. One over to the board. Second nut flush draw. Bit of pot control here of Jack 9. <coughs> can do some bets. Contain the pot. Check, check. Expected the bet to go in somewhere. As did I. Randy, as the Queen of Hearts rolls off on the turn now, giving Jason a gut shot. Yeah, not a great card for Martirosin, so we'll continue to check. I think Jason probably will fire now. No? One more check? Okay. Let's check it down, boys. Let's see <laughs> a river. Deuce of spades. Flush is just not getting there so far today. Arthur with the check mark. If he now... I dare not predict what he's going to do. Hey, listen. To assume, Randy, is to make an ass out of you and me. You should know this. A little half bet, half pot, the laid C bet from Artor. It's a quick fold from Jason. Well, he got to realize all his equity he did indeed. with <laughs> no <laughs> extra chips put into the pot. Because Artor was not going to fold for at least two bets. Rough orbit for JK. Just scanning the leaderboard sure. Thanks. over on the Triumph Poker Plus app. Jonathan Jaffe uh, oh. is now the chip leader. Omen. Missed you? One eight. Wow. Just unlucky. For me. What, what kind wow. of cooler did he do? You're kidding, wait. Won a 3.2 million chip pot against Fedor Holtz. Ace King for Jonathan against Fedor's pocket queens. Again, two of the top five stacks colliding in an all in confrontation pre flop. And Jonathan flopping top pair on the King Jack 10 and just finding the hold for a 214 big blind pot. Wow. Oh, That's uh, how we eliminate two people and make those two big stacks yeah, up there. Yeah, Adrian Mateos and Fadal. Dusted. Just, just you know, nurse, gone. nursing, <laughs> nursing uh, you know, top five stacks and then just somehow running into it. Wow, John. The button, ace four off. Coon. Getting it in in great shape again with the pocket pair. John just had enough, looking to make a stand with the ace four. 546,000 chip pot. Four? Four is a good start. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll take, take it. it. it is, but queen. Yeah. queen. Queen, queen. John said he'll take it. Queen, queen, four, looking for an ace or a it's four. Not, it's not a very good turn. Mm. Seven of clubs, no dice. Oh. It's not be Five outs once. For John, so stick around in this record break in 25k. No dice as the five of spades rolls off on the river. And Jason back on the climb. 744,000. What a swiggy at this feature table for Jason. I mean, yeah. The ace king losing to the king 10, then eliminating yeah, Linus Love. Wonderful. The jack's wonderful. holding against the ace four. Yeah, right there. The ace king against the queen jack, 750k pot. How holds with the nines against the ace four. Maybe that's the trick. It's all over yeah. the place. The pocket pairs against <laughs> the ace fours, and then just, you know, losing with the ace kings. See a few people in the chat saying fade her out. Yeah, he is indeed. Those of you wondering how people in the chat are obviously keeping track of the outer tables. If you're watching over on YouTube, check out the pinned comment by Nightbot. The field of players, chip stacks, table seatings, and the structure can be found over on the Triton Poker Plus website. Just click that link and yeah, come and sweat along the action from the outer table. Trust me, it is worth 
the yeah, download. Some big names still out there that haven't made it to the feature table. Nursing very healthy stacks. 58 players remain. Do you have a clue black for the one? Andy Kim, 10 9 of clubs. Dealer button. Checking out the stacks behind him. Still gonna raise. He's four suited. They, they say he's four's been going for it. Would be the right time. 23 big suited ASEX from the small. Does move all in and Steve. Oh, I wanted to play this. Steve with the king, queen of diamonds, has to let it go. We need so. This is why I don't play tournaments, Randy. Okay? You can have your glory, you can have your trophies. You can have your 965 for first in a 25k. You can qualify into live events over on GG. But you know, when I'm on GG, you're going to find me in the cash game streets, okay? You're going to find me playing some PLO, some four cards, some five cards, but whatever tickles your fancy you can find over on GG Poker. We've got free rolls running throughout the series. Get involved. I got like 300 something. Over on the <laughs> virtual cool. felt and if you fancy trying to join us Just at the next stop happens. as well, Every any of online qualifiers running over on GG. I believe we had 10 into this 25k. One of which, the top three stack, Pablo Silva, qualified over on GG. Mm. Playing 1.9 million. On to next hand, Steve's got ace queen going to bump it up. Ace jack, definitely a reasonable hand to maybe play back at this ace queen. We're playing about 30 big lines effective to start the hand. Arda, did you have anything on the hand we checked down to the river and the river was a deuce? That like, one? like four hands ago or five hands ago? Queen jack, you have anything? I almost had something. Yeah. I had a big, I had a big fucking hand. Yeah. King nine suited of clubs. I missed the whole damn <coughs> deck. <laughs> I had jack. You had a jack. We could have got it in on the flop. <laughs> so three bet pot, two hundred sixty k in the middle, ace queen ace jack. Two Korean players. Oh, wow. Well. How do you get away from me, Shaq? There, you can't. Ace, three, three, couple of diamonds. SPR less than 1.5 on this flop. And you start off a small bet, though. Yeah, you're going to continue small and wide, right? Small blind V cutoff. Three bet pot. Mm. Continues for. Just north of quarter pot, 77,000. Kim's thinking of something. I think he's just going to call. I mean, he does like to proceed cautiously. Yeah, obviously outflopped tens, jacks, queens, kings. The clubs on the turn, so running diamonds no longer an option for Kim and. Oh, Steve. Dan, Let's did you see this billboard hand. score? Go yeah, for it here. Score. score. On the turn. No, no Does idea. he give yeah, Kim he, like, some rope? Yeah, he came out rope. of the woods. Hasn't played poker Maybe hang himself a little bit. some $150 tournament on GG. It was a $10 million guarantee. And he won it. Is it like oh, a million? 850000 Off 150 bucks. You have four whites. Four what? Philip Grusin. 
course he did. The OG, <laughs> Philbot. So sick. Taking down that sick. GG. 10 mil. I mean, how many people have that had to be? That's like 60,000 right? runners, Jason. Well, 60,000. 60,000 runners, $150 buy-in. No? Yeah. Gruesome coming out on top for 850k. Good for him. Yeah, sick. I'm gonna make one more call. Feels a bit obligated, base jack. I think it was today. I'm not sure. He's a bit worried, though. Yeah, he'll be ready. I think it was like today. Yeah. Hmm. Sick. Diamonds do get there. That's an interesting card, actually. Wow, Stevia checks. Huh. Is there a world, Randy? A Stevia check folds, is that what you're asking? I mean, it looked like Kim was reaching for betting chips. I don't think that's going to be enough. That looks like <coughs> a very small bet, 40,000. On this seven of diamonds hey, river and Steve. How are you doing, man? It's incredibly confused. Not going to fold the ace queen and it's going to win a seven hundred thousand chip oh, yeah. pot. So he has Kim out pipped by I one. Like that. Hi. Uh, hey. Yeah. What sort of? Nice <coughs> he was playing that day. Jam out you. Yeah. Jam out the fold. He's like, yeah, this seems like a good tournament. One table it. Why he might fold if he jams? Hmm? You were uh, supposed to jam. Sick. I need you a river and a block in you. <laughs> 1 50, 10 million, so that's like 8,000 players. No, no, way more. 80,000. 80,000. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because like 8,000 would be like a normal something. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Jam, river. You touch them, I have I mean, like ball. corporations have better odds of like hitting the power ball. So yeah, <laughs> shit. I'm not going to go Sick. I have to fold. How was it for that? How was it long time I mean, I, I cannot fold. That's why you have to fold. That makes popular. sense, but like, right? it's, there's something called crying call. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I clearly, those two have got some history <laughs> from Korea. <laughs> something called crying call. True. He's like, I have to call, and then, the other, and then he's like, but that's why you have to fold, because you have to call. I mean, what is going on? 40. Oh. Six players that's remain, fine. third of the field what? left. Yeah. <clears throat> play two more levels. The completion of this level. Will we bag and tag for day two? Lala baby. I have to I'm guess. Still be around. Lala baby. Should I jam on the river? What? Three players left. Oh, yeah, my baby camera still working. Yeah. Yeah. I was just checking it. Turn one. Working, working, working great. great. Yeah. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. yeah, of course. One sec. I'm like. <laughs> it was like. Pot to play? Hmm? Pot to play on the end? Um, no, I got less. It's been fun having sure. Kim at the table. It's been, he's been out there in the mix. <laughs> yeah, we, you know, he's a yeah. uh, lively, chatty. You know, oh, yeah, that poor fellow. Really learning a lot about these newcomers. Legitimately, not sure. Uh, not it's just event number one. I know they're going to fire away in future events. Jackson. Oh, thank you, brother. Oh. Small blind versus big blind. Well, we Similar stack sizes. Well, we should have like Jackson of diamonds or something. Because I didn't have diamond. That's why. The river check back Across the like 1k likes yeah. over on YouTube, do appreciate the support like, yeah, as it. always. You got them there. We got them. Oh. Yeah, right. Don't forget, if you haven't already, yeah, right. check out some of the behind the scenes content over on our Instagram. Thank you, man. How about this? Blind v blind. Top pair v top pair. It's Hong Kong's. Plus, like, you have all the. Big pairs. Yeah, like, true. Have, like, teams 
in rough shape against Dan Smith. Has him covered by less than a big blind. So a mini bet here. You no, know, we got top pair. Not much of a kicker, but like, like, yeah, more. I like calling here in <laughs> position. Kind of see what happens. Still got a decent amount of stack to play for, it, considering it's a uh, limp pot. Oh. Dicey turn. Yeah, fortunately for Phil, How's your baby? two straight like draw. Could be, yeah. And flush draw way. completing turn card in the form of the eight uh, of Jeff clubs Jeff rolling off. I feel dialed ago. in. Look at this stare down. Before even looking at the turn, just Girl. focused Girl. on Smith. Girl. So his hand's Girl. pretty vulnerable Girl. on this yeah. board. I have two boys. Jack four. He might be tempted to bet to try to One and a half boys. deny that random equity. Yeah, oh, he's gonna take yeah. the free card and hope it blanks off. Now it looks like he doesn't want to let Fantastic. a queen, a ten, a club, a seven roll off, but he's actually in bad shape. And the small bet makes sense. Charge to random equity. This also feel kind of laying the price for himself Hello. going to the river Hello. in position gets yeah, to close the action and um, check yeah. behind yeah you know if he doesn't improve okay. it's still check pretty good behind. check forward on the phone oh, i know what you're saying whereas if you <laughs> check you might be faced <laughs> face a bit right. yeah. or you might be faced with a bad card that would be a safe card you know like there there's a little bit of value in jack four could be the best hand, could be worthy of a value bet. I wouldn't fault him if he opts to do that. I guess you would be thinking, what hand could I call to flop with and have a bluff? Get that turn in, in River and it might be quite tough to do so. Smith has checked on over to Phil. 45,000 in the middle, see if he wants to go for some value. Not popular, yeah? That nine X no, no, of the world. No, no, yeah, definitely not. More in, was alluding to. in Ireland and places like this, but not in Yeah, I guess this, he'd ask himself, Second well, will nine X call sure bet? Ah, if so, what size? If uh, not, then we're not sure. should probably yeah, check. Mm. It's a tricky spot. Because oh, yeah, yeah. you kind of uh, feel like it's a little weak not yeah, to value bet. My, my but then you kind of... Either. Feel a bit uncomfortable. Nice check. Discipline. I think Phil's gonna be giving himself a little pat on the back there. Yes, blind v blind. Top pair v top pair. Yeah, God, you like killed me, bro. Because it was big. I'll take it. TV, you got me so good. <laughs> Quick dealer change and well. Leveled out a little bit. Jason Kuhn, who was our overwhelming chip leader at this feature table, has now moved down to second in chip. Steve Ye out in front with just 42 big blinds. Tournament average 39. So, pretty shallow feature table here, Randy. A couple of rejam stacks, a couple of open jamming stacks, to be perfectly honest with you, in the form of. Yacheslav Boldajin and Phil Chu. Dan Smith, 18 picks. Four bets on my five bet gem. <laughs> my four bet gem, you five bet gem? <laughs> if you four bet, five bet gem. If you four bet gem, I four. Are they still needling each <laughs> other about that ace queen, ace jack hand? Yes, they are. Love it. Yes. Okay, aces. Not a not a tough one. For Archer. Oh boy. Okay. 
So you, you thought some big hands popping up. Well, you I got mean, that look. He's still got that look, but he does eventually let it go. Here's a late position open. Thinking of getting frisky, the suited king. Suited 10 against the mini rays. You know, it's just enough hand to consider calling here. Cool, he does. Winds up to 10,000, 20,000, 90,000 in the middle. Going to the ace. Queen, nine, two diamonds board top set for Artur Martyroshan. 10 high flush draw for Jason Kuhn. Be fireworks, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, if a diamond drops off, could be bad news. Of course, it depends on which diamond. Uh, diamonds would be not so fun. Don't you dare, Randy. It's too early. Oh, that card. That's a straight draw for the 10-3 suited. 30% equity against top set. Hard to do. Just too many outs for Jason. Looks like he's been bricking these all day. 170,000 in the middle. Yeah, Marty Rosen can... A lot of hands he could get value from right now still. Jack 10, Queen 10, 10, 9. That has decent equity against them. It's one of those spots it feels like Oh, and hope you hit your hand. He is definitely thinking about do I have fold equity have mm. if I make a play right now? Like, will Martyros in bet like a one pair ace? That's or would he opt to check? Oh, Jason's going to say run it, and Martyroshan is going to snap call. And this is going to be one of the biggest pots of the tournament at Good this luck, feature Archer. table. Thank you. I'll talk. We got some cards. Fade king, eight or a diamond. <laughs> One million in the middle. Faded. Six of spades. On the river and Arto up to 1.1 million now. Jason mm -hmm. Kuhn just decided to run it on the turn as Randy alluded to. I need me now. Push out some of those. <laughs> It was one pair of hands. Yeah, maybe like a ace, fold. Ace king, maybe he thought would fold. Ace eight. Four four two. Yeah. So Jason Kuhn has been having a swingy day. Dude. Back down to two hundred k. Tell me about it. Swingy indeed. I feel like every big all in. That we've had at this feature table is involved. Been Jason, Jason Kuhn. yeah. Eliminated Linus Love and John So. It's big part against Dan Smith. Now he has Artur Martyrosian as well. Still, if there's anyone that can. Turn things around. This 10 big blind stack. Yeah. It's going to be our full time champ. Well, I mean, there's a lot of guys that can spin it up, but a lot of guys can run it down as well. I'm going to come down to cards a little bit more. That's a familiar face. Body King. Had some deep runs, I believe, in Cyprus, if I recall correctly. Nine hundred and sixty-five thousand for first event number one. Bruce Triton, twenty-five k GG Super Millions. Queen six of spades for Phil in the muck. Pretty tight fold, although he is. I mean, he's got ten blinds. 
Gonna make it simple for our Jason Kuhn. Small Ten end. blinds. Oh. Got to slap the ball to Jen. Good enough. OG Russian legend. <laughs> Not an ace. Ace of spades. Ace of spades. I'm sorry. Spades. Big difference. Yeah. The best card in the deck. Is this the same dealer that the Jason same dealer? Yeah, fifty k free roll too. I was wondering if he was going to just reopen that door. I think given three strikes are out. Given that he just lost, you know, a million chip. <laughs> high, they, True. They, they think you know offering fifty k free rolls is the first thing that's coming to Jason's mind. But who knows? We'll see. So you're saying if he doubles, we can get another sweat going on. We've got the 10 big blinds with 10 8 offsuit. Is this going to be a limp? We're going to take a flop here. 10 big blind effective. Yeah, these two hands could collide on certain ball textures. What about this one? Got oh. some action going what on. What about this one, Randy? Yeah. yeah. Little middle pair V gut no. shot. Uh, it's actually important really that. With the stack size we're playing and the ace on the board, I think both players are perceived not to have an ace. I think Boldogen has more. A little bit more, but you know, with the ace lower, he probably would just open ship it pre flop, as Jason Kuhn kind of did in the hand before. But Boldogen, of course, could have these traps like ace king, ace queen. Got shot. Running spades and one over to the nine six. You like playa? Yeah. For Vyacheslav. Kim. No, I've never going been anywhere just yet. See, Jack of Clubs rolls off on the fly. turn, giving Kim two pair. Polishin improving to an open ender. Actually, is playa the place close to. Um, Love to see him multi barrel his 10 8. Oh, um, no, I've never I been. I think 9x and 6x is a large part of. Um, Andy Kim's big blind calling range on the flop. Those hands would have a, a lot of trouble continuing Yeah, I've been to Mexico up like five or six times, but never fly somehow. What is it? Oh, I've never it's been, not, no. no. Not much stuff I heard to play cool. for. It's gigantic, right? Do you jam right? jack nine? Or do you underrep your hand and maybe hope? Your opponent just kind of blast away yeah. one more time, knowing that usually you got like a 9x or 6x. I love Mexican food. Going into the river. It's great. Yeah, I mean, I feel mm -hmm. like this is a board where I just want to call in Kim's shoes. It does announce yeah. all in, and yeah, Vyacheslav hates it. Yeah, because you got shouldn't clean get, outs. He, he shouldn't get jammed on that often in this spot, which is why he's just it's... visibly pained by the fact that Kim has announced all in. I didn't expect. <laughs> I exactly didn't expect. Did not expect that. I fucking haven't expected many either today, man. <laughs> yeah, very rarely getting jammed on at this stack depth. Have an ace? Kim just... <laughs> no. <laughs> That's where I thought. Huh? That's where I thought. Ah. Six, six, nine. No oh, way. Yeah, Jack. <laughs> six, nine is two pair, right? Yeah. Huh? Are you saying you laid on two pairs? No, he's asking you. You had Jack six. Yeah, yeah. Oh, me? Yeah. How do you know? Can you see? Mm -hmm. We will, I will see. <laughs> How? On the stream? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you're playing on a big feature table. Kim? Two pairs. I have good, uh, very good, very good. Ah, uh, it sucks. Very, very good. <laughs> what part of Russia are you going? Your hand? 
uh, no sculptures open and to my uh, oh god to the city uh, seven, where eight, I or the better one <laughs> Ooh, it's ten, I wouldn't eight. have heard of it or yeah. hmm? oh, I wouldn't yeah, have heard of it disgusting. that hurts I, I, you don't know I want it all in the area no way <laughs> show no way to call. show call make yeah. the straight I was a good safe. player when I was a kid oh I always uh, eight, to go to Russia uh, Rivia time. And he with three prayers thinking what to do. Yeah, or he shoves and you call, That's and he has seven eight. Was always, uh, you beat the worst straight draw. No, no, no. He called us. Yeah. Two prayers. Yeah. Uh, now the computers are so good. Like a it used yeah, to be. That was crazy. You did improve your hand, but this is a kind of an awkward board to continue. He is going to call here, Ace Deuce. Uh, I'll be completely honest with you, Randy. I was listening into the post mortem between Jacoslav and Jason Kuhn about Kim jamming seven, eight, and ten high holding with the the better open ender. That would be a hand. A lot of hypotheticals. Oh, Steve, yeah, just not much equity. Just multi barreling away. Like a bull in a china shop, this man. Sometimes you just bluff off with record breaking 25k, one of the biggest stages in the world. Some image building, reputation to maintain, maybe. Not a hand you expect to bet this turn, but it seems. Misses watching at home. <laughs> Who knows? Definitely not standard. Love the stage. I mean, how about that? For an overview. Shout out to the share hands. Say a few days. Wouldn't surprise me if it takes them a week or so to set up this arena. This is a two day event after the upcoming break. Play two more 40 minute levels before calling it a day. And tomorrow, I'll be back playing down to a winner where said winner. Be walking away with nine hundred and sixty five thousand. Twenty three places paid, main cash of forty eight thousand. Let's go, Steve. It's all about taking your punt play against you. We've got eight six suited. And the back and forth has been fantastic between these two. I love ice cream, so this one makes sense. Oh man, these two need to be on the feature more often. I'd love to see them in like a cash game. Yeah. Well, let's start with this hand. Continuation betting, 8 6 suited. Ace 9. Could be the best hand. Yeah, Steve, not going anywhere just yet. A small continuation bet from Kim. Or pairing on the turn. You can't play less. That's a hard card to multi barrel on. Less? Or no, because of taxes. Kim does knuckle back and bricks out. Mm. Flush does complete. 90,000 in the middle. Only way Kim can win this hand. If he fires on this river and gets Steve to fold his ace height. That was a quick check on the river. I mean, he expects Steve to bet or king high. Because a 10x might think about betting the river. Flush would probably lead a 4.
pretty good hand reading with this eight six. Even sicker though, the ace nine can find a call. I mean, the fact that Steve is taking his time, throwing in some time extensions, rolling this one over. Saw his reaction straight off the bat. So if he can suss this one out. Some history going on. Wow, he's reaching for calling chips. Steve, yay. Take a bow, my man. Good call. Flicks in the call with the ace nine. Impressive. Uh, still over a million it. in chips now, this yeah. battle between yeah. Kim and Steve. Certainly going Steve's way. <laughs> a little bit, I think. Don't play together. Yeah. Not not first time, but it's like a long time ago. I believe that was Steve. Yeah. Giving us some insight to the history between Like they haven't been playing recently. Yeah. It's been, been some time, but it seems like the history sticks. Which is just keep trying to win pots off each other. Oh. Sorry. Bill moving his final 10 bigs into the middle from plus one. It's going to pick up the blinds and the big blind ante. No good. Oh. <laughs> Quieting down a little bit out there. Ten hours into the day, a bit of fatigue setting in, depending on when these guys flew in. Jet lag, still a thing. I mean, yeah, it is still. How do you fix it? Do you go to sleep at a certain time, or do you just keep playing cash games until it's the optimal time to go to sleep? Wait, say that again? Do you keep playing cash games until... Well, I mean, like, maybe you... <laughs> Look, it's a complicated math question on how many hours of sleep you need based on your jet lag and location you came from, but you could play cash games to extend the time you need to stay awake. You could. You could, or you could be a responsible adult and get your eight hours, you know, depending on... Yeah, but eight... I mean, what, they got to wake up... You think they're waking up in the morning? Well, it's cur currently 9 a.m. in Vegas. Yeah. 15 hour know. time zone difference. I True. Is there a call? I didn't know it was 9 a.m. in <laughs> Vegas. I don't mind a call. <laughs> I think it's 12 hour difference between East Coast and here. So for, You've for, done your homework. For the Americans. Barcelona, it's, uh, one year. It's rough. Guys like, hey, it's a rough guys trip. With you? Yeah. Tell you that much. I'm I've like, done it a few sure. times since. Yeah. Nice. Take a take Freeze a week, and I get something like kind of good. And take a while, and call. Yeah. And then I get a penalty for exposing my hand, and I'm like, oh, the dude that. like reached his head yeah. over. Like, it wasn't like I show, you know. Yeah. You gotta be real hard on to do shit like that. Get penalties for that, like a joke. Third time, third time, third time. Triple loop. Yeah. Ciao, Pimenta. I too, what? Also just loves it, Danny. You're yeah, just going to try to pick on some short stacks. What's he doing nowadays? You know, I have no well, idea. It's not going to work. They got hands to fight back. 
Had he fold it though, those two would go to war. Oh, and pre flop likely. 16 for Smith. That's played. 17 for Phil. Chips are going in. I don't really see another play than all of it. Especially against the aggressive Artur Martyrosian on the button. All in. Does eventually announce himself. Phil likely going to fold the ace tray and a big pickup for Dan Smith. He Back up to over 20 bigs. <laughs> Not your fan. Shit. <laughs> what was it? King Queen. <laughs> ah, I could have shot. Did I not throw it in? Where'd you shove uh, under the gun? I'm gonna know in 20 minutes. Just tell me anyway. <laughs> I think it's 30 I minutes. I know in 20 minutes. <laughs> you, you had ace 10 offsuit, huh? No, no, no. Suited. My hand was suited. Ace 9 suited. My hand was suited. God, I had a suited Broadway. I might have just had. That wasn't the big blind I would have called. That wasn't the small blind I called. I think he's talking about when he jammed Ace Nine. I believe you didn't have a great hand. I think that you had a good hand, but not a great hand. Yeah, a live read or something. Yeah. Oh damn it! <laughs> Is it live read? That is or not what you want to hear. I just felt like Jason you had like something got a live you read on you. smell it. Something you were on the fence about pre flop, like ace ten off or like queen jack suited or something. I don't remember what hand Jason Too good. folded on that one. Too good. <laughs> Limping queens on the button. Up against those two short stacks. Not a play you see oh. too much. Van Smith. He's got all the moves. Must be thinking that Jason Kuhn's stack is not quite reshovable very wide, so he's trying to like invite him to maybe just flop a random pair lowered into Queens, get stacked. Ace, Ace, Deuce. Hmm. With a gut shot. Yeah. Jason with king high. Smith still the best of it. His trapped pocket queens, 80,000 in the middle. Someone in the chat saying, calling with queens on the button deserves to lose. <laughs> <laughs> Just limping in, no. Just, there's there's a reason he limped on the button. Yeah, there 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 is some... Uh, some thought. It's a very high level thinking behind this limp from Dan Smith. It. I think Jason's like, why didn't you jam pre flop in the ace? But okay. Deserves to lose, but wins the pot. Haha. -ha. Double up drive. Give me twenty five. Yeah. Believe we'll be going on a short break in just a couple of hands. Final break of the evening. I believe you're gonna be bowing out. It will be. Half day for you, classic. Straight to bed? Yeah, probably. Yeah. <coughs> well, we got a, two weeks of good action coming up. I want to stay fresh. Give you expertise as we travel through these tournaments. Yeah, there are going to be some long days of poker coverage. Alan. So it looks like we got a pop committed one. call coming up. One, one, four. One one four. 
between these boys up to me. Yeah. Let's see what crap. We, we do open. indeed, Randy. Steve makes the call. Smells good. Let's Diamonds. Thank you. In rough nice. shape. Shape. It does have two Five, live cards maybe. in the form oh. of a jack and an eight. Flush, please. Flush, please. <laughs> 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 Maybe I should love asking for a flush. It would be hard to do. Oh, nice. in the window is like never easy, bro. Uh, big improvement. Steve ten. has flopped a gut shot. Six. Six for a sweat. a good card. Or a five. Double gut shot. That is the same. Yeah. It's the same double body. <laughs> Never easy. Oh, Nine on the Ooh, river. You did it, man. Yeah, just slab finds the hole. It was four across, but yeah, not the four across that Steve needed. <laughs> Fist bumps all around. <laughs> <laughs> Fist yeah. bump. Steve has a yeah. opponent. And Get back in the game, maybe. Got him for you. Quick look at our next feature table. Got, here we got. I see Wai Kin Yong. Is that Tan Chuen there? Oh, wow. It's good to see him back. Just saw and Chris Brewer without a mullet. Maybe unrecognizable to some. Since removing the mullet, he's been on a bit of an upswing. Yeah, did pretty good at Paris, I believe. He did. Two trophies. Taking down the 25k single day high roller and the 50k high roller out there. And straight on a plane. Now here for 13 days of high stakes action here in Vietnam. Dan Smith's got Ace King suited. 23 big blinds. Got an early position raise. Still got multiple players to act behind him. Is it better to jam all in or is it better to 3 bet small to try to induce some action? Looks like he's going to go for the, the ladder. At 2.5x. Ooh. From Smith. He's Jack. 10 blinds. You're like. Come on, really? Yeah, I jack three bet for your plus one open and they hit the mark. And Discipline. how about Ace King all in. for Vyacheslav? <laughs> back to back all ins. Thank you. <laughs> to back Ace Kings. Well, this should make it easier for Steve with two sevens. Would have been a kind of a tricky situation. Three oh nine. Uh, uh, two to five around. You can pause the clock if it's good. You can, yeah, I can pause the clock and count. Around yeah, two, four to five. No, it's no, it's just more, getting man. a count. Right, I don't care. Go the sevens, oh. Smith. He's 60. It's like, it's cool and well. Slight favorite. Huh? I think it's. Damn it. Right? Isn't that oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I thought these were stacks of four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Big slick. It doesn't fucking matter. Ace King of Hearts, no. two flush draws. Yeah, two flush draws. I don't think the one flush draw. All I gotta do is spaz it in, boys. It is free rolling. Double up. Okay, one more black space. <laughs> Only I were worse. I it would have went I'll all in, what, all in, call. For a non-native English speaker, anyway, Vyacheslav is uh, a pretty seven. funny guy. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? Comedic Six timing. Six. Seven. It's been impeccable tonight. Chopping up boys. Chop up Steve's money. <laughs> oh, fucking care. Ow. Hurt, bro. Mm. Hitting the table? <coughs> yeah, I mean, generally when you hit hard things, it doesn't end well. 49 players remain. Head into the final couple of levels mm -hmm. uh, day one oh, 2023 oh. Triton Super High Roller Series Penalty. three rounds <laughs> Queens now for Smith getting a run up yeah it's been quite, quite the orbit found the three bet jack
down from the small from the low jack. Hold in. Oh, yeah, just oh. <laughs> Three in a row. I'll give you more. Moment, moment. This <laughs> time it's going to be trouble. Oh, shit. Oh, I need way to do that. Still, 32% equity. Jam. Doesn't even look that phased, Randy. Just like. He's having a good time getting in bed. Yeah, I okay. Do. He, he doesn't have the magnets. The queens are too strong. If he had kings, he would lose. Oh no! Is that how it works? Well, there's two on one. Do we have diamond? No, I'm on you, man. <laughs> you like I said you yeah. you got to three diamond. You're fading it. Juice. Okay. Oh, juice. Oh, juice. so far juice. so good for Dan Smith. He needs to fade an ace oh, or a deuce. No. This up. Keep a big one and does exactly that, yeah, Dan brother. Smith. <laughs> Now up to 856,000 as we lose. Give me a 9-7 hand. Vyacheslav Bolizhin. Yeah. All right. Take care, Slav. In 49th. So we have floor staff bring uh, some yeah. trades We're over to the table, which means, Randy, oh. we're break. heading into our final break. Just <laughs> That's how things are going to stand for this table once they head out to an outer table. Artur Martirosian out in front with 48 bigs. Only just Steve Ye on his tail and Dan Smith nursing healthy 43 big runs. Then a huge drop off at this feature. A lot of short stacks are going to be looking to put their chips to work sooner rather than later as we welcome you back into the broadcast booth here. Henry Kilbane along. Alongside Randy. Randy, just quickly down to the final 49 players, a couple of recognizable names at the top, but a lot of Laconin rounding out the top five, four of which are playing their first ever Triton series, but it is US's Jonathan Jaffe out in front. Randy, I believe we're going to be losing you. Will be. On the flip side of this break, Ali Najjar going to be coming back to close out the action of these final two levels here. This 25k, but you're going to be back tomorrow. As we wind down to the winner of our first event here. Anything sticking out the back end of that? Just keep an eye on Daniel Smirkovich, right? Like 8k to 1.779 million chips. That's a story to remember. That's the name to keep an eye on for the last two hours of play here. When I come back, I'll be joined by Ali Najad as we wind things down here in event number one of the Triton Super High Rollers series in Vietnam. We'll see you guys. Start your journey towards becoming a winning poker player today with the Tournament Masterclass. I designed a blueprint that has me and countless. We simplify and teach concepts that work. Preflop, postflop, ICM preflop and postflop, final tables, multi-way, a whole population analysis, a GTO Bible, and many play and explain live footage, showcasing all the concepts and exploits taught in the Tournament Masterclass. Don't waste any more time on complex strategies that simply don't work and join the term masterclass and start winning in poker, whether it's online or live poker.
here as I would expect the rest of Ten Kim's chips to be beaten into the pot by O'Dwyer on the river. If you've got Ace King or two nines, take it, buddy. Yep. And you see O'Dwyer, it's kind of the look on his face was very much like, well, if it's quads or the Ace King. Ace okay, King. good. Let's carve it up. Yeah. Liz and live grinders. I mean, he's been, he's been out there. Not short in the tooth, is he? Six point five million in total live earnings. Also known as NASA. I want to say number one on Portugal's all time money list, if I'm not mistaken. KT bumping things up from plus one. Second in chips. Chip leader covering in the big. That's a Minkus. We get his final 5k in the middle with the 10 6. Two live cards. Got himself no improvements on the 985 board. Can't say the same for KT, though. He's got himself top pair and backdoor nut spades. Two overs in the gut shot checking over to him for the side. I don't think the dealer could have pinged off a more exciting flop had they tried. As an Incas. Let's have that gutter, right? Yeah, it's so. got the gutter. 10 no good. 25,000. So would give Jaffe the nut straight. Jonathan just going to get out of there with yeah. the two overs. What's a pot size bet or thereabouts? Perhaps a little surprised to see it, but. Jaffe going to leave KT to do battle with Lazao Ninkas. Who is unimproved on the turn and now down to a 10 or a 7. And instead, the river pairs his 6. GL announced to the rest of the table. I'm sure we'll be seeing no more on two. of Lazao Ninkas. Okay. of me online. Another one of those young guns, widely regarded as the best online players in the world. It's one of Alex Kulev. Talking the best online players in the world. McBoyfin, Marcus Lakonin still sat in fourth. Roland Rakita currently in fifth. The Wushu, Thomas Mueller, Walker in ninth. And we see two kings for Alex Ponikovs. 76,500. So he's a quickly asking for a count here. Don't think that he's going to get curious with the ace nine. This is 73. 13. It's close. Yeah, it does make the call. Ooh. Ponikov's going to have suited broadways and weaker ace yeah. that they're just going to jam. I have an ace. Hi, G. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, mind it. Happy to take a spin. Unhappy to see that an ace is one of the two cards contained in Soyuz's hand. As the flop is aceless, but there's a nine out there, which does because you hide your tears. Nine's a distraction. <laughs> Adds outs to Soiza, okay. and no longer does Soiza have outs, courtesy of the King of Diamonds on the turn. Big smile on the Latvian's face. Space from the deck. Into the booth, time and time again. You just, you know where the line is somehow, and you dip your toe into the other side, but never 
You never jump in, you know? It's always just a little dip. I, I disagree. I would say I cannonball <laughs> into that end of the pool with alarming frequency. But somehow... Somehow. Immunized by the spirit of humor, the perpetual pursuit of a laugh. I think, I think that's it. You know? I think that's what it boils down to. You just know how to make people laugh and they forget... I mean, come on, that tracksuit, it just, <laughs> you think I'm going to sit in here and gloss over that thing for hours on end? No shot. <laughs> Kidding me? Alex yeah, knew what he was doing yeah, when he reached yeah, into yeah, his yeah, closet. Yeah, He's yeah, like, yeah. oh, Ali's in the booth today? <laughs> Actually, he thought about me not at all. In fact, I would venture to guess he doesn't even know who I am. I was about to say, <laughs> you're stretching a little bit as we jump into yeah. this Thai v Thai all-in confrontation. Our reigning main event champion looking for an ace 10 or a 5. He is stretching against the deuces. There is the 5 on the turn, and now... It is KT who is in need of assistance, looking for what would be a very ugly duckling on the river. <laughs> if you're Punsri, as Punat, able to cannibalize his countrymen there. Putting some pressure on them. That was a fun one. KCG. I saw KCG earlier. Yeah. It's going to be a good series. Yeah, he was he's around. Mix. Said hello to him. Was a bit concerned. No, if he doesn't show up, the series is canceled. It's not, you know, we, we need him. I heard through the, the grapevine as well that he, not only did he obviously win a title back in Cyprus, but just steamrolled some of the cash game tables as well. Mm -hmm. I was speaking with uh, young Michael Zhang couple of weeks ago he's just like KCG is just playing short deck cash for the first time and you know he's just doing what KCG does I'm sure we'll be seeing plenty of him over the next couple of weeks he's here trouble for Seidel after defending the big blind with the queen eight off it's flop top pair on the queen jack six Mateos flopping top two Seidel drawing to running eights. At this stack depth as well against Adrian. Could be in trouble. <laughs> Definitely going to be in trouble, just to what extent. Clubs rolling off on the turn. King 10 does complete. And Seidel has actually picked up equity in the form of a gut shot. Yeah, it's not the one you're in love with. You don't hitting, want to, yeah. But you know, you'll take it. Definitely not thrilled about drawing to four outs. It's the one you hit where you're thinking, please check. Like a sizable turn barrel from Mateo, setting up a very natural SPR of just south of one should Seidel continue. This would be a very disciplined lay down. Hmm. Especially you are coming up against El Matador. Yeah, you just can't. Not yet. 2 6 1 in the middle, 2 4 2 the effective stack, and. Ahead to the Queen of Clubs, River, Case, Queen, rolling off, giving Mateos the nut full house and, and giving Seidel trips as well, a hand that is going to have to pay off a bet on the River. I think, would assume. I think all the chips are going in for Mateos. Outside the bed.
And welcome back into the broadcast booth here from the Hoi An Resort and Golf and Casino in beautiful Hoi An, Vietnam. Ali Najad here to bring you through the home stretch with Henry Kilbane. Just two levels of play remain of the 15 here on day one of the 25K GG Super Millions. And we are bringing you a new feature table, which is going to contain, I understand, our overall chip leader, Jonathan Jaffe. Is that right? Uh, he's in the mix, but he's not at the feature not at the table. feature table. I a man can dream. It's Henry. okay. I mean, JJ out there, three point six million, had a couple of close calls back in Cyprus. He's here in Vietnam, leading the field with forty six left. So certainly want to keep an eye on. Yeah, very nice performance out there. Four events played, two for four out there. Picked up a nice haul, a profitable one at that. As we take a look at the remaining big stacks in the field, Alex Kulev, a first timer. Daniel Smilkovic, a GG qualifier, second and third, respectively. Pablo Silva, part of the Brazilian contingent, also out there, 1.83 million. And then how about Sosia Jang yeah. in the top five now? She is a veteran of Triton and making some waves out there. Yet to see her at the feature table, and it is table three as we look at the Triton Poker Plus app where we are going to find our feature. Looks like table eight was queued up. Here for us, seating chart tab, table three. And we do find Pablo Silva in the mix there, along with Smilkovic. Garagnani, another member of the Brazilian contingent, going to be here. And, of course, one of the most decorated players in Triton history, none other than Jason Kuhn, going to be in the two-seat, a seven-handed affair. And how much time have you had commentating on this particular feature table? Any of the guys here thus far? First time, Jason Kuhn was just at the feature for the better part of three levels. Very mm -hmm. rough stint for him as we throw it back down to the main feature table. He's going to look to spin. Was up to around a million. Now finds himself down to eight bigs. But the story, Ali, one of the early stories emerging from the Super High Roller Series here in Vietnam is the fact that Daniel Smilkovic was down to 8K after less than an orbit of play, I believe. You were on the call yeah. with uh, Randy for that one. Pocket queens against the pocket threes of Sam That's Greenwood. Right. Ran into a set on the flop, and we all thought he was going to be visiting, visiting the rebuy counter just soon thereafter. But not the case, Henry. No, not the case indeed. I mean, I saw him pop yeah. up a couple yeah, of hours ago part, playing around 900k, yeah. 1 million. I was under the impression that, you know, he had busted and re-entered and stupid. had to go back through the tr yes, try to Poker Plus app tracked it all the way back to that threes versus queens hand, and there was no rebuy. It was just doubled up, ace eight against ace king, eight ball on the ripper. Yeah, remember that hand? And then just steadily, just like found the double, found the double, and here he is. So incredibly improbable for him not to have rebought, to have bounced back off of 8K all the way up to where he is now. As we pick up the action at this new feature table, Tan Chuan shooting it up with the Jack Six off suit. And Garnani going to defend with Queen Deuce. I was in Seoul for two days. Oh. Two days in thousands. Garnani gets to realize a lot more. What? Put Queen Deuce probably bottom. Well, he's willing to defend at this stack depth. 10 7 6. Advantage Tan Chuan with the bottom pair. How you doing? I, I, I link in a little. That's all good, bro. <laughs> How much, Ben? Okay, okay. Count being requested as Ganyani checks it over. At this hand. Six point nine million in Triton earnings. Tan Chuan, no newcomer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and Jack's up on the turn. A welcome development for what was bottom pair. Pretty bad to see the board. Yeah, yeah. I was also sitting at the five. Then I came to the eight. So this one is free. Super cheesy kind of whole deal. Yeah. It's like 35 ball. I go 95, 400 ball. Second check over to 10, who does have one title and seven oh, yeah. caches. 
helping to comprise that nearly $6.9 in earnings you referred to there. Henry, last appearance for him, though, came all the way back in 2019 at the London Festival. Two seven-figure schools over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's been a while, but he's back. He's got a healthy stack here deep into day one of this 25K delayed C bet. Gets Pedro to just mark the queen high. Yeah, nothing to speak of. Brewer. Fresh haircut. Mullet no longer exists. <laughs> Fresh off, by the way, a tremendous performance <laughs> at the PCA where he picked up not one but two. It wasn't the PCA. Of oh, the EPT, forgive me. That's right. Send it. And I think, you know, when I saw him this morning for the first time, since North Cyprus, where, of course, on the bubble of the Coin Rivet Invitational, he had what had to have been an emotional low point for him yeah. in his poker career, a, a really costly oversight that left him on the outside looking in and, and really kind of reevaluating whether or not he was going to continue his pursuits in the high roller streets from what I understood and then manages to get back back in in the EPT, pick up those two scores, and really gain the sort of confidence that we hadn't seen in his sales in quite some time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, just look at yeah, yeah. just glowing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Different man. And we all know we've been on the receiving end of bad beats and long periods of just in his life, bricking never tournament after tournament, tournament or cash game session after cash, cash game session. It's demoralizing. Yeah, and it can be self-proliferating as well. Can. Tough to break that. As you get a look at Smilkovic, the man who did spin it up from 8K all the way up to this roughly 2 million that he has here. Passing an under the gun open is going to defend. So like, you start with 325 or something? It was close, especially given Garagnani flat out the small. It is Roman Hrabic playing under the Czech flag, first timer to Triton. The opener with the ace king suited was flatted by Garagnani's king jack, now an ace eight. Smilkovic out of the big. I do believe a flop has been yeah. dealt. We apologize. We and did Smilkovic? Yes, he did indeed make the call. Oh, well, it's come. King high, would you believe, Ali? And Garagnani in a rough shape playing sub 12 bigs. It's going to be tough to find the exit. In this pot, might be relatively easy to find the literal exit, however, as the 60k C bet is flatted. Turn doesn't help the King Jack. Almost 300 in the middle. Is that ever a world? A Petro get away from this at this mm. SPR. Doesn't feel like it. Uh, you flat out the small. <laughs> 12 effective flop top pair against the very capable rabbits. 295 out there, 210 the effective stack. Do you go for it in two installments or ask for it all now? Well, looks like he's going to go across three streets. Size down on this five of hearts turn. Makes a lot of sense, right? Like not much to be scared about. King seven, deuce five. Probably looking to keep those seven X's of the world interested at this sizing. I'm it's a really I'm weird one around. because <laughs> you think a lot of the suited ace -xs of the world would, would go in the middle. You know, the ace 10s, ace jacks. Shouldn't really, or maybe has some like ace 5 through ace 9 of diamonds. 
Garniani, that is. That is yeah. Gar Garniani, yeah. Shouldn't have too many top pairs. Hence the size down from Rabbits. You'd also assume you'd hear from a lot of pocket pairs pre flop. I think deuces through sixes would find the muck. And Garagnani with the check jam. Yeah, and he's beaten into the pot. I think he recognized that the rest of his stack was going to go in one way or another on the river. Might as well put it in now. And just three outs once for the Brazilian to stay alive here in this GG Super Millions event. Somebody calling for two times. Not an option. And the deuce of spades, not an out. As that spells the end of the road in event number one for Pedro Gagnani, who is unable to work his way into day two here, nor add to his over 200,000 in career Triton earnings, coming at his one and only off. festival 900K. in North Cyprus. You can do it. I had late last year. Oh, yeah? Thanks, bro. Yeah, you get me hyped. <laughs> I need it. One of the Brazilians to have really kind of made a name for himself in the last 18 months or so. An online enigma. Now with a taste for the live high roller scene. Mm. The fame, the trophies. You know, but we talk about that. I don't think that's truly what motivates these guys. I think more so than anything else, the opportunity to prove oneself against the most respected fields around, at the biggest buy-ins around, in terms of a you know consistent basis. That's a lot of the lure, as we see Bunak, part of the Thai contingent. Pick up the Bunak. Jitrada Bunak. Those are some shades. Th those are the Darth Punk shades that Buddy, I was Buddy, why are you looking at the shades when a man's got a timepiece like that on his wrist? I think you should just become ambassador for R and RM. You just, you know. There's another one there. You know, I'm not lifting just heavy at all. This guy. Well, I mean, heavy-ish for me, but nothing yeah. like big. The thing is, like, when you... I just have a bracelet. Oh, nice. It's nice, though. It doesn't like, tell time. I bet it could. I would look great in an RM. Like, it's I'm, like, fine. the right amount of pretentious. Yeah, like... Yeah, 180. <laughs> <laughs> I really... Yeah, no, I should be... Sure. For being on the I should be a watch thief. Degree, Producer really James stepping in to advise that I'm way more than the right amount of pretentious. Thank you for that. Yeah, Ace queen eight here with one diamond. As yeah. it's... Yeah. Defended yeah. and the fours are actually yeah, still the best hand in spite of looking up at those three over cards. Chitrada does C bet the minimum 25k. Jack High oh, finds the lock there, so nicely executed there. Getting the first timer getting stronger and getting bigger. Hopefully, that translates. In conversation with KT. He did mention that they had a new member. As we take a look here at what would have happened if you invested $100 in Michael Soiza through Poker Stake. You see some of the returns here. Not bad in terms of percentages. Better than my stock portfolio. I got to <laughs> say, maybe I need to redirect my investment strategy to the good people at PokerStake.com, Henry. Shout out, poker steak. I get ten blue stuff. Speaking of steak, speaking you, of you went with the wagyu well. last night at dinner, was it? No, I went all no, I didn't. So I had the yeah. same as uh, Lara. <laughs> Which was <laughs> the yeah <laughs> real one. Thank you, producer James. Go on, mate. Well, you you, you go with somewhere Just, with this. You know, like your impending heart disease. Nothing else. 
the other one. Really hey, listen, pal. You so, keep at that red meat, though. People use two chips every time. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's when I had a burger, did I? Yeah. yeah. Move. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I do it against good pros, even I don't. I don't. Actually. Smilkovich here, testing the health of Jack 10 on the button as he makes it 50,000 to go. Looks like Schwan is. It's like such a Scott. Contemplating. Yeah, of course. 3 5 suited. The mantle. Yeah, it's C5. 18. Ooh. 180. Uh, three bet to 180,000. Right here is just like you should call me three cups too. Spicy. Right Gets it done. The purple poker over on YouTube saying last night I went to bed and Smilkovich was running it up. 13k and now nursing a 1.9 million chip stack. Hashtag goat. Certainly one of the stories. Keeping an eye on. That's what I was thinking now. Yeah, going with like the 2012 idea. You look strong. Oh yeah. More, more for the <laughs> On the break, found myself beside Michael Soiza and commended him on the line that he took. A valiant effort earlier during today's action against Michael Adamo. A three-barrel attempt to get a bluff through with the uh, queen high spade draw on the flop and a gutter out of the big hole looked him up and. Smilkovich was within earshot to say he thought Soiza should have jammed the river in that particular spot against Adamo as opposed to bet full pot, keeping an eye on the proceedings. Real sense of fraternity out there, I think, amongst these guys. <laughs> we see blind v blind action. Neither player connecting with the 10-4 Trey Rainbow board. Yeah, a lot of mutual respect yeah. out there. All these high rollers. I'll tell you what, just by virtue of being willing to come in, yeah. really pony up a buy-in, and play against these fields, it, it automatically garners a measure of respect. Apparently it was the same in the commentary booth. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we do like, you can see like ace track off. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, oh. sure you, could. Yeah. you mean your willingness to <laughs> bask in my shadow for hours on end here at this? <laughs> must be a pretty short and stumpy shadow, <laughs> What's the weather like down there? So we've got to check down yeah. to yeah. the river and yeah, you, you they're both going to take their showdown. Yeah, you lose too. Ace high, the Boonak, back up to over 20 <laughs> bigs, <laughs> breathing room. And you don't capture the stack from some of the call as well. Yeah, yeah. This is bad. I see them implications yeah. coming into effect. Everywhere. We are yeah, 20 I off the money. Total of 166 entries, 46 remaining. Currently, the average stack is 900 and 5K. Good for 36 bigs. <laughs> Someone else was like 25. <laughs> is he bluffing? <laughs> yeah, not too often you get to say 166 entries in a 25K. I tell you that much. Curious to see. How many show up for the 15k money. tomorrow that looks to be covering? I saw a YouTube video, all tolls clearly After going to value. After we close out, if you're day two <laughs> coverage of this. 65 all tolls left, but then I got that spot. <laughs> That's funny. King Jack off suit for Smilkovich. Makes it 65k. Pretty one on the button for Schwan. J 
Day soon. Going to be defending, although he doesn't like it. Smukovic is deliberately, I say deliberately, one would assume that this is an intentional size up from the hijack. Centered around looking to dispense with Kuhn's big. Tough Sounds customer, but stay sticky. So three players will take the Jack-9-5 board, which yields a gut shot to Jason. Yeah, I think that's going to cut it. Yeah. It does just lead all in with the gut shot. Of course, with top pair and a king kicker, Smokovic is going nowhere. From down and out, would love to be a fly on the wall of that group chat after being down to 8k a few hours later texting the boys they've all got a piece hey lads you're not going to believe it we're now one of the tournament chip leaders and now two cards away from eliminating triton's very own full-time champion jason coon like ace king king jack all right i'm dead kind of <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Uh, four I'm outs is sure four about from that, dead. Jason. I mean, <laughs> it was Late three outs. They eight. kept Smilkovich alive with and an ace eight earlier. Got an eight? Stop it, Tan. <laughs> six, Pocket eight, six, seven. <laughs> eight. <laughs> <laughs> so in oh, you need an eight. Yeah. So in oh, I like wow, it. Yeah. Ten, seven, eight, dealer. Seven about all the money I tried to give seven you. Seven always coming. You think? Bro, seven. Straight. <laughs> well, Jason did pick up some outs on the turn, but unfortunately for him on the river, it was not there. As Smokovic has denied Jason an opportunity at a fifth title here in event number one. One of the swingiest on the big stints at the feature table I've seen for Jason Kuhn in recent memory involved in, I want to say, five all-in <coughs> situations in the realm of two levels. Quite a bit of whipsaw there. That was a lot of back and forth. It does bow out. I'm sure we'll be seeing plenty more. JK, but Smilkovic to over two million, currently fourth in chips as Artur Martyroshian gets brought to this feature table. Byproduct of us getting down to the final five tables, I believe. Martyrosian, by the way, among the 10 qualifiers from GG Poker. That's right. Second time for him qualifying online on GG. Milkovic, also one of those qualifiers. Tabitz, King Jack, the opener. Brewer defends. Price is right with 9 4 suited. is a welcome sight. Turns into second pair on an eight high rainbow flop as Brewer checks with the flow of play. We'll see whether or not Tobitz feels like C betting into a buck and a quarter. Yeah, nice ball texture to big bet on. Very difficult for Brewer to have a lot of the 8-4 tray rainbow. And it's a nice sizing to go with as well in the form of, you know, getting calls from the 
the 3x, the 4x, the 8x of the world that are going to struggle across three streets. Five of spades, however, not the turn card. Rabbits was looking for to continue telling the story that he set up on the floor. And also not really one that rates to be of any concern for Brewers 9-4. Great. Not that shot. Rabbit's going to knuckle back. We're now suddenly perhaps an opportunity on the river. Four to a wheel out there, but the ace falls squarely into the range of the opening hand. Should Rabbit seek to represent? And he is being given the opportunity. Yeah, it has to be aware that Brewer's got some form of showdown here in the form of at least one pair. And the deuces belong to Brewer as the Minrays defender out of the big. Certainly do. I don't think he has many. But certainly has some. Yeah, rabbits just surrenders. White yeah. flag gets shown, and they maybe, maybe got to fold. Brewer, nice little pickup. Said that the mullet was responsible for the rough 2022 and since shaving it off, the upswing has begun. Is this the year? Is this the year, Raleigh? No mullet brewer. Uh, you know, just as a general <laughs> rule of thumb in society, the mullet is really not know. typically <laughs> emblematic of financial success <laughs> the moment you start talking there's just the tone of your voice <laughs> where i just know that the next sentence or a few sentences that come out of your mouth are going to be absolute nonsense right all right but funny <laughs> more often than not. more often than not <laughs> roberts now back at it with queen jack Scott Martirosian's Jack Six dominated here, and we'll see whether or not Artur deems this enough to defend off of 900,000. Artur hasn't folded a big blind since 2006, pal. You're talking about pre-Putin. 10-9-4 with a couple of spades here. No comment. Two overs and an open ender for Hobbits. Complete whiff for Artur. Wow, the check back with the Queen Jack. I I don't know. Does does he think that the texture favors Martirosian's defend range and wants to get to the turn without potentially getting check raised? Yeah, I think having to bet fold a hand like Queen Jack on the ten nine four, or maybe not even bet fold. Obviously, it would depend on sizing. If Artur did check raise, but just keeps the SPR high. to see a turn in position. But maybe he doesn't get to see a river against this sizing as Artur has come out with the overbet probe on this seven of diamonds. <coughs> <coughs> now all of a sudden maybe Rabbit's regretting decision to not fire out a seabet on the 10-9-4. Yeah, he really opened the door for Martirosian to take this line. But recognition here from Roberts that the checkback does broaden 
Martirosian's range. And now the Jack of Hearts on the river is an interesting card, Henry. Ford was straight on board. Both players have made top pair. And Hobbits, with the queen kicker, has the best hand. Yeah, both flush draws bricking. See the eight X's of the world. King, queen, getting now on this Jack of Hearts river. Artur, gonna try and get this one to show. And now beating, you know, the ace X of diamonds, ace X of spades type hands. If he faces a bet, though, it would be a bluff catcher. Four thirty-five in the middle, off of three hundred seventy-five thousand. Abbott's feels a bit thin as he does knuckle yeah. back and get shown a hand that maybe he could have squeezed out some value from, but. In that hindsight, board, yeah. Ball texture. Happy to just show this one down. Mm. Be purple poker saying this field is crazy. Mm. You're not wrong. 166 entries in event number one. GG Super Millions live edition and quite literally got the best players in the world here. Vietnam for this one. Mm -hmm. I think I want to say 18 mm -hmm. of the top 20 on the all time money list here in Vietnam, if I'm not mistaken. Or eight of the top 10. It was either 18 of the top 20 or eight of the top 10. I think no Negrano, no Brent Kenny. Yeah. Bonomo's here, Dan Smith's here. Stephen Chidwick. Yeah. Fifty K the open from Smilkovich as we draw into the wee hours of the late evening. Wow, well, talent just flat in the hijack. Unexpected. Especially because you do a very broad range of hands. Some ICM implications. Guess to just snap call off against some of the 20 big blind rejams from behind. Okay. Two spades, two tens, and a deuce as the jacks okay. have a comfortable stranglehold on the equity equation. No follow through from the pre flop raiser. And now, Tan going to check back the jacks. Really, some extreme puck control being exercised. Fortunately for Tan, nobody's got a spade draw, himself included. And yes. an undercard rolling off on the turn. Did give those six outs a free turn card. Let's see if he tries to get. Some value slash protection here on the turn. Long last. Reaches for chips and fires 75k. No takers. No surprise. What do you get up to on your break, Ali? What do I get up to on my what, break, what, what Henry? What did you get up to? Just trying to, you know, step into the mind of, of a veteran such as yourself. You just want to uh, probably. You just want to do as I do on my break. Probably eight clean, went for a walk, followed by none of those things. Some yoga. Definitely not. What did I get up to on my break? A bit of reading. Just a, a riveting question, by the way. I, if I were watching, the kind of thing I'd want to know. No? 
see that, Sam? I five, five, five. You don't think people are interested in what you get up to? I certainly hope not, for their sake. But if they're not interested in what I get up to, they're even less interested in what you get up to. Hey, nobody's asking Henry. about what I get up to, pal. Myself Don't included. Deflect. Don't deflect. Yeah. Yeah. Note that I didn't ask you what you got up to on your break. Hey, that's because, like you correctly deduce, nobody cares. But being that you've been around for longer than I've been alive, doing One commentary. Footage. Right. Repeat you that. You do have. Just repeat that last part. <laughs> you do, believe it or not, have the odd fan or two oh, out there that may be, just may be a curse. So, you know, what does our league get up to on yeah. break? Imagine if there was a hand to call in this spot, and as the play-by-play -play guy, you were unable to do that because the color dude was going on about what you did on break. Yeah. Imagine oh, wait, you needn't imagine it. It just happened. As Brewer opened to 55,000, Marta Rosian 3-bet to 140K, and the suited connector being leaned on by the Russian's button. Yeah, big hand, big hand to call on that one there, Ali. Uh, going back to what the chat's asking, uh, the internet is asking to know what Ali does on his break. Did you say the internet? That, listen, I'm just reading what the chat is saying. Uh, Hiccup is saying Ali is definitely a fascinating person. Mm -hmm. Curious to hear more. Calgary Hockey saying, why so many people in the chat not speaking American? I don't know, I'll let you figure that one out. Well, first stop. off, Calgary. Uh, um, American is not a language. I think the word you're after is English. Hey, here we are. Late hours. I, by, by the way, I truly appreciate, even though I can't tell what's being said, the fact that the player base being as international as it is, the fan base mirrors that oh, 100%. in the chat. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of Vietnamese players out here, a lot of Thai players rooting for the likes of Bunak and the Thai crushers that fly out for these series. KT, Pachata, Punat. Pick up all correctly, pointing out that we still haven't found out what Ali does on his break. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. We'll get there. Will we, Henry? Maybe one day. I was in the high limit, Bakara. <laughs> that, that would not surprise me one bit. I've got some markers. <laughs> no, I, I don't. That, that should surprise you. I'm not a pit fish. Flat from Greenwood, by the way, on the button here with the ace-10. Now, Hobbits furrowing the brow and coming with a jam. 22 effective. Got both of these guys covered, but you wonder whether or not one of them might be feeling as though this is a squeeze. Sixes and ace-10 both finding the muck, which is a merciful place to be relative to having called for both of those specific holdings. And a tidy pick up there. Or the young check. just now Go on. a fly landed on the counter on Henry's side of the booth Jesus, just take flies it. typically gravitate toward what take a day off Ali <laughs> seriously <laughs> like, do you ever just like wake up and think you know what what have I done to deserve this fate I'm just of gonna, being alongside Kilbane I'm just gonna take the day off today and not you know, jump at every given opportunity. If I could trust that you could stupid. hold this booth down without me, Henry, I would take the day off. I wish you would. <laughs> Golf, take it up. Stop it. 
you wore one pair of flat front pants today and all of a sudden you're a golfer. Silkovich <laughs> opens to 50,000. You know I love you, Henry. I do. Even if the fans don't. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. King Jack for tan. It's not about us. Or at least you. <laughs> King 10-4. All right, I'm done. Top well, pair here for very tan. cheap shots. I mean, come on. You can't set them up for yourself. You're right. Bottom pair for Smilko. Plops the seabed onto the button. couple of options available for Tan, I think, with the ICM 14 off the money. Healthy 1.2 million chips there. Yeah, we've got to proceed with just check call. Does have that jack of hearts for some relief. Ooh. It turns into a gut shot straight draw for him, but unfortunately that nine does better for Smilkovic, who has fortuitously turned two pair now to take the lead. Where do we find these cards? Two or five in the middle. Three-quarter pot. <clears throat> it's getting a little awkward now. Yeah, sizable double barrel from Smilkovic. Tan top pair. Gut shot, decent kicker. A single raise pot button. The big blind. And also two-tone ball texture. Though maybe you'd argue that a lot of Smilkovich's flush draws would want to try and realize. Call does get made. Hearts come in on the river. Smilkovich does not have a heart in his hand, but how often would and Swan be looking to check better than nines and fours on this river. ADK. Downsized. This feels like the old my friends at home are going to needle me for the next three months. But you're going to say it anyway. If I check this back, ah, you yes. know, like two pair button v big blind. But looking at it conversely, through Tan's eyes, it looks like you're being milked. It does. But King Jack, a lot of hands. Question is whether or not. Wants to turn this into a bluff. Feels like too much hand to turn into a bluff, but maybe reading into this size as as a kind of you know ace king type holding, two pair type holding that would struggle. With some frequency, these downsizes are designed to induce exactly that. So that's all also on Tan's mind. Yeah, Smilkovich is certainly capable of having a bet three betting range here in this river. With just shy of sixth pot. Just a nasty little spot. If Tang gets away from this, I tell you what. Well, it does flick in the one chip. How much did holding the jack of hearts have to do with Tan's decision on the river to make this call as he blocks queen jack and hearts with that card? Yeah, I mean, it's it's just, you know, sometimes I think you get dealt a hand where you're just destined to lose chips, aren't you? Yeah. King jack, top pair, as you mentioned, blocking the straight, blocking the flush. 
An unfortunate extra 80K tacked on. An already costly spot there for Tan Swan, who is at sub 1 million now. Milkovic up to almost 2.4 million from an 8K low water mark. Kilbane shaking his head here in the booth as the blinds move to 15 and 30,000. With a 30K ante, those chip counts brought to you by GG Poker, our title sponsor here at the Triton High Roller Series. Super High Roller Series, rather. I'm going to ask him, just be like, hey, man, I know it's it's a private group chat, but can I just see a couple of screenshots? The timeline of you dropping down to 8K and then, you know, updating your friends throughout the day. Absolute scenes. Smilkovic, third in chips, 37 players left. Imagine if you had a last longer with the guy. Two orbits in, he's down to 8K. You're like, lock it up. Not even jet lag. I just, I just woke up at 6 in the morning and then far back to sleep, but I slept. Raphael in the chat said, what's the link to follow the online stacks of the players remaining? Great question. The pinned link by Triton Poker over on YouTube is to the Triton Poker Plus app. The field of the players, chip stacks, table seatings, and the structure can be found by clicking that link. Those of you looking to sweat some got, of your favorite lucky, players I'm on the outer like, tables. I went to bed at like 11 last <laughs> night and woke up at 10. So I'm on like a pretty good uh, sleep uh, schedule. K open from the German is flatted by both blinds. <laughs> Definitely not the way to do Sevens it. and sixes <laughs> respectively. Yeah. I was just... Yeah, I don't know. I was so exhausted from flying. I just knocked out. It's got to be five, six, seven on the flop, right? <laughs> Queen, ten, three instead. I usually struggle with it. I fell asleep on break in Cyprus. That wasn't good. <laughs> Brewer getting to bed at 11 p.m., waking up at 3 a.m. by product of flying straight from Paris to Vietnam. As many players in this field did, with the EPT just having wrapped up. Sam's about to fall asleep on the table. Damn yeah, good. <laughs> I'm tired. I'll slap. I'll come over and slap you. <laughs> Wake you up. Not even that, bro. The Ace Four C bet is called by Tanzwan, and that obviously. I've been, a a, I've been in live cash games so good that like everyone is falling asleep at the table but you can't leave. So everyone's just like... <laughs> yeah, he will release the sixes. Like passing the out of all around the table. <laughs> the board pairs and brings a third spade. Gives 10 the lone flush draw. Not a terrible card for him. Yeah, against Smilkovic's exact holding. He's had our fair share of zero equity barrels today, and well. Oh, wow. A check back from Smilkovic, and the Ace of Hearts promptly arrives to down the two sevens. One's going to check through Smilkovic to show the ace four and climbs up to 2.6 million in chips now. He's up to second. And the last few steps along that ascent have been built on Tan Swan's chips. Okay. What? Oh. <laughs> this is kind of 
Opening two through the hours. field. Oh, yeah. Patrick and Marion Mosbock. 1.6. Seth Davies. Haven't seen him at the feature today. Playing 1.4 million. Nicky P. So playing 1.3. Michael Soiser, kind of sat in 13th. Eric Seidel, Daniel Forrest, Stephen Chidwick, just to name a few of the players out there still left in this field. Arthur, the raise and take, no customers. Looking at plus tap, two caches, 530, all of it coming in North Cyprus late last year, which event, which was his third festival, we'll stopped by for the warm up earlier that year and came to Madrid, but was unable, broke the seal most recently, and here he is trying. But goes to work with two red jacks, and a black ace queen asks for a count. Well, it wouldn't surprise me if we're going to find ourselves flipping late in the day here, Arlie. Just a flat, however. Does that surprise you? Uh, it's Queen now. Can't sit under the gun open. Green would open. Strong perceived threat range. He says, let's see a flop. Potential four way affair here. Martha Ocean. Not For the first enough. time since 2004, folding is big. <laughs> 240 in the middle. Oh, Jack in the window. It comes Jack 7 6 rainbow. Unfortunately for Greenwood. Swing and a miss for both Rabbits and Brewer. The brewer might keep him honest for one street. Well, Sam doesn't do his own bidding here with just too much hand, the actual nuts, on this flop. Seeing if he can't tempt this flat in position for Rabbits from taking a stab, which he does. 75k, fours into the muck. The old double take from Greenwood. Do I actually have top set? Just double check. Greenwood going to flat. See what develops. King on the turn, and suddenly Roberts has outs. Picking up the Broadway gut shot action check to him once more. Will he check back and realize? Or weave one together? Uh, 390 in the middle, 360 behind. Interesting turn spot. For Frabets. Looks like he's reaching, Ali. 125,000. I think we can comfortably remove a set of kings from Hobbits' <laughs> range here for Greenwood. We still feel like we hold the nuts. Yeah, and given that we block the flop top pairs so heavily, are we just giving as much rope as possible to Rabbits or do 
we announce ourselves on this King of Clubs turn. Yeah, I mean, a good percentage of the time, Tabitz is just going to be drawing dead in this spot. And if that's the case, Greenwood is heavily incentivized to just flat and see if he can't get his customer to hang himself on the river. Does check jam and a yeah. snap fold from Kravitz. I wonder if the king wasn't a club, if that would have made any difference in terms of Sam's calculus there. Something tells me it wouldn't have necessarily. Maybe a a tiny bit of difference. I think it's relevant. I think you make a good point. A little lick of the lips there. Sleeves rolled up. There's Greenwood. Happy with that outcome. Cam plus yeah, the guy eleven hours to into the day. He's just like, screw it. I win the pot or I go to sleep. The long sleeping too. <laughs> Four o'clock sleeping. A long sleeping. Because the 15k doesn't start until 4 p.m. Good observation. That will be tomorrow's event number two. As we see Smilkovich going to work with the suited one gapper. Not one, but two sevens finding their way into the muck behind him. Greenwood is going to peek at an ace eight most certainly will not be finding the muck. Late elimination in Daniel Forrest. A pretty monster-sized pot, to be honest with you. 1.8 million chip pot against Pablo Silva. And that is big blind with King Sick, flop top pair, and the rest is history. Meanwhile, 6 4 Trey Rainbow as Greenwood defended his big. Comes up empty, checks it over to Smilkovich, who's got the gutter, backdoor clubs. 165 in the middle, up for grabs. And the 40k C bet sends Ace High straight into the muck. <sighs> what a day it's been for that man. 11 hours in. Finds himself third in chips. You want to sleep? He looks thrilled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been a long day, you know. You don't know when these guys traveled in. That man was offered a $100,000 free roll from Jason Kuhn. Couldn't close it out. Go on. Jason gave the dealer three chances to call out the hand that he dealt to him. So hand number one was for 25k, hand number two was for 25k, and then the third hand was for 50k. Dealer chose seven six of diamonds. This is after Jason had played the hand? No, no, so before just... he's dealing, before he dealt the hand. Okay. He said pick two cards from the deck. If you get them right, you get 25k split between the dealers. I think if I were him, I would have been like, what do you mean split between the dealers? Well, because I don't, I don't hear be them guessing. No, because J J <laughs> <laughs> Jason asked him, uh, what would you do You know, if you do win the 25K or the 50K is Smilkovich. J 
just piles into Brewer. Carvey big blind. Just north of 30. Brewer's in a great way, by the way, if he could somehow uh, find a way to make this cost just too big. I see him. Implications really coming into effect here, a field of this size. 35 left. Oh, but the, deal, the dealer said that he would split it with, with all the other dealers, which, you know. I mean, that is the social, socially appropriate. Yeah response. I think you just kind of say that and then you say verbal is non-binding after you win it. And just kind of Struggle. apologize to the rest of the dealers. I would have respected him more if you know he just said, you know what? If I ping off the 50k I'm going to hand my badge in one way ticket to wherever, Bali or Fukuok. I'm just going to go and enjoy myself for, for a couple of weeks. You think you're only going to last a couple of weeks on 50K, Henry? What I kind mean, of budget? My God. I mean... I thought you said you weren't partying in Phuket. 50K will last you 10 years <laughs> in that part of the world. <laughs> I'm telling you now it would not, but... Oh. Got a, got a bit of a posh setup out there, do you? Inflation, man. Do you not see what's been going on recently? Stop it. Banks on fire. 170% inflation in certain parts of the world. I mean, what's going on? Two sevens have opened to 60K. That's what's going on. And Greenwood, with the Ace-10 suited on the button, does not inflate. Flats. Talking about what 50k could buy you. Quite a lot of stock. Or barrels of oil back in the day. Oh, yeah. One chip correctly pointing out that fishing equipment isn't cheap. Deuce 3-7 with a couple of clubs here as top set is acquired for Brewer. Abetz came along with the queen nine. Unfortunately for Chris, the opposition just doesn't have much to work with. Greenwood might find his way to a turn, but it's not going to cost him anything as Brewer is looking to induce, understandably. Check through. <laughs> Ace of spades on the turn. Giving Greenwood top pair. And really, that's the idea for Brewer. Let somebody improve and draw dead. Zero equity anywhere else. What a dream spot for Chris. See what size he comes with. It's like half pot. Greenwood, after just squeezing out some value from Habits after flopping a top set of his own, is now on the flip side. This cooler situation. That was just cool. Four, four, five in the middle. A big river. Board pairs now filling Brewer up, and that's not the kind of card that's going to allow Greenwood to escape. Question is, what size does Brewer go for? Queenos, Ace Jack, Ace Ten suited. They're just flat. 
Oh, Can we unblock top pair? We just go for a big bet, and how about all in? How about all of it, Ali? What an ugly spot here for Greenwood. Yeah, can't blame him for being uncomfortable. He is covered by Brewer. This is an overbet. Yeah, it's either, you know, top pair or busted clubs. <coughs> Understandable. Overbet jam from Brewer. Greenwood has clubs. They go straight into the muck. He's got a hand like ace-10, ace-jack suited, ace-queen off. He's in a tough spot. I haven't used one yet. Right, this will be my first one. See if Greenwood could get away from this. Well, remember... Brewer opened this pot. Sam flatted the button. Yep. Came 7-3 deuce with a couple of clubs. It was a three-way pot as the big blind came along as well. Brewer chose to check that texture. Then the ace showed up, and Brewer barreled, and now jams the river. I think there is some ace-king and ace-queen to be wary of. 100%. For Greenwood. I think Brewer would comfortably value jam, ace king, ace queen. Agreed. Greenwood knows it. It's also such a great card for Brewer. To rep that kind of kit sure. without it. Yeah. Greenwood. Pained this river decision late. In today one, it's 25k GG Super Millions Live Edition. 35 players left, 23 places paid. About 20 minutes away from bagging and tagging for day two, but he's not going to get to bag as he no. makes the call and gets shown the full house. Such a bad feeling there. Almost made it to end of day. And you really sympathize with Greenwood, the polarity of, of that line that was taken by Brewer. Might have even felt for Sam like he could have just reached into his pocket for a coin. So a big pickup late in the day for Brewer as the departure of Sam Greenwood draws us closer to the money. And with that, Brewer up to sixth in chips. 34 remain. Maybe it was the mullet, Ali. So far, it certainly seems to have been what we can point to as having been responsible for at least some of Brewer's run bad. 23 places will be paid. with queen eight suited off of 1.7 million. And raise open. Bit of stalling here. Clock ticking down. Likely 15 minutes left on the clock. 
Rabbit's just checking out for the day mentally. Still has to fold its queen four. Big blind. Ace deuce defends. And promptly turns into aces up on the one, two, three board. Quick check from Tan. And six, five out there. Brew of a hand that it's going to want to just bet. Faces any resistance. Can just snap mark. There's zero equity. Or in this case, 1% equity. Schwan. Choosing to check raise here and now, and the decision is an easy one for a Brewer. No heart on board. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I well, just heard in the background three more hands oh. to be dealt before <laughs> we bag and tag Over. for day two. Hey. Same time, same place tomorrow, Ali. 2 p.m. local time. We'll be playing down to a winner. Said winner going to be walking away with 965,000. Not a bad haul. Shy of a seven-figure score. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely pick up on the button here late day for Hobbits. It's no better than aces. Raise open. Maybe suited connector mulls it over. <laughs> Bit aggressive from Tam. I think it's just been a long day. <laughs> So get into a comfy hotel bed. I don't know about you, I slept like a baby. Well done. Very comfortable room. Are you trying to no, you know what? suggest that somehow yeah, your room yeah, was more comfortable yeah, you than mine? To be in the full poke also now. Yeah. You know, it's in my contract that you have to be on a lower floor. <laughs> it's a good luck hat. That's the only time you get to look down on me. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the time you're cranking your neck up. So you, you, you give us a little wave from your balcony. A little oh, that's eye right. spy earlier today. Morning, yeah. <coughs> You've no all, action you, for Rabbit's You've got by the eyes way everywhere. <laughs> you remind me of uh, Shows the aces. Aces. Tyrion Lannister. That's I just like the tease. You'll oh. forgive me for not knowing that reference. But that's all right. That's fine. So I think it's a it's a good reference to the one or two people in the chat that no got the it. the eighty percent of the the viewers that understood yeah. that reference. Go on, yeah. tell us where it's from. Game of Thrones. Ah, yeah, yeah, you're right. I guess when you book. As infrequently as you do, one has plenty of time to take in <laughs> epic sagas hey, of listen, that nature. Let's not talk about our bookings, pal. All right, let's not dive into the weeds on that one because I hate to put you to sleep with no, that thought. No, 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 no. You, <laughs> if you want to open up that can of worms, I mean, look, discuss bookings or lack of bookings. Listen, let's <laughs> just talk about the opens here. Not a can of worms, but 